live. No, actually. We could, do it now. Do it now. Do it right now. Oh. Mahler, what ship do you work on? <laughs> the USS. Hello, everyone. <laughs> the USS. Oh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> that would be a great ship name. Yeah. And this is yeah. Captain Rags of the USS. Hello, everybody. Yeah. You should have. Oh, you should have said hello there, ladies and gentlemen. You could have well, done that. Yes, because if, hello the there, joke, ladies and gentlemen. if the joke is about how like cringy and terrible it is, then yeah, I would say that the problem with the, <laughs> thing, with the name of that ship is that you would need to say hello again, otherwise people would be confused. They're like, has he had said hello, or has he just introduced a ship and then not greeted us? How rude! <laughs> with There's the so USS, much confusion. hello. You're the, <laughs> you're the, and the, the, USS, the covenant hello, learned to take hello. advantage of the confusion. Like the hello, the USS Hello there has just entered uh, <laughs> real space. They're they're gonna be confused while they greet each other. Quick attack! It sounds like the most inefficient fucking navy system. It's gonna cause problems. That's my opinion. Okay. What if there was a, a ship that was uh, the name was so long it was like that Monty Python uh, composer who had the insanely long name, but that was the name of a ship, and it took like a minute to say it every time they wanted to refer to it. Named us. These that, humans are stupid. Welsh town for efficiency. It'd be a pretty baller move, I think. Um, but yeah, it looks like everything's working. Everything is up and running. There's people in chat. Public. People are aware. Beautiful. Um, hey, well, I, I, since I'm, I'm pretty certain that this is going to take us some time, we should probably just get right into it, as in explaining what what's even going on. And that is yeah. the. Um, We've gathered several people today who love the Halo show to discuss its incredible writing. That is, I love it. It's yeah. so good. Oh, I found fans Me from too. across the internet. Um, it, I've completely changed my mind since my recent video. <laughs> that was that was uh, that was April Fool's. You put that out, right? Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit later. Turns out the final episode changes everything. It actually did. Yeah, makes it all way better. Yeah. There is actually an element in it that I've heard people. Well, there's a couple of them actually. A lot of people like that finale. We'll talk about it. It's gonna be great. Um, I didn't even watch it. People liked that finale. You didn't watch the last. You didn't episode? watch the last one. <laughs> I the did. Show is, I... The show is so good. Uh, it's it's it hurts me to watch sometimes <laughs> because it's just that like, good. I'm not worthy to um, watch it. Well, we I, uh, experience. I wouldn't put good in there. I've had uh, some synopsis and i've seen some important clips but as for like i don't think i'm worthy enough to watch the last episode because of how amazing it probably is oh well don't worry we'll uh we'll let you know what happened in it and you can, uh, okay. you can let us know what you think about their amazing decisions though first and foremost mm. we should probably welcome who who is where what why for everybody first and foremost the the shadow master himself hey er it's been a while welcome back to the old hey. efab Definitely has. Thank you very much for having me back. I feel like and this for making me watch this no. god awful train wreck. Those little people I made you will hate me. <laughs> They'll feel like, how could you do that to him? But I'm like, look, I wanted his opinions on it, and he was thorough. Okay, he had to watch all of it to know what he thought of all of it. And yep. um, and yeah, like I said, we all ended up loving it, so it's all good. Uh, sure, that's one way of putting it. I. <laughs> I, I, I think there's probably about a thousand questions that people would be wanting me to ask you, especially as an intro, but um, was was it really Halo that brought you back into thinking, I should make a video on this? Was it really that bad? Ah, well, it was the, it was mainly a friend who was super interested in this Halo adaptation, and uh, I gave it a shot because, you know, how badly could they screw it up? And uh, within the first episode, it was a complete train wreck already. Because we'll probably... So... Um... Figure it out for the for all of us, but like, how, where would you say you sit on the uh, on the fan of Halo scale? Fan of Halo, I only played Reach one and two like August last year, so I'm not I'm not hugely into all of the Halo lore and all that. But uh, just from a storytelling standpoint alone with the TV show, I'm uh, I'm not a fan. Let's put it like that. You've been offended fundamentally by its storytelling, just in general, is what you're saying? Yes. Sin I'm to really humankind. Approaching this as a Halo fanboy, more uh, 
this is an affront to uh, humanity and <laughs> their endeavor. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to disagree with you there. Going to be completely honest with you. Um, oh yeah. But yeah, it's good to have you, man. I'm looking forward to to chatting about this shit, right? Because there's thank so much, you, so many you. topics. Um, mm. We also have returning guest from actually kind of a while ago. I can't remember what episode it was. The Act Man. How you doing, buddy? Welcome. Uh, uh, mm. Doing good. Doing very good. <laughs> say you were like a brute with your noises. Is it? Yeah. Is it safe to uh, say there was a point where you were like, this show could be okay? Was was that a thing at one point? Maybe for you at some point? No, maybe. maybe? Uh, okay. Well, if we're if we're uh, tearing down the charade that we all like to show, uh, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's Literally see. perfect. I'm trying you? to. Th I'm trying to think. The first, maybe like. 15 minutes actually i had a problem with the very first scene i was like why am i watching a bunch of teenagers go do drugs <laughs> what's well, halo i can do that and i can do that in real life i don't need to watch that yeah. in the show it was cool when they got blasted i'll say that mm -hmm. and then and then it was like oh okay now we are we're back on track i think after i feel that like they scene, really though, front loaded the violence too in the show like to the first 15 minutes and then it just never happened ever <laughs> again really yeah yeah. Uh, well, when you punch, no, I'm doing death. great. I'm good, I'm good, doing. good to hear. Um, Thank you for threatening my it's, it's, I, I figured this is going to be quite the suitable subject to have you back on the old, the old show to have a little chat, and it'll be fun to have you, you bounce around with a bunch of people because, yeah. the, the, I guess the other thing I should have done already is actually sort of figuring out who even knows everybody here. I believe Yah has met myself and Rags before, but I'm not even sure if he's met any of you other guys. So what's what was? I've spoke briefly with Fringy, but aside from that, yeah, um, the rest of you are all new to me. Well, ER, nice. this is Actman. Actman, this is ER. Mm -hmm. Say hello. Oh, hello, Actman. Um, in case you haven't met as well, I guess because you just said you hadn't. Yeah, this is the the one between me and Fringy is John CJG. You may know him. Well, I know him. Yeah, well, you know him. This is I know you as well. <laughs> the the oh. shortcut here is. I'm Whoever doesn't I know, know each other, say hello. Um, yeah, well, wait, so is this the first time that you guys have spoken then, uh, John and Ackman? You I can't so, force yep. me to socially interact, okay? You <laughs> can't just force did. me to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you don't time, socially cool. interact, we're going to ruin Halo. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a recluse as well. I have no friends, no YouTube <laughs> friends. <laughs> well, it's, it's also great to have John because he's also made his own Halo story. He has. Mm. Yep. John, I'm going to be honest, it was better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is that a compliment? I guess we'll find out. Um, but yeah, well, you know what? And that leads into me saying, hi, John. Welcome back. Always love to have you. And uh... Oh, thank you very much. I feel like I'm probably the least known person here. Um, I don't really have a, a presence uh, in right. terms of like media criticism, but uh, I'll tell you what I have done. I made uh, this at a YouTube channel back in 2007, 2008. I made Master Chief Sucks at Halo. Mm -hmm. That went viral. Worked for Machinima. Made a show called R Being the Chief. Still working on that. Worked for a company called uh, Machinima.com. Ooh, I heard uh, of them. Yeah, famous. Where, Everyone loves them. Where gaming and entertainment collide. <laughs> <and> they <laughs> oh. exploded in spectacular <laughs> right. fashion. Uh, yeah, but like two ships in the ocean. But I've been really invested in the games. Obviously, I've I've been making movies with the Halo games since Halo Two, and uh, I really enjoy it. And I got some back in the day. Um, I got some. I got noticed uh, by Bungie. I think Frank O'Connor posted on their website. It was like a blog entry. It said, "Do not watch this video." It was referring to like our being the chief episode one. And it was the <laughs> the language was so foul right so they couldn't like officially endorse it but it was just like don't look at this wink wink i yeah. i appreciated them doing that and awesome. uh awesome, yeah. i got i got to they say that about frank the Halo show I heard too. they say do not watch this do not. <laughs> and they mean uh, it i'm grateful for some of the opportunities that i had as a result of like being um a part of that uh the halo community in a big way at least back then like i'd gone to um bungie studios 
when they were in Redmond, Washington. I met Frank O'Connor at E3, talked to him. Um, I worked with Rooster Teeth briefly. Uh, they were cool guys. And uh, so, yes, so this show, uh, I was very curious about it. And uh, I think I'm mostly on the same page with you guys. I suspect that I really wasn't impressed it's with it. It's quite and, possible. Uh, yeah. Quite Maybe. Possible. Um, Apparently. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of my brief intro, I guess. Yeah, no. Thanks for a, having me. I, I appreciate it. This is cool. Like we always love your me. company. And show. You're more than familiar with Halo, and so I'm sure it'll that'll come in handy when talking about the I, events of this show. I got I a few like, things to say. Yeah, I may have taken yeah. ten thousand words worth of notes on this show. <laughs> uh, don't worry, you're not alone. All right. <laughs> oh, sorry. I kind of took it for granted, but I was just like, oh yeah, Actman knows loads about Halo. He's done loads of videos about Halo. He's, he's, he's big into uh, Halo. Yeah. For anybody who doesn't know who he is, uh, so the. the yeah, um, I feel it's unnecessary for me to like introduce myself, Rags or Fringy, um, as people who are familiar with Halo to different degrees. But what I would rather do, to be honest with you, is explain. I did mention this last week. Halo is not actually my forte. It's uh, it's it's much more so Rags and Fringies's. And so with the with this episode, I'm actually going to be passing the reins from here on in to Mister Fringy to um, mainly direct the conversation through subjects and uh, kind of explain the foundation for how we're going to break it down um, with, with what we're going to talk about. And I uh, will try and make sure that we have plenty of visuals in the background to uh, what? represent what it is that we're talking about. I have access to all nine episodes, uh, but I'm mainly going to be using screenshots of course, or scanning through. You know how it is. But yeah, um, hope you enjoy, folks. And uh, Ringy, take it away. Yes, uh, please take it away. Take it away. <laughs> Destroy take, it. Take me away. So, we. I don't think that it's it would a be very Breaking Benjamin reference. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, I, no! I'm, I'm only the dumbest. Law is all the way, Fringy. Give me an Maybe hour, and then it will be all on Simpsons references. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that it would be particularly fun to just like run through all of the episodes beat by beat. I don't, I don't think that would be a very entertaining experience because I think all it would be is just cataloging a massive list of problems that never ends for hours. <laughs> so that's how i feel um but but we'll uh we'll, we'll get to that so okay. i figure that what we will do is hit on all of like the main i guess beats of storytelling so it'd be character plot world building and theme in that order but before we do that i figure it'd be a good idea to just get everybody's in like 500 words or less <laughs> which i'm sure you'll be able to mentally figure out as you're speaking what do you think about the halo show from left to right I'll go last though. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> okay. What, what do you think of this show? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that answers that. It's um, he's making a statement. Yeah, I don't know if that's an accident or on purpose yet. We'll find out. Well, <laughs> Definitely on purpose. You know what? Until then, John, what do you think about Halo, the television series based on the video game of the same name? Oh, geez. Um, I had, I went in optimistic and, uh, I was like, you know, maybe, I don't know how, I didn't know what to expect. So I went in and the bloated 20 minute opening scene started pretty predictably, but I thought not the beginning, the dialogue's terrible at the beginning, but like in terms of setting up like the beats of it where you introduce like a human colony and then you get the human characters you see the bad guy on the tv and then they talk about the spartans and how they're demons and all that and then the students or whatever the kids are out frolicking killed by the covenant war against the covenant starts and then chief comes in and kills them all and then you get to see what he's capable of so i kind of expected it to start in a in a fashion like that and it did i just wish it was executed a bit better but based on that opening scene i thought this might be okay like that i kind of like the action doesn't cgi isn't that great and it doesn't it didn't no, bother no, me that much it? yeah 
Uh, but then it, it's just got super bogged down after that into trying to be like this uh, grounded political drama. <laughs> and uh, it's like stopped. Like, I, th I think Halo works better as sort of a live action cartoon, like in a like existing in a comic book sort of way where you have I'm I'm not saying it should be like um like uh like utterly goofy not not Yeah that like far. I mean yeah, like, we are I compared about it about giant rings that destroy the universe so I mean not, treating it like a cartoon I very much agree with that Well I I had written on yeah I had written on Twitter like this should be treated more as a cartoon and then you know as with Twitter, you, you can always expect somebody to that. interpret yeah. your tweets in the least charitable way, and then they'll yeah. they'll be like, uh, uh, th "This guy seriously thinks it should be a cartoon," and I'm like, "I'm not talking about Roger Rabbit. I mean something <laughs> like, uh, you know, like with mallets and fucking, you know, eyes coming out of people's heads. Like, no, I mean something like Batman or Cowboy Bebop or something where you've got these heightened elements uh, in this story that's actually." You know that actually has something to say thematically. I think Halo has good themes. Like uh, I, I really like the, th like whatever the it's the themes are also they're present in the games, they're present in the show, uh, but the execution in the show is just so flawed. I only only got joy out of like the the action sequences. Really, everything else felt like a chore. Um, for the most part, there's beats here and there that uh, I kind of liked. But definitely not enough for me to say that this was a a good first season of television overall. So, um, it, so it's I, safe I, to I, say not a not a huge fan and not super optimistic for season two. No, I'm not. I mean, I would say the finale was a bit of an improvement over the entirety of like uh, the first eight episodes, but I still don't have high hopes for all the seeds that have hit that have been planted that will lead into the, the second season of episodes, you know, it's, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't want to go on too long. I, I feel like I've said enough. And by the way, no. I'm pretty sure that was not planned by ER. That was internet. That's uh, my guess. Which, uh, point. The, timing, <laughs> the timing was impeccable though. Like That's perfect. impeccable. <laughs> but hopefully it gets it sorted. Yeah, uh, hopefully. Mute. Mubes. Oh right, yeah. Think? So, as someone who's like vaguely familiar with with Halo, and funnily enough, it's like it would be considered. Oh, hey, yeah. I guess it's your turn. <laughs> a joke. <laughs> should I should I keep going, or should it be E.R.'s turn now? I, uh, that's depends. Are you wait. What was that? I was like, I didn't yeah. hear that. Hmm? What E.R. You want? What do you think about Halo? That was what uh, you were. I was going to ask you before you you ran away from me. Yeah. Oh my bad, my bad. Uh, I like Halo. I've only played Reach. Oh, no, I, no, no, no. I made the show. Yeah, wait. The so show, oh, the show. No, this is one of the worst things that I've ever had the uh, displeasure to witness in my entire life. <laughs> if um, in, in case because you may have cut out earlier than we thought, but uh, yeah, just like a like a blurb on what do you think of the show overall? What's your What's your thoughts? And it's it's just how we start, um, so everyone gets an idea of what we're all thinking before we uh, start uh, going into detail. Oh man, I just sum it all up into a blurb. Just uh... you have like five hundred plus words. You'll be fine. It was less than five hundred, but okay. An absolute <laughs> clusterfuck of mistakes. I have no idea what they were trying to achieve with it. Um, I thought for sure that the Master Chief and Quan subplot uh, set up from the beginning was actually going to lead somewhere. It made that made sense. The cliched and played out thing to do, but they completely abandoned that within the next episode, don't they? He just drops her off in an asteroid, and then yeah, you'd think they would have had like a buddy thing throughout the season, but it's just episode one. Yeah, and off of two be like drawing out his humanity over the course of the show or something like that but no she drops her off on an asteroid and i yeah i have legitimately no idea what the fuck they were going for with this show just that's... No <laughs> that's, that's yeah. definitely a general take I understand that perspective yes. not 
not only does that Quan part like kind of just a dead end in terms of themes, I think the show like forgot yep. about everything it set up with that particular sequence. Yes. We can talk about that. 100% agree. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall at the meeting between 343 and the show. Wow. Rush, you know? <laughs> so apparently, like, apparently, the the um, the, the the showrunners or like the the studio behind the show kind of just didn't care that much what three four three said about uh the games, and right? Like the what love the story. I think I heard. Bringing. I saw that clip as well. Shot. Yeah, I think um yeah that there, there was like a, that there were things that three four three didn't want to happen um that just that that got in anyway like that the perspective was ignored, which is interesting yeah. because. Because yeah, if, if of... I was head of Halo and I was giving away the rights for a company to make the show, I'd be like, no, hold on. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it, I probably should have prefaced this earlier. This might be, um, no, we'll, we'll leave that until after we get everybody's perspectives. Mubes, you're up well, next. Yeah. What do I was... you think? And I was just going to say, it's kind of funny, right? Like, that they would be, whatever input they had, at least somewhat of it was ignored. And it's just like, you feel like Loki and Ragnarok was like, yes, that's how it fails. Like, because 343, you know, they've, they've, they're not exactly popular with the Halo people anyway. <laughs> like, so. they've, uh, they've made some very interesting decisions over the course of their years being in control of years, which now are longer than Bungie's tenure at mm. this point. So yeah, uh, for me it was uh, like like I think I've said I played three and Reach uh, like the the main ones that I played. I think I played ODST. I can't remember anymore. I intend to play one and two someday to be a cool kid, and then possibly even four and five to jump in on the fun conversations about how great those games are as well. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I guess I'm, I was in a unique position, but at the same time, uh, it had enough familiarity with Halo to know that when I was watching the show, I was just like, this is, um, this is not at all the, the, uh, the thing that I knew this was, but as, as is important, I was like, I'll just take it as a sci-fi show. Let's just see how it goes. And man, do they drop the ball from like the first few minutes and, and everything just unravels in terms of making any sense. And it was interesting because of course, when watching it with... Uh, Rags and Fringy, I had little pieces of information coming at me from what the, the narrative is supposed to be in terms of how mechanically some things work, and what it meant by knowing that is that they couldn't, they're locking themselves out of payoffs as we went on, and then it could be that they actually try and maintain some of them, and they're completely fucked because they've lacked important context. There's also these, like, different pieces that were coming in on top of the fact that it was just a really bad show anyway. Seriously, after episode one, I don't think I would have carried this on if I knew nothing about Halo, I didn't even, let's just pretend the only Halo thing in the world that existed was this show. I'd just be like, this is a shitty sci-fi show, but man, it has a budget. Mm -hmm. Which is really weird, because like, why does it have such a budget when it's like, brand new? It seems like such an experiment, but yeah, we're in a world where it, um, it is being based on something. And that clearly didn't matter at all. And by the time I reached the end, it was just a joke. Lots to laugh <laughs> at. And there were several uh, plot lines where whenever they cut to them, I was frustrated mainly because they don't involve characters that do the goofiest shit, and so I was bored. I was like, you're not going to do funny, dumb stuff. You're going to, like, talk for ages about terrible things with bad dialogue. Um, yeah. And that was my engagement with the show until I finished it, talked a decent amount about it um, at different points, and now, yeah, I'm totally ready to just, just talk about this. this is a fucking disaster, and I feel bad for Halo fans. Luckily, I can separate out a little bit because <laughs> I was never that into Halo, but... Oof. Mm. Bad stuff. Yeah, same. I can also Rad. say I wouldn't have finished it if if I wasn't already invested in the franchise, you know. Sorry, go ahead. You gotta wonder how many people wouldn't have finished this show if it wasn't called Halo. You, you have right. to wonder, <laughs> like, how many people would yeah. even care about this show at all. Yeah. Um, it feels like this is very much, wow. Rags, what do you think about Halo, the television series? Well, I loved it. Oh, did no, you? God, I, I hate you. Nah, it's a steaming heard, pile of shit. I heard every bit of like contempt in that sentence I you said. No, it. I no, I love it. Halo the series. <laughs> it's just and so great. It's so great, and I love how intelligent it is, and smart it is, and all of the wonderful things they're trying to say. And I love how aware of how intelligent and intellectual they are. It it's so wonderful. I totally didn't want. It. Okay, so okay, Halo is shit. Okay, um, 
I like virtually nothing about this show. We get nine episodes, so there's a good like eight hours of, uh, yeah, a good eight or so hours of content here. And I think the only things that I could legitimately say that I liked about the entirety of the Halo show is a few surface level things here and there. Oh, look, that looks kind of neat. Oh, hey, that looks kind of neat. Oh, hey, that's sort of neat. And that's it. That's the only thing that I liked about this show. That was it. Nothing else is good. It's all bad all the way through from the first episode to the last episode all the way through. None of the characters work. Every person and every faction involved is a big, dumb, stupid idiot. I I absolutely <laughs> hate the world building and what they've managed to do to two alien races. I hate what the show I get, is trying to say. I hate all of the directions that they took with it. I a lot of the times when you get a show or a game or whatever it is that is an adaptation of something else, especially when it comes to video games. There is an almost there. There's almost like this desire to, or are you are you sense the vibe that the people who made it don't really care about the source material that much. They'll use some aesthetics here and there, maybe a sound effect here and there, a line here and there as sort of a reference to the original stuff that they're pulling things from. But I think Halo is is kind of different than all of those. After watching Halo, the series um, starring John Halo and Science Lady and Alien, uh, then I, I've come to the conclusion that this show doesn't not care about Halo. I think that this show and the people who made this show have utter contempt for Halo. I think that they do not like Halo. They see it only as a tool, as a as a vehicle for them to tell their crappy sci-fi story. All of the references to Halo that exist within the show are either one of two things, completely surface level and meaningless, or incorrect, right? We know that battle rifles exist from the game. Ooh, that's great. We're going to make it fully automatic. We know that shields exist in the game on the Spartans, but they're going to be virtually nothing like the shields actually in the game. Like they knew to take things and throw them in here and there in the same way that maybe uh, maybe someone would toss scraps to an animal, right? Um, there is no sense of respect whatsoever for, the, for, for Halo as an IP. I think, uh, I think they just flat out don't like it, like it or they just hate it they hate what it stands for they hate the the what their concept is of the story i read an article uh yesterday from someone who really thinks the show is the gold standard of what adaptations from video games should be and and she was talking about how oh master chiefs is in the games he's just this dull shitty blank slate of masculinity and there's nothing to him he doesn't have any pro personality and and that's bad and fans shouldn't have you know this this contempt that people seem to have for the thing they're pulling from the thing that necessitates this show and um yeah i really really hate it virtually nothing in the show works from plot to characters to the clunky ass horrible dialogue it's all terrible and i think that if you like it then that is so sweet um, uh, other than all I, that, you liked it, right? Yeah, I was but other say. than that, yeah. other other, other than, than that, it was pretty it. good. I really enjoyed it. I was I was sad <laughs> when it ended because uh, I just wanted so much more. Um, hmm. yeah. you know what? I yeah. believe you. I believe that I, that's a true I do statement. As well. But thank you for that. That's that was that was more than five hundred words, probably. <laughs> that, that was four hundred ninety nine on the dot. On nice. the dot, was it? I'm sure yeah, I, 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 use that I counted on my fingers while I was talking. <laughs> I, well said. I, I'm now just imagining like you sitting there 
running through like all of your fingers as you're speaking, trying to keep yeah. track all the way up to four. Quite a multitask. I'm impressed. Nice That's how they nice. did it back in the old days before mm. calculators and science technology. They would use their yeah. fingers and they would count, and they they they'd use the knuckles and they would uh, yeah, turn their use hands the back knuckles. Why don't yeah. you explain that? Use the knuckles to count words. Yeah. What does that mean? Oh yeah, well if um, now I'm a dog, of course. Uh, so this might work different for me, but you could bend you one could bend their fingers. Right. And you could like count like all the little knuckles, the little little joints. And then you could turn your hands back and forth, like if it's facing away from me or, or to me. And that's like that like doubles each hand's worth of counting. And it, about, it's a. It's what about your weird way. dog thumbs up along your legs? You oh, those, those a, a million and one uses. You have no idea. No idea. I hide my power level. <laughs> I power, power I like, level. Are those do, are those like thumbs actually superfluous, or do they serve some sort of utility? Oh, they're super all right. I really. <laughs> what do they do? What don't they do? Well, Act man, what, what do you think about Halo the series? I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> Doggy thumbs. Uh, yeah, yeah it's um. Uh, dog water is more accurate, mm. but wow! So it's yeah. good. Well, you think it's good. Dog water <laughs> is. But you're alone, right? <laughs> no, um, an island. the I show. Water. The show is hard for me to watch, and when I say it's hard for me to watch, I mean I didn't finish it because it just it's it triggers one of those things in me where I can't really just sit and enjoy it. Uh, like either from like oh this is good or from an ah, look at how bad this is i don't i don't necessarily enjoy it from a making fun of it perspective like i do with like the room or uh, samurai cop it's just uh it triggers that inner review of me where every 30 seconds i pause it and i'm just like well wait a minute that doesn't make any fucking sense what what are these characters doing? Why did they say that? So uh, it it's hard to watch. It's it, like it's that bad for me. Here, here, yeah, here, here. Well, you you are not alone because I I hate this show. I I really hate it. Um, I was doing the same thing pretty consistently across all episodes. I'm like, what? Why would he say that? What's that character doing there? Why would they do it this way? Like, yeah, it's exactly. just nonstop. I'm glad that you said that because a lot of the discussion about this show sort of centers on its quality as an adaptation. Um, it'll I talk about. We start with this, yeah. Well, yeah, I, 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 I did. Yeah, it's it's worth, uh, I guess, laying it out because here on EFAP we have uh, some of a contentious perspective on, uh, I guess, adaptation when it comes to how we factor it into discussions about a story's quality. Um, I'm not sure if everybody agrees here, but uh, uh, essentially, um, I have the perspective that an adaptation, in terms of its quality, it's like how closely it mirrors the source material is like actually irrelevant. Um, you you have to like be able to assess it as its own thing, like almost as if you pretended that the uh, like the games or the books or whatever it's based on doesn't uh, exist. Oh, history. The, the reason is essentially because that's going to be the experience for someone. There'll be somebody out there, probably not many people, who watched Halo and it was like their first introduction to the series. Like there, there's people, Fringy, there's got to be people statistically who watched this show and said, wow, this is shit. I will never play the games. Yeah, exactly. It's going to have happened. So, um, and so. It's, uh, I guess it's worth clarifying that because, yeah, I've noticed that a lot of the discussion about the show is about all of the changes that it makes to the source material, like how much it deviates. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I totally understand how that feels because I Absolutely. really like Halo. I really this like Halo. probably been the closest that I've gotten to like that point for me in a mm -hmm. show when it deviates from the source material and I... And I'm just noticing all the things that they've changed. And it's it, it's never bothered me more than this show bothers me in an adaptation regard. I yes, I, I agree. would agree. Because um, yep. this one was particularly 
annoying. I think the reason why it was annoying is because, kind of like Rag said, you get the distinct impression while watching this show that it's it, it's a it's it's one of like a couple of possibilities. The, the the one that seems most likely in my mind is they looked at the games and they were like, yeah, but this is like a stupid video game. Like, this is a dumb video game. It's not like our intelligent show. Like, this is a stupid game where you go fight aliens and you play as like a robot. Like, that's that's not really interesting at all. Unlike our television show. You really get that impression. Yeah, of- we, we are very smart, intelligent writers and we have degrees in literature and we we, we know what plot and character and themes are. And we are artists. Yeah, and we aren't like those stinky game. video games yeah. that boys play, where they shoot aliens. We're not like them. We're gonna show. We're gonna take their thing, and we're gonna show them what true artistry is. And so the consequence yeah. of that is, as you're watching the show, and if you like Halo, it's pretty painful. Um, just how many ways that they ignore or actively fly in the face of material that was already there, which the reality is, if you're watching the show, you probably like that. And so, of course, it's like the conversation around the show is going to be sort of mired in in that. And that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. Like, you can talk about adaptation. I think that it's relevant. Yeah. And I think in this case, it is relevant, you know, because it's like, you've got a big established series. People, you know, people come in expecting one thing. And then, in a sense, you're you're kind of like, bamboozled um because episode one kind of presents an idea of the show that you're going to get that i think they recognized that they needed to to get people to come in i think that if people had a clearer understanding a little bit a little bit because chief they they front load a lot of the quote-unquote halo stuff into that first episode in terms of this feel like the I don't think it ever felt like Halo, even at the beginning, but it felt the most like Halo at the beginning, partially because they hadn't destroyed that vibe yet, but then it just disappears quickly. Well, the clearest example to me is that all of the trailers show Chief fully bedecked in armor with his helmet on always, because they knew that that's what people expected. Um, And then it was like a couple of days before it came out, they're like, who's going to take his helmet off? Because they knew... The reality was that what they had shown in the trailers gives a different impression of what you were going to get. Yeah. Can I um, say something on the on the adaptation angle? Yeah. No. Sure. Go for it. Okay. Um, who here would rather be watching the current show or watching a retelling of the first game? I would. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd oh, watch first, first game easily. Uh, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, when you're definitely. making an adaptation, I feel like you should be adding something new to it. And if you're not going to add something new that's quality, then just stick to what's safe and what works. And what's safe and what works is is too crazy. The games work. Their stories worked. You could have just kind of stuck to that playbook and then built stuff around it. Like I had the idea of like making faux hammer an actual character because their face is never revealed ever. She's killed off in the first game. Spoiler alert for people. kidding what yeah i, I know, know. Crazy. <laughs> yeah but like you know that's something when you look at the first game you're like okay let's say we base our story around this what kind of extra context can we add to it maybe some flashback scenes that didn't happen in the original game maybe we make faux hammer and sergeant johnson have some kind of like because sergeant johnson was only like a half character in the game in the first one because he'd get killed off in the second mission or whatever and then you'd see him again in the third but yeah, I just think when you're making an adaptation, uh, especially for something that already has a very broad audience, um, either stick with what works or make damn sure what you're making is good. Yeah, because well, so, what, you, what you're highlighting yeah. is um, someone in chat actually said inconsistency should not be in- excused just because it's a different medium. Like, well, that's just the thing. By being in a different medium flash adaptation... They're not inconsistencies. And what Ackman just highlighted is you can actually bring in stuff that may not have been in the originals, that may even go against something that was established in the originals, but if it's handled with care and you understand why you're putting it in and why it's important, it can end up being incredibly great. Um, When you make a TV show compared to a game, there's obviously just going to be different challenges for uh, crafting the the pacing of storytelling. Because gaming is different than a TV show and different than a movie, different than a book. they, They all come with different challenges. So... What we're looking for, obviously, is like, okay, 
You guys don't have to make it one-to-one. -one. Let's see what you did do. And you start to recognize, oh man, this is like 100% accurate in look to so many things from the game. But why isn't the writing? <laughs> it's like, yeah. Hmm. Well, well, it's, it's, um, because this is in a different continuity, like explicitly and obviously, because there's, there's so much that's different. This yeah. is like virtually not Halo timeline. in any meaningful way well, whatsoever. Well, yeah, and we so, should highlight the silver timeline thing, right? That's what. Uh, yeah, so the gold timeline is the games and like the extended lore and like the books and stuff, but the silver timeline is the show and it's going to go off in its own direction because they clearly didn't want to like fit it in or slot it in at all, which that's fine, right? You can do that. And I guess to almost touch on more of like uh, what you mentioned, Ackman, is like, yeah, you you got a lot of opportunities to directly adapt certain stories from the Halo like series because it's so expansive. You could adapt Reach. You could have it be like half and half. The first part of like season one is Reach and then the second part is Halo. You could just not even have Master Chief in it and then have like an ODST character, like a a Covenant character, like a POV character, a civilian character, and have their stories running, or it could be like Sergeant Johnson. You've got a lot of options. Whether or not you should do those things, it's always like, I would say it's like, well, you, you can, and it probably would be ideal, because I think, like, that's just what more people are going to be interested in. Nah, but you can essentially... The fellas, oh, they would have to actually look at the games. That's... That's that's true. You would have to play the games. Yeah, and then you have to like, reincorporate what Rag said. Is that I'm surely, pretty sure they consider themselves above the games. For sure. Yeah. They surely they played the games, though. Why would you not play the game? That's madness. Well, <laughs> so... Yeah, I'm madness sure they, seems to be key they, here. I mean, they pulled the weapons from the games, and they have, like, the elites and grunts and stuff, and they all look like they're doing the... Well, you know, the, for the, you know, for the most part. For the most part, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it, it's... So it's it's probably worth... Yeah, so this game, this show does pull things from the games. Like, it tries to pull some things from the games. Uh, unfortunately, I would say that this show uh, falls into the very easy pitfall of only taking parts from the source material. The problem yep. when you take parts and you don't understand why, in their totality, these choices were made, you often just will stumble into problems in your own story. Um, the clearest example of this in this show is uh, the changes that they make to, like, humanity and their connection to the Forerunners and, like, Reclaimers. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that's, like, the clearest example of this show taking a part of the game, changing it for their own story, but not realizing what they did. Yeah, um, it's like trying to pull a part out of a car and put it in your car. Yes. And you're like, oh, this doesn't, like, <laughs> it I... Doesn't how come this doesn't but it's a carburetor why why can't i just i can't just stick it in my car i was like no no no, no. It, that no. that's not how it works you have and, and thought it. all the best adaptations that do contradict or go against or provide a completely different product almost to the original usually uh do have their own sort of foundations and then they build up with their own logic for how their their own payoffs happen to the point where somebody dies in Halo 1 and then they don't die in the exact same scenario in this, but they built it up completely differently and so you can have it be justified. Game of Thrones was doing this a lot as a show. It was like, that didn't happen in A Song of Ice and Fire. And it's like, yeah, but if you think about how they've removed this character, they put them here, this person is in charge of that, that kind of now makes more sense with what they've gathered. And they had much less characters, much less time. And so there's different things you have to do. Of course, it's funny to reference Game of Thrones with how much that went to fucking shit when they ran out of source material to be able to use as well as many other reasons, but yeah, like the, the scenario being so much potential, but it is difficult if you're going to ignore grand context within the thing you're adapting. If you're just like, fuck it, and I just so want to grab this. That sort of leads to a place where I guess this show could have been what it was trying to be which is a very different thing from Halo. And on its own terms, it could have been great, but it's not. Like, not not only do I think... Because uh, cause that's that's where I'm at with this show. I guess this will be my, like, what I think. I think this show sucks on its own terms. I think that yeah. it's just an incredibly poorly yeah, written yeah. science fiction show. Yeah. It just adds insult to injury that it's a completely sort of contemptuous adaptation of Halo. Well, some people Contemptuous are, uh, is the word that is it seems accurate like the halo never i don't think ever before and of course i haven't seen everything but never before have i seen a 
product that seemed to treat what it was pulling from as just brand utility. Mm -hmm. um, the people who made this show do not give a fuck about Halo. You see what's on screen Past, right now, by the way. We can use this. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Yeah. Oh, uh, let me click on it. I got funny. my... Uh, <laughs> not the best VFX example. <laughs> wow. But the, uh, what I'm wanted. trying to point out is the uh, the crosshair. It's like that's not. Uh, oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not aiming where he's aiming. Yeah, but it, it is what, a little. <laughs> looks a little awkward <laughs> there, but that's fine. So it's very frustrating, right, for fans of the games because, like, it seems that the television showrunners thought that because they are video games. There is no quality story or cinematic um, content to extract and kind of transfer over to the show. So we'll just do our own thing because television is a different medium and we understand television and all this bullshit. But the fact is that there actually is a lot of great story and cinematic material in the Halo games. Like I think the, really the, is, yeah. the first Halo game, if you were just to watch that as a string of cutscenes and maybe like make scenes out of all like the gameplay sequences and just make like a movie out of it it's a pretty solid straightforward action sci-fi yeah kind of almost like a, a b movie kind of silly but still like actually has something to say um it's silly it's, until the good flood stuff. show up and then it's like you get side you get uh what's the big phrase? hill time yeah, you get uh, like smashed by a truck in the face, or what's the word right. I'm looking for? I, I'm I love that you brought that up, back man, because that's such a great beat in that uh, game. It's like a it's an authentic like horror movie beat, you know, where he like like uh, I almost said Halo <laughs> Master <laughs> Chief missing. <laughs> Go <laughs> find them. Oh, they were in the swamp. Oh, where are they? You're looking for them, and you can't find them. What's this? A helmet? Oh my goodness! Yes, like it, it kind of it builds itself up. Not too slowly and not too quick. It's like, oh, we're going to... You've been fighting all these aliens. We're going to throw in this little extra thing that's definitely different. We're going to shake things up. Yeah, there's a genuine sense of mystery. Master Chief gets to the bottom of this facility, finds the helmet, and then you get this kind of creepy, elongated beat where he's going through like the recordings of like the guy's last moments before Jenkins. the flood attack. Jenkins. Watch and your you're mouth, just like, son. Yeah, it's like, oh, shit, what's history. down here? And then the reveal of the flood is really cool, and then you have to fight your way out. And Halo like the... 1 is filled with lots of growth. Halo 1 is awesome. Like, that game is super tight. Mm -hmm. Like, in terms of its campaign, it's really strong, and a lot of it is just um logical progression of events and these really fun twists that are, like, super interesting because it's not even just the flood. The big twist of the game is, yeah, Halo's a weapon. Uh, it kills you, though. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the big reveal. You think that it's going to help you win the war, and then you realize, oh, like, damn, like it, it, it's it's what a great idea to have like the big super weapon of the series be a thing that kills like humans and Covenant and everybody. Like it, it's not something you can ever use really. Um, and then it's like, well, now Master Chief has to find a way to basically deal with both threats simultaneously. It's like, yeah, it's it's got a really good structure in terms of um leading that's it's it's kind of the reason why like halo one is ripe you could do a whole season of like an extended campaign on halo yep. um oh, it's, yeah. it's a really like easy yeah you there's could, a lot you going even on have it be that each episode is the core mission right so like episode one pillar of autumn episode two is on halo then episode three is like truth and reconciliation you could go through it in that order and i guess that's like that's kind of the when i watch the show and and it it just like ignores a lot of material that uh is pretty ripe. It's just annoying, you know? Like it's a little yeah. bit annoying. Yeah. I think it would still be important even if like let's say they um they did try to retell the first game or even the other games eventually. I think it's still important that they find ways to surprise people that have already played those games and know yeah. those stories very well. Um mm -hmm. Not exactly sure how I would have gone about surprising people, but um, yeah, yeah, I think that's still important. I imagine that you would have, because if you're doing a show that's, you you don't, if if you're going to adapt it and you aren't going to make changes, you could just have a change in circumstances that could be like surprises for people, 
you could have it be that uh, i don't know like that the, the the show starts off like a lot earlier in the timeline and then it will progress over the course of like years throughout the seasons until it leads all the way up to like the end i guess that would be more like if you had the whole thing mapped out from the beginning you knew you were gonna get like five or six seasons I feel like you've got a lot of options to keep suspense, and that might just be introducing new characters, but still having some characters who are the same, which they kind of yeah. do here, but it's so different that it doesn't really matter. Like, it's a totally different story. I have no idea what's yeah, going to happen. Just, I know this, I know that name, but you're just not the character, and you're not where we know that character to be, and you're not anything like this character in terms of role or personality. You just wanted to use their name. You just wanted to say, Keys. You just wanted to say Halsey. That that's it. That's all that there is to it. Well, because yeah, those characters are essentially like at the whims of um of whatever the story needs. Which I guess this might be a good segue into the characters of this show and what we all think of them. Perhaps starting with oh boy. the main character himself, John Halo. John Halo, the, the Maester Chief, the robot John um, Halo. The, yes, the well, as we find out, no, he's not a robot. He's a human. <laughs> he's super. He's oh my super god! Human. Where do we or even? Is he? Maybe he is. Yeah. Where do you even start? Would you just like? When did everybody realize? Oh god, this isn't. This isn't him. <laughs> like Very when was that moment quickly. for you? He took the helmet off. Yeah, yeah, when he took the helmet off. I tell it, for me, it was when he started fun. sighing. I'm like, this is weird. That immediately <laughs> threw me off. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> like sitting in the ship with the artifact. He's just like. <sighs> Like, you're supposed to be, like, composed all the time. Like, I feel like that's a consistent trait well, with Master Chief in the games, you know what I mean? I guess it would be, uh, th this might be worth laying out as sort of almost like uh, the backstory, I guess, to point out the differences between the game and the show so that we understand where the show's at. So in the games and the books, now correct me if I'm wrong, but basically the Spartan program, it, it plays out, um... Master Chief is essentially like the most competent Spartan that came out of it. And the conditioning and the training that he went through essentially turned him into the character that we know who doesn't speak a lot. It's very calm and like oriented around achieving his objectives. Still compassionate for people though, which I know that the show, I, I imagine the show actually doesn't believe that to be the case in the games. Like he's basically a pretty reliable hero who will do the thing to save the day. Um, in this the, show, the important thing to oh, yeah. know about Master Chief and the thing that 343 has kind of been fucking up with ever since they got the series is that Master Chief works better as a piece of a larger story, not the main focus of it himself. I because agree. If you look at Halo 2, I'm pretty sure there's like Master Chief has f like 14 or 15 lines of dialogue in Halo 2. Like, that's it. He don't talk a lot. He's, he um, he's much, much more at all. Oh, God, I he's more... wish he wouldn't talk so much. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, well, I do too. He's very but... chatty in the show. This John Hayes yeah. is very, but that's very because chatty. they base the whole show around him, as opposed to like he's kind of our view into this larger conflict. Well, that's, um, yeah. So, because that's the way that it works in the games is essentially he's a blank. He's he's basically a blank slate. He does have traits, but they're very like standard sort of hero traits. He saves people. He's composed, and he he goes and fights super competent. But he's very much jacks like, him you know, off, you know. Yeah, he's he's essentially just our vehicle, and and so a lot of the drama and the development stems from other characters like Cortana and Arbiter and 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 Keys and Johnson. Um, now you you can have him be more of an active participant in the story for sure, um, but I would imagine that it might have informed their perspective on this is that you couldn't have had him be the way that he is in the game. You have to make these changes to make him character that is more involved in the story i disagree um but i guess i guess it's um the the change the changes that they make to his backstory in this show like the big change is that he has his memories removed of his childhood uh so he doesn't know about the nature of the spartan program and he has an emotional suppressing pellet in his <laughs> spine and all of the spartans do and so when he removes that he becomes a very different person, and I guess I might float this question by everybody. Given that he essentially has the same training, military training, is it not a little bit odd that as soon as he removes the pellet, he becomes a highly emotional, pretty erratic and unreliable soldier? It is 
I, I think it's a it's a good time, I suppose, to state the difference between what the show wanted to be and what the games presented him as. Maybe, sure. maybe that's a that's a good place to sort of begin. Why? Also, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you explain what, that? All right. So in the games, Master Chief does have a personality. He is not a complete blank slate. He is generally as a way for the character to interact with the world in a sense. That's the player character. But the Master Chief does have a bit of a personality. He does until, care about the people. Are, until Halo yeah. 4, he would never speak during gameplay. So no, he didn't. He yeah, Halo talk. 4 was very strange because he turns very a lot more chatty in that one all of a sudden. Uh, he is he doesn't speak often. He is a man of action. He is paying attention to everything that's happening around them. If every once in a while, if he needs to ask a question, he will do that. He will explain himself when he's asked things. Um, he's not purely passive by any stretch of the imagination. He's just not a chatty person. He is very much a, a doer, uh, not a talker, but he's very observant. Uh, he will, he, he cares about the Marines around him. He cares about the well-being of humanity. He will reassure the, the the friendlies that are with him, whether it's patting them on the shoulder or he he knows that he is an inspiration. You, you get the feeling he knows that he is an inspirational figure. Uh, he is aware of this. He is not an idiot. Uh, he is not aloof. Um, he is observant. And there is a lot to work with in terms of using that as a character for a show. He doesn't have to be necessarily the only protagonist that would that might not work well in terms of a tv show um you could have him with someone else someone either a, a marine buddy or a maybe like or uh arby or and the chief what? exactly <laughs> yes um well, and we'll I get mean... in we'll get into the horrific odd lack of covenant in this halo show later yeah. but yeah. there there's plenty of room to take master chief as he is in the games uh, and have him be in the show to a very high degree as a doer and who can who has someone to interact with, not talking all the time and pouring out his feelings all the time and losing track of his emotions and well, not being so. able to handle things. What I wanted to highlight there is that a, a lot of talking about who Master Chief is in the show just is like, oh, he's not the same person, which he, he isn't the same he's person. He's not the same person. It's more a question of... Does it even make sense, given his backstory in this series, that he is the person that he he is in this show? Yeah, because th this is uh for for me, right? Like, because again, doesn't have to be the one from the game. But uh, to to go more specifically to the question it you had originally, uh, uh, Fringy, with the the what should happen? What should we see happen if he removes an emotional inhibitor? And uh, this has been done in all kinds of media, loads of examples, be it technology or like, uh, ke like a chemical substance that was in there, or even mechanical for whatever kind of thing we're talking about, that something's removed in a robot that allows them to feel again. Also, I'm literally thinking about Futurama. There's a fucking episode yeah. where Ben gets his indoctrination. Emotions. Indoctrination is not a pill. I'm sorry. So, well, so... um. <laughs> what what are we what have we got? It's like a guy who went through all of the the military training that should lead to personality X, but he was also given an emotional inhibitor, which has led him to be almost robotic. But then he gets the inhibitor removed, and it's like an explosion of now. a switch is flicked. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't like... feel like we got the military man anymore at all, and um, it it almost like overshadows any of that history. And they show us plenty of flashbacks of different things to imply a lot of that history. Um, and then you look at like. I forget his name, but um, you know his friend who left early on. Did 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 he mention anything about his chip? Did he take it out? Uh, I think he must have. I remember he mentioned yeah. that his memories come back to him at some point. He he mentioned that it took a while, but they came back. This is a little. Bit I don't of think a... he mentions the chip, but he just sort of. Well, I, I guess we are no, led to us. He does. He does? Okay, he okay, okay. He says and, it because he's talking about how like fruit tastes delicious when you don't have the chip or something. It it's was, important that to make a good soldier, you remove their sense of taste. The taste, very, yeah, very, which is very. Hey, strange. that's what happened to the writers. They also have no sense of taste. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> it's, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, because what I find interesting then is that like they make a big deal out of where it is and what it is, and Cortana, like the most advanced AI in history, is helping him specifically remove it. But two other characters just got rid of it casually. A thing that is designed to prevent you from. Having emotions override any particular decision you're making, which sounds like it's like so that's got to yeah. be well integrated, right? 
Um, that's another problem with this. It's like he just pops it out with a fucking knife. It's like, oh, yeah. right yeah, there. Yeah, you just you just do it in the bathroom, just like you're flossing your teeth. And then, because well, I still remember that part quite well, where it's just like he's seeing like uh, something musical happening, and he's like, "My God, this is incredible!" Like I am appreciating yeah, dude, going down an dumbest, escalator. It that feels, was the dumbest shit. I was yeah. like, "Why is Master Chief at a fucking orchestra concert? What is this?" He's experiencing the beauty like, of life. Well, yeah, that's what they were clearly no. going for: was that he has yeah. been he's been awoken now. He's no longer a <laughs> robot, and, and and it's just like, damn. Does it, so? What was his personality before he yeah, got the emotional hard. inhibitor? Was it just like yeah. a big old party guy? I'm, su I'm surprised they didn't have a scene of him like you know in a flower of or in a garden of flowers, and then he steps down and picks a flower up and is like, wow. <laughs> Sniffs it. This is so beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's it turns into a 1920s <laughs> cartoon. Here all the flowers are dancing. and It's worth thinking about that him removing the pellet is not going to remove his memories of all of the stuff that he's had to do as a soldier for decades. You know? Like, that should be informing his history. Well, but it's like, it gets ignored completely. <laughs> If we can do yeah, a, that escalator shot. <laughs> I know, right? If we can do an easy to understand comparison from a series that, to be fair, hasn't even handled this character that well lately, um, Bucky in the MCU, mm -hmm. when he gets his yeah. conditioning removed, he doesn't become like the chill guy from Captain America One before he went to war. Like, no, no, you have to work all the all stuff he's feelings. been through is still there, and you can see well, that. Chief has I to think... work through like his history and all of the battles he's had to fight in and like just come to grips with, I guess, the grand nature of this this war that it seems like he's been an active participant in but hasn't really thought much about. Um, it, it, but, but we jump past all that because they're not interested in looking at that. They want to jump to what I think is essentially the theme of this show. Um, like, and so, and so they ignore that this character in this universe would have a history that frankly would make him a different person than what is presented in this show. Yeah, and then we yeah, get to... The, um, there's the difference here between in, in the show, Master Chief is a character who is stoic because that is his personality. He is not a, he's not a big game. talker that's... Yeah, 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 you're right. I'm sorry. Um, in the game, Master Chief is... He, he's stoic by nature. That's his personality. That is who he has grown to become by the nature of what he has been raised to do and his life and where it has taken him and what he does for a living, essentially, he has become the way he has become naturally. Um, and it makes a lot of sense that he would be that way. He processes this just fine. He doesn't have this crazy internal conflict in his mind about, ooh, but who am I? and Anything like that. That's who he is. And it makes sense that he has that personality. Whereas in the show, it's just, oh, he has a chip inside of him Always thought it was low, weird that it was um, uh, at the very bottom of the spine, way down there. When it's like an emotion, you think it'd be closer to the brain. Well, how else are they, are they going to throw in a scene of him naked? You know, show off that ass. <laughs> He's naked more than once. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, that's how I remember Master Chief is uh, butt ass naked and having conversations well, with people. Well, so essentially, I guess what I'm trying to highlight here is I consider this to be like a flaw within the show itself, that you have the Spartan program that is presented as being largely similar to what it was um, in the games. It's a program that is trying to create super soldiers from a very young age, um, conditioning, getting them to a place where they're going to be like your most competent soldiers. But the, the show seems to believe that like all of that training doesn't really amount to anything mentally. It's like the chip. This and removing a, the memories of the childhood that would create these people. It's precisely um, what so you like, um, described. Yeah. You, they they took a big box, but they left some components behind um, from from the source. And the the, the confusions now come in. At um, they try to almost argue, especially with Kai. It's like this is just a normal girl. She's a normal girl. And what was preventing that was the in emotional inhibitor. It's like, oh, that's not at all what I expected for these lads. Like with everything they've been through and trained up to be, from what this show's told and me. Exactly. At this point, they have a history that would have turned them into a, a type of person. Not to say that removing the emotional inhibitor wouldn't have consequences for yeah, them. Yeah, of course. Um, well, the idea of an emotional inhibitor is just dumb to begin with. Um, I, I so this is the thing. I, I'm kind of like I agree and disagree, and 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 this is kind of like I'm already so in the same boat. Yeah. If you have, so I agree in the sense that an emotional inhibitor would be not necessary given what the Spartan program is, 
given what that program is and how it's designed, you would have naturally stoic, reserved, like duty bound, um, you know, uh, like they're trained to be that, yeah. Yeah, you would be trained to be that way. You wouldn't need an emotional inhibitor. That's kind of the nature of having such a rigorous program, an obviously unethical program, is that that's the end consequence. You don't need the inhibitor. <laughs> However, if you have these emotional inhibitors in this show, and they are essentially demonstrated to make you hyper-competent mil in terms of military, you never like deviate from objectives, you're really calm, you don't make mistakes, essentially. Why aren't these given to everyone? Why why don't all the Marines have these so that they can switch it on and off in battle and then get in the zone and be like able to competently fight the Covenant? Why aren't they available to everybody? I'm trying to like get it, an image of the fucking inhibitor while avoiding question. images of his ass. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah, the best part. It, it seems like, it seems really lazy almost uh, that, oh, he's this way because they put a chip in him. Well, like, the oh, reason, oh. well, so this is the thing. The show has a perspective. The show's perspective is that what makes you a Spartan is the emotional inhibitor in your back. Um, yeah. Like, and, and that that is, that is bad, right? So the show is making a statement, which is that, like, this is bad. Um, it removes a, you know, like an intrinsic aspect of you as a person that is, uh, like, valuable on a sort of cosmic scale. Um, problem yeah. is that Chief makes a lot of decisions throughout this show that because he didn't have the inhibitor cause a lot of negative consequences for people around him um, that get people killed, that nearly jeopardizes the entire fate of humanity. So like the statement that you're trying to make kind of contradicts the consequences <laughs> of Chief's actions. Are you still laughing about the butt? <laughs> no, I, I'm laughing because... With... No, because what you're saying is really funny. Because they they make such a big point of like him removing his inhibitor chip or whatever, but it's actually it just makes him a shittier person. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I assume that's what part of what what uh, what Fringy was leading to a little bit there was like um, without these inhibitors, they become categorically worse at their fucking jobs. Well, Kai uh, nearly dies because she can't. She can't PTSD. Fight. Like she she gets PTSD well, from I'll, that. Yeah. What Kai does is. Not nearly as bad as what Master Chief does, where because he took that inhibitor out, he is able to be easily, easily, easily manipulated, manipulated by yeah. a Covenant spy. Oh, I thought you were uh, going to go which... with the fact that he gave up the whole mission to protect the. Oh, like there's so many Mahler, I can't keep them straight. Well, in yeah, my head. because <laughs> he makes a, he makes a lot of decisions um, that are just like the wrong decision. If 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 if, if Chief's objectives are to save as many lives as possible. He makes a lot of choices that fly in the face of that goal. Um, and so you're kind of left to wonder. It's like, what are you trying to tell me? Because, like, Chief has just become a lot less reliable uh, in a way that's been detrimental to the lives of other people. Because the clearest example of this is, like, yeah, he, he abandons the mission to try and save Kai, not recognizing that if the Covenant get the Keystone, they're one step closer to killing everybody, including Kai. Exactly. Um... um and and uh, this as to Rags's point, the um the, the fucking the Covenant Matthew. spy, like yeah, if he had his inhibitor up, I guess he would have been able to res resist her incredible advances. He's like, by the way, no. she tried so hard. <laughs> like, unfortunately, I reject the pleasures of the flesh. The glory of battle is eternal. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. well, unfortunately, you know, I guess Master Chief, Matthew. did you take out your horny pill? He did. Well, I like how nobody even asked that. Like, Halsey knows, but Parangoski doesn't know. Keys and doesn't there know. And there are red like, flags yeah. everywhere. All, all over the place. Well, I mean, I mean, I feel like the biggest one is he tried to kill Halsey, like, twice. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he totally did yeah. the second time. The show likes to pretend that didn't happen, though. Well, yeah, because which is and, why and, you use that as the, uh, the picture for the thumbnail. It's such a... It illustrates so perfectly everything that's wrong with the show, I think. It's quite well, it's, poetic. It's, um, I, I guess, um, this, I, um, I don't know, this might be a more, this kind of leads into theme a bit, but I flat out think that it is a more boring choice to have Master Chief have his memories of his childhood removed and the emotional inhibitor in his chip and then when he finds out the nature of the Spartan program, he's vehemently opposed to it. I find that that is a much shallower idea than having Chief be fully aware of what happened to him, 
He knows that he was abducted as a child and put into a rigorous program and that a lot of his peers died in the process of augmentation. And 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 then he he knows that. He doesn't have any like emotional suppressor thing in his back. He's become this person and he accepts what's happened to him as an overall good thing in the pursuit of a broader objective of saving humanity. I think that that's a lot more interesting thematically than what they chose to do in this show. Yeah. Especially considering how much of Halo 3's, not just in the game itself, but particularly marketing-wise, how it was very hopeful and inspiring uh, that, you know, this is the end of a trilogy. This is the, the, the Master Chief has become this icon of... Uh, of hope of our willingness to you know fight and survive and they had all this stuff that they could have pulled from that Bungie was very very specific to make a part of their games which i guess you wouldn't know if you didn't give a shit about the games this stuff exists it's not like you had to the the, the need to completely strip all that away from uh the show or maybe it's not even stripping it away. They didn't even know it existed to put it in the show. You know, um, you get I don't that think vibe. they identified it as a potent thing. And the reason, because these are the reasons why I think that it's a more potent way to do it. It's interesting to think about if you have Master Chief and you're like, so you know what the Spartan 2 program was? And he says, yeah, but um, this is better for the overall, you know, humanity. It's interesting to think about, well, so he's cool with it, but I'm not. You know, because because it's such an unethical like program, um, he has this perspective. That's probably the most important part. But how much is it his perspective? How much is it just the consequence of him going through the training? Is this what John, like John, the the person, would feel? But does that even matter now if this is who he is and this is who he's become? And then, of course, you get into the discussion of like the concept of greater good. And um and and a hugely important aspect of that would be well how do the people who were robbed of their lives how do they feel about it like I think that there's a lot more interesting questions that you could uh, derive from that concept and I think what they presented here is much simpler and the reason why it's simpler is because it is in service of a perspective that they hold um which is that like that 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 what the Spartan program essentially like limits or removes from people is something that is uh like innately valuable and ought not be uh gotten rid of which is a perspective that you can have it gets a little complicated though when the 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 context of this story is an existential threat to humanity that will spell the end of all humans um when it's you like have the a doctor strange thing where they they refuse to entertain the idea that maybe someone dying to save the multiverse is all right they totally do it in their own movie, so that's why it's super dumb when, like the the the, the prime example just being when when Alt Wander is getting attacked and Doc Strange's like, yeah, that's fine, don't worry about it, we've almost won. <laughs> it's just like, wait, isn't the whole point that you're not supposed to? Okay. Um, I I guess does what is what do people think about? Uh, I guess that as like a choice with our chief in this show versus in the game. I think you made a lot of great points, dude. I mean, this is what this is why I like Halo broadly as a franchise. I respect its themes. And what are the themes of Halo, right? To to me it's like uh a, a Pandora's box story. Like don't be at least take caution when you're meddling with things that are beyond your comprehension. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, there's also the cost of humanity in trying to win an existential war, both on the collective level and the level of the individual right mm -hmm. and so like is it worth is it right to rob chief of all his humanity in order to make him a, an efficient killing machine that might actually see humanity through this war and defeating the covenant mm. but but what is the right thing for like the covenant to win or humanity to win and like this is why I, there's like damn the, why didn't you write the show <laughs> In the finale, there's like uh, the the whole thing with Cortana completely yeah. overwriting uh, Chief, right? The execution of that is terrible, but mm -hmm. I actually like the thematic question that it poses, right? It's like, mm. what is Chief now? He's extremely efficient at killing aliens now, like to the to like a robot level of efficiency where he can just calculate the trajectory and and movements of every alien around him and just kill them basically instantly. That's like pretty much what happens in that last fight scene. 
And is that the right thing so they can win? Or is that the wrong thing because an individual has been completely robbed of everything that makes him him? I like, I like those questions. I just didn't like the execution. Oh, yeah. I, I would say that I like that question as well. But yeah, I agree. Not, well, I guess this is what I would say. I would not only agree that the execution is flawed, but I also think that the show kind of needs to put up a compelling counter argument. Um, yes. But I think the mm -hmm. show has the perspective that like, the, and this, this is kind of funny to me because the show has the perspective that Halsey is evil, which is obviously different from the games. The games are more like Halsey's complicated. Um, yeah. Yeah. Halsey's That's a great evil. point. Yeah. Well, she's, she's a bad bitch, dude. She's an outright like, villain yeah. in this show. <laughs> well, she's the so, villain, yeah. The the thing about Halsey, and then I think we should hear from ER because I want to hear more of his perspective mm -hmm. after this. But mm -hmm. but Halsey, this is one of my main problems. She doesn't feel like she does in the games, and in the games, especially in Reach, she's like she gives the impression, okay, yeah, this is a woman who could totally control a bunch of super big badass fucking beefy guys and dudes, right? She's like, mm -hmm. are you a puppet or a Spartan? You know, she's she's like putting them in their place. While she's behind a glass wall hiding, but she's just like she's just an older woman. But you get this like motherly vibe from her, where it's like, like she will lay down the fucking law, and they will all follow it. You know what I mean? Right. right. And I don't you get, get a that sense impression. That you can respect her in the in the games. She has this efficiency and pragmatism and sternness to her that's backed up by someone who is intelligent. Here's something that's important to consider. I replayed Reach yesterday. And um, the final line of Reach, uh, the final scene, is Halsey basically exalting Noble Six um, for, like, his sacrifice. And she actually is sad that he didn't get to live to see humanity win. Because uh, in Halsey cares about the Spartans. They're not just, um, like, you don't tools. Get, even yeah, you don't get tools. that Im impression in the show. They mainly oh, save that ooh. for her feelings for her, her daughter. And that's about it. But here's, here's the awkward part, though. I don't, so in the games, the Spartan program, or I guess in the books, the Spartan program was not created to stop the Covenant. The, the Spartan program was created to quell insurgencies. Um, it just so happened that the Covenant attacked when the program was completing. And so that just became the heel turn. And it's something that's kind of acknowledged as like, well, nobody really cares about the Spartan program anymore, like what it was and how unethical it was because it achieved this goal, even though it wasn't the goal intended. So like in the show though, I don't know if the Spartan program was created to quell insurgencies or if it was created to stop the Covenant. Because if it was created to stop the Covenant, it's like, huh. Like, the Spartan program in the original law is like a, a hell of a lot more unethical in and of itself as a program. Um, but we, we don't know in the show, though. Like, it's unclear. Um... And, and so it's, like, a little bit more awkward to make Halsey more evil when, like, the context that it arose in is much more ambiguous and mm -hmm. maybe even be the context of stopping the Covenant. Um, I, I have no idea, though. I don't know. I think like, it's yeah. implied in the first episode that he was made to go after insurgents, though, such okay. as Kwan Ha's Ma, who Th he there just that, killed. Yeah. That's true. Um, I guess I guess it's hard, it's hard to, to tell because the Covenant are there too. So well, and they don't believe the Covenant exists as well, remember? So, yeah, we, uh, yeah we're we just, were confused for a while. Mind. I well, thought it was I mean, UNSC propaganda. <laughs> that, yeah, that was yeah. That's dumb. <laughs> That's dumb. There are some yeah. things. It's it's like the unbelievable. Yes, the, <laughs> the UNSC propaganda of we. There isn't actually an alien race who's destroying planets and killing untold millions of human beings. No, no, no. And there's certainly in the future is not like photographic evidence of this. No, well, no, no. It's just UNSC <laughs> propaganda. <laughs> Quan says you can doctor video. And that's... Oh, that's well, her. that takes care of that. Well, yeah. so here's, why believe anything then? <laughs> Get it to no, uh, that allow way. me to go back to my dirt farm. <laughs> There's something a little bit awkward though. She's got to believe in, her dad being skewered right in front of her. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Well, no, that was that was UNSC well. propaganda. No, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's a hologram. Yeah. It's here's like it was chief in a in a meat suit. In her yeah. episode, <laughs> around the clock with that shit. Well, in her episode, her dad's like the the insurgents. They say, "Oh, the UNSC's like spread thin. They're pulling out." It's like. Oh, 
Can you not connect the dots as to why that might be the case? Why else would they be spread thin? What else would they be dealing with if not the aliens? They don't have communication you know though with like other planets and in a network of well, anything they, beyond. They've got television, right? There's just no like, way that the Covenant animals? have been active for this long and that here's, they're not believing it. Here's the big problem, Waller. Madrigal exports a lot of material to other planets. They have a lot of material that they export to other planets. So, if multiple planets have been glassed, uh, do they not believe the people UNSC who say- UNSC propaganda, yeah, bro. Like, hey man, I mean, I, some people still believe the Earth is flat. <laughs> Yeah, but, <laughs> but not a whole planet's worth. No, this this worth. planet was always like that. It was always like that. Also, the planet being round is UNSC propaganda, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Blow Yeah>. tards. <laughs> I don't... Uh, that's a whole other problem. Um, I suppose uh, the thing with, like, Chief as well that might be worth delving into is that... um. The show seems to believe that there is something, like, the whole connection to the Forerunners that he has that's unique to him, which is, dude, you guys have no idea, like, how many problems this causes, but it seems to present that, like, that aspect alone has an effect on him that exists beyond the emotionally suppressing, uh, which I guess is worth saying, those pellets don't work, because, like, Chief gets very, he screams, what am I, while he's still got the pellet in his back. And you can be like, well, that's because he touched the keystone. But Vanek and Riz also, in like episode nine, while they still have the pellets in their back, go all like, oh, I don't know, like, oh, I don't like this. So those makes pellets you wonder, don't work. Yeah, it makes you wonder what the pellet does exactly. And it's hard to take it seriously because they pop it out like it's a tic tac under the skin. It's just like that. Yes. I don't. I, I like Chief wedges a knife into his spine. It's like, man, that seems uh, the most unsafe fucking procedure ever. <laughs> it's controlling your emotions. You'd be like, hey, whatever. If hey, I tug on this thing, I might kill myself. Yeah. We need to be fair. Cortana was sort of telling him where to stab himself. That was yeah, she, really terrible. Now, Kai, did, Kai like, didn't have this. She's just a better surgeon in general. She saw his ass uh, when he was doing it. She knew where to poke. Oh, you know, yeah. he he could have been wearing underwear in that scene. By the way, I like, wish it, 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 No, not no, no. <laughs> I wish it were recorded, but uh when me Frank You wanted to see his ass, didn't you? We're uh, watching that scene. When it cut to Kai just staring at it, I think we burst out laughing for like twenty <laughs> seconds straight. <laughs> that just... was really funny. <laughs> Yeah. So, no, why was she in there staring at him? I don't know. <laughs> because if you, as long as your Spartans hmm. have chips in their backs, you can have co-ed showers, and it saves on storage. No, I, I more so. I assume what he's talking about motivate. Like she was like, I can't wait to go see him naked, and then she sees all that happen, and she's like, Whoa, yeah, that. Oh, okay. Put him out in there. Hmm. This, you know when, like, because uh, why would she do this? She has the pellet in her back. You yeah. know. I love what that? you guys pointed out about the pellet before. Like, Rags, you were saying, uh, why isn't it closer to the brain? Which I thought the same thing. And then Actman, you said, uh, well, we need an excuse to see his ass, right? <laughs> exactly. Just, it's so funny to me that that's what came first for them in the writer's room. It's like, we got to show the audience <laughs> Chief's yeah. juicy ass. How do we do that? Well, look, okay, look, yeah. if, if one of you guys had said it's going to be in the base of his spine, I'd be like, oh, because it's intertwined with his spine. And like, and that's that's in some way a, a core area that's going to spread through the whole body in some way, like, right? And it's like, no, it's just uh -huh. there. No, it is directly <laughs> north of the cheeks. <laughs> yeah. It's not and even I guess uh, to the brain, yeah. Thing yeah, palsy. I think uh, the big oh, the big part of what I don't like about the show is this might be somewhat controversial, but <laughs> I feel like the story beats it has could have worked. The idea of John regaining a bunch of emotions and kind of being unhinged—that's something that could potentially, potentially. work. But that's ha that shit, and like yeah. even even a love story. But that shit has to be way down the line because we never got to know Chief as a master talent chief. If you're gonna do that, yes, you need <laughs> yeah, to, you know, you need to be able to illustrate the difference between the changes. How does he go through the change without everyone going, "What the fuck's wrong with you? You're <laughs> yep. turning your gun and your badge. You're out of line." Um, also, Whoa. we're gonna check you to see if your chip is still there. Oh my that, god, uh, it's clearly not. <laughs> oh, no. that, that's, a, that's a fact that's worth touching you would be on. Playing is, um... All of this off on Quan from the beginning, but she's dumped off in what, episode two? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, so there this, was that. Well, so I'm glad you brought that up. This is a bit of a tangent, but um, this show has a horrendous plot. Um, 
Well, yeah. So, yes, Chief, it does. Chief is, is Parangoski, who's like the head of Oni. She's like Admiral Parangoski. She's talking with Keys and like, when Chief, uh, I guess to lay it out for people who haven't watched the show, Chief goes on a mission to Madrigal, which is like a an outer colony planet. Uh, the colony is being attacked. I'm pretty sure that the show has absolutely no explanation for how they knew the Covenant were there, um, mm. why they were there nope. at that time, and how they came in. Uh, like, I, I'm pretty sure there's no explanation. So that's nope, that's fantastic. Um, they get into a fight. They kill all the aliens. Um, Quan, who was the son of uh, uh, the, the daughter of um, the leader of the insurgency, she's the last survivor in this little outpost. Uh, and um, like Chief goes, finds an artifact. We'll talk about that. Uh, Quan follows, she gets knocked out, uh, and they're like, all right, well, let's go back to base. I'll go with the artifact uh, and take Quan. You three in Silver Team, the rest of the Spartans will go elsewhere. And so as they're coming back, um, Miranda Keys uh, gives her a little call and is like, hey, can you like help with the war effort by saying that the Covenant did this? And Quan very rationally says, I'm going to say <sighs> that it was the UNSC, even though I just saw my dad get <laughs> impaled by an by alien. An by by an alien. Alien. Her, life, her life was only saved thanks to the UNSC. Thanks to the UNSC. Yeah. Yeah, but she just totally okay. Now, this is what we call a great start to a brand new character. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay, like, okay. The, the worst thing about Quan is her fucking haircut. I hate it. It's I don't up know there. It. It's up there. Isn't it just infuriating to look at? Yes. It is <laughs> kind of annoying. It makes me upset. In the flashback, she had normal hair, and then like, oh, and it's so much better. <laughs> yeah, this is like but she put on pro. She knew when to put on protagon uh, female protagonist hair. She's she got what the story was. She's got a mushroom with a tail. <laughs> yeah, the mullet, the mullet bowl cut <laughs> tail. Listen, in twenty five fifty two or whatever, that haircut's gonna be all the rage. We're it's so a space smart. haircut. It's like she turned up on set with it. She's like, we're sci fi, right? This is sci fi haircut. They're all like, oh, that was, yeah. <laughs> Like this, so, this, I agree. Your haircut is science fiction. It's true. <laughs> yes. After, after Quan is like, no, nah, I'm not going to help you. This is what the UNSC decide. Oh man, how much do we want to talk about this? <laughs> so the UNSC are like, okay, so we're we're going to order Master Chief to kill her. She's going to ruin everything. Now, there are many problems with this. First of all, oh. why don't you bring her back for questioning? Uh, and then maybe try and ask her. Yeah. You you like cut out. But it sounded funny. Oh. <laughs> um, so why don't you bring her in for questioning? Might be worthwhile to maybe talk to her, see if she knows anything about why the Covenant were there, what happened at the base, like any strategies they might have employed that might be useful, and of course, to try no, and... No, let's kill a child her. immediately. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, that's what they decide instead of... Yeah. And, and of course, not only... Even if they wanted to commit to this absurd decision, which they didn't need to do, because if she doesn't want to comply, you could just like lock her up for a while if you, you know... Or maybe try and convince her when she isn't as angry. You have a lot of or options. Just get you know? a fucking yeah. like someone well, to pretend they, to be Quan. They also have all the cameras from all of the Spartans that were there. Like there's just well, she, the threat of this woman too, spreading a lie is just minuscule. It's minuscule when you have four helmet it's cams. It's absurd. Yeah. Release the footage straight away because it's like, oh, this happened like today. You, well, we, uh, we don't have time to edit this footage. Hopefully, you know? they recorded this conversation too, where she's like basically threatening to use I, this as an idea. I imagine. And they the UNSC would, have. would just turn that on the rebels and say, these rebels are so ridiculous and so unable to be reasoned with that they're willing to cover up an alien yeah, attack on a human Covenant settlement just in order to make the UNSC objective. look bad. That's how. So, that's how evil they are. Because Quan yeah. is from the beginning, from episode one, she's a fucking idiot. <laughs> what we're kind of getting at here is that they made the worst decision, which would kill her en route back to Reach, Master Chief. That's the mm -hmm. decision they make. Now, of course, they believe that he will follow this order because apparently that's something that Master Chief would do in this universe. Big difference from the games. Uh, Chief would not do that. Um, which makes you, which makes you think, that. like, so they don't have a moral compass at all. They are just automatons. Well, they are robots. I, yeah, I think that the, the big thing here is that in the games, that's not something the UNSC would do. No, it's because the UNSC um, isn't. Th this show definitely wants to portray human military is bad. Yeah. Well, so the right. thing is, is that's something only might do in the in yes. the games. Yeah, yeah. And Karen Gothi is the is... head of only, but it's UNSC who make this choice. The um, Oni doesn't exist in the show, does it? Yeah, it does. Uh, I it think does? it's briefly mentioned in one episode, yeah. Admiral Parangoski is the leader of Oni. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. But I don't, I don't think they mention it often. Um, yeah, because it's, it's UNSC doing all the stuff. That would, be, so. that would be confusing if there's two, you know, governments. What? what? Uh, <laughs> we can't have two. We've got to have one on reach city on the planet reach. People who like the show can't count to two. We we can't be throwing that in. Um, You're asking so a lot, for people yeah. who don't know, Oni, Oni is basically space CIA, like they said in chat. Yeah, it's um, yeah. Um, Office of Naval Intelligence. That, uh, whereas the UNSC is like just, you know, I guess what you would perceive as like the army. Well, it's United Nations Space Command. But in any case, that's the order that they issue. Well, yeah, um, and, and if I could just, just for a second, like being someone yeah. who's just like taking this all in this episode, being like, what is our plot gonna be? And then you realize at this point in the episode, it's Chief has to decide whether or not to execute this girl who's threatening to say mean things about the UNSC. It's just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you fucking kidding yeah, me? So this is the plot. And so here's the thing, though. Chief's not going to do it because when, dude, do we want to talk about that artifact? No, we'll get to that later. He touched an artifact that kind of flumped with his memories. He's he's confused. Mm -hmm. Um, so he decides. Oh, I I wasn't prepared to because like I think it's so probably wrong with this. <laughs> I, I think the um, artifact uh, it it's very very important uh, to the show. The, sh the show, Sorry. the inciting incident. Is, yeah, go they're the MacGuffins yeah. of this show. Yeah, we're in a free form um, world. Go for it. Okay, so let's let's walk it back a little bit. The Covenant on Madrigal are digging, and they have excavated. Well, Fringy, this... uh, maybe it might be important yeah. for those who don't uh, know the Halo stuff, just as a re as a reference to compare it to. What are they in in the games, real quick, and then we could see what the what the show does with it. Or the you mean the Covenant? Oh, so the, like the, the artifacts and so. In the games, the Forerunners are uh, an ancient alien race who created the Halo Rings, like, they created the Array. They're super-duper advanced, but they are uh, lost to the Flood. So they activated the Rings, uh, wiped them out, and then, you know, 100,000 years later, humans be here doing their own stuff. Um, and, oh, this, th I know that this is contentious. Um, so what you basically learn in the games is that humans for whatever reason can interact with forerunner artifacts and they can interact with the halo ring they can fire it the covenant can't nobody in the covenant can't but um but but chief can and humans can the reason why is because prior to 343 uh humans were forerunners or at the very least descendants of forerunners um i think Which that's is why the ark is on earth it's the reason why the ark was going to be on earth that's right and why the portal is there that's right uh, and in fact, um, Guilty Spark explicitly says to Chief in Halo 3, you are Forerunner. So, yeah, that's that's basically the nature of the dynamic. However, the Covenant believe that the Forerunners are like gods, um, but the Prophets, Truth, Mercy, Regret, the leaders of the Covenant, essentially know that this is a lie. They know that humans can interact with these things. Um, and so, like, the lie propagated is humans are unworthy. We got to wipe them out. They're, 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 like, unworthy. They can't tread on these on these sacred things. And um, that's kind of the nature of the um, the conflict. So what you're looking at on screen there is uh, Chief, when he went to Madrigal, they found that the Covenants were digging up a, uh, a Forerunner site. And there's this, this weird little floating thing there. Um, Chief goes in, grabs it, and uh, it, it does this weird holographic lighting thing, but it also kind of shows flashes of a... Uh, of this boy running around and he's got a dog and he's like drawing pictures and living in his little family home, which we later realize is uh, chief's past that's locked away from him. So this artifact unlocks his memories. It does a lot of other yeah. things, um, but it unlocked his memories. And because of that, he's kind of doing things that are a little bit odd. A few moments later, after they allow this covenant guy, this elite to escape and inform the covenant yeah. <laughs> that he can touch the artifact, which is a huge critical plot thing. I guess these two just didn't see him standing there. Um, he he goes outside and he's like, yeah, I'm going to take the artifact and I'm going to take Quan. Um, and Kai is like, oh, that's against protocol. Now, if, she, if Spartans never break protocol ever, how is this not a red flag instantly? like something that you would flag up immediately. I guess we don't care because we've got a plot that we need to progress. We we got to do our own thing. I know their radars aren't working. They have eyes. Like <laughs> maybe check the whole place instead of just walking to the artifact without sweeping through and making sure there's no one inside. There's a phantom outside. 
There's no reason to assume that there are no other aliens left. Maybe make sure that the area is absolutely secure. These are meant to be the most competent soldiers ever. Yeah, you're supposed to keep someone you on the joking? entrance then as well. Uh, yeah. Wow. A Phantom is a big ass covenant like ship, drop a drop ship, ship essentially. Uh, for those who didn't know, it's it's very it's very conspicuous. Um, it's very conspicuous. It's pretty visible. Um, I guess it's a good thing that none of the people at the base saw it fly over. Um, but whatever. They, yeah, he decides to take the artifact in his pelican, uh, and he's been looking at it for a while. He's he's a little bit like, oh, I'm not sure what to do with this. Like, I'm I'm feeling conflicted. That's kind of the way that he would describe him. So conflicted that when he has a conversation with Quan, he discloses what is probably very confidential information about his top secret missions to her. Just he feels like it. So he's already pretty much Being not stupid. himself at this point yeah because because um, him disclosing all this information is not at all necessary to him not killing her it's necessary for plot though um at least the objectives that they want <laughs> but whatever and so when he gets the order he doesn't want to follow through on it um which is unexpected because spartans seem to always follow these orders like all the time unquestioningly uh and that leads to like the the first major sort of conflict of the story which is that chief doesn't want to kill kwan and he is now actively trying to prevent the unsc from doing things so like he's turning off cameras in the pelican Shit, he's i want to kill kwan <laughs> to, yeah i guess to be to be fair yeah she's too stupid to live <laughs> but um, i wonder if the audience is meant to assume that had n it not been for the intervention of the artifact and Chief got that order to kill Quan. that he would have just done it. He would have immediately think, just stood up, pulled his gun out, and That's shot her. I think know? so. That's what the show is saying. What? The show, Another? Yeah. The show is saying that, like, the artifact causes a huge change in him, uh, which I guess we see in the episode, because, yeah, he's going out of his way to save her, and that is unexpected. Like, it surprises UNSC Command. It surprises Keys and Parangoski. Um, this, this then leads to... A sequence of events that is so utterly contrived that I don't even know where to begin. Let it's me. It's very. The show very quickly lets you know that there doesn't seem to be many rules in terms of what you might expect can happen. This is sort of our first foray into just sort of expect whatever the writers want to happen to just sort of happen. Well, so. What what we see happen is Chief shuts off the UNSC's capabilities to track his pelican like hours before he expects to arrive on Reach, like he did it hours ago. Um, and I guess Command just didn't think like, oh, what the hell is he doing? They just decided to deal with that several hours later when he's much much closer to Reach. Um, well, the fact and that he was like, um, breaking off from the team and stuff was already enough for them to be like, something's wrong with Chief. It should have been. Should be. It should have been. Yeah. But, but in, so they see him like turning off the cameras and so they, they drain oxygen from the pelican to try and kill Quan. Um, and then <laughs> they drain oxygen from Chief's suit. I guess they can't lock his armor, even though surely armor lock would be a feature of this armor. Yeah, it's real weird that, that they would have control over his fucking oxygen, but nothing else. But not his armor. Right. No. Um, yeah. and, and it gets a little awkward when in episode 9 they jump out of a pelican from like 2 kilometers in the air and land. It's like, oh, so you do have some sort of armor lock capabilities, right? Surely? Definitely? Yes? Um, but I guess not. Um, maybe it's not a part of this show's canon. Um, and then Chief, they drain his oxygen to 40%. They're gonna knock him out, they don't want to kill him. Fortunately, he lands in the pelican next to a control pad that when he opens it up, he can just restore oxygen to the ship. Damn, Isn't lucky. that lucky? I yeah. guess command can't <laughs> pretty hilarious. Again. They can't just drain more of his oxygen. They can't just do it to the ship again. Um, and now she was quite thinking, the engineer. He he's a very competent engineer. But here's the thing: you might be thinking, man, UNSC have basically written off Master Chief as an asset, even though he's a war hero, known, renowned in humanity. Um, that's an interesting choice, considering that this order is absurd. Like, you hold all the cards, so I don't know why you would want to execute Quan and have it happen en route instead of bringing her in for questioning and trying to convince her of doing anything. Um, yeah, you can always execute her later, but you can't unexecute her. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and if the UNSC are as evil as they are in this show, it's like, I don't get it. But then, you know, Halsey's seeing all this happen, and this is what she she decides, like, no, I don't, I don't want Chief to get killed. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Silver Team, his Spartan buddies. I'm going to tell them that if any UNSC soldier tries to apprehend Ma Master Chief, you can kill him. You, you, like, it's now, nuts. You'll see it later. 
There's like 10,000 Marines. They can't take mm. them all on. But nevertheless, she makes this choice. Yeah, um, don't don't blink this, on the Marines. You'll never see them again. How would this not be an utter catastrophe, like, for, for the Spartans and Halsey? Like, the Spartans would get killed. Um, Halsey would be done because she's the one who told them to do this. And it would be, like, you'd the figure The program out. would be finished forever. The program would be over. The body count um, would be intense. Wait, so, um, and, what, uh... What are we going to focus on now? Oh, I, at this point, I think we're just like explaining how terrible. Whatever you feel like. Is, but you can, this you section can is it. called miscellaneous. Yeah, it's, well, miscellaneous. it's mainly just going through the plot of episode one as quickly as I guess we could just to, to and then I guess you could just say this is the same throughout the show. Uh, you get well, all yeah, of this. Every kind scene. Of... It's just every scene. It's nonstop with problems. Yep. It's Don't a character worry. saying something that makes no sense. It's a plot point that makes no sense. It is a thing happening due to inconceivable odds. It is every is a problem every scene, every step of the way. Like is they it even touch on they touch on like, oh, Master Chief is special, but do they ever discuss the whole he's lucky theme or they, motif? So they have him win 13 games of like heads or tails, which I didn't he only win twice in the in Fall of Reach? Like he wins 13 times or something. He's very lucky, but they don't really they go beyond what the games do to, to do something that like 343 has kind of done, which is to retcon Chief into being super duper the specialist created by the forerunners to be like the most awesome thing ever. When in the original, it was just an observation that he's lucky. That's it. It's it's not meant to be read into that much, but Oh, it was like by by the time Halo Three was coming out, it was kind of more like, yeah, you know, he makes it, it onto the forerunner ship for in sure. Halo Two. Yeah, yeah. Um, um I, I just want to make sure out. that it's yeah, like stated though, Quickly just the, the insanity uh, of Episode One being that like you, you know, just as I was saying that the whole like, oh my god, the plot is going to be whether or not he kills this girl because the UNSC is stupid, and like that's not even close to like it all starts to tumble out no. into. Well, now that he's gone AWOL because he refuses and they tried to kill him, or at least subdue him, and that didn't work, we're now going to have our entire base prepare to take down Master Chief, and then Halsey in a response is like, Spartans, if they even try, kill them all. And you're just sitting here like, how the hell did we get here exactly. in like 10 this minutes? This is the planet, yeah, this yeah, is the, the planet military base. This is where all, this is the, this is Reach City <laughs> on Planet Reach or wherever. Yeah. It's... It, it's um, it it would be awful well so and then we get because because we're talking about chief's character so what happens is he's trying to make preparations Quan grabs a br and points it at chief is like i'm gonna kill you i don't trust you and then chief he's like you know what i'm gonna take off my helmet if you, you this is a sign of trust you can trust me it's like man she could kill you and then you're all doomed <laughs> like if she kills you it's over and you can stop her you don't need her to trust you if you want to save her life. You well, can just save her. Putting totally your life him not in her. killing her would be a form of like you can trust me. I, I could have killed you at any point, and he can still just walk up to her right now. She can fire as many shots as she wants. He's taking that gun off her. Yeah, uh, but he decides to take off his helmet for him right directly in the face, as she should have. Well, that's what I was hoping for. That would have been the most hilarious outcome. Yeah, if the show <laughs> ended there, just him getting shot in the head, and then it's like just the end of the episode. But yeah, he he just like, like now this is pretty stupid, and it seems not like the kind of thing that a hardened super soldier with years of experience would ever do. No, um, yeah. pretty incongruous with who he is. Um, he and should have now, been shot, and the credits roll over his dead face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they were like, "That was um, a really great joke. We we'll start the actual show next week." We're like, oh, okay. Now here's the thing. The show tries to present a justification. They say that, like, the helmet is the means by which the UNSC can, like, mess with the suit's functionality and communicate with him. But I don't really believe that. Because, um, like, if they, if they lose their helmet in combat, like, a Spartan loses their helmet, is that it? You can't track him, you can't find him, there's nothing you can do to contact him. Uh, and also, wouldn't a lot of that functionality be built into the suit itself instead of just the helmet? I don't buy it. I think it's a really shitty excuse to try and justify him taking his helmet off. Also and it doesn't even... Yeah. feel that this show believes that the suit is symbolic of like concealing away the humanity of chief as a person yeah. 
and that him taking this helmet off is a strong first step into understanding there's a man under here, and it's just like, oh, what? I already knew that. That Which, um, exactly, but that plot point could have come in like season three or something. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, but it's the it, first totally. fucking episode. First episode. It's really odd when you think about the the credit sequence. Um, it it's not often where you have to talk about the credit sequence being strange um, and seeming <laughs> um, against the show, but the credit sequence of Halo is a we assume naked Master Chief man as armor just sort of forms around him like nanotechnology. He starts yeah. off without armor and then slowly but surely it just covers him and forms into armor, and so then he could be in his armor and look at the uh the viewer at the end of the the intro sequence which seems to be the opposite of what the show wants to do it's but it's portrayed as thing. triumphant it's like, because yeah, the, it's, yeah. it's because the suit is recognizable iconography it's, that's it yeah, that's yeah. All it is. it's um yeah. the show the show's themes are diametrically opposed to like what it's actually trying to say so it's trying to make the armor cool while also making it symbolically bad yeah, yeah and, like, it's kind of hilarious <laughs> But uh, I, to to round out the the insanity of episode one, um, I don't know why Chief didn't try to get control of the ship like earlier instead of right before he arrives on Reach. He had like a day to work with, or at least like several hours. Um, and, and then like they're like, oh, we got to use this control panel, um, and that'll give us control of the ship. And Quan shoots it. It's like, man, good thing that didn't just destroy everything. And I actually gave Chief control of the ship. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, well, the UNSC you need that showdown on the tarmac where they've all got yeah. their guns out. It's really hard not to c compare it to I bypass the compressor. Just like yeah. you see, this bit. character did something useful. That's great, and you're just sitting there like, yeah, well, uh, what? And so, what happens after that is that like Chief is about to escape now that he's got control of the Pelican, and uh, Keys is like, yeah, use the Mac gun, shoot down the Pelican with the Master use Chief the in Mac it. Gun. Um, <laughs> they shoot it. They shoot it He's down the with, fucking like, Mac gun on him. <laughs> yeah, now, for reference, at the end of Halo Reach, the Mac gun is so strong that when you fire it into a Covenant supercarrier, it blows the whole thing up. Um, the Mac gun is we like gotta use it on the Pelican. Covenant? Well, yeah, Covenant? This, this That's why EMP I thought the gun Mac. in the show wasn't a Mac cannon. I thought it was an e like a big EMP gun that kind of it looked is. like a Mac cannon. Is, well, is that what like a Mac cannon Mac is? Is an EMP blast? Well, it's, it, the Mac cannon in the games like is a giant, like, I thought it was missile, like a yeah, like a, basically a targeted nuke. Okay, but, yeah, it's the it. It's almost like the, the ships are built around the. It's like the A ten Warthog of space. Um, mm -hmm. They are huge, massive cannons that, especially in the books, an immense amount of importance is given to these Mac guns because they are humanity's most effective weapon against Covenant fleets. Essentially the only effective weapon the only against weapon they really have. fleets. I remember in a... They are that... insanely important, yeah. extremely powerful. It is the, the thing around a lot of strategy and tactics that humans use is, to, is, is revolving around the Mac gun and being able to <clears> use it, fire it as much as possible, and to defend it. Yeah. Uh, and a gun is a is a is a huge loss for humanity if they're if they lose a mac gun to expand upon rags's point um the like you said uh it's one of the most effective weapons that humanity has in the games against the covenant because the covenant uh have superior ships um that's like a big aspect of why um the covenant are so scary is because they are really they, they've just got better ships and that's a huge part of warfare you wouldn't know that in this show, though, because the oh, Covenant yeah, the are show. not much of a factor at all. Oh, yeah, the, you, you, rarely, you, you rarely ever you, see Covenant you actually know using their fleet. Threat. Well, you just wouldn't know that the Covenant are an existential threat to humanity. You think they're a, a mild annoyance who occasionally appear from time to time. Um, <laughs> kind of, yeah. look, but we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more. In any case, they shoot the Pelican down with a Mac gun. It's like an EMP. And then they get surrounded. We've got this big tense build up. Is it going to break through? But oh no, the silver team's going to, they're probably going to kill these guys. But Chief is here just staring at the uh, the Forerunner artifact laying there. He's like, whoa, what does this do? And then he grabs it and it emits an EMP that knocks out all power to reach city and all of the equipment <laughs> and everything around them, except it restores power to the Pelican so that they can escape. Yeah, what do you think makes uh, sense about that? 
fucking it's completely random whenever it does that too sometimes they'll touch it and there's no gigantic pulse wave that knocks everybody yeah they also yeah. knock people around sometimes is... rather than just taking out like systems and devices i, I don't, I don't understand the rules for this well, you the see the artifact has a very special ability you guys it does whatever the plot it does it is it is it is I, I guess it depends on what your your because a lot of people use MacGuffin similarly, but not always the same. It does seem to be this like it does what it needs to do thing in this show. Yeah, uh, it does not. Because you call it a plot device, right? It is essentially yeah. It is a plot device. A device, yeah. Like literally a plot device. Well, sorry. Here's a, here's a question. How does an artifact that predates humanity directly interface with human technology to restore power to the ship? How does it do that? That would be it's called the plot. mystery of science, Fringy. Fuck I knows. suppose it is the mystery. It is oh, any, also, I guess, uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. I guess Chief Suit isn't electronic because it doesn't knock out mm, power. It's steam powered. <laughs> it, I well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Silver Team is what their name is, right? Did you say? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Shouldn't him, all through all of them have fallen over, like with this no, suits like freezing up or whatever? I guess it doesn't do that. <laughs> it just think? knocks out power to everything except, and then that's how Chief escapes. Now, the reason why I went on this is because ER mentioned like, oh, the Quan thing goes nowhere. So like, think about this: the UNSC were willing to kill Master Chief because he refused the order to kill Quan. Mm -hmm. Um, he goes on an adventure in episode two and leaves Quan at a space station called the Rubble with his old Spartan buddy Soren. He comes mm -hmm. back to Earth without Quan and gets put back into like active duty. Yeah, no, they, 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 they don't know Quan. Yeah, <laughs> that is really <laughs> funny. I didn't think about that. They're just like well, the show, yeah. did, the show yeah. didn't think about it. The show forgot that, that was the thing that they did. That it was a big plot point and it's never brought up again. And Chief has never asked like, hey. Where's that? Where's Quan, the person that all of that was about? Because <sighs> that's not it, the show needed drama, needed to get him yeah. away and then get him back and then not have to deal with it because it's a really badly written show. I had no and idea that like, we were going to get like a whole adventure with her and the, the guy from the asteroid place. I was just like, damn, that's that's the it's the biggest B plot in the show, I think. It is the biggest B plot, yeah. It's and it all stems from its B plot that I've ever seen. Oh, it's, it's it a has complete no drag. <laughs> completely like just get rid of it and it wouldn't change the overall structure of the story whatsoever well, and if someone told you we've got um master chief's childhood buddy who had the exact same upbringing as him except he at one point broke off and lived his own fulfilling life you're like and how is that going to play in this story and you're like oh yeah there's so much that they could compare with mm -hmm. there's so much like conflict those two characters could have it's like how much screen time do they have together it's like oh, well you know Maybe Barely 10 any. Minutes? Maybe ten Total? minutes. Yeah. Well. Yeah. This. This. Um. I think the only reason that Quan exists is because they want to set up a connection to the Forerunners because she 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 visits Desert Mystics who give her like a a juice that she drinks and then she goes on this vivid hallucination that reveals to her her ancestors, many of whom she never would have met, uh, and it also reveals a Forerunner monitor in a well so it's like so this is magic then right because how do you have these memories like mm. how could this be a part of your subconscious the location of the well that your ancestor dug to get water that led to a portal probably to a forerunner construct what are the yeah. odds of that on no, this other planet uh, probably Juan was the probably. avatar <laughs> that's how it worked out oh she's like, I Definitely propped up by every element that isn't natural. Like everything is keeping her in this and important. Who knows what they'll make her do in season two? Well, because because they she's a protector, proper noun with a capital P for protector. So it's it's some forerunner shit probably. Uh, but again, it's like just man, because because this is where maybe maybe the next subject should be coincidence, which is pretty persistent in this show, and that's one of them. Mm. Oh, it sounded like you had something there. Or oh, is it I'm, just a... I'm just I'm just agreeing coincidence throughout plethora. Oh, sorry. Think about think about so we we talked about that keystone, that artifact that Chief had that does the EMP but also unlocks memories. So like mm. that's a hugely important plot point in this show. 
Um, now yep. we keep saying it's forerunner. That's never said in the show because they don't know anything about the forerunners yet. They don't know about what Halo is, like who made it, or anything to do with their history or the flood or anything like that. These are just like mm-hmm. artifacts that they found. The keystone is uh, something that the Covenant really want because they worship the Forerunners as gods and they're looking for these artifacts. There are two. There's this one little smaller part and there's one big chongus part and they both fit together. And in episode nine, we find out that um, that basically reveals a map uh, that shows where Halo is. Um, Now, Chief, when he grabbed the Keystone, it turned on. But when they test it on the other Spartans, it don't work. It just it doesn't work. Um, mm-hmm. doesn't seem to interact or work with anybody else. Mm. It was lucky because Soren touched it on the rubble. I imagine that knocking out power to a space station, probably not a good thing, but fortunately it doesn't go off. To be fair, um, that alone is like major character assassination, him choosing to touch it. It's like a lot of people don't even realize the damage that does to a character. A dangerous forerunner artifact. He just touches it. He doesn't know what it would do. Because you're right. It killed everybody. If it knocks out all the power to what is a a station that likely relies for existence on power, it's just like, damn, you'd take that risk just because you have Mm -hmm. you're an idiot. I hope Lord Hood didn't have a pacemaker. Yeah. Well, well, fortunately, he wasn't there. He's only in it for one episode, and he's like the only character who reminds me of the video game counterpart, even to a little bit. That oh, might yeah. be something where, well, I guess we'll get to that point. Yeah, we'll, we'll save it for when we get to that point, yeah. I guess it's just, to lay this out, they're on the rubble, which is a space station built into an asteroid. Uh, Chief's there with Soren, and Soren's like, he leads him to this weird, like, kind of mental institution where you've got yeah. a bunch of people in cages. Where all the writers these live. People, so these are people <laughs> who are abducted, abducted by the, for, uh, by the Covenant for purposes unknown, and let go. Why? So why wouldn't the covenant kill them? Wonder, yeah. So the covenant, uh, they are not out to do anything. They, they want to kill humans. They want to destroy all humans. They want humans need to Me die. Sure. They all need to die, right? Humans, their existence is an affront to in their religion. They need to be destroyed. Simple as that. Not really much else to it. Uh, they want to kill humans. They just, they just love killing humans. It's great. Killing humans is great. And the idea in this show that they just let humans go, it makes no sense. It, it's more effort and energy and time to let the humans go than just killing them, which is what your goal is anyway. That's why they destroy planets and cities and attack us. That's their whole goal. Which is um, another great example of taking something from the source, but then confusing the hell out of everybody when we try to... It's like, because oh, Covenant hate humans. It's like, but... They have a human well, that's really high ranking, and it's like they, they wait, would what? still capture them for like whatever reasons. Yeah, for sure. Maybe no, more, yeah, but in what I just said was like they would surely execute the ones they're done with. They wouldn't return yeah. them. That is really strange. And so when you, we, we talk about ad- adaptation, we're like, so they're trying to tell us something else about this covenant now. This covenant is different than than the game one. And then by the time you hit the end of the season, it's like, no, they hate all humans. Well, yes, and you're like, oh. That's- that's that's something that's worth noting. One of the changes that I hate the most in this show that rings that just seems so clear to me that they attitudes about writing that I hate. Um, Mackie is a human and she is in the covenant and she is called a blessed one now, and she's like a important part of the covenant. Um, because I imagine they were like, why we can't have Arbiter be a POV character? Stupid, he's an alien, needs to be a human. Um, they have no idea what they've done in terms of the changes that they've made to accommodate this story beat that we are about to get into. Because <laughs> they're there in this place, in the rubble, with all of these mm-hmm. crazy people, and they talk to a guy called Reth, who's like crawling around on the ground. He's going real insane. And he, he says it in a very jobbled and confused this way. Is his Oscar, but, this is the show's Oscar performance. But this, well, this is what he lays out in a very confused way for sure, but he lays out, Covenant have a religion, and these artifacts are a huge part of it. They search for these because they're looking for a, a real big, important place. Um, they abduct humans because some humans can interact with these objects. He relays all of this information to Chief. He relays it in a confusing way, but he he knows all of this. How? Who told him? Does he speak the Covenant language? Did they tell him? Why would they tell him? And if he knows these things, why would they let him go? Yeah, it's it's like it's it's just layers and layers of problems. The fact that he's alive at all, as Frankie said, the fact that he 
knows what the covenant want, the fact he can understand their language. That and by the way, the it's not a nitpick, especially the language thing. The linguistics between humans and covenant is like a plot point later in the show that they draw special attention to. So yeah, any human that? who can any human who can understand the covenant language is like, how do you possibly know what they're saying? And that, well, that yeah. Well, uh, what I would say is also that I think it's a really dumb choice to have the prophets speaking in a foreign language because, first off, it's weird to introduce the prophets so early because that's kind of like like you draw back the curtain and the curtain draws back slowly. So initially, we should be introduced to like the covenant, just like elites and grunts, and and we see them fuck shit up, you know, kill humans. You when the prophets the, were. Uh the emperor okay. thing from star wars where they refer to the emperor you know he's out there but you don't exactly like, see them until well you know, later the whole on. the whole p reason why halo 2 is good and why it made the the covenant talk in english was to make them relatable so that we could understand what their society is like and what their government is like and it just it feels like when the prophets are speaking in a weird different alien language and maki speaking it just it turns me off, and and mm. I'm I'm not able to relate to them in the same way I was in Halo Two and well, Halo I Three. Would, I agree. I think it would have been better to just make him speak English. Correct me if I'm wrong as well. Isn't the first time we see a prophet very casual? Like the show doesn't he's really just, treat it with any weight. Uh, the show is just like, "There's a prophet, by the way." It's like he's oh. just chatting yeah. with Mackie. Basically, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah and the look opening look scene of Halo Two. Is, yeah, I got it on yeah. screen. That's our first time. Is just like, oh, okay. You'd yeah, think. These are like the these are like the the kingpins of the whole fucking conflict. It's like, and when they're introduced in Halo Two, it's a giant. Tr it's the biggest trial in the world. You know what I mean? Well, they're the, the ultimate universe. antagonist of the series. Um, like say, truth like, is uh, the ultimate antagonist. You know, like even Ultimately, Force Awakens though, managed um, to get this right. Like, like Snoke, you treat him with all the you know JJ was. I'm just saying, like, you have elites needing to, they're drawn in, maybe even have some fear of the prophets from uh, some of the Covenant members to just build the audience up a little bit before you're just like, oh, there it is. Oh. Yeah, they don't come across, they don't, they don't establish them off the bat as important as they actually are. Um, and it doesn't help the fact that they're in this, like, architecturally, what the fuck is this? Oh, the mushroom? The, the weird, oh, like the... No, I'm I'm fine with the floating city. It's the um, yeah, thing about the I interior dare, here. I dare you look the, cool, but the inside the of it is like it, the yeah, inside of it looks nothing like what it looked like in the games. I don't know why it's all white. The Covenant well, shit has always been like purple. Well, it's always had this unified sense of design where whenever you're in a Covenant area, whether it's their weapons, whether it's their their military um like fortifications, their cities, their building interiors, their ships, you get this sense of a of a design that they have this very tried and true this almost traditional this is how our our ships are but you don't get that sense of unified design in the show because you have these just fucking bizarre what is this white like are, this, is this this feels out of place yeah are they really like blood cells and some bone marrow or what, you know how, what is how this? hard how hard would it have been to have like those cool side opening doors that go like Bow! yeah they make, <laughs> yeah. They you make know noise. and that's how he comes in yeah <laughs> well like, maybe how that's far a... up does the ceiling go what, what I, do you... I, I like i like that i can make that Bow! and you guys all know what i'm talking about yeah the yeah. sound of the covenant doors opening yeah when they yeah. unlock it yeah it's 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 the sound of progress. <laughs> it's you make a good point. Good point about the introduction of the prophets too, because anybody new to Halo, which I assume is part of the audience they're reaching for, you know, these showrunners as people who haven't played the games, they're gonna look at this scene and they're gonna see two elites and a prophet coming down the corridor, and they're they're not gonna associate any kind of prestige with the prophets, right? But they're like the not yeah, they're they run the I don't I, to use year. the words elites, but not the elites elites. I mean, like they're the elite of the covenant. They're the right? rulers of yeah. the covenant. There are yes. three of them. They are the most important individual members of the entire alien uh, civilization that exists. And in, before I forget, someone is uh, someone brought it up in chat. It's really weird that the two elites that we see here are just regular elites, but they specifically have the honor guard 
outfit for yeah. the end of the season. It is that, is, that is a good catch. It is very strange, especially because there are so many opportunities for them to have thrown in stuff from the games like that. And they just don't. It's like at the beginning. Well, we only have this one model for the elite, so we're just going to. Yeah, use those. It, it, even an audience who's not familiar with it would like like they're just they should be treated as popes because that's that's what they are. They're basically c- giant corrupt popes that have gotten all these aliens together under giant a full popes. pretense. Yeah, giant popes. Um, I, but, I feel yeah. like somebody you know Halo who watches this scene and sees the prophet, he's just gonna be like, "Oh, I guess that's just one of the aliens, but he's crippled and he's in like a space wheelchair." <laughs> he's like, yeah, 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 he's like an older dude. Maybe he's in charge, but he's probably yeah. Not like, older. where's the giant? Yeah. Where are the crowns? They wore those giant gold crowns, you know. <laughs> I think I think uh, Halo Two did a really good job in that opening scene in establishing a lot of what you need to understand about the internal structure of the Covenant before they even explain it more thoroughly. Because you have the prophets in the center of this massive um, this massive stage. They're in the center. They're in the light. They're clearly the leaders. You don't even need to be told oh. that they're the leaders. It's transparently obvious. And then you've got a bunch of um, the like nobles, and then you've got the um, they're the high guard, right? The um, the the elites with the big headdress, like, the and then, guard, and then of yeah. course, yeah, the honor guard. And so it established. And then of course, you got like little jackals off on the side, like, and and grunts. Just it establishes really clearly. It's like right. So these the- guys are top dogs. The elites are really important, as are the brutes. And then we descend down the order. You get a good sense of who's in charge. The first, um, if you, especially if you watch the the Halo Two anniversary cutscene, where we're introduced to the Arbiter, there is oh, more world building and character and just quality in that short, short quote unquote short cutscene in the game than in the entirety of an entire season of television. Huge yeah. missed opportunity, considering that you have so much time. This is your time to flesh out the Covenant, but you, you yes. really didn't. Like, I think if you didn't know anything about the games, you would not have a clear sense of what the Covenant believe in, why they're after these relics, to what end. I don't even think you would have a good understanding of what the Great Journey even is, because I don't even know if the show knows what the Great Journey is. They present it's the Great the Journey as... It's just the thing they refer to. Well, so here's the thing. In the games, the Great Journey is basically heaven. That's after you activate the rings and you die and you go to the divine beyond. Uh, Like, that's what the Great Journey is. The show seems to think that the Great Journey is going to Halo, like heading to Halo to activate it. Yeah. Um, But And that's what I mean. If you don't know anything about Halo, I don't know that you could fully understand what their goals are. And most importantly... Why do they hate humans so much? It, it especially becomes complicated when you have a human within your ranks. It's like, wait a minute, do you do you hate humanity? What what's what's the deal? They're a blessed one. It's like, does this not cause problems for your religion in the games? It's a lie. It's a conspiracy. Like nobody actually knows that you need humans to activate Forerunner artifacts, but in the show, it is known because she's part of the she's part of the high structure. She's like within it. She's a known entity. Does that not cause problems for your religion? Mm. This is why you need to be thoughtful about the changes that you make if you're going to adapt. Because all this does is present problems. Um, the problem being, specifically, the Blessed One system. Reclaimers, not all humans are reclaimers. It's a very small number. We later find out that it is cheap. It's like one in a billion. Two in a, two in a billion, remember, Rax? It's one in 500 million. I feel oh, like. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. I, I wouldn't want to accidentally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I guess you may have remembered earlier. It's like all humans can interact with them uh, in the games because all humans are, for, are, are reclaimers, essentially. Reclaimer is like the title that Guilty Spark gives to Chief. Basically means you, you're back. You can activate the rings. You can, you can do what the Forerunners did. But in the yeah. show, it's the Blessed Ones. The reclaimers. They don't call them reclaimers, but we'll just call them that for the sake of ease. Master Chief can interact with Forerunner artifacts. Mackie can interact with Forerunner artifacts. And as far as we're aware, no other humans can. It is an exceedingly rare genetic trait that enables you to interact with um Forerunner artifacts. This is a big problem, guys. And I strongly suspect that the problem. show's writers haven't thought about why that's the case, you know, that no, it's now haven't. limited to they blessed ones, quote unquote. Right. Well, because they need to have sex. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, 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 it may, it may reclaim it her. May yeah, it's so hot. 
that's a meme, but you may well be right that that was part of the reason. Exactly. Why they did Same it. reason why he his that's ass what they had to use, be shown. yeah, to establish their like, connection on a deep level. So I guess to to lay out the background to under this is this is coincidence on a level that is absurd. Later in the season, we find out that Chief, as a youngster, lived on a planet called Ridness Two. Uh, it was like a, a planet where they were doing like a um a terraforming kind of project. And while he lived there, he stumbled across the second piece of the keystone. So, man, what are the odds that the one of like two known people in all of humanity who can interact with the uh, Forerunner artifacts on two separate occasions came into contact with both pieces of Forerunner technology oh, and ended yeah. up having sex? Yeah, and no. this isn't like yeah. Mona Lisa. Magic. Well, I think the show wants you to believe that he's drawn to it with magic because Mackie says at the end, like, they've been guiding us. So here's a question. Did the Keystones guide Chief's family to settle well, on a Ridinus 2 instead of anywhere else? Did it guide the program to be set up within a one kilometer walk of this incredibly rare piece of technology? Did it did it guide the UNSC to send Silver Team to Madrigal? to fight the Covenant at the time that they were excavating the Forerunner artifact. It is one of the weaknesses of this show. Um, it's, it, yeah. The show essentially... It, there is essentially magic in this show. Oh, um, there's a tremendous amount of magic in this show. The, the, yeah. the Forerunner technology in this show. was... No? There's a freaking witch covenant in this show. There is a witch it, covenant. And, there's and that's mystical enough. magic. It's their thing. I'm so glad you brought that up because what are the odds that the one out of like all of humans who ever existed who can interact with Forerunner artifacts was sent on a mission where he came into contact with the last survivor of a Covenant attack who herself just so happens to have a family lineage that directly connects her to the Forerunners. Yeah, Wait, oh my God. So what, what happens to Maki in the ninth episode? Because I didn't watch it. Oh, she dies. Um, Kai shoots her because they've oh. got the keystones there. They she's activating it and it's revealing the location of Halo and she kills her. This is presented as sad. It ain't. Uh, <laughs> Mackie's an awful person. She killed so many people. And even even if that was all out of the way, she was actively in the process of revealing what for whatever yeah. reason they've already. Did they ever it's revisit wedding. her like backstory? Or is it just that um, one scene? Well, so what? Well, what they got was in episode eight, where she's like, "Ah, see, humans are evil because I got tased uh, when I was a kid before the Covenant <laughs> saved me, and now I'm getting tased because I admitted to murdering hundreds of UNSC personnel." Well, because <laughs> they had the, the one of the funniest parts of the show, and I actually had to stop and and like sit there for a few minutes to process it. I think it's in the third episode. To finish and laughing we're... before you <laughs> yeah 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 i you might know where i'm going with this but i talked about it in my video there's like her backstory is she's like on some dumpster planet and she's reading a book with some other kid and they're about to kiss and then some guy just like jumps out of nowhere with a baton and chases down this kid and beats <laughs> him to death yeah and i'm like i had to pause it i was like what the fuck am i watching yeah, what kind like of such, backstory is this? Such it's cartoonishly incredible. oppressive, pol like a police force, <laughs> so, I guess, whatever it was, that was hunting it's, it's down so children. <laughs> hey, stop <laughs> having a good time over there. Yeah, Taste you're on those the children. Dump, you're on the dumpster planet. <laughs> it's an incredibly shallow, like, plot point for sure. Because the thing is, is like, Mackie herself has no conviction. She believes vehemently in the Covenant stuff until she meets John Halo. And then they have sex, and then she decides basically that she doesn't want to help the Covenant anymore. And well, then it clears her head. She wants I, I, we'll yeah, I guess it her. does. That's what I mean. It's like, she doesn't believe in anything, but wh when she does change her belief, she believes in them vehemently very quickly. She's nothing. She's Kylo Ren. She's confused. That's her. She does whatever yeah. the plot I needs. I think I like Kylo like Ren a lot more than Maki. Oh, absolutely. Um, Adam Drive is a really good actor, so there's that. He's yeah, that's what I'm actor. saying, yeah. Um, She's just annoying. Oh, I guess um, to, to, to highlight again when we talk about that coincidence in terms of... So this show wanted to have a story where they had a human character in the Covenant. They wanted to do something with Chief being super duper important and special that was tied directly to like his humanity because when Cortana takes over, she can't interact with these artifacts. They wanted all of these plot points for their story. 
But the only way that you could have these is with chosen ones, essentially, with the reclaimers. They have to be mm-hmm. chosen ones. Um, they didn't think it through, though, because in the games, everybody can interact with the Forerunner artifacts. Like, if everybody can do that, there's nothing special about, like, Chief being the person. Chief was just there. He was on the Pillar of Autumn. Right. He's spun. Yeah. He is interacting with Guilty Spark and activating the rings and everything and doing all this stuff. But it has nothing to do... It could have been anybody. It could have been it's starting anybody. To sound like it, it, it's starting to sound like it would have been easier to just, like, follow the plot of the original games. I, I mean, uh, that would have been yeah, probably. crazy that, idea. That's an option because the consequence that you've done here is by making Chief a chosen one, you've stacked all of these coincidences of he interacted with one of these as a kid. He was chosen to be in the Spartan program instead of anybody else. He became the most competent, most important Spartan that there ever was. He got sent on a mission to Madrigal that brought him into contact independently of his first interaction with the other Keystone, with the second part of the Keystone. You are just like stacking the coincidences on top to the point that the entire plot hinges on an astronomically unlikely coincidence. It's insane. The whole it's the whole story destiny. like breaks. Yeah. Uh, like, Chief on wasn't this a Chief was never some po- cause we're because there were no Halo games after Reach. Uh Chief isn't a chosen <laughs> one, right? He's not some special prophesied da 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 da. He's a guy who's really good at his job. Oh, right? I, miss, I know we I don't like to portray. Right. I know, right? Characters. We don't we don't see those portrayed in media often, but he's a soldier who's very good at his job and that allows him to get into situations where he can interact with forerunner architecture where he can do all of these things, right? Because he's extremely competent at going places and doing things and completing objectives. And in the show, you never get the sense of He's just really good at what he does. Therefore, he's able to do these things. It's he. It needed to be him all along. He's super duper mega special on some intrinsic prophesied level, and it's just so lame. Honestly. He's one of the chosen ones based I mean, on a I, billion to one genetic deformity. That I agree that it's lame. I don't know. It is lame. I can, by the way, because I really enjoyed uh, Ackman recanting the the history scene we get for a. Uh, uh, Maki, Maki, um, that you you have several moments without throughout the show that you you'll just say out loud. I'm watching Halo, like this yeah. is um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, that scene though the writers consider that to be quintessentially important because if you remember when they're hanging out, um, oh yes, uh, good old John and and uh, and and her, she has like flashbacks to it as if to imply. That kid that she kissed back then or didn't didn't manage to kiss, John is now fulfilling that part of her like I think this is how they would describe it. They would be like, she has a half and half view of humanity. Half of it is the love and experience you can share with each other. The other half is that evil piece of shit that beat her friend to death and and, and electrocuted her. And you see, like yeah. in this episode they almost try to set up it's like she's falling for chief. This is a wonderful romantic story. Where will it go? But it's all ruined when they um when they hit her with a taser. And it's like Guys, you haven't earned any of this. This is insane. She's a horrible mm. war criminal. <laughs> Why? Well, yeah, she's, right. she's killed a lot of people. The show wants to pretend though. like their romance trumps everything else that's happened in the show. Well, also think... that that scene where she invades the ship, and and you see the the hunter worms, the let go I Why didn't they just have hunters? They seem pretty good. Why, well, why? Here's the thing: for a brief moment, worms? you see them standing around. Um, they just never that that's it for a brief moment you see them standing around in the, in Covenantville from what i recall it's literally one shot where you just see the boot of one of them and the worms yeah, yeah, come yeah. out of it yeah so we i don't think there's even a shot where we see the hunters full on it's just like that one boot shot that's fucking yeah. it and and they show them and to like be the incredibly efficient compared to everything else they have they're crazily yeah. efficient yeah they're more efficient they than ever hunters come back are up and hunters are like mini boss fights you say that they ever come back or ever reappear at any no. point, or is no. that that one it. thing? Well, yeah. all right then. So, all right then. Pretty bad. I didn't even show up in like, the finale. Like, come on, just throw no, a hunter or two in there. Why not? They have the birds, but they're they tough. The, uh... Oh, that was a thing yeah. as well, right? Um, I don't know if this is worth pointing out now or whatever, but uh, because you guys will let me know when we're watching this, but. 
when she like releases the hunter worms and they're going after everybody, a, an emergency thing is set so that the ship uh, is erased of its data, right? And like mm -hmm. you were saying that this is interesting, right? Because it's, it's with if you don't know the games, it's like the reason they do that is because then that the information on the ship can't lead back to Earth slash Reach, right? Yes, yes, they. It's it's essentially one of the ways that they try to prevent the Covenant from finding out where the core protocol. Are. But what? That's right. What I remember being explained is like so. That's why she's unlucky and she can't get at the information she wants at the time. But it's just like, don't you? Is it in the games that they explode the ships as well, or no? I'm not sure. Uh, sometimes <laughs> they were scuttle ships that like they. But but the main thing is to purge the data. But so, yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll, but so it absolutely thinking, like, entails self destructs of, of ships. That's definitely something yeah. in the cold protocol. If they had engaged which that, is, she'd have been which fucked. in the first game. Yeah, that's why the in the first her. game you you're given Cortana in the first place. Yeah, because they got all the data Cortana. stored on her. That's right. Um, you can't let Cortana fall into enemy hands because if she does, oh, it's kind of over. We haven't told uh, people in the audience who don't know yet about. Uh, I'm assuming it hasn't been mentioned yet because I don't think I've heard it. Uh, this little thing I'm putting on screen right now. Uh, the energy sword, in the her energy sword finger. That was finger absolutely hilarious. Um, <laughs> that is indeed an energy sword that comes out of her fucking fingernail, everyone. This is so stupid. Like, <laughs> so Why? Dumb. Someone, I, one well, of the writers thought on, this would be so on. cool and badass I like, and scary. I like the concept of, like, a stealthy-based assassin-type elite. That maybe has like wrist blades, or they even had those wrist like blades. Zealots on some from of the Starcraft. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They had a couple uh, in the last scene on Reach, right? Uh, when when Noble Six dies, they have some of those elites with the Boilers. wrist blades. Yeah, I think that's kind of a cool concept. This is a bit. It's a this bit is silly. goofy. This is goofy as fuck. Yeah. Fortunately, when the UNSC captured it later on, they didn't find it. Yeah. They never noticed this alien it's technology like that's inside of her body. Well, it's alright, because she yanks it out anyway. <laughs> she yanks it out without anesthetic. And I wish she had an... I want her to have an energy blade for all her fingers and toenails. <laughs> yeah. Lady Deathstrike, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, like, like, ah. Like Good thing, though. Or Good thing there were no cameras in that room that could have captured... There are never many, cameras, many Fringy. Things. Cameras yeah, get in the way of us telling our plot. We can have nothing well, is recorded and nothing is video or audio. Video well, can be doctored. <laughs> Every room <laughs> is a <laughs> stone propaganda, block. This, this may well be a good time to point out. I I'm I think the UNSC in this show might be one of the most incompetent fictional militaries ever. I I still posit that the uh, first order are worse. I I said one of um, it's it's fine if the, the first order are absolutely absurd, but like the number of things that happen in this show that are just like, man, military command, chain of command, what is that? I was gonna say, who are in charge? saying they're one of isn't even that special because that just tends to be the norm at this point. What's the last time you came across like a government organization in a big piece of media that you were like, this is an impressive and well oiled sort of government? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess Shield in Avengers 1 were okay. <laughs> Okay. The, the first dark? order were the red guys from New Star Wars, right? Well, they were just the bad the guys. guys yeah. in the red. Yeah. Oh the no! Guys. Right? Yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay. They were the Despite equivalent all of their setbacks, yeah. the first order did pretty, pretty swimmingly. They didn't know actually. which way was up, dude. <laughs> yeah. Troopers, yeah. But they had. They made up a fleet of a thousand. They only. They only succeeded anyway. because. Yeah, but they only did that because the good guys were even more incompetent than they <laughs> yeah. were. That's how it works yeah. these days. Like they make well, they other people again. intelligent That's by making everyone else stupider. Yeah. Shield wasn't tried by Hydra. Well, so it, wouldn't competent. it be more accurate that, like, as a whole, maybe it's incompetent, but there's people in the government that are very competent, like Captain Keys. Like maybe just um, some of the people around him are stupid. I don't know. I, well, so the problem is, I would agree with you, but then in episode eight, when they find out that Mackie killed all the people on the Gladius, Keys, who was in that room, decides, you know what, I'm not gonna like get her out of here. Or earlier in the episode, when the communications are down before they do the test for Mackie, he's not like, hmm. Maybe we should, like, not do this. If our communications are down, that's an uncanny coincidence. I don't want to take that risk. Oh, God. Yeah, the uh, military I, base's I, communications just went off. Should we be concerned? Nah. About the Covenant <laughs> nah. 
fly in our base, and it's then so especially when she comes in. So frustrating that so much like happens, like news is given and conversations are had in the fucking room with the artifacts. Like, can you please step outside, close the door, and then have I your little conversation? <laughs> The fact yeah. that they have no cameras in there, like in her room for the interrogation with Chief, even though they know that she, the fact that Parangoski lets him do the interrogation when she's observed that he's being a little bit unhinged and not following orders, um, like I don't know, the the military in this in the show, like, and all of the people who are in it are hyper incompetent. Um, I just want to say, really, nobody ever... when they zap her in that scene, they just flash over when she was zapped as a yeah. kid, and it's just like they don't trust you as an audience. They really don't. They, they oh, don't remember she like doesn't that. like being tased. Thank you. <laughs> oh I, I, darn no. you, humanity! It's like shut the fuck. I hate you. Like you're a horrible, should... horrible person. Yes, they tased you. They don't want you to destroy everything Why by touching the fucking to artifact nice either. Lady. And also, you're trying to. You're part of an alliance that seeks to end all human life. Like I. I don't, I know, don't care if you suffer, really. Uh, it's just not really one of my pressing concerns. Well, I guess it's just like, does the show think it's making a point? Because, like, it's it's not. Yeah, the show does just... the whole, like, humans bad thing. And I'm like, this is Halo. What do you mean well, humans well, bad? So here, well, so, actually, Rags, I, like, f disagree. I think that the problem with this show, if anything, is that it believes that humanity is exceptional. Um, I think that this oh. is a show that definitely has human exceptionalism as like a theme, and I'm I know that this is contentious. I don't like that as a theme in science fiction stories personally. I I think that when you have a bunch of aliens, including like the elites, if you have aliens that are able to create complex enough social structures that they can organize that effectively, like the Covenant, hum humans being compassionate. Like humans having qualities that allow us to cooperate together, it's not it's not going to be unique to us. The elites are going to have the same thing that we have, you know. Well, because um, this because this show seems to simultaneously then say that humans are bad and great, but the, in the such starts, starkly contrasted ways that almost seem incidental and not supposed to be. Like, like we have good and we have bad, but the good's worth fighting for. You don't get that message. You, it's no, more of no. maybe it's just maybe I'm confused by the incompetence of how they frame everything. Um, well, I think that's that's the thing, right? The writers haven't thought it through enough. I don't think they've thought you know? it through enough. I think they've done the surface level of humanity is awesome. We have an an aspect of ourselves that's really cool and worth protecting. It's like that's fine, um, but when you actually have Chief explicitly say like that we're special, um, that humanity is special. There's something in humanity that's special. It's like, right? What do you mean by that in a world where there are elites and <laughs> I guess the problem is it's like in this universe, we don't know enough about the covenant to know these things, but in the games, like the elites have similar qualities. Well, I suppose that's humans. part of the issue, isn't it? Because when you say humans are special in the world like Halo, you're like compared to the covenant then? Who else are you talking about? Well, well, well yeah, it has it never really a focus right? in the games. It was kind of just like Spartans are special because they represent the best of humanity. Well, it's um, At least the most it, efficient, most but they're powerful, created yeah. through like they're created through questionable means. I actually like the whole uh, UNSC uh, government drama kind of angle that the show was going for. I don't like the way it was executed, but I feel like <clears throat> it, it, it would be good to plant the seeds of like, oh yeah, UNSC and Oni and the Spartan programs were not as ethical as you know you might imagine. And those questions start to kind of like, you know, they drip those around. And so it's like, okay, the audience might start to question why Master Chief is the way he is and why he's so, like, brutal and just this perfect killer. And I feel like that's it's a very important aspect of his character. But again, it seems like it should know. not I be the yeah. main focus of the whole fucking show. I think um, that Master Chief's childhood is practically irrelevant entirely in the games. It, it yeah, it's, is, it's but the really. fact that he had one is important. Everyone had one. Yeah. What do you mean? What do how I mean? Is, is that is that like how does how does a kid go from being in this program to being like the guy in the armor? Well, that's only something you know if you're like told it. It's not necessarily intuitive at all. Um yeah. like if, if they would have never explored his childhood and just essentially held firm to the idea that Master Chief is a really good soldier, then I, I don't think that necessarily you'd have to at all explain that this is some kind of a military program about 
children and things of that nature. You could if you want to, but I almost feel like that's taking time away from something that could be much more interesting. Well, I would have. I, I think it should have been built up slowly over time because it's it's the whole reason why the Spartans exist, and that's probably something that should be explored um, in the show, just not the just huge not major focus. And chat, someone I think someone mentioned like, well, they can interact with Forerunner stuff, so they're special, right? So I think to be clear, like a specialness that stems from I guess circumstance versus a specialness that is like intrinsic in the cosmos. I feel like those are two different things. So like for instance, humans are special and they can interact with Forerunner tech. That's just because they're Forerunners, though. Like it doesn't it doesn't say anything about them innately, like what they are as a species, what they represent, the qualities in them that are like admirable or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just a circum what what accidentally skipped randomly into the sex scene. I was like that <laughs> Oh no 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 no, 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 no. no, no you can't do that. Um Yeah, like, play that shit. I, I guess um to to be a bit clearer I guess on this subject, I find it to be kind of shallow to just sort of have the character say like yeah, humanity is special, like more so special than any other people in um in uh in this universe. Um, Brini thinks all aliens have an, an uh, inherently human qualities. Uh, not necessarily. No, but, I not mean, necessarily. The elites elites seem to. Yeah, the we, we the elites and humans to. get along in Halo. Well, 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 As well, I said, well, the I Covenant it, I, are the I, main I, people to compare against, and it seems like that's I, I, what you'd yeah. be saying. Sorry, I don't. I don't want to draw to the games. The point that I was making is that I think. If you present the Covenant as a very complex social structure where people, where groups cooperate, essentially, if we were to look at humans on Earth, what is it that makes humans special compared to other animals? It would be that we are able to organize into incredibly complex social structures that enable us to achieve goals that are beyond what individuals can do. That's essentially like what our special thing is. If the Covenant have also achieved that, is it not fair to assume that the Covenant also have those traits in them? So that when you say, like, well, humanity is special because we are compassionate, it's like, do you think that the Covenant are incapable of compassion towards each other? Like, do they do they have no qualities, like a level of benevolence, even though they're obviously evil and antagonistic towards humanity, what are the qualities that they have in and of themselves? Yeah, there's got to be covenant mamas structure. and papas and that sort of thing. Well, yeah, like, like a, especially brothers in arms, and that's got to be a big part of their culture. We've talked about it before, but when um, sci-fi usually gives humans the um, a, a unique trait compared to all of more advanced alien societies, they'll often appeal to like humans don't give up, and that's usually framed from the fact that we're on the lowest end of the spectrum for technology or abilities, like we're behind all the cool sci-fi alien people. And yet we'll, we'll still, we have that resolve in the spirit, which doesn't necessarily denote that we are intrinsically special, but it's nice to, to hear. And I imagine that's part of what's frustrating about this show is that they didn't really expand on what their thesis is related to that. Because I wanted to add to the, like, what do I, if, if, if there's something to draw the, this show's perspective on humanity, I'd be like, I think it's trying to say Halsey represents the worst of humanity. The Spartans yes. represent how cold humanity can get. And then the almost changed Spartans are like the hope that humanity represents and the compassion and warmth that we are. And then how that's almost represented entirely within McKee as a character being torn between how shitty humanity is, but also how great humanity can be. And I just like, I just don't think they had anything meaningful to say. They just threw a bunch of components in and no. went, humanity, question mark. My friend that. was killed on the dumpster planet. <laughs> exactly. And I was about to get him. <laughs> That Halsey did guess, nothing, nothing wrong, absolutely nothing. The wrong. show doesn't no. agree with you. It has nothing interesting well, to no, say well, about yeah, that. Cause, cause Unfortunately, that was... the show is wrong, and in so many ways, but that especially. Well, the thing is yeah. with Halsey is you're right. Like Halsey, Halsey is um definitely she is presented as the perspective on humanity that is incorrect, which is the idea that like controlling human evolution strips away like the aspects we of need... humanity that are special and worth preserving which that's well, obviously a conversation that's worth having for sure um the show has an opinion on it though which is that she's wrong um well it's, yeah. it's her view i think yeah that we need to transcend what we are whereas the what they portray is the correct view of we need to stay as we are because what we are is good as it is well, well her view on it, humanity makes no sense to me because she's like she's so obsessed with elevating humanity, but she seems to think that the way to do that is to uh, erase humanity out of people. 
well, and, that's what and it's like, yeah. well, yeah. what is it you want? Then? Especially like, with those inhibitors, right? That's a that's a show's creation, and it's so tying into the whole like we should embrace our emotion, we shouldn't hide it, like right? Uh -huh. it, yeah, and uh, I get the the thing is is like that's all fine to do as well, but again, when you because now I'm just thinking like. If, if the Covenant have a religion, they have a religion that they're trying to pursue, like, a goal of some sort of idea of, like, permanent, uh, ongoing bliss, and they want to work together to achieve that, how do you arrive at that point as, like, a civilization without having certain attributes of, like, human beings, like compassion, or the desire to achieve long-term goals, or ambition, or hope? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you can't look at the Covenant as they are, and then dismiss them as being, like, that they have none of the attributes that humanity would also have. Because, of course, we see that in the games when Arbiter finds out that the whole religion is a lie and then the Covenant fractures because of everything that's going on with, like, the destruction of the... I mean, you even have, like, when the when the Hierarchs get killed, um, like, the elites... I feel like dogs have compassion. Are we actually going to compare, like, the elites to dogs? The elites are sentient. Like... Yeah. Well, it's funny because they are, they act like humans in a lot of ways, but then they'll do like battle roars oh, and like weird stuff, like when they're yeah, fighting. Yeah, they do like, act like Rawr! humans in a lot of ways, yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but to be fair, then that would just bolster Fringy's point. Because if I said humans are special because yeah. we have compassion, then someone could say, well, dogs have compassion. Why are you saying that, yeah. like, that humans are, well, like, well, you, you got to do better than that. And I think the show doesn't put any effort into it. But on the flip side of the coin, the other problem is we don't know the Covenant at all in this show, really, at all. We don't like, know anything yeah, about you never them. learned really anything about them. You know what's great about the Halo games is the way that the Covenant is revealed. Um, like, and, and kind of that thing I was talking about, about how fast you draw back the curtain. If you go chronologically, I, uh, Reach was the last game Budgie made, but it's, it's the first chronologically, and I find it that they've made a great choice by going back to none of the Covenant speak in English except for the Grunts because that's funny and they get a pass. Um, but the Elites in Reach and CE didn't talk in English. I mean, in Combat Evolved, they took Johnson's lines and reversed them and fucked with them. But, uh, and then in Halo 2, they start talking in English, and then in Halo 3, the, you know, the Elites and the Humans and the UNSC, they start working together. So it's they find out that they do have some... They go from, like, this mysterious alien race that's really threatening and imposing to, hey, this character Arbiter is kind of similar to this character Master Chief, and then over the course of time, they find out they do have some similarities, mm. and they're, they're able to work together. And I feel Ooh, like perfect. the way the Covenant were... Yeah, the way they were presented was just... It's pretty much flawless, and... I just wanted more of that. Like, honestly, when, when I look at High Charity and I, I just think to myself, dude, there's only like three scenes in the main Covenant fucking area before it's uh, taken over by the flood. In this. Well, yeah. Well, I'm talking about in oh, Halo well, 2. Yeah. In Halo 2, you barely see High Charity in cutscenes. And I feel like that's like, like, I would want to see way more of that in the show. Well, yeah. It's it's a ripe opportunity, and yeah, I mean, I, I I like Halo Two. What we get in Halo Two through the perspective Arbiter is the character who goes on an arc in that game, not Chief. Like his arc is essentially realizing that like his whole life is built on a lie that he's been a tool of the prophets to achieve the ends that they want, that are actually contrary to his own. Um, and then sort of basically gaining a level of independence of his own thought and making choices about what he values. Now. It feels a little awkward when you have that be the arc of a character in the game, and then in the show you present it as like, well, no, like what we have as humans is special to us. When if anything, like the whole point of Arbiter is that it's kind of like the same. It's the same things. Um, they have a different. They social find structure some common sure. ground. Yeah, they find some they common, common ground, ground that they can become friends yeah. and like connect with. And I kind of don't see that ever happening in the show because of the point that it's trying to make. The point that it's trying to make is so geocentric, it's so about humans that there's absolutely no consideration for like what the Covenant is, why it formed, what they believe in, and what individuals within the Covenant think, and whether well, they, they should have, have been, their minds changed. They should have been introduced as like a lethal alien force that we know nothing about. And like I said, slowly draw back the curtain, which is again why I think showing the prophets in the f second episode was a huge mistake. And even Maki and trying to like build up some kind of 
hierarchy because we need to establish first that this is a major alien threat. That's what you need to establish first. Yeah. And then we need to have various battles and scenes and UNSC and people being like, what the fuck? Who are these aliens? What do we do? Blah, 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 blah. And then, again, draw back the curtain a little bit at a time. Maybe at the start of season two, we start seeing what the Covenant society is like. And, you know, it's kind of like, have you guys seen Attack on Titan? Yeah. No. Yeah. no. Okay. Well, uh, I won't I won't spoil anything, but um, it takes a long time to learn the origins of the titans and mm -hmm. that makes them mysterious and interesting for a very long time basically for three three seasons or so and i feel like it's a similar concept of like you don't just play your hand right out the gate you don't just have master chief take his helmet off in the first episode and you don't just show the profits in the second yeah Take your time. You got the whole season ahead of you and multiple seasons already confirmed. You can go slower. There are multiple would... seasons confirmed. Oh, there's already season two. It got greenlit before the first one came out. I wonder if they would have made that decision <laughs> if they mm. waited. Until Even the with season. our guy not exactly around. I was actually oh, going to say, can we, can we talk about yeah. that? Because um, we, we, we kind of started with Master Chief as a character. Did he, did he have an arc in this show? Um, his arc is oh, his arc is humanity. His arc is to become progressively more detached from the character he's based on. <laughs> well, but it's yeah. real. It's really flawed, right? Because it's established in the beginning that this is going to be a a soulless soldier, like kind of brainless, who discovers his humanity, and then by the end of it, he loses it all. <laughs> like, well, yeah. So, because I was going to say, I'm not sure if Ackman is fully aware of how this episode goes, but like, right. They gotta stop all of the things from happening for the bad guys, and there's just this this climax moment where we need to get the artifacts off the planet and back into human hands, but we also need to get the Spartans out of here because they're all currently disabled for different reasons, and uh, all the Covenant are closing in. So Cortana says to Chief, you gotta choose. Either the artifacts, get them out of here, or save your team. You can't do both. And then he's like, yeah, but you can do both. And what he's referring to is that if she controls his body fully, she'll be able to. She'll be so good that she can do both of those things. Um, yeah. And and Which before we get into also... the me mechanics of of that, I was just gonna say like that 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 happens. And by the end of the episode, he is uh, controlled by Cortana and doesn't speak and just does everything efficiently. Yeah. It's the only cool scene in all of the show, by the way. No, it Cortana isn't. shooting people, everybody up. That was. Oh, cool. It was very stilly. It, I mean, it was silly. It was silly. I will grant you that. But it was the only bit where I was like, "Yeah, finally." Well, it's what I liked it about it. Like maybe that. five seconds, and I was done. I don't know why they didn't have it do that the whole time. <laughs> that's the big problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah the that's more, yeah. The more relevant. Like finally, the more and then what the I did right. appreciate about the finale is that it was like a sigh of relief because it finally was willing to let itself have some fun and inject yeah. some. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean. Like, yeah, oh, exactly. thank you. Where was this Halo I from the so, beginning? I didn't want. That's just. Why I, I didn't like it at all. all I, <laughs> no, I, 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 I agree, Rax. Cool. It's full of fucking problems. But like, I just appreciated that it took itself a little less seriously. It injected some jokes. You know where like Cortana has that bit about spaghettifying the crew. Like that actually kind of worked for me because I I liked oh, that man. it was like. I want it uh, to work, but I was too shocked. I was like, you kidding me? There's a chance that we could all die and she didn't tell anybody, but she didn't want to worry them? That doesn't make any fucking sense at all. You have yeah, to tell them. I, you're right, Mahler. I know. I, this is what I, I mean. I understand yeah, what I you're saying, but I couldn't have fun because I was too distracted by all the stupid. I was just like, why the fuck would this yes. be the way that it works? Yeah. I think, um, the, the thing is, I think a lot of people are saying it's like a big fan service moment, but to me, I, I feel like it's, it's about as shallow as the fan service can get. It doesn't even, like, we have them running around, getting into fights with, like, brutes, and then we play a bit of the music. It's, like, the only time that they really play, like, any Halo music in the show. But there's no real cool leveraging of, like, any Covenant vehicles or, like, the Fuel Rod Cannon. It's it's all, like, plasma pistols, ARs, and, Fucking, like, he picks up a needler. Gun. Our Spartan chooses to use a needler yeah. when he's, to begin, and, and he, the majority of the fight he's using a needler. It's like, where are your weapons, mate? You had, a, you had the choice of all of them. Why did you hey, pick up a needle? Oh yeah, come to dad. Oh man, don't Can't wait to use this needle. <laughs> Why do they only play the Halo theme like three or four times throughout the entire show? Because should have played I, "Blow Me Away." 
breaking benjamin the whole way through <laughs> man like yeah a, well the thing is is um i think the soundtrack in this show is a lot more mass effect than it was halo which is of course you can do that yeah. if you want but um it's a little bit awkward when you have arguably one of the well i would say definitely one of the best like overall soundtracks for like any video game series mm-hmm. and then you just never leverage it at all except well, the, mu- yeah. the music issue but sorry it, go ahead i thought they couldn't use the soundtrack is what my understanding would it was oh, but uh um, then the, the halo theme does show up in like four or five oh. tiny points oh you're saying you you're got the impression they weren't allowed to just because of the fact you weren't hearing it like and they kept changing or and you... because uh the the composers have some sort of lawsuit going on with uh i think that lawsuit Bungie with... or something like that i, I forget that that's with Bungie. that's not with microsoft owns all of that so they can use whatever music they want um i would imagine there's no issue they just right. didn't want to just well, yeah, I'm uh, curious to what degree Marty I'm... O'Donnell has like, no, the, ownership the, over his work. The you know lawsuit I mean? with Marty was all about that he wasn't Bungie, paid yeah. for for work. Uh, okay, it was for Destiny. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. for Destiny. Music. Of well, the it was also for the with Microsoft with the Halo soundtracks. I th- oh, it think. Wasn't. I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. I but I I'm pretty sure he he was basically suing because he kind of got screwed out of some money from Microsoft too. Oh, uh, because well, what I remember with the lawsuit was I think it had to do with stocks that he had in like Bungie. Part yeah, of yeah, like, that Bungie was that was for Bungie. Wrongful termination, I think, was part of it, and then there was the stuff with the music of the spheres. I don't know how much that because they have the theme and they have arrangements that they use in like Infinite that are rearrangements of the old. I, I'm pretty sure they own it all. They could have used it if they wanted to. They just didn't want to. Um, well, that's just for whatever crazy. Reason. Yeah, people I mean, it's, went it's crazy hard. over that moment though, where they they bait the. It's almost like the track isn't used meaningfully as a, a form of accentuating storytelling. It's just like it is a reference. Wow. It is a key jangle. Yeah, yeah. Because it would be an apt one. Usually they play like the Halo theme for like the Warthog run, at the end of Halo One and Halo Three. But this isn't a Warthog run. This is just a fight scene where he's fighting a bunch of brutes and just swinging around. And that really makes you going... conclude Spartans so much better. That it's like almost unfair to the to the covenant, which didn't you didn't get that impression. It doesn't really because like you know at the end when it's just like you know what what are you guys gonna do? Four Spartans in a hunkered down area with covenant coming for you, and it's like well they're gonna win, right? Well, so this I is think it's aspect. the way they portray how good they are. It's not like the Spartans. The Spartans don't work for their success. It's one of those we're just gonna stand here and not care if we're getting shot because we've got plot armor and we're just going to shoot them all. <laughs> and there is no sense of superior tactics, intelligent maneuvering in a battle. There's no sense of any of that. It's just they're just better say, because the plot says they're better. What the show the has lost, training. what the show has lost is the bigger picture, I think. So the bigger picture of this conflict is humanity is losing. The Covenant outnumber humanity. They have better ships. Um, they're beating humans. Spartans are, in, as individuals, the most competent, like, people in, in, in terms of battle. They're better than brutes, elites. Like, they're worth a lot more than all of those. Uh, and they work with the military, because they always work with the military. You always have, like, Marines with you on missions. They're part of the military apparatus. And Spartans are really effective, but they can't win the war on their own, really. Like, it's it's got to be people working together. They're not superheroes. You know, like they're part of the military. They're super strong and they're really competent and they can achieve a lot of incredible things on their own. Like Chief does a lot of amazing things on his own. Um, but it's not like this, where it's like, yeah, don't send Marines to back us up. We can do it on our own. Oh, we that can, was so stupid. You know, yeah. we'll go on our own and we yeah. can do these crazy fights up close while fighting all of these brutes. As far as I can it's, tell, this um, this mission is incredibly important. And they're just like, well, we'll get it done. Karen Gossi- Karangoski says, this is our first incursion into Covenant-controlled territory. And he's like, no, you'll lose 10,000 Marines. Uh, send Silver Team. We can do it. It's like, I don't see how you and Marines wouldn't help. Exactly. Um, well, they never what ends up, what ends up the saving the day? Let's be honest. In. It's a fucking Pelican. That's what saves the day. It is the Pelican, which Cortana could have brought in to help much earlier in the battle. But I'm suggesting I think anyone to. with that Pelican probably could have done Like a normal pilot. It seems that she's just firing at the general you know, army. Well, yeah, because the pelican kills, like, hundreds of them. Imagine you um, had two pelicans, or maybe even uh, three. I made, I made a video on this kind of subject a long time ago. It was, uh, is Halo still a military sci-fi uh, I remember that video. Shooter. Yeah. 
And that video was all about kind of like the demilitarization of Halo, where in five and in infinite and now in the tv show there's like this bizarre separation with the spartans and the marines because the first three games in reach you know the marines take part in the story i mean even the whole reveal of the flood it happens to the yeah. marines it's the you know? human army yeah and and it adds character and life and charm and humor and uh, a, a semblance of uh, relatability and people for you to care about people that chief cares in a, about in, in a chain the of story. command well it's, it's because more, oh, don't say that chain of command words yeah. this well, show doesn't give a fuck about chain of command well captain captain keys is important because he like you know you see all those people on the bridge and their pilots and or, or whatever and then they land on the ring and then you gotta go you know scrounge up an effective resistance and the show just seems to like in even newer halos just seems to kind of want to distance itself from the military aspect and the marines which i've never really understood i think i think it's um you know how like a lot of people said halo 5 was like power rangers with like them jumping around with their crazy jetpacks and everything <laughs> I think, yeah it is I think, yeah i think it's um i think it's like inadvertent i think it's just um like a because I, like I said, I replayed Reach yesterday. Reach is like hyper military oriented. Every mission is presented through the lens of like this is a military operation, and a lot of the the cinematography is through satellite imagery, cameras mounted to like vehicles and the helmets. Um, it's like a very military oriented thing where you've got the Spartans working with command, working with the military, of doing coordinate like evacuations working with different branches of the military to conduct their missions. So like when they go into space to put the, the, um, the super carrier to like blow up the super carrier with the, um, like they're working, they're working with different factions in the military, trying to think about the allocation of resources as well. Like we have limited resources. We have limited things that we can achieve. We need to be strategic in what we do. It's very clear that the Spartans are part of the military. Like it's, it's all, it's a team effort. Like, Chief does a lot of great things on his own, but it's not just Chief. I mean, we've been seeing the Halo 3, it's like a coalition. You have humanity and, like, the elites working together to stop the Covenant. It's people working together. Um, but, like, I it think almost it, feels like... It highlights a, a greater point in fiction where I think we can all agree um, we like it when characters that are supposed to be smart make smart plans, right? Yep. Game of Thrones, like season 8 is mm. prime example of that right where it just it just characters should if you're planning a battle strategy i like knowing what the plan is i, I want to understand the logic behind it yeah i like knowing you what know? the fuck is happening yeah and it's it's funny how the games with a hell of a lot less time because i only have like one hour of cutscenes per game have enough time to be like oh, the, the the fleet that took Reach was way larger than this one. It's like, well, that's narratively because they didn't know that they were going to Earth. That was an accident because they were looking for the Ark. And then it explains why the operation is playing as, as it is and why it's not like a complete overwhelming loss. And I guess there's probably something worth highlighting. I mentioned it earlier. The Covenant is such a non-factor in this show that you would think that they're not that threatening at all when mm. in the games they are an existential threat to humanity that is looming constantly. Like Reach has an overwhelming sense of dread throughout the whole thing. It's like, yes, it's scary. Bad things that, are going to happen. It's, it's very scary that the Covenant are on Reach. It is very important that we stop them before they can launch their missions. And then when you blow up the supercar, it's like, oh, we, yes, we did it. We, we stopped them. And then slip space rupture detected, slip space rupture. Yeah. Oh my God, it's <laughs> like the whole Covenant yeah. fleet. It's over. We're done. It's finished. And then the last half of that campaign is like, desperately trying to achieve your objectives while yeah, the planet we gotta is evacuate moving. we gotta we're, we gotta run it's we're running well, for our lives so, so that we could fight another a, day it was a moment that i forgot but in the mission uh i think it was it, it's the new alexandria the first mission in new alexandria this is after the covenant you've been separated from like noble for a while you go to the planet you you help civilians try to escape you get on a falcon and as you're moving past, you're just watching as like Marines with civilians by them are just getting demolished by it. They're, they're left, it's everything's falling apart. Like the military can only do so much in such an overwhelming situation. People get left behind, people die, and you can't save them. It's like all of these things sort of help establish clearly the stakes of this universe, which is that this is a big, like the coming in is scary, the flood are even scarier. 
it's incredibly overwhelming odds against you. But if you watch the show, you would get the impression that the Covenant aren't that scary at all. Um, They're kind of strange. Yeah, like everything that you would think about them that I think the show expects you to believe relies on you knowing what the games are. And so in that sense, I think the show does a really bad job of establishing in its own story the nature of the Covenant, how scary they are, and the threat that they pose. Think about what really, she says. Do you remember what they send to collect that first uh, artifact in episode one? It's like, how many even elites are there? It's like five? And then a mostly other things. Like, what I'm getting at here is just like, wow, you know, you'd expect them to send all kinds of shit that are really threatening. and yeah, yeah, well, why not? It's like one of two artifact pieces. artifact is that important. Yeah, it's that important to the Covenant. They will send a fleet. They will show up at slip, slip space. They will kill anything that moves. They will take it. Well, and so yet apparently they just spent... Yeah, well, they sent a dozen elites, and that was apparently well, think, in their minds enough. Well, think about it. The elites were there for long enough to dig out this excavation site enough to get access to the artifact. They've probably been on Madrigal for a while. Where are the... Where's the, where's the cruiser? Where are... And also... Even after you fight them on Madrigal, is there no concern on your part that Madrigal might be glassed? You know, like you've got the artifacts. Maybe they'll be digging around for it, but you're not concerned. Well, about they leave. Overall mil- they do leave. That's the um, thing. Then- Madri- you have the initial fight on Madrigal, and then after that, it's just they. It's it. No one cares. No, the UNSC don't show up to collect the elite bodies and a, a technology. No, the and... the locals don't go back really. Um, the Covenant, I guess they don't care anymore. Even though they found a human inhabited planet, I guess they just don't care. They have better things to do. When... It just it stops. Well, it's just they exist only when we need them to exist for the sake of conflict. But then otherwise, they're just a non-factor because we got to focus on the insurgency subplot with Quan. And we got to spend all these episodes exploring the humanity of Master Chief while he's walking around in like Reach City. It's just we are we are poorly allocating our time to things that we need to establish. And if there's one thing that the show needs to establish, it is what are the stakes of this there's conflict? A threat, yeah. Because here's Cause another Master example. Chief says we got to use this to stop the Covenant in, well, in this war. I'm and I'm like, you'd I'm be forgiven you for up. forgetting there's a war at all. I'm, well, I'm glad you brought that up because um, the, they assume that Halo is like some sort of weapon. We know it's a weapon because of the games, but there's nothing in the show to tell us that it would yeah, be a weapon. Yeah, we brought they that up a couple of, times. This assumption kind of that Halo is. is a weapon. Yeah, or, or that it, it it's meaningful in any way whatsoever. Like, it's, it, they don't know what the keystone is. They don't know that it will guide them. To, and remember, the only reason they figure out what Halo means is because when Kai removed her, like, implant... She was speaking the covenant language around Miranda, and then she's uh, like, "Oh, think of asking you people who've interacted with Covenant for a long time." That was awful. Oh, yeah, so oh, fucking God. awful. Yeah. Uh, see, okay. Yeah, it's just yeah, for anybody much. who isn't picking up the pieces, there they crack Sangheili translations because the Spartans are just like. By the way, we've picked up some words for Sangheili. By the way, just yeah. yeah. By the way, they just know them and then they help them out and they're like, Oh, sacred ring, Halo, and And then they they play the Halo music. It's like, God damn you people. It's like, (laughs) if they'd never brought it up, we'd never have any issue in in this, in a sense of like, Wait, translation. Well, why wouldn't you just start at record everything from their suits, from all the things that are heard, from all the the interactions you've ever had with all of Covenant, and try and match it with things they're pointing at or commanding other people to do? And you have a huge cross section, linguists working on this all the time. Why would you rely? On one curious scientist and someone, a bunch of Spartans just being like, pretty sure l- l- is Apple. It's like, really? Okay. Well, there, oh. there are no other, not only are there no other scientists in, there are no scientists in the base, except there for Miranda There are two scientists and that humans have, oh, Halsey well, there and is, Miranda. There is, yep. there is her assistant buddy who only exists to die that? so that Halsey can well, escape. Don't, don't forget his other famous scene. Yeah, oh, he has one uh, other trait. Dude, that's a yeah. whole thing in this show, is that bizarre fucking, like, clone lady. Oh, All right, yeah, well, oh, yeah when he tries lady. to sexually yeah. molest the, the clone. Really fucking weird. Nowhere. It's so weird. I don't understand what they were doing. Yeah, that was, I yeah, think that was fun. They had this one, like, little scientist guy who they wanted to make needlessly creepy with that kissing scene. And yeah. They have this little brief exchange of dialogue before that kiss where it's like, 
will it hurt? And he's like, oh, yes. <laughs> like, in a really oh, sort of creepy that, way yeah. where he's holding the syringe, well, like, he kind of relishes so the fact that this is going to be painful and, and it just, mm. like, comes out of nowhere. And then he I leans think. in for the kiss. And I feel like that creepiness was only done so in the finale, a Spartan when he could dies. kill that guy yeah. with absolute, um, like, yeah, uh, we wouldn't oh, mind so as the audience because we're like, well, he was yeah. creepy. Yeah. Right. Way, guys, I think. Right. In that guy's so why, death, I think the audience was meant to go, yeah, they killed the creepy dude. So uh, I the didn't get that vibe. I was just like, I don't know how I well, feel the only, about that. It, it too feels busy like the Kai... only reason that... What's that, sorry? I was, I, was just, I was too busy being angry that Kai, of course, took her fucking helmet off. Yeah, because yeah. So to, to understand what's happening there, Halsey's in big trouble. She's trying to escape Reach, and Kai like runs on, jumps on the ship, gets inside, and then takes off her helmet. And turns her back on the creepy scientist guy to yell at Halsey. Oh, so the Spartans, everybody! Guy, the creepy scientist guy hits her in the head with like I don't know, like a baseball bat, and then she kills him. And she's distracted for long enough that Halsey gets to an escape pod and gets away. And this is yeah. how she gets away ultimately in the whole show. And it's like, man, Kai, why'd you take your helmet off? Like, I gotta see that, that face. We got to see the face, otherwise they can't emote. It's not like in the video games, Master Chief emotes through body language, like leaning in or no, you know, putting a hand on a Marine's shoulder or and nodding. Even what little dialogue he has. Yeah. It's not like but, when he finds Cortana in high charity infested with the flood and then he kneels down and he's like resting his hand on the pad and like leaning in that that tells me something about him. You know, that he's like happy, he's warm, he's he's happy, he's found Cortana. Nah, I'm thinking that's too from... subtle. Too subtle. Yeah, like, it's really subtle when Chief is like, when they arrive on the Ark, and then he gets his sniper and he just throws a nod to the ODST, or like when he looks over when they are, uh, when they're, they're doing their like, call back to the silent cartographer to make sure that the other spot like the other soldiers are okay before he jumps out it's mm -hmm. not like yep. chief emotes no. constantly yeah, in the video games it's easy watchers, they wouldn't be able to pick all that up that's true it's not you see that's lame video game compromises that you need to have your characters emote through animation not like mm. in television where you have their not face and you have to see their face take off the helmet every five fucking minutes and grimace not at the screen not like you can have them convey their emotions through their words and through tone of voice either. That's not possible. Wild Can't stuff. Can you imagine reading the script it's though sure. if you were this guy? The the creepy pivot science man who gets killed. Yeah. Yeah. Summary yeah. of your inclusion in this season. You just be like, okay. I think what's weird about the pervy stuff is that it literally leads to nothing. Yeah, at all. It's yeah. No, I think, I think John. Audience. I think Not John like has it. It's as simple as that. They did that scene so that we don't feel bad when they kill him. Right. Well, they they they, they wanted a scene where a, the Spartan does something really dangerous to like the human side of the war. You, you know, like just like one of the staff, right? Like just because you you see like the just what it is they're capable of, like the that. The, that danger, I, that wrath or whatever, just unleashed on somebody who's like, oh, he's creepy, it's fine. You know. <laughs> they are, they're capable of a lot, like, surviving plane crashes. Oh, um, yes. Like, I know, <laughs> when the plane goes down and it explodes and she's okay, but Dude, they have no on, shame when... with that one. They just have her climb out of, like, an inferno, and it's like, oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because well, well, they, they had it with, uh, in episode five, when um, John Halo piloted a banshee right into a phantom, and it caused a massive explosion. It even took down Kai's shields, but Chief's yeah. okay, because Chief can yep. just survive being in the middle of an explosion, I guess. But meanwhile, later in episode nine, when Riz gets a plasma pistol, that blows her armor off. So a plasma pistol is apparently more powerful than... a whole plane exploding with you in it i guess yeah the power levels and stakes are virtually non-existent in this show which is ironic yeah. considering in the games one of the benefit one of the good things that halo does is it very quickly teaches you how to recognize what threats are and how to deal with them this is a this is a this it can do that to me so i need to do this that's a that it can do this to me so i know how to deal with oh. it I know oh, about cool. what I can do yeah, over here. It's like this oh video God. game balance aspect that's absent from the games Chief entirely. Well, dies well, several times over in this scene. <laughs> yeah, he does. Dude, it I takes down Kai's shields, like, and it doesn't kill yeah. him, really. The the power of weapons and stuff is really inconsistent throughout the show. Because, like, right, right off <laughs> the bat, when the, the plasma blasts take out those, like, kids in the forest, 
like you really get a sense that it's impactful, right? Like one girl is like vaporized from the waist up hmm. with like one shot. Yeah, but then it's like, like a massive ball of hot plasma just went through you, and it's like it's as if you weren't even there because it's alien weapons. Yeah, I actually I like that beat at the start. I did too. Then, yeah. In, yeah. in a later episode, after the first ten minutes of the entire show, it just goes away. They front loaded all of that violence into the like the first ten minutes of the show, and then it's gone forever. You never um, see it again. Sorry, right. I, what, you, sorry, sorry, let me I, just finish we, this. But what yeah, I'm comparing it to in uh, I'm comparing it in my head to an episode five where you see uh, Spartan getting pelted by the same plasma bolts, but they're not even moving or reacting to it. So it's like, okay, I get it that it's hitting their shields. So is there some kind of like zero point energy thing where it's absorbing all the kinetic energy and they don't have to like flinch when they're getting hit? But then no, that's not the case because there's shots after that where they're getting pelted by plasma fire and then they're kind of reacting to it like, uh, uh, like bouncing around. And it's just like, figure out what the measure of yeah. the force of these plasma blasts are and be consistent with it. Like it's just well, trying I mean, to tell me the show is inconsistent. Well, <laughs> we have another example. In I guess asking eight. too much. Sorry. sorry. When, when Sheaf is fighting uh, Vanek and Riz, uh, he shoots some pistol shots at uh, Vanek. And then later on, Cortana says two shots to take down his shields. It's like, okay, so I guess they don't recharge. And also six pistol shots will take down a Spartan shield but flying into an explosion with a banshee through a phantom won't do it. Yeah. What are the power but levels? But, like, they have to oh. recharge. They can't not recharge. That doesn't make sense. Of course they recharge. Yeah. I, I'm, to, not, even, I'm add... not appealing to the game right now. I'm just saying, like, the reality of this this outfit. Like, what are you telling me? The, the shields are, like, are they on batteries and they run out once you've shot them enough and you have to replace them? It's like, no. But we see, it, we see it recharge in episode one. Yeah, they it do. actually recharges. Chief shield goes down, it recharges because they wanted to have the sound effect from the game, but they don't care to be yeah. consistent. Yeah. But they don't care about the, the mechanical like, implications of that sound. Oh, oh, you've got the scene where Chief, without his armor, uh, basically manages to hold his own against two fully armored Spartans. It's pretty retarded, like, yeah. It's insane. <laughs> um, th does the armor do nothing? Like, what the hell? How could Chief win this fight? Oh, well, he, he also had Cortana flat. helping him tactically, right? Yeah, like, she take did. Over nearby. Like, what does that guy over there? Because when she, she activates the car, we were like, okay, that's something. But then she just, like, doesn't help for ages. I feel bad. I feel bad she, for Jen she, Taylor. I feel like she, she got brought in. She advises to strike another Spartan in a very specific area because she's calculated. Like, she's, like, hacked. Yeah. She's accessed the other Spartan's armor system and figured out where the, like, weak point is. So, like, thing, she though, can't if walk she, it if down. she can or... access it. it yeah, yeah. That's probably... But unfortunately... I'm not saying it's I well think... done. I'm just saying, like, that's an element <laughs> thrown yeah. in where Cortana say... is giving him advice to, like how to speaking, get through the situation. Go ahead. Speaking of Cortana, a lot of people say, hey, she's like in the games. She's not. I don't even know why not people are saying that. Um, now, that's that's one thing. But also, like, I don't really understand Cortana in this show. I don't know what she wants. I don't really know what her goals are. Uh, and I don't know how it informs the decisions that she makes. Like, Here, If we can all the time. clarify for people who haven't seen the show, she, correct me if I'm wrong, according to the show, she was created to eventually take over Chief's body and make the ultimate Spartan, right? Yes, that is the yeah, purpose behind like... her creating yeah. the show. Um, well, I think that's what Halsey wanted, but Cortana kind of, she's like her own agent. That's part of the way she Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Built. That's what she was created yeah. to do, and she eventually decides she doesn't want to, but then, funnily enough, ends up doing exactly that by the end. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She does do that in the end. I guess it's just like she's in the show, but she doesn't really you don't get the impression that she's actually like curious about anything or wanting to actively participate in things, keep an eye on what's going on, talk to Chief and get to know him like she says she wants to. Mm. Um mm -hmm. she she doesn't seem to have any goals at all. She exists only when she is needed by the plot, and that's really lame. Um since this is like a dynamic that's incredibly useful narratively and i was thinking about this the other day you've got the scene up where you know she basically makes the choice to take control wouldn't it have been interesting hold on i wrote this down let me remember because i remember i, th I was thinking yeah like wouldn't it have been interesting if chief because after mac is dead he's the only one that he knows of who can interact with forerunner artifacts imagine if he's like no i'm gonna kill myself um nobody can use these i'm gonna i'm gonna kill myself um like because they're overrun 
they're gonna die anyway so it's, or like he doesn't want to be captured so he'll make sure that he kills himself and then cortana makes the choice to take over against his wishes to save his life and to retrieve the artifact wouldn't that be an interesting source of conflict that you just kind of didn't use? It's certainly better mm. because as it stands, uh, I've talked to a couple people about this, including, of course, uh, when me and Fring and Rags watched it. This is a little bit confusing, this scene. Like, um, mm -hmm. oh, it, yeah. it, it seems at first that it's something she can just switch on whenever she wants. But then, like, it almost feels implied that he needs to be dead before she can do it. Yes. Yeah, because his armor shuts down and he flatlines so and then... Takes what I want to know is, is, is she controlling his actual corpse or is she just controlling the suit? He has to be alive, right? But he must be alive. alive. Like, but, <laughs> exact, no, that's a great point, Mahler, right? Because they establish that in sound design, right? They have like a yeah. POV shot in the helmet or something and you hear like that beep, beep, beep. So you assume that, okay, he's, he's a corpse now. And that's why Cortana can go in and take over 100%. Doesn't so, even make sense. Though, because I don't know how he's going to come back from that. I really believe it because, well, of course, they have to bring him back. They can't leave the guy dead. They have to, well, they really have to bring him back, too. But also, like, mechanically, you're in his brain. Like, if he's dead, what can you do? He's dead. He has no circulation. He has no blood flow. You're in his brain. You were linked to his brain. If Wait, he's maybe, dead, you're dead, right? Maybe she's doing it manually to keep him semi alive until maybe. season yeah. two. I don't know <laughs> why you would have dead. I don't know why he would need to be but killed. Gentlemen, but... it's it's been a pleasure. I do have to get going. Oh hmm. dear. Well, do you thank have you. any final final thought that you want to add? Like if there's anything that you wanted to throw in before you head off about the show? Hmm. Well, despite all the crap we've talked, I feel like there are some aspects that are good, if not all right. And I think a lot of the art style on certain pieces of like like chief's armor looks really good to me yes, it does. i think Great. some of the um some of the warthogs and like the marine outfits i feel like the costume designers did a pretty good good job yeah. overall and i i think uh th there's there's definitely uh an art style to the show even if some parts of it are like really weird but um yeah i i think it you know we get wrapped up in like the negative critiques uh, and just kind of go down that rabbit hole. But sometimes it's nice to find good things to say about something that we really, really don't like overall. We do. There were sometimes. things I liked about it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I could see that that's actually pretty common these days. I find that um, it's the writing that's the problem. Everything else is lots to compliment. And it's like, yeah, that old chestnut. Yeah, people are working really hard from the production standpoint in terms of the, yeah, the props and stuff. Like, the props are really cool. And I like that the Covenant look like the Covenant. That's yeah. so much, so much of it is in the fucking writing. It's, like, frustrating when they don't pay close enough attention to that, you know? Or they just yeah. get amateurs to do it, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It all hinges on the writing. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you guys for having me on. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, dude. thank you so much for coming. Um, do you want to tell the people in the audience where they can where they can find you and why they should subscribe? Yeah, you can subscribe to the Act Man for all kinds of awesome content. Do all sorts of video game reviews, commentary, critiques, that sort of thing. Mm. So just look it up if well, you care to check it out. If you've enjoyed his commentary on Halo, he's got plenty more on his channel. Oh do well, yes, I have a right bit too much. <laughs> Well, That's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, uh, link is in the description for anybody looking for that. And thank you so much for joining us, especially for three whole hours. That is actually oh, long yeah. for uh, yeah. a, lot, a lot of people. So I appreciate it, man. And um, yeah, of course. Have a good night, and we'll catch you around sometime. Uh, later, All right, dude, good to talk to you, Act Man. Good talk. Hey, you likewise. Yeah, I'll add you guys on Discord if you want to chat in the future, or just cool, message cool. me shit, vice versa. Mm -hmm. Right on, man. All right. All right. Peace. See you later, dude. See you later. Um, that that th that finale uh scene that I just remembered. Remember the part where it's like the prophet commands that because Maki is dead, that they can't kill Chief because they need him. No, they and, and then, then the uh, brute proceeds to kill him. <laughs> yeah, just smashed him. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, and even it's the prophet's so like, "What are you doing?" And I'm just like, "Why are you? Why are you portraying them this way?" Speaking of what are you doing, um, Kai or Vanek, they're right there. Kill him.
they're the prophets. It's they're insane. the leaders of the whole covenant. Yeah. Kill them. They're I right don't know there. What they're doing having the fucking Someone prophets floating the, right the, above them. Someone said in the chat the brood is Atriox. It's like, yes, definitely. That's what they're trying to set up. They're trying to set up a big beef with Atriox and like, ah, Chief shot him in the face. And I that annoys me actually. That's like, yes, we at 343 must have our Atriox dude, not Arbiter or the Shipmaster or uh or um ta uh, damn it. What's well, in two? Halo two, Tartarus. That's right, Tartarus. Yeah. We can't have any of those guys. It's gotta be Atriox, our our OC character. Our yeah. original character character. <laughs> right. The new big know. bad brute. Well, yeah, he is the new big bad brute, even though he wasn't even in Halo Infinite, right? It was just flashbacks. Oh, yeah, Halo I guess he isn't in, like, any game, like present-day gameplay. Yeah. Man, yeah, just to highlight like... to people, though, because I got a good shot of it. The demon lives, says the prophets, that are floating literally, like, seven meters above the Spartans. Wow. Yeah. Like, man. One, and man. this is the thing, Cortana could literally have just killed them both, one shot each. Yes, Cortana had no reason not to be able to- Dude, she could have single-handedly ended the whole- like, Exactly! Like, <laughs> Unless this is Halo Wars mode, where the prophets have little shields that can tank a shit ton. That they have their little shields, but Chief can fight them and then jump on and punch him in the neck. Oh, totally. Well, like... I, I, they didn't address any of it. They they just want them there for commentary, and they couldn't figure out where to put them. <laughs> they're just like, yeah, I don't know, they're, they're here, shut up. Hovering. And how, how, <laughs> yeah. how lame is it when you think about, because this is something that's absent in the show. That, so, you may have noticed that we've made a lot of comparisons to the games. A lot of the reason why that's happening is not to say that, like, the show is worse because it is different from the games. A lot of it is to highlight how there was material in the games that was really useful that was ignored. One of them being, all three of the prophets, they're ironic, and, like, that's in their personalities. Truth is a liar, and a very good liar. He's a very yes. scheming, like, manipulative person. Regret, well... He certainly regrets what happened to him, like when right. he was on the ring and got turned into Flood. And Mercy, who gets put out of his misery by Chief, not Truth, when he gets infected by the Flood. They all have very distinctive personalities that come through um, in, in their scenes. But here, like, they're all, I wouldn't fault anybody if they didn't know what their names were and which one was whom. Yeah, but they're I very obvious. In the I, game. I was about to say, I don't know which is which. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the main one in this show is, I think the main one in the show is Mercy, not Truth. Whereas like Truth is the ultimate antagonist of of Halo, essentially. Um, but you wouldn't know it in this show, so it's kind of hilarious. You had more time than the games had. The games only had a few hours of cutscenes, and you achieved a hell of a lot less with the main I'm antagonist of the series potentially. Mm -hmm. How insane is that? Your professional writers. Joe Staten was not a professional writer. He was a video game developer, and he, and he did a better job. That. Yeah, he did a hell of a better oh, job. They man. they all did. That's the reason why it's so annoying. Is like a, a group of like video game developers, none of them with professional writing credits, had a much yeah. better understanding of what they needed to do to create a good story. I mean, what earlier we were talking about how like Halo One would make like a great movie on its own. Halo mm -hmm. 2, man, is fucking Halo awesome. Two. I like really the, like it. Because this is going to sound like a stupid comparison, I know, but like the, I think of Halo 1 and 2, in some ways I compare them to like the first two Godfather movies, where it's like the first one, it was like focused, like uh, there were a lot of characters in the first one, but like Michael Corleone kind of frames that whole movie. But then in the second Godfather, you have this juxtaposition between... Michael Corleone's storyline in the 1950s and uh, what's his name? Vito Corleone in the 1900s, 1910s or whatever. And uh, those two stories told back and forth, they kind of inform one another dynamically as you watch the movie and they serve to both paint a broader picture of what it means to be in the case of the godfather like what it means to be an american what it means to be an immigrant like america is this beacon of hope and how like this everyone was in this kind of lawless mess in the early 1900s and that eventually evolved into this society that developed into the 1950s it was much more complicated than you have the in introduction of the rico laws that took down the mob but anyway i'm just saying like 
the Halo games kind of did that sort of thing, where like the the first Halo game is like really focused on Chief, and the the Covenant are just like the bad guys basically in that in that game. But then Halo Two all of a sudden really fleshes them out into their own thing, where they have their own societal structure, they have their elite class who name them, they give so themselves quickly. right, yeah, and what the it's it's so it fucking pisses me off right because these these television showrunners i assume they didn't incorporate arbiter in because they felt like oh nobody's going to connect with an alien Hilarious. Yeah, that might have that might have been one so. of the reasons that's, i think that's their main thought process we got to have that's why it's so human 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 everything's I'm about happy, human there's yeah. just no alien anything yeah and yeah, yeah and her so inclusion when it's right. like have they not seen guardians come on yeah, like, at this point, I would hope that we can get... I mean, dude, 2004, on original Xbox graphics, you cr they created a character who is a hell of a lot more endearing than anybody in this show. It's not the... It it's all about the writing. It's who these characters are. Like, that's that's the important part. Um, yeah. It's, it's just... It and you're right, like, Halo 2 blew the doors open on the Covenant. Um, like, Halo 2 was a really essential piece... It's the reason why you can have Halo 3 come back to just, like, Chief's POV without feeling like you've hugely lost anything in terms of the Covenant perspective, because you've got it now. Um, yeah. I think all you think about when you think about the games is all of these amazing opportunities that, like, you guys remember the 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 commercials for ODST, where it was like the, it's, it's basically the story of that guy's life, where it starts at a funeral, then he signs up to be an ODST, jumps into battle. Um, and then it ends with him as like a captain, and then we follow that, and then it's like moves on to the perspective of another new, younger ODST. Like that's two minutes worth of just taking the premise of Halo, um, like using the premise to tell a story in this world. Absolutely. And in two minutes, in two minutes, they achieve like more emotional highs in an ad, in an advertisement than they did yes. in this show. Like, in well, terms of the, uh, the whole reach, Halo 3, is particularly Halo 3. It really for a game that was a that was for a bunch of dude bro gamers, right? It really strongly leaned into the emotional aspect of Halo as like a world, a living world full of people and characters who are recounting the like the Halo 3 ads about soldiers who are old now recounting the events in a documentary style of the things that happened in Halo 3 um well, yeah it's it's the little touches because like in that odst trailer one of the things in that that i adore it's like you didn't have to do it but you did and it just adds so much is that um the captain he has like a a, a torn up like it's a really worn out odst like flag that he laid across the grave and then he like grabs it and tucks it back in underneath his armor it's a thing that he carries around just so that if any of his soldiers die they can at least have that dignity it's like holy shit that's called character writing. Um, yeah. And he didn't even need to say anything. And then it's the same with like Deliver Hope. That's a really great ad as well. It's an ad, but it's telling a story. And it's like, dude, they had you less wanna, money. You want to play the game time. to be a part of this world. And this whole show is entirely built time. to tell a story. And yet this is what we got. Well, yeah, comparison. because think about all of the potential stories that you could have told. You could have had it be, like, about the ODSTs. You know, you could have had the show be about ODSTs on, like, a mission. They get stranded and they have to try and survive, rescue civilians. You could have it be split POV, where you have, like, a Marine or an ODST. You have somebody in the military command, maybe, like, Lord Hood or something, or Keys. Or, or like, you could have Sergeant Johnson be a POV character. And a weirdo mission in this show, Sergeant Johnson. I don't know why he's not in this show. He's, like, one of the most... Whatever. Oh yeah, that's, he's uh, arguably you know, the best character in all. I was gonna Halo say you can't whatever they, that. Yeah. People are gonna want us to definitely no. mention that. No, big time. Like I, I don't understand why you would take arguably the most important character aside from Chief Cortana and um and Arbiter, and not have him in it. Uh, weird choice. I don't understand why he's not in it. But they brought in keys. Well, they brought in Keys, and they brought in Miranda Keys, but they didn't bring in Sergeant Johnson, who's Well, like... they, they brought them in, Ray swapped them, which is fine, but it, it, it clearly mm. seems like they really wanted to make a very diverse story, which is fine, well, the, but then they is... didn't have Johnson, who is arguably the best character in all Halo, and he's a black guy. It just seems odd to me, strategically, you know, I, if that's your I, goal. I, 
the, I the suspect. Best... Go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. Go for, no, go for it. Go for it. I suspect that the reason for that is that they don't want to blow their wad completely with this first season, and they want to have like those headlines that are come gonna come out before season two comes out, where it's like we've secured the cast member for this role, Sergeant Johnson or whatever, and now the Arbiter. We got Keith David to do the voice for it, right? Like they need. You might be right. Some they can't. can't, Like shove everything into season one and leave nothing for season two to act as a hook. I I feel like it seems so backwards. It's like the Marvel thing. Instead of giving us something to be excited about, they're saying, "No, no, no. You will be excited about a thing that will happen." maybe, instead of giving us that thing to actually care about. Yeah. I can already see that now, like, one of the later ads for season two will in- involve, like, they're struggling in some fight, and then they're like, and the sergeant's the here, sort of and then, like, a d- door opens, and it's whoever's and playing he's got him. a cigarette, he's got yeah. a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, totally. I, 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 mean, it's... I don't really get where they go from having Master Chief, you know, fucking dead. Uh, oh, they're gonna bring it back. They don't give a shit. Yeah. But like, man, you kill him at the end of season one. Wow. <laughs> like, I don't know. I think the show might actually shocked. not have him come back because they think he's no, complete he'll... as a character. No, no, no. I, I think, I think Mola said it and I agree with him. I think he'll be back at the end of episode one uh, of season two. I don't think they're going to fully commit to that because we got to have the actor's face. We got to, well, then again, they could. It we... feels weird for them to have Dude, done this whole thing season. Is because the actor can still be present. That's true. Yeah. Well, so, but we need to have the actor's face. And I think they were deliberate in not showing us what it looks like for Cortana to make him speak. What does that sound like? What does it look like? It's like, we'll leave that. Because, yeah, because they can, they can mm-hmm. figure out exactly what they want to do. I assume it but would just for, sound like him. Well, it's, it's going to be strange just because of the fact that it's not going to... I say this as if I'm a fan of him as a character <sighs> or something... But, like, yeah. it's going to be her speaking through him, so it should, like, come across as much different if they were treating this uh, seriously. Like, just the things he chooses to say or how he says certain things and how he re- inflects certain things. Like, it should all be, uh, like, coated with Cortana. The thing is, I don't know either of them that well enough to even spot necessary differences, but I just don't think that they would commit to this. Um, She's more quirky than he is and fun. I would assume... That instead that they will bring him back and just work again on their relationship. I assume they're going to think that that's more important and that this will be a moment for them to have proven that she can trust him and he can trust her sort of thing. Which, yeah. That's I don't know why sad. they put him in, in his head. I feel like there's a lot less stupid. utility in having him in his head than having her on a chip that put into computers and stuff. And that, right, that's all it needed to be, was a chip that goes into the helmet. I don't understand the fucking brain injection thing. And I the don't understand why, why yeah. a clone had to be sacrificed to so, create that AI either. That was also, so, I think that was to make Holsey evil again. No, that's, it's because <laughs> yeah, that's it's how, up very well could be the case. Because that, yeah. uh, that's how Cortana was created in the games, is she's based on Halsey's cloned mind. No, 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 but, sorry, it's the show's opinion, it's oh, not mine. Oh, yeah, 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 I get you. Uh, but but to touch the reason why they don't have him on a ch- uh, her on a chip is because he takes his helmet off all the time, so it wouldn't work. <laughs> and they wanted to have Cortana constantly oh, right. be physically seen. They they really they don't even justify that. that though. Look, you just blew my mind. That that totally makes sense to me because like yeah. like they have the character take his helmet off so much, but they don't <laughs> want to restrict Cortana to just. Which the parts hilarious. where his helmet is on, because it doesn't happen often enough. Well, Fuck, really that funny. makes so much sense. It's uh, but it sucks, but it makes so much sense. <laughs> like, Cortana's belly in it. She's belly in the show. Like, yeah. they brought back Jen Taylor, but they didn't give her anything to do. So, such a waste. Right. Like, she barely gets to speak. She barely has a role in the story at all. Which, again, I know it's an adaptation. I guess it's just an interesting choice to have, essentially, the deuteragonist of the whole series be like a non-character like she's so unimportant well she comes off like... as annoying a lot of the time which i didn't well, want to feel that way you know it's she reminded on. me of alexa in south park <laughs> you know <that laughs> she's uh... new episodes where it's in the future yeah well, she's like she's definitely not the same because in the game she's sarcastic she's wry she's um yeah she's, she's got a whole pretty, personality not she's here confident and very yeah. confident and sa- and a bit sassy. That's like Cortana. The weapon. She's a is little quirky. like Halsey in a way. Well, that's kind of the point, right? Is like she is a bit like Halsey because she is partly Halsey. Um, but I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, and I guess that's the thing is if she's based on your cloned brain, why is she so different from you? Um, yeah, I don't get it. 
Well, yeah. yeah, her going uh, uh, rogue doesn't... There's nothing to that in the content, like, in terms of just us well, seeing that well, as a potential. Some f freak what occurrence, I suppose, and the transference of, like, a human consciousness transferring That's to a what I'm digital at. form. Is it, I guess. I the way they deliver it to us is so wishy-washy that just anything could have happened, and we'd be like, okay. Yeah. Yep. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of like the show. Anything can happen, and that's okay. It's, you, you just gotta accept. I, Man, like, I'm just thinking now, as I was scrolling through my notes, the keystone, what the hell does it even do? What is it? You know, like, what it does it do? It accesses childhood memories. What do you mean? Whatever it, it needs it to access, yeah. It unlocks memories, it provides a map, it emits EMPs, and also emits a... Sh now you brought it up. The final, the a final convenient episode. shockwave to so, blow yeah. away unwanted yeah, characters. Occasionally, <laughs> you'll just yeah, it'll blast oh, people around. Sometimes well, it won't. Sometimes it'll really take out electronics. Sometimes it won't. Here's something really funny to think about. What if that's just what it was going to do anyway, and they didn't know? And then when they were doing the ceremony, it's like, yes, touch the keystone, and then she touches it, and all the the elites get flung off the cliff. Yeah, <laughs> just like, dude. Ah. And that finale scene was so funny. Like when uh, McKee, right? She touches the artifact, yeah. and it blows away everyone. Ex but the Spartans, they not get the blown prophets. away, but not to such a degree that they get blown off the platform. But all the elites get blown off. Like though the hundreds yeah. of aliens that came in all to like attack the Spartans, they all get blown off. So it was like the screenwriter taking a, a like a brush and dustpan and going, <laughs> "Okay, we don't need you anymore. Was like, go away, please. We need like, you to be gone for a little bit. Go was, away." Was that McKee's yeah. intention? I I, uh, think we have to I don't know. Because remember, it's all it started because she's watching Master Chief get beaten up, and she's like, "I can't take this anymore." Then put like as if to yeah. say, "I'm gonna help you" or, or something. I I don't. How would she know that was what it does? Though? I don't. This is what I'm saying. Visual it's storytelling. Yeah, you're making this weird for me to try and understand what's happening because it looks to me like she desperately has to decide in that moment: Do I pit, choose to help John? Do I choose to help humanity? And then she does, making her death tragic, quote unquote. Even so it's just like, yeah. But I don't. Could she have known that this is what it would do if she touched it? I don't. I don't think so. I guess. I don't know why she would, but fortunately, Magic. and I guess the good thing as well that the brute didn't just kill Chief like immediately. Oh yeah, there's a lot of that. Out, like, hey, 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 I'm a get you, Chief. Well, and, by oh, the way, um, the Chief can. Because <laughs> the other thing as well, maybe you can help me out on this because I remember us talking about it and I was still kind of confused. It's um, it only works for those two, but if Cortana takes over Halo, <laughs> Halo's body, uh, what is it like? <laughs> what does you it do? Like all those moms. Yeah. Is that it, Halo on the cover? It, it yes, makes, Halo. Halo's yeah. my okay. favorite character. Halo is a great character. It makes it so that it doesn't activate the thing if, if she's controlling him, right? Yeah, for whatever reason, when Cortana is essentially the consciousness in charge, it doesn't work. Now that's interesting to think about when it is a protein in their DNA, that makes them exactly. interact with artifacts. You'd think it would be an immutable aspect like of just protein. the body. But apparently it's like, I don't know, the four... Now, this leads us comfortably into an oh, interesting wait. sort of... Yeah. Because the other, another thing I wanted to add to that was then that he's able to, to activate it with gloves on, right? He is. And so... Which, um, he does that I'd, in the games too. That's not... That's not that, well, I don't care, right? Like, yeah. uh, uh, why would it matter. distinguish between whether or not he's being controlled by a person when it doesn't distinguish, like, fabrics and stuff? Like, so could he touch it with I, a stick? And that would, you know... I have no idea. I don't because know if the I'm suit were integrated with him biologically, I guess I could accept it. Um, but I just don't know how the mechanics work at all. The fact that it, like, detects your soul or something as to who is in control currently, like, I don't know. That seems a bit it's, weird. It's that... That yep. shift from the Forerunner in, like, again, this is just a comparison to the games, but in the games, you always got the sense that the Forerunners were not magicians. They weren't magical. They just had a highly advanced technology. And in this show, it really does seem like it It really is just sort of magic. Um. Well, I mean, that's, uh, that's the reason why I was thinking about this next part is because it's, um, Feels like another example of making changes without realizing what you've done. So, like, in the games, again, we'll do the comparison of what it was in the games. The Forerunners didn't, like, really, before 343 came along, the Forerunners never, like, intended for anybody to be, like, using the Halos and stuff after the fact. That's just kind of, like, a just, it just it's just a consequence. Humans are still around, so they can. But they didn't, like, leave them there with, like, the purpose of humans coming along to mess with it, because the Halos don't really have 
their purpose is a weapon of last resort. There's no, there's nothing magical or important religiously about them. They are weapons. They are tools. Um, so people being able to interact with them, it's just that's just an unintended byproduct. Um, yeah. Because that's what happens when a machine is left around. It, it it still works if it's got power and a key. Then it will work. It's a machine. Mm -hmm. uh, but from what I understand about the Halo installations, is that they were created by the forerunners for the purpose of studying the flood. So the flood was a pre-existing life form. The halos are used as a way of containing them and studying them. But then, as a last resort, if the flood were to be were to break out into the universe and start infecting everything, that the halo halo installations would also serve that function of doing a the blast or whatever it does to eliminate all life to eliminate their food source that's right yeah well, so that that's that's essentially what it is it's kind of the whole idea is that for as mysterious and interesting as the forerunners come across to humanity and the covenant they died um they died fighting an, an, an uh flood they couldn't beat them there's nothing there's nothing grand about it it's it's tragic in a sense um mm -hmm. If the show has it to where there are individuals who have a protein in them or like some connection to Forerunner stuff that leads them and guides them apparently to do things, like to, to lead to a certain place, um, why? Why why? Why would that be the case? Why would the Forerunner it, it, this is the problem is we don't yeah. have the answer now, but if the show is going to pull from the games that the flood that Halo is a weapon to kill all sentient life and it was to kill the Flood, you will need to have a reason for why the Forerunners would have people who are essentially selected to be able to interact with these Especially things and to what end. Mm -hmm. well, why? That's it. Why? Yeah, why would you want to have a reason? Because it seems counterintuitive as it's presented so far. Well, what I'm saying is, like, why would the Forerunners want anybody to be guided to Halo? Like, why would they want that? Um... Right. Why? Why is that a goal that they would have? If if the forerunners succeeded in their mission, that's the end. There is no more further purpose for the rings. Um. So why would you leave behind anything that would be like clues to lead people there and guide them through like these subtle things and teleport their minds to the ring? Why would you do that? Um. Yeah, and this 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 that. might be a problem that lies with the initial development of the game story right never mind the the tv show because it was designed to be a game first and foremost right and mm -hmm. like yeah. joe statton self-describes himself as the story duct tape guy who just kind of figures out a story that kind of tapes all the different game systems together that they developed to make a fun first person shooter and then you have mm -hmm. this television series crew coming along saying well, we're going to make a serious thing out of this <laughs> okay <laughs> a real serious thing <laughs> that's the that's the power of adaptation though they can they can clean it all up they have the source and they can be like right wherever you failed and especially in relation to having to cause mechanics gameplay to happen we can change it we have the benefit right. of being able to see how you managed to dry, write all your story and if there's like well known within the fan base like these couple of holes or things that don't quite add up you as a writer can be like ah oh, we can we can tweak all of them well before we put ourselves in a corner Instead, they have, like, spat on the source to the point of not even knowing which way they're facing anymore. Like, who knows where the show is actually trying to go. It's insane yeah. to think about that with a video game, you have to write a story around missions. The missions exist, and they are structured in a certain way, and you have to craft the story for those missions to work. In a show, you don't right. have to worry about missions. You don't need action scenes every episode. You can do yeah. whatever you want. Um, and yeah, you've, you've come across... I just do not understand like how any of this is meant to be leading anywhere that makes sense. I can't I can't make sense of it because it would seem that like the keystones are essentially the force. They like guide people to places they need to be, but I don't know how that would explain but why, you know? Like they do what the doesn't... plot demands. Yeah, I know what you mean. You're right. Well, it's just it's just because it draws us back to if the Keystones guide, it's like they guide Chief's family to settle on Aridinus 2 in that location, they guide the program to happen there, because that planet was uninhabited. What if they'd settled, like, elsewhere? What if they'd settled even a couple of kilometers in a different direction? Did it guide Halsey to abduct Chief, put him in the Spartan program? Did it guide him to do the mission on Madrigal? And to what end would it do all of these things? Who is doing this? And if there is a who who is guiding all of this, why would they not just reveal themselves? 
Like, unless yeah. we're doing some crazy, mysterious forerunner. But I don't believe they'll do that. I bet you they will do exactly what the games did. They go to Halo and they find out it's a weapon. And if that's the case, it's like, I don't understand. Why would you, why would it guide, why would it guide people to their self-destruction? The weapons were a last resort. They're not an awesome thing that you would want people to have access to, especially if you believe after you've done it, that nobody will be able to use these things anymore. The people who were capable of using these things would be wiped out. I, I mm -hmm. don't understand how it can work. Yeah. But I guess it might have something to do with that portal that is in Quan's lineage, which again, lucky that that guy dug a well where a portal was instead of where it was just dirt. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she saves survive. the universe by the time we hit, like, season three, if there is one. Well, she might, because there's probably going to be some connection mm. with her to, like, the Forerunners as well, and it's not going to make any sense. It's going to be... I mean, I, I would have had faith in the original game developers to go somewhere with it, but I have no faith in these television showrunners to do that, you know? I guess something I would say is I find it to be a less interesting idea, again, like, grand science fiction prophecies versus the cold reality that for as impressive as the Forerunners were, they couldn't beat the Flood, and this killed them. I think that's yeah. a really great, stark reality of this situation. The, like, yeah, the universe I like is scary. that. It's magical. It's, it's scary. There's a lot of scary things out there. And so, like, it, it establishes pretty clearly, if the Forerunners couldn't beat them, what chance does humanity have? Well, Master Chief's gonna do his best to save them. Through these crazy plans and then he has to account for like 343 guilty spark not wanting any of this to happen because he's got his own objectives i just i just prefer it um i think that it's more interesting than what they had here it's like you've taken something that was cool and you made it much more simple um yeah i i don't i don't know what the show is doing with halo like the installation well there's multiple installations there's like seven of them yeah. they're all controlled by the central point the, which the is arc. the arc yeah. right yeah and but the the first season of the show hasn't referenced at all um the flood or it, it's only ever shown halo in those weird flashbacks or i don't know they're not flashbacks but like visions i guess yeah, where yeah, it's him kind of shared visions not, the yeah ring. they're they are shared visions where it, it transports your consciousness to like someplace else because other people can be a part of it yeah Yes, the Halo vision. I, I feel like they're they're doing some Adam and Eve sort of thing, where like uh, cool. Master Chief and McKee yeah, are on this Halo, and they're meant to just go forth and multiply or something, and like populate <laughs> Halo. That seems to be the implication to me of like. Yeah, the I don't know what they're the point of the visions is trying to get them to do. I worry yeah. that it might be as simple as the show just being like, isn't this romantic? Aren't these two meant for each other? How tragic uh, that they can't be, right. be with each it's, other. It's like, it's oh. Exactly it's exactly the same that. coin. You see, they were both that. robbed of their childhood. This they movie is so crap and hollow. Indoctrinated for whatever side they're on, you see. Yeah, because I know if I'm robbed of my childhood, whenever I see another person who's robbed of their childhood, I, I, just, I really just have an uncontrollable ur urge to fuck them. <laughs> with with your with your onboard AI watching. <laughs> <laughs> Why did yeah, it, no, Cortana yeah, I get harder when yeah. other people watch. Yeah. Why would yeah. they have just Cortana, Cortana watching? What were they thinking? Because she can't not watch. She can't turn herself Can off. You, like, <laughs> oh, has there been? Uh, there's going to be other shows. Boba Fett kind of did this too. But like a show that's most of its marketing is done by people just going this, 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 and everyone else going no. No, that didn't happen. You're like, they wouldn't did. do that. That's a joke. You're jo you're. That's like, a lie. You're lying to me. Yeah. yeah. I I feel like you've just raised it again, but I feel like it has to be stressed. So the reason why Mackie. So what happens is they're on Eridanus two. Um, when Chief touches the artifact, it like reveals the location of the artifact. I guess it beams it into Mackie's head. I don't know what that would mean. Does she have an intuition of where he is in all of space on a planet in a how does that information, how how can that information be imparted into a human in a way that they can understand? And if so, yeah. why? The same way that um, humans just magically can know the covenant language if they need to for the plot. But, well, yeah, and then and then the, the, the covenant come in, they get the artifact, but then they want to do a switch. It's like, ah, we're going to drop Mackie and pretend that we had her as a captive. Um... At, like to try and drop her off so she can get information or access to the second keystone. That's their plan, and it works bafflingly. But the but, reason why, well, ironically, it makes the Covenant seem super competent because they have to know that the UNSC is that incompetent. It will work. 
Yeah, <laughs> in a sense. Oh, I wouldn't I argue that. Them. They're both retarded, right? Like, why would the common <laughs> ever think that like, would work? I was making like a joke out of the, the absurdity <laughs> of it. No, because like there is a validity in saying that uh, to anticipate that the UNSC would actually uh, engage on this level, but uh, it never made any right. sense. Like nobody would ever assume anything like that. I think we talked yeah, about it, it when um, sense. the episode came up. We were talking about right. how if a uh, enemy prisoner was just landed in front of you, that had been there since they were a kid. It's like yeah, but they're human. It's like so. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, because because it's. You've just dropped off a, uh, somebody who has lived with the Covenant for years, and you think that they're not a spy? That they? Why would she be dropped off? Why is she still alive? Why wouldn't they have killed her? Why would you ever trust her with anything? Least of all, after a couple of days of her being in your custody, why do you have no cameras in her room? You know, yeah, like, that's why the thing. No cameras in her room. No cameras in the room. Nothing's recorded. The fact that humans, particularly Master Chief, falls for this insanely stupid plan is it's outright bizarre because you're just screaming at these characters the entire time at how dumb they are and how none of this makes any sense yeah because there oh, was to, to be fair none of them would have been able to, to foresee all those tentacle monsters that she brings out of nowhere that yeah. are completely unstoppable and then and they, they don't never show up again Never shows show. Oh yeah. yeah, when she walks down the hallway, they all have their guns pointed at her. They don't shoot her. Just <laughs> those tentacle had, monsters yeah. must be released as some sort of pheromone that puts their. Why didn't they put some soldiers on the the pod that they sent over? They're like, we're sending over some guys because if they did that, it would have been over. Why are there no cameras inside the pod that could have detected oh. all that? Why would you let her get and on on her own? I'm not a fan of Maki at all. Not a surprise. But no, um, the fact no. that we went yeah. with, they actually just seem to think she's a nerd slash to be trusted immediately, as opposed to all of them just despise her automatically and don't trust her at all. But in reality, because mm -hmm. we know, because we're the audience, that she's actually like kind of torn between the Covenant and humanity, and that this was in in one way an escape plan finally to engage with, because she believed the Covenant might actually f allow this to happen, and then she could be like, um. You know, trying to actually gain the humans' trust and, and try and give them information that could be helpful, but never getting there. And then maybe one person like Chief could actually understand it to some degree, but still not fuck her or give her great access to all kinds of technology or whatever else. Like, it's just that there's a story you could try and write from this, but instead, like, they don't even mm -hmm. find a stupid finger laser thing. Like, no, how? Well, remember, there's a part where um, when Chief decides to go and activate the Keystone, she's about to, like, flat-out execute, like, one of the, uh, she pushed over one of the UNSC people and she brought out a little laser sword. If he hadn't touched that artifact five seconds, if he touched it, like, five, ten seconds later, she would have killed them or they would have spotted that. She would have been compromised and that would have been the end. Yeah. Unfortunately, Chief was there to bail her out through sheer coincidence. This show is awful, guys. It, it hangs together on... Pulled a little laser sword out on a dog. She did. Fortunately, no one was looking. Pulls it Dogs out. Dogs can sense evil. I'm telling you. At the end, she pulls, she pulls it, out it out of a finger. I don't remember this scene. Yeah, dog box. Oh yeah, that's right. Out in the park. And and dog bar yeah. The yeah, dog knew she was an evil bitch that's gonna destroy the world. Oh Reach yeah. City. Why isn't it just called New Alexandria? Why is it called Reach <laughs> City? Reach City. Why would you? Reach Reach Where do you live? Is... Earth City. Yep. I feel well, like a, it, they sh the the UNSC should have found that little finger sword thing yeah, in absolutely. their initial uh capture of her and like I feel like they would have done an x-ray on her or something cuz she's an alien. Yeah, cuz this and... whole situation is super fucked and stupid. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't have taken any like leave no stone unturned sort of thing. It was... Remember when he's like, like like let's make sure she's not hiding anything. He's walking her around at one point in like Episode eight, is it? And we, we we're just baffled that he's allowed to do walking this around the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and even Parangoski is like they're like walking around in the park. This is insane. And then later <laughs> on, when he's like, "Hey, let her touch the artifact," yeah. and then when he, when he goes to her, he's like, "Wait, they're gonna let you? They're gonna let me use it?" And he says, "They trust me, and I trust you." It's like, so they don't trust you. You try to you you are erratic. Like you been <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. You tried to kill Halsey. Um. You you are doing a lot of things that like they don't trust you anymore. 
and I don't know why Chief trusts her either. It's like, oh, she's being honest with me. It's like, why would you, why, why, why? You believe why you that she's that? being honest with you. You just You're determined this. This is what I mean. Like, I mean, Chief, it's so simpy. Chief, Chief's history of it being like simpy, a really yeah. good interrogator, which is what they say in the show. He's a really good interrogator. It's like, what? Just because he removed the chip from his back, that's gone. His in his intuition and capacity to understand like whether or not she's lying or not is gone. Wrong, Fringy. I think I the think show's the show perspective is that he's correct. She was to be trusted yeah. until humanity yeah. ruined it. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that is what the show thinks that 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 he was correct because the show has a perspective on everything that happens and it cannot deviate from that at all. The entire world contorts to the whims of the writers. Yeah. Uh, going back to that, like. I I wish I could have attended that meeting between 343 and the showrunners, right? Where it's just like, 343 would have been like, okay, here's our lore, here's the story that we, we've established, and uh, yeah, here you go. And then the showrunners are like, yeah, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> so, um, I want to see that particular conversation where they're like, so we, we found out about yeah. this sex scene, we'd, we'd appreciate that you don't, you don't really do that with Chief, and then they're like, no. <laughs> We're doing I want it. to see yeah. because I saw someone say that like three four three were opposed to that specifically. Let me just, let me see if I can find it. Um, I, I I not only find it like amusing, but they probably would have had a logic of like we need to have a sex scene, at least one. The like, people who like this show can't relate to a sex scene. Oh wow, well, that's the that's the idea. I think they only throw the one in to be like, look, this could be you someday. Wow. No, that'll that'll never be them. It's, it's wish fulfillment, right? <laughs> that is strange though in terms of a um like they really wanted to make a covenant but a human so that she could have sex with Master Chief or this version of Master Chief. Like it's it really it's really strange fanfic that somehow got millions of dollars thrown at it. Dude, um Das was in chat earlier saying that he'd already heard the rumors. He hadn't seen any of the context, so he thought that Master Chief fucked like an elite or something. <laughs> well, I, would preferred, I would have preferred that. I want Master Chief and Arbiter to have yeah. some bro sex. <laughs> this is the custom on saying Helios. I promise. It totally is. <laughs> that would have been great. One of, one of the small things I appreciated about the the finale was that they revealed that they were, in fact, using her. Like, they didn't care about her at all. Like, that uh the this at the in the pilot episode where they introduce her like in that white room mm -hmm. and uh they seem to like tr be treating her with all this like prestige and stuff it's like why is there a fucking human among their ranks like we just saw the covenant try to execute all humans mercilessly like we we get the feeling that the aliens hate the humans they're trying to exterminate them but there's this one human among them that's like hey i'm What's just that? hanging out here that was their strategy, Actually, I guess, right? Because it's weird to think about. It's like she has information they want to make use of, and they want to use their ability to touch the stuff and make stuff happen. So they treat her really well. It's like, well, they could have just had her in slave mode, where they t threaten to torture her if she doesn't do exactly as they say. Which that's a great, seems, great point. Yeah, seems like it would be more in line with what we discover about them. Um, and that's what everyone was panicking about all over the fucking internet when they found out like a high-ranking member of the Covenant was a human. It was like, Jesus Christ, what have you done? It's like by the end of the show, they're like, no, 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 they hate her, they do hate her, they do, they do. I swear. And they're like, all right, it still seems now it's just weird. All things seem that's, strange. It's a great point. Why go to the extra lengths of treating her like a queen almost when they could just keep her in a cell or whatever? I couldn't remember you know? who brought it up earlier, mm -hmm. but um, surely it would be a horrible sign to the uh, the Covenant forces if ever they saw that, like. With what they believe mm. in, yeah. They're watching this human yeah, walk around with the problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just contradicts the religion it, because the whole idea is it's a conspiracy in the games. Nobody actually knows the truth, so it's a lot easier to hide it. And you don't need specific individuals; like you, just be any human to get them to do that for you. Um, yeah, it, it just becomes a lot easier to conceal it than it does in the show. Because in the show, it brings the whole religion into question. Like what? The, why are all the blessed ones humans? Why why is it a human? You know? Yes. Why isn't it a covenant? Why isn't it an elite or a jackal or a grunt or a brute? Yeah. It's, right. it's terrible. <laughs> it's, it just also, if she's so important, oh, I know. why would I know. you let her go out on the, you know, life threatening missions? Yeah, that was dumb. <laughs> That's insanely yeah. stupid. With how important you know she is and how. It's like one in five hundred million or so it's, is the person you need that, that you like just go million. off, and it's it's insane. It is it is absolutely insane. 
Crazy Everyone in the show is an idiot. Cra crazy to know that uh, they did all of that, because all those contradictions and contrivances, it's all to make the romance plot that is actually pathetic. Mm -hmm. it's and it's good. so short, yeah. too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's nothing between those two. What do they love about each other? They don't know anything about each other. Exactly. <laughs> They're, they're blind. They're no, blind. but he, he brought her the book, blind. remember? <laughs> he did bring her the book. Yeah. Because <laughs> she reads books. They're both brainwashed. That's what That's, they that, that leads directly into the sex scene. That's the catalyst for that, is the bringing the fucking book into the room. I just, uh, as I was scrolling through my notes, I remember I had a whole page on how the battle in episode five makes no sense at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> man. It's like, um, oh, I, I remember there was a part, there was a, there was a scene when the Spartans, they were explaining their backstory and how they had to, like, kill their pets, and Vanek says something along the lines of, yeah, Spartans studied wolf packs, we stick together and look out for one another, um, yet when he wants to save Kai, that's, like, off mission and not allowed, and they don't care. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's kind of we don't learn anything about Sorry. any, anything, really. Um. We see, no, we don't. Ugh. Well, you see here, as a white, hmm, maybe it might be a good idea to actually like move the ship to the to the to the uh the excavation site rather than drive the car through enemy lines to get to the ship on the ridge. You know, like man, maybe there's a lot of logistical better, right? cringe in this fight. <laughs> um, I mean, it's and also it's the like the show is logistical cringe. I'm True. Just, and here's the thing: How does anything happen is on a number of different fight? levels? Yeah. Well, we see the ship's getting blown up. Is it safer to get it to the ship? Really? Might it be better to just leave it in the site and defend the site as best you can? Because there's well, banshees all over the place. With what we know, I think that's the first question I had when this episode finished. I was like, why didn't the Covenant stay and just destroy everything? And it's like, well, you find out maybe it's because of the fact they want to plant McKee. And you're like, okay, you can do that while also destroying their command center and taking out their leaders on this planet. That's true. Because yeah. they are but, shockingly able to kill, like, an entire, like, human, um... They take down a frigate. Um, yeah, they, they take they, down a frigate with what we are led to believe is only Banshees, which is impressive. I think we have to assume that the carrier did it, because otherwise I don't know if Banshees have the capacity to do that. I don't know. I guess the showrunner, they don't know that. I was gonna say, we don't know well, that now because of the showrunners. Yeah, we don't know that because of this show. Uh, man, like... Uh, I don't know why. It's pretty funny that the Spartans choose to run alongside the guys, like ferrying the artifact, um, instead of taking multiple, uh, multiple warthogs. You know, like if the Spartans were in the warthog, a different warthog, they could help them out. But instead, they're just running around. The Marines just get wiped off the warthog, and then they, all the Spartans get onto it. Isn't that what happens? Anyway, that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I guess it was just so that we could see one of them get killed with the needler and then see a, a, a hijacking because that's in the games. True. Also, it would be cool like, to see the Marines do anything just like competently. Yeah. I mean, because yeah, it, it's, it's, it's become very clear that that's just not a focus for this whole season. The Marines are barely people. Like, they're barely in it. There's like the a show relies on them not being present in the one place that it should be just brimming full well, with Marines. They just never the around. That's the only battle with the Covenant that has Marines. The first one is just the Spartans, and the last one is just the Spartans. That's it. There's only three fights with the Covenant. There are more fights with humans than there are with... Are there more... Yeah, I think there are more fights with humans than there are with the Covenant. Um... Because Marines can yeah. fight the Covenant. Like, they, they can... They, they have can. guns. They could do things. They could fight enemies. The, the Covenant are not some invincible force on the ground. Well, humans can a, fight against them. Isn't it a funny little contradiction in this show that, like, humans are utterly worthless on the ground when fighting the Covenant, yet the Covenant aren't that big of a threat in the world, like, seemingly, with how the world responds to them? Ain't that interesting? Mm. Kind of just yeah. bad writing, really, isn't it? Um... Oh, and then you have like the part when the when he jumps off to try and save Kai, and he jumps onto a banshee that's flying past. It's like, man, timing! Yeah. Like if that banshee was a minute, a, a second earlier or later, you would have just fallen off the cliff and crashed into the ground. Yeah, that's pretty funny. And then, of course, flying it directly into the Phantom. Really, you're dead. It's over. Like you're done. I don't believe you survived that. And between those two things, he like jumps on the banshee and he pulls out his pistol. And he shoots a few rounds into it, but there's no bullet holes, there's no sparks. 
It's wow, like it's, it's just pretty bad. It's just, he's just pulling out his gun and shooting because it looks cool, I guess. It doesn't <laughs> look cool it. though. It looks really bad. It looks really. Yeah. Uh, though, also, by the way, though, Rags, you said there's not much gore past episode one. You're you're wrong. Um, there's a lot of gore in this show. A lot persistent. Well, I just showed it. what he explodes from the knee to yeah. his big. Uh, red piss cloud. Well, that was what <laughs> I laughed out loud at that. That was that, <laughs> those are the only two things I like really remember. I well, so I guess you don't remember. You don't remember in episode nine when the plasma pistol leaves her exposed ribs and lungs. Like, oh yeah, I guess that. Ribs. Yeah. Um, There's also like when Chief crashes the Phantom, the jackals are like split in half. Their guts trailing out from there. Doesn't someone vomit? From, uh, one of them vomits or something like, like that. Does it? I, I uh, so. yeah. There's a lot of gore in this show. Uh, I was actually surprised when you said there wasn't. It's like, dude, if there's I guess anything, I just, none of it that's... just stuck with me in my mind. Right. Yeah, there, it's not really. Of it. I um, can't think of it myself. To be fair, all I'll say is it might in frequency it might be higher than Ragstall, but like, man, is it like there's so much super there's so condensed. Many, there's maybe? super so many stretches of not gore, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. that might be they're, why they're there's localized just so to the action scenes. There's so few of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And I'm okay with there being like a few action scenes. That's okay if there was a trade off of good story. storytelling and like other scenes, but there isn't. So this is all I want is them to fight. There was a persistent feeling while watching the show. Where are the aliens? I want to see aliens. Where <laughs> I want to see Chief fight aliens. Where are they? The, the, the entire reason they don't get the oh, artifact yeah, back yeah. is just a banshee just happens to okay. fall on them. Into them and knocks it off. Because that's not even like a deliberate. Like kamikaze, right? That's just the banshee just falls on him. I think it was getting shot and then it crashed into them. Yeah, it just... it's a fucking crash. <laughs> that's, uh, that's lame. Look at that. You suck. How what unlucky, is, because is... they would have had the- they were right next to where they wanted to be. Would have been good if Cortana hit the brakes since she has remote access to any vehicle that she needs. Dude, this, this Spartan should be able to react fast enough to do that. Yeah. Like, to uh, see the thing. Right they were right there, and the only reason this happened is so that Atriox or whatever could grab it, and then we lose it. Yeah. We need a back low point, kind of, even though it's like halfway through the show. Man, so bad. In like regard to the neglect of the aliens overall in this show, there was one scene that felt like, or no, one shot that felt like such a middle finger. Like, we haven't even talked about um, Venture and how fucking an one-dimensional, oh, terrible no. bad guy he is. We haven't talked about but, uh, Quan at all. Oh, yeah, of course we haven't talked about Quan. <laughs> oh, oh shit, me... you're right. We've just, like, totally skipped over her entire existence thing, in yeah. the show. Oh, you exactly. John? You're right. Let me, let me just uh, button up this shot that I'm getting at, though, where it's a low-angle shot. <laughs> there's a there's a elite's corpse in the foreground. Venture, Venture is smoking a cigar, and he oh, stops yeah. and he looks down. He's like, "Those are the, the aliens, huh? Hmm, ugly bastards." <laughs> and then, yeah, it's like, Shut and off. then he takes a puff and he walks away. And it, it's it's as if to say, like, "Oh, there's that more interesting enemy than I am." But whatever, <laughs> here you go, audience. Yeah, Here's no. me and Pretty... my, hu my humans, and we're all one-dimensional cardboard fucking villains. It, like, it abuses me, because, yeah, like, when you said Vincher, I was like, is that the black guy, or is that the evil guy, or is that... Because I can't remember any of his fucking <laughs> names. Vincher is the evil British... Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad, because yeah. I, I also wrote that whole action scene. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, we need to talk about this action scene. So, essentially, what happens is Quan, she goes to the Mystics, after she abandons Soren, who she goes to the desert witches, yes, <laughs> yeah, to, to lay it out, like oh, rides she, into she a desert to, cloud and just wander. meets the desert she, mist. <laughs> she, what she, the wants, fuck? She, she wants to go back to Madrigal to like do the the to to have the insurgency to to continue the revolution, and Soren takes her there in exchange for money. He gets neither his, not, he gets no money. Uh, his ship gets just like impounded and and seized. Uh, and despite that, he still doesn't capture the bounty on her. He decides, yeah, we're going to get you off world. We're going to go back to the rubble. And um, she zaps him and then leaves him there in the desert. And then she goes off on her own adventure. And then she finds the desert mystics um, who then give her all that forerunner flashback stuff. And then she's told, go back to where it began. Um, now, that can mean a lot of things, but she assumes correctly that it means go back to, you know, her outpost where she lived. Um, and so she goes back to her outpost and she's walking around and then like Soren shows up there and he's like, oh, hey, Quan, I'm, 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 I'm going to take you back to the rubble now. 
Uh, fortunately, he showed up then because a few minutes later, Vinch's men showed up. Oh, um, so dumb. Had yeah. he turned up a day later or even an hour later, Quan would have been killed. So, um, I, and also, did fair, Quan even tell both of them should have been dead was... no matter what? With this well, they should have been, but it's just let's just lay it out. They, they, like, yeah, like, did Quan even tell Soren like where she lived? Like, did she? Did he know that information? He tracked her because she has his revolver and. That's not uh, even yes, something that's in the show, but let's just pretend yeah. that's what it was. There you go. And then, <laughs> yeah, you have, like, you look at all of Vinch's men, there's, like, 50 of them. Um, there's no way they can <laughs> well, win this. It's, so, like, it, like... If I could yeah. get a shot of it, because, like, I, I kept repeating when we watched it, because I couldn't fucking believe it, but this is, like, the most video game scene ever. They're in this, like, <laughs> like, our characters are just, like, sort of discussing and figuring out what they're doing, then we just sort of realize, oh, we're in an arena with lots of cover in different places, resources in different places, and an overall goal of blowing up, like, a tanker thing. But to get there, we're gonna have to put ourselves at risk at rounds, literal rounds of enemies. It's like, you know, you have a selection of the worst yeah. format of, of the enemies first, and you can take out most of them, but then, you know... As it gradually goes on, your health bars get lower. I was just like, what is this? This is so stupid. It's, it's like Splinter Cell slash yeah. Call of Duty sequence. It's really shit. Because like, any game wow. that he's has that kind of arena wave combat, you know, where they come in waves. He's doing the thing. Like, how many games have you guys played where like a bad guy locks you in an area and then commentates like the arena shooting you're doing? It's just like, oh, you're still surviving, are you? Take this. Like it reminds I think the latest one might be Heisenberg <laughs> from um uh, Resident <laughs> Evil Village. Do you remember he's like commentating you running through the werewolf like underground pit thing yeah. that he's? Is that is yeah. that shit? It's like I was like, what is this cartoon shit? Just kill them. <laughs> but no, we gotta have we gotta have the big action scene. Well, so the big the big thing that you all need to understand is there's like a hydrogen runs through, uh, like this um this this big pipe in the middle that's like their water extraction thing, and Quan says. We can have the hydrogen through there, and then if we like shoot it, it'll blow up the whole place, and we can hide in a little vault. Seems like a big yep. design oversight. You can just shoot <laughs> a little bit. hydrogen tank and blow up the whole place, but whatever. Not just the whole um, place. The whole place extending in an area up to space. All right, well, yeah, it's like a chain it reaction, like isn't it? Big, it's there's, there's a space, space elevator, elevator tube thing that leads to space, and you could shoot it with a bullet, and the entire thing from top to bottom, we're led to believe, explodes <laughs> in a catastrophic fireball that rains I... shrapnel and mechanical parts from the heavens. Yeah, because they forget about very quickly. Remember when they hide in the vault, which has a bunch of open window slats yeah, yeah. in it we'll, for the we'll fireball it. to cook them alive anyway? <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll get to yeah. that. So um, every, every, every single note I've written for this sequence begins with good thing, um, <laughs> with reference to how fortunate the circumstances are for Quan and Soren. Mm. Like, good thing Soren found a bunch of money in the control room. Otherwise, he would have, like, gone home empty-handed. That's awesome that there was so much deuterium money there in the in that room for him. Um, and then when Vinch's men shoot into the control room, man, good thing none of them, like, threw a grenade in there. Otherwise, you guys would be dead, huh? Yep. Mm, um, yep. It's also a really good thing that um, even though you guys are stuck in that room, Vinch's forces just, like, slowly fan out and go through tight corridors instead of staying uh, out uh, in wide-open spaces to keep track of Yeah, in Soren. single units, at most, like, groups yeah. of two. Three they people. were in tactical yeah. get-killed-one-at-a-time formation. Good thing, and they never communicated via radio. Like, man, if they were even marginally competent, these guys would be dead. It'd be over. They'd be finished. Um, and, I mean, like, damn, good... Like, as if just walking through, it's like, damn, it's so good that you're all coming through slowly so that Soren can just kill- Look at that! Look yeah. at him! This didn't look even- this. this looks so choreographed, and I know how that sounds, but yeah. bear with me. Because he seems- he has no idea where the three guys are. He knows where one is. He throwing knives yeah. him, and seemingly the plan is to just go up to him and finish him off. It's like, okay. But then it's like, nope, there's another guy to the right that he couldn't possibly have seen and is now counting for. And there's another guy to the left that's now just spawned. But he's yeah, gonna look. use the gun from the guy on the right to kill the- like, shoot the guy on the left oh, and hit him. It's just like, him. how did you know that him? all this was gonna happen? <laughs> what? Why are they running at you? Why is he running towards you? You have a gun. Stay far away and shoot him in the face. He's so like, cool. Yeah. He takes out all three of them. He does, and there's lots His of His accuracy and is very inconsistent in this show. All- while all that's happening, Quan's, uh, she's in the underground tunnel that leads up to the, uh, the pipe. 
Uh, and so she she gets out of the underground tunnel. It's like, man, lucky no one saw you leave, even though the doorway was soaked in sunlight. Like, if you opened it up and there was someone in front of you, they would have just killed you. Oh, um, just one note sure on, on the thing. He didn't pick up any of the vectors when he... No, oh, yes, he forgot to pick up their guns. Yes, he yes. has a revolver. That's good enough. Yep. Not like those guns could be useful. Um, well, the thing is, Quan leaves the underground tunnel, even though it's in the broad daylight, and then one of Vinch's men is like, ha-ha, gotcha. But uh, fortunately... Uh, for her, Soren was in. He could see that he 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 had sight lines on it, and so he could save her. Like if he was elsewhere, she would have been dead, or, or at the very least captured. It's like damn, lucky. Like look, he really like relies on that revolver. Guy, it's so weird. I like how one guy notices her and doesn't call out to like his buddies. None of them hey, call out. <laughs> that she's the target, the person that we're trying to capture and kill. Um, but no, fortunately, he 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 doesn't do that, and then he Soren kills uh, that guy. Awesome. Um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Look at him. So awesome. Look at him. Come on. I'm get honestly, I've been scanning through it. I'm confused as to the fucking chronology of this scene, but it doesn't matter anyway because I I hated the part What's where that? he just runs out into the open. Uh, Soren. Well, yeah, because Soren runs out into the open. And, oh, but this is, you, you, there's a part where Quan, like, there's a plasma grenade next to her, and then she sticks it to a guy and it blows him up. It's like, man, good thing you know what that is and how it works. Yeah, which um, you'd be like, why would she? Did they have a moment with that in the first episode where she saw it being used or something? Uh, maybe, but I mean, I feel like that's, it's an alien grenade. Like, <laughs> that's, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I guess it is good that you know how it works. And then, and then, like, yeah, Soren is running around in the open. And um, he, he gets shot in the neck and it doesn't kill him. He's fine. He, like, I, we, I think we thought he was dead and we were kind of nervous because he's like the only character in this show that I kind of like. I consider him interesting, um, I guess, compared to the rest. Just because he's a he's bit of a merc. And yeah, like, yeah. so there's just a level of... But you're right, yeah. Uh, the neck is not that important, I would say, biolo biologically. No, it's not like... It's not oh. like there's really important veins and air yeah, it's, airways. <laughs> it's not like being shot in the hand, for example, where that's an instant death. Like, the, that's different. It's when it's in the neck, <laughs> you can him. just put a bandage on. Got shot in the neck. Look at that. He's yeah. dead. But then um, he, he doesn't die. And then, uh, meanwhile, like, Vinch is doing his evil speech, like, where <laughs> are you, Quan? Like, show yourself. But fortunately... You remember in episode one when Chief threw down his CGI yeah. uh, battle rifle, uh, oh, yeah. uh, assault rifle, throws down his little CGI. Which, battle, by the way, uh, is the answer. Is rifle? the answer for why we got that shitty shot that everyone complained exactly. about. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'll we'll circle it. back. And fortunately, Quan hid underneath the truck where Chief threw his AR. Even though I'm pretty sure he didn't throw it underneath the truck, I'm pretty sure he threw it out he in the open. Not. It got kicked over the there, truck. okay? But if it, I it, know it's, one. It's, it's, no, <laughs> it was a grunt. He kicked it. But it's underneath the truck where Quan had hidden. But man, if she'd hidden anywhere else, she would have had no weapon and she wouldn't have been able to win. But then she strides out to the open with the uh, AR, and good thing like Venture and none of his men shoot her while she's crawling out. Which you totally and would. Good thing. Quan is an incredible shot, um, like hits a small distant target with one bullet and a first shot on a weapon she's never held before that doesn't even have a scope because it links to the, <laughs> like, man, crazy. Wow. Like, yeah. You, yeah. Well, you you missed... Look at how awkward she is holding this thing. Like, good luck, love. <laughs> like, she... Yep. Um, but then she hits it and then they run into the uh the bunker, but the massive explosion, the flames go through the door, like the vents yeah. in the doors, but it doesn't do anything. Um, but that's the end of Vincia. That's that's the end of everybody. She she killed them all by shooting that little tank and running in, and then look at that. Look at that explosion. It's so big. It's yeah. It's pretty intense, yeah. So what we have here basically is a whole sequence that is entirely built on coincidence and contrivance. It's insane. Yep. The only reason that, that they survive is because of this insane levels of luck. Well, the vent was an it slowed down the fireball just enough to where like it could get through, but it, it slowed it down enough. So they're okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird that they have this shot where they show the fire just engulfs their room. It's like, why would you show <laughs> us that? Like uh, Yeah. Like, how are you not dead? <laughs> Why not just have it be a sealed door? Why would you have it have open vents? Like, you could have, you just, 
you yeah. can afford a door. What if a vault with vents? Well, presumably they <laughs> thought it was more intense to show us, like, oh, did oh, they live? No, did the they live? Did no, they no, live? No, 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 wait. The, re the reason why they had vents they was because that was the door that the guy tried to run. That was where the kids were hiding, where the guy tried to run in, and then he's like, no, help me, help me, and then he gets stabbed. You can still they just mechanically just make it door. so that you can close the vents, like, as a writer. Yeah, no, you can know, do whatever you want. Um, they didn't even have so to go I'm in the same. I'm saying that's what the writers wanted. And they well, wanted I, the flame well I'm arguing that I think the writers wanted to bait whether or not they may have made it. You don't know. They got engulfed in flames. Feel intense. I think you're exactly right, Mahler, because they establish in dialogue from Quan that the vault is a safe zone. You know, once they're in there, the audience can reliably be like, okay, they're fine. Once, if they're in that room, but then they add that shot, filling it with flames. It's like, oh, maybe they're not safe. Ah, and then they go, they got to wait for the, the explosion to play out and wait for the smoke and the dust to die down. And then you have that reveal shot where it's like, oh, they're alive. Yeah, because they rightfully God. assume everyone is just on the edge of their seats for these two characters. These are the, these lads, oh, hope they're okay. Yeah. Hope they make it. Right. And what, what made me laugh out loud the most about this scene definitely was that assault rifle reveal. Because not only did mm -hmm. it become clear why that shot was there in the pilot, which <laughs> was famously seemed out of place. Like, I, I know a, lo a lot of YouTube critics, like, criticizing the show were like, why the fuck is that shot there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, it's like a George Lucas lightsaber moment. <laughs> it is an unnecessary shot, but now you're like, oh. Yeah, exactly. Because what I thought it was is like, it out? here's the... Here's the Halo assault rifle. Remember this from the games? And it's like, that's Even... the reason they included that shot? That's fucking dumb. But then it's like, this is almost dumber. Because <laughs> it's <laughs> like, Juan she, it. She, it left she, behind, so. the original vision she finds probably this is... just had him tossing it. And then they were like, do you think people will remember that he tossed it if we don't have another shot to show where it landed? And someone was like, Because this guy yeah. has no faith in you. Yeah. Well, um, that, it, that depends, I would say, whether or not on whether the, the shot in the pilot had the number 117 etched on the assault yeah. rifle. I don't, I don't remember if that was there. I was, about to, I was about to bring that up. It seems really silly that this one gun has his, his 117, like, engraved on it. For some yeah, reason, he wouldn't just use a normal three. one. Like they have vanity guns for each soldier? Are you fucking kidding me? He unlocked me? it. He unlocked that. He got a hundred <laughs> kills with his it. assault rifle, so yeah. he unlocked it. For some reason, like, like three four three really like having the number one one seven on everything. Um, it's really right. odd. They even put it on his suit for some reason. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I just like, don't get I it. Am I supposed to believe that Master Chief is in the the barracks or the armory or whatever, and he's like? People are offering him assault rifles. It's like, no, I need the one with one one seven on it. Like, <laughs> I'm super serial, you guys. I need my own assault rifle if I'm gonna go out into battle. It's gotta like, be even... special. It doesn't have my charm that I unlocked on it and my skin. <laughs> you it doesn't have my pizza cool, skin on it. <laughs> like, it doesn't look like exactly. the, the it's so dumb. Like, boom, 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 but they don't have like chief. Oh they don't god, have, that like... shot is so awful. And yeah, you can see one one seven on it. It is? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see it. Right. Look right, how right. bad that CG is. is. You uh, know, the showrunners probably say good. 117. <laughs> Why would you have it on the ground there when it's underneath the truck later? Why would you? What the hell? How did it get there? <laughs> Who put it there? Nobody went back to the space. It's been empty the whole time. You really time. need more explanation than this beautiful shot, Fringy. Really? Why would you do a CGI shot that is a continuity error? <laughs> <laughs> it's so awkward. It is, yeah. <laughs> so bad. It's like blurry. This like, this is a rush shot. They probably, this is one of the last of things they probably did. And they forgot to color in the, the plasma pistol. <laughs> I forgot to color yeah. that in. We haven't talked about that. I just, I, I just I love it. I think we've actually figured out why the shot exists now, and that's cool. I was like, yeah. Remember, guys, $10 million per episode, at least. Yeah. I mean, couldn't you just, like, have an actual prop assault rifle and throw it on the ground? No, and this no, that's, no, that's not possible. Too, it's too, not too, possible. Too, genuinely, though, too late, because everything was wrapped up. This was probably caught really late. Someone was like, guys, the audience has no idea that he dropped the gun in the first episode, okay? And that's a really clever thing that we've done, so we need to make sure they understand that. Has anyone got, like, a cursory glancing shot at the floor 
that we could use, and then <laughs> someone can animate a gun on it. <laughs> it's a literal animated. It is an animated yeah. CGI Chekhov's gun, and it still doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, well, I was just thinking about how, like, well, doesn't this just highlight that once the fight is over, which that is something that happens, wouldn't you be like, I better go grab my gun, like instead of leaving really yeah. important like, why UNSC leave it? equipment. Yeah. Well, why, why not put it on his The ad? alien yeah. bodies, the bodies of the aliens, yeah. the UNSD never goes back what? to retrieve. Dude, there was a plasma right. grenade sitting there. You want, like, insurgents just getting a plasma grenade? Like, just you just leave them out there for people to grab? <laughs> what They're a fool. Busy. Yeah, they are too busy. Yeah, but they, they set up. Shut up. Really cool it's, that she yeah. grabs it. She uses his weapon to free herself because from the chains of the evil man. Well, that's the not. extra layer of dumb that gets up, applied on this, right? Is that this is a desperate attempt to tie Quan's story in with Master <laughs> Chief's storyline and make it seem like the whole Quan episode was relevant, right? It's like, oh, mm -hmm. she's picking up Master Chief's rifle. She's using Master Chief's rifle to shoot the thing that blows up Venture. I sure wish that was me. <laughs> it would be funny if I... you like, made fun of the CG and then the artist was like, I had 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes he did pretty well. Yeah. yeah. I, I it's uh, something that's worth noting about the Quan story as well is, you know like does it make any sense in a world where like there are aliens that is an existential threat to humanity that you would still have these kinds of smaller conflicts happening? Wouldn't this draw a lot of people's attention away from that? It would. Like I did, no, we need to be the alien showing up is... completely made this plot line entirely irrelevant, and I it shouldn't have been there. It right. yeah, it ought to have made it irrelevant. That's think... kind of again, that's again. Okay. Do you guys fill in time the Quan storyline? Like we didn't have enough content for nine episodes in Halo, Maybe, so yeah. we needed to invent yeah, this yeah. Entire somehow in Halo. Plot. Yes. Because, yeah. like, what the- it's such a bizarre- this is a, like I said, there's a reason why we haven't talked about it at all, because, like, why would we? What's the point? What's I the... think, uh, I think in season yeah. two it become okay. clearer, because, again, she is a protector, proper noun, and there was a little monitor coming out of that portal, so she has some connection to the Forerunners, that's why the story exists. Yeah, do, the, the, the monitor thing, there- you do see a monitor in this, briefly, it show yeah. it comes out of a well- in a the well is the portal, remember? It's a portal to another That's her spirit place. animal, is a, mo a, is a monitor. World. It probably is a portal to Halo or like a shield in world or the Ark or something. In a little hole that they dug it a well for in Madrigal when they could have dug a well anywhere else. Crazy. Nuts. And that if, has they're to using the, if they're using the game lore as a guide, I would assume it leads to the Ark, but they could go fucking any direction with it at this they point. They could go anywhere. Know. Yeah. I feel like it's worth reiterating again, guys. If you get given, like, a hallucinogen, but then the hallucinogen reveals information that is completely unknown to you that wouldn't even be in your subconscious, like, what your ancestors look like and a monitor, that's magic. It has to be magic. Um, Memories could have been mm -hmm. implanted into their subconscious due to yeah, some maybe. mental uh, fuse thing. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. maybe really dumb but uh you just reminded me of how when he's like gradually getting memories of halsey being in his life she just immediately agrees so like yep that's true you got me yep i was there i was there because yeah. oh it's so nice to see you. it's just like wow that's you could have just said like no of course not why the fuck yeah, would i have been in your are... childhood why do you think you yeah. think that john and he's like what do you mean and he's like well do you think it's a little convenient that the person you hang out with one of the most important people in your life is now injected into your memories it's like don't you think that it's more likely that you're just putting me there because you don't know what was actually there? Mm -hmm. But no, she doesn't try that, even though she's supposed to be like that kind of intelligent. Instead, she's just like, huh, weird. And I guess I just never told you that because, um, yeah, I just didn't. Yeah, huh, weird. because... Ha! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this show is really bad. I think there there is uh, utility in uh, the the dual main character juxtaposition kind of format of telling a story. It's one that I like, would have gone with they, for there could having have been, Master Chief surely. prominently, but yeah. definitely not in this way. I definitely thought this was going to take an entirely different direction. I thought they were going to be side by side for the entire show. She would humanize Master Chief while he, his emotions start, you know, come rolling back in. Yes, but, exactly. Um, drops her off at an asteroid in what, episode two? And that's that. Yeah. 
We haven't talked so about how stupid the rubble is. <laughs> Sorry, but <Victor, laughs> Wait, how stupid I the know. what is? The rubble, the space station, and the asteroid. Oh yeah, we yeah. can do we can do that. Yeah, this this <laughs> this Doctor Who world that is so the other thing, this show never really feels like Halo. It very no. rarely no. even begins to feel as if you are in a Halo universe doing Halo things. It's very much it feels more like Doctor Who than like a Halo show. And not I don't think you say way. that. It's just like, what is Doctor Who right now? It's like, I don't know. What even like, what is the feeling of Doctor Who? They're they're going through their own whole thing. Uh, well, only only the finale came close for me. Everything else was just like, like it's just like eight episodes worth of like drinking diarrhea, and then all of a sudden you get like a cupcake <laughs> with some like tur sprinkled with cat turds on it, and it's like, oh, there's something here. It's still lame but like this closely resembles what i was looking for from the beginning right just like action and some jokes and and uh yeah the even the fight sequence in episode five didn't feel like halo for me because like it did for a little while but then there's that beat where chief like stomps that fucking alien's head <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah I, I don't know how it was off. meant to feel after that i think they wanted the audience to be like, yeah, awesome. But I was just kind of alarmed. I was just like, I don't yeah. know how I feel about this. Like this, I don't know if this is the chief I know and love. You know what I mean? Like it's I, not chief. It's John Halo. John Halo, <laughs> the robot. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. Well, you just had the picture yeah. of the rubble there. It's a space station built into an asteroid. Oh, yeah. well, no, just there's the clip. Look at well, it. Yeah. Look at it. The only thing oh, I was just yeah. going to say. Quick. I was dying laughing at that. Because <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, what is the show's opinion on this moment? And it's like, well, they have Kai being like, Chief, Chief, like, like you know, you're going too far, maybe. But it's like, is that what, what does the show think of this? I'm not even know. He's well, so it's, it's unclear. It's unclear whether this beat is informed as a result oh. of the, the beat where, uh, Chief was drastically affected by the artifact to the point where, like, he f felt the need to try and punch Halsey in the face. <laughs> but, like, I guess there's some, like, residual effect from that where he's so, like, amped up emotionally and angry, I guess. We gotta see their yeah. face. We that he's been lied to. That he's carrying that anger into his punishment of this poor elite where he stomps oh, his head angry. flat oh, and as everyone's no. pointing out yes discount right. iron man it's it's kind of it's kind right. of like distracting as fuck that they did this we, for head uh, for we master chief we have to we can't have it look at that what were they so, uh i don't know if i understand the iron man reference what what which one oh because the iron man with his you know it's when he has his, his yeah, in, -helmet the, camera. in helmet screen HUD. oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah like, totally it's like Thudding into his face like he's trying. It's so funny looking. Yeah, I know. It and doesn't like, even make sense. His eyes are static, but he's to, really his head. To clarify, right? The reason it does that with Iron Man is so we can see Robert Downey Jr. expressing himself all the time, right? It makes sense. It's just like, so is that the same reason they're doing it here? And it's just like, yes, because they can't for a second have a sea master chief and not see his face. Like, it has to be. Yeah. Uh, totally. Do, uh, this makes me, you know, the scene where uh, he's in his original, his home, his old house. Yeah, he's looking I'm around. Not they have not one, but two different fucking yeah. angles inside his helmet. Yeah. They have the <laughs> they have the Iron Man one that's right on his face, and they have the kind of angled one that's like, you know, the on light, one side yeah, of his face, kind of accentuating yeah. one eye. Like yeah. you had to have two cameras in his fucking helmet. You didn't I'm have the restraint to, to just like keep the camera out of his helmet entirely and just you're so scared of not showing his face you know because you're i guess afraid that the audience is going to lose connection with the character yeah. if, he, if he's always got the helmet on because you actually like see Chiefers. um iron man as iron man more than uh robert downey jr as a ratio than you do see this guy as master chief instead of john halo yeah like, i think so mm -hmm. sure. yeah mm-hmm it's so bad. Like, why would you do this? It's so stupid. Oh god. We a... have to see his face. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> it, it is, yeah, because this was getting shit all over Twitter. It's just like, what the fuck is this? And you're like, it's Master Chief? You're like, what do you mean it's Master Chief? It's, it's is... weird. They know that everyone loves Master Chief. And they know that we don't want to see his face, ever. 
but they're insistent that we always see his face. Yeah. This Master Chief. It's... <laughs> we we got to yeah. see their faces. Otherwise, how do we know how they're feeling? We can't have it through dialogue and body language. Oh, look at those chunky pieces of purple falling out of his face. Yeah, look at that. Jeez, <laughs> that elite, man. Yikes. Yikes, yeah, like Chief. I think I feel like this has been perceived broadly as a badass moment, and I wouldn't. I don't. I'm not on board with that. No, I, I'm totally like, with you on the whole. Like you don't even know how to feel exactly. Laughing is the first step I would have to committing <laughs> to an emotion, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> definitely seeing his face in addition to what's happening. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like look at this shot. This is blood on the shield shit, right? Like this is supposed to be like look at this. Is look at the yeah. blood. But but then you're like, well, wait, are you? What are you trying to say, show? Yeah, right. I, I, yeah, it's it's really unclear what the show's kind of position is here. Like, should we be worried about Spartans that lack inhibitors because they can go nuts? Is that what you're saying? Because well, I, I don't feel like the, the rest of the show. That's a good thing. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't feel like the rest of the show supports that really at all. No, I mean maybe the ambiguity of it is kind of the point. That's what they were going for, but I feel like it just still wasn't executed properly. I don't. I I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, for you, let's, let's talk about the rubble. Yeah, so the rubble is a space station built into an asteroid. Our introduction to it is Chief exits slip space into an asteroid belt, and he has to try and navigate through it. It's like, man, feel like you should have like gone around. And if you can't go around, and the only way that ships get in and out is by navigating an asteroid belt, why would anybody build a space station I mean, here? If we can just yeah. clarify, he gets hit several times, right? Like he, he gets nearly tagged. Dies, yeah. Nearly dies. And he's chief. Like, so when you have guy delivering pizza, <laughs> he's like, oh, jeez, he's got all his asteroids. <laughs> yeah. It's like that I little just... uh, bike in... Do you remember the Futurama episode where they're delivering newspapers across the universe? Ah, uh, yes, that's right. The yeah. little bike that can go into space. It's that, got it with, with pizza. <laughs> he, he flies through and then he goes to the rubble. And once we're inside the rubble, we get to... Oh, I, he just gets to dock. He's in a UNSC Pelican, and this is like insurgent area where they don't like the UNSC. I guess nobody checks to see well, who's docking. Wouldn't you argue that uh, the guy who controls this whole area, the people he least wants to see in the fucking universe to a degree, is the UNSC? Well, yeah, because Soren <laughs> ran away from the UNSC. Um, so, like, surely he's... I don't even know how Chief knows where Soren is, because if he knows, how does the UNSC not know? If Chief knows, would he, would he have not told? Yeah, actually, I guess he knew was, all along. I was actually going to ask you why he came here, or how he knew to come here. I have no idea why. Um, I I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Was the implication that they kept in contact <laughs> or something? They were like, I, I don't know why they would have. They don't like each be? other. But they don't like each other. <laughs> oh, I don't man. even think the writers put that much thought into it. They were probably just like, Hey, they yeah. used to be friends, so Chief I've got an old contact go. on <laughs> Asteroid 7 that can yeah, let us seven. know about the da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Remember Good this guy, Asteroid number 7. Remember this guy? I just got reminded. Yeah, oh, I, do, and I, yeah. I guess, wait, so, oh, Chief would have let him go, because remember, like, Soren had the implant, he knew what it was, which means he must have had the implant when he chose to take it out and escape, and Chief had the implant in him when he chose to let Soren go. So the emotional inhibitor still allows you to allow other Spartans okay. to defect. Okay, bringing the implant is like the Darkhold. It only works as yeah. much as it needs to work. It, pretty much at this point. I love this scene. Hey, forklift, that'll stop you, Master Chief. Oh, oh yeah. no, the forklift didn't stop And then you. when he pushes it back, and they're like, oh, jeez, oh, God, oh, he's geez. pushing the bag up again. And then, this is the best part is, Master Chief so sure is strong. Hilarious Soren if you walked shows around up, it. And he's like, yo, Chief. Yeah, he could have just walked around. <laughs> Soren just shows up. He's like, yo, Chief. And Chief takes his helmet off. It's like, sorry. they had guns pointed at you. Stop taking off your helmet. Like, keep it on. Why would you ever take it off? How are you going to know how he's feeling? Territory? Fuck. We need to see his eyes. Like, what if any of these guys decided, nah, just shot him in the head. <laughs> like, no, I don't like you at SC. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> He takes his See, uh, off. I'm all I'm all for finding creative, low budget, fun ways to like demonstrate Chief's strength in a scene. Like in this case, yeah. it's like moving the forklift. But uh, 
like putting it in his way in the first place, expecting that to impede him. I don't know. You'd if think that the payoff yeah. would have been that it's set up for him to maybe push it, and then he just sidesteps. He like looks around, like why would you even? Yeah, like it's <laughs> more. Efficient. Yeah, yeah. It's, his his combat oriented brain is like it's way more efficient for me to just go around. I don't have yeah. anything to prove to these people. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Right. It's so it's so cartoony when the, when they put in front of him. They're like, <laughs> "What you gonna do now?" <laughs> <laughs> he moves it. They're like, yeah. "Oh my god!" It's, it's just, uh, yeah. That's <laughs> so stupid. But in any case, he he sort of walks them around the rubble, and they get into this uh, little contraption. It's like a little transportation device. Uh, it's like a little little cart thing that runs on uh on these tracks. It goes very fast. It goes very fast. Quite amusing, yeah. um, this little thing. Uh, no, you, you, you cart ride yeah, Harry Potter. So it's, it's doing that, and then they're about to head to, like, an open door. And you know what? I'm not even sure how I would put this into words. It might just be something that people need to see for themselves. And maybe they'll, you'll understand how disastrous it is. Do you, can I just point out, ER mentioned that this is, like, Harry Potter, and I felt the exact same <laughs> fucking thing. Yeah. I got Harry yeah. Potter vibes from this. You know when they take, the goblins take Harry to his Gringotts vault? <laughs> and he's <laughs> fucking riding down this fucking crazy thing that's, like, so wildly dangerous. Like, you know how this, this cable car in Halo, it, like, jumps from the rail onto the onto cable, the, yeah. and it hooks onto it? So there's a point where it's, like, in free fall. And I'm just like, that's so fucking dangerous. <laughs> like, I would never yeah. go on that cable yeah. car. Look at that. Are you fucking there kidding me? Look, everyone. <laughs> look at this insanity. Metal Why the fuck rat. would you design it Why this way? <laughs> like, what is that? Right. But if that ER, you nailed it, right? Because yeah. that's something you can pass off in the magical wizarding world of Harry Potter, right? Yeah, Where like, you have to yeah. you offset the incorporation of magic into the story with like ridiculous fucking danger, you know, Keep it in like mind. stuff you would know you would no normally not do in a million years. But because magic is not part of the story, where anything is possible, though. they kind exactly. of balance each other out, right? Wait, are right. you talking about Halo or Harry Potter? I'm talking about <laughs> Harry Potter in this sense. Okay, okay. in, in this Halo. context, it feels <laughs> like Harry Potter, but it makes no fucking sense because this, this is supposed to be a grounded, like, sci-fi show. Not well, fucking think about magic. This. If this mechanism fails once, you're dead. You yeah, just you fall, fall. Like you just fall to your death. <laughs> you know like, it's not even the, it's it's multiple points of the, you have these. Multiple there has got to be a better way to travel around I, yeah. the city. I'll go There's further just, than that. This it's is not madness. The, not even better. It's just it's a matter of safety. The reality of this scene, if they weren't so obsessed with like making sure that we're entertained at every point, you, you would slow. It would be a slow trip anyway, and you'd slow down at the exit and you'd be like, you just hear all these noises like beep beep, organizing <laughs> stage one. Please stay clear. And then like an arm would come up and connect to the thing. And it would be like, <laughs> integrity yeah. of clamp, 100%, please press for approval, and you do. And then he has to call someone, he's like, can you please just <laughs> would, set that we're okay to travel across the thing? And he's like, yep, yep, we can do that. And he's like, puts the phone It'd be like down. a cable car, where it would yeah. be slow and yeah. boring, and this is the moment that you use to have characters talk to each other, or something. It's like, we're traveling to a place we need to go for the plot, but we've got a moment to breathe, and we can explain things. And this crazy Harry Potter Doctor Who contraption, where millions probably die every single day. <laughs> millions um, die every day. <laughs> it's just, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And it's not necessarily bad because it isn't this way, but one of the things about Halo's universe that is so great is how believable it all is. The yeah. technology of humans, the buildings, the, the all the <laughs> stuff that, that they use, shit. the ships. It's all so Immer it's so easy to believe that the real future me, could be like this. If Halo doesn't but this exist, this is just nonsense. As a source, I would just be like, "Yeah, so this is just—he's an idiot. They're all idiots." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is all I think they about want it. to die. Canon canonically, they want yeah. to die. Like, why just... in this era can they not design a cable car system that seamlessly transitions from a rail exactly. to like a cable without having to hop from one to the other in free fall? That's so fucking dangerous. I'd be like, is there another method of transportation I can take? Like, I wouldn't, why? I would never get on that. No well, way. You kind of assume as well that they are, there's an atmosphere that they've developed, a false one, but they end up like just traveling in this little cart out into space at one point. You're just like, eh. yeah. This, this cart does not feel like it's space ready, but I guess it is. All right. 
this yeah. cart, there are no straps and seats that you like nope. put your down you put yourself down into. It's not like a roller coaster ride where you have to put the clamps down, lock it in place. There's no safety belt. You're just standing inside of this metal box as it accelerates and decelerates and flies through space. Yeah, and everyone's right. just standing around inside of it. Like this is Doesn't normal. And what if it mal what if it malfunctions and misses the cable? You know that movie uh Life with like Ryan Gosling and uh Yeah, yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Like, Reynolds. Yeah, Ryan yeah, Gosling's No, no, you you yes, you're right. Ryan Reynolds. The the end of that movie like uh there's sorry, I don't mean to spoil it, but there's like a person like go, that goes out into space in a capsule and they're just like screaming cuz they're just going out into endless space. That was that would that's what it would be like. If you're in that cable car and it missed, yeah, you just yeah. like drift out into space and the sea. If anything ah! malfunctions, you just <laughs> like, yeah, on the oh, window. there I go. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the end of me. It's like, I guess I'm dead now. Cool. Yeah, that's one of those very lame ways to go. I suppose you get to look around for a while. Hopefully, not everything is just. They probably, you know, they probably have a whole battalion of people devoted to finding them and bringing them back yeah. because of the failure rate on these things. They have entire flotillas of ships dedicated to just bringing the pods back because they miss so often. Assuming they don't slam into an asteroid and kill everyone inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Disaster. Oh. Yeah. This is so dumb. There is nothing. This is one of those moments that makes you go. Wait, this is a Halo show, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm, yeah. No. No, it's a, it's this their own Allegedly. crazy, wacky world. <sighs> this is very silly. <laughs> so what else? Uh, we got what about? happens <laughs> next? I I think um something that would be worth just I guess broadly covering is that the show explains a lot of what it means like often um the lack of confidence in your ability to understand things. One of the examples of this would be one of the few moments in this show where I think when we watched it, it was like, huh, hmm, was when Halsey used a clone to escape. Um, I'm not that sure that it actually... Moment. We, uh, th here's the thing. I'm not even sure that it really functions, but nevertheless, it was something that was set up and reincorporated later. But when she's... Because something they established is that the clones that uh, they used to replace the Spartans like died eventually from like aneurysms and things. Uh, mm -hmm. And so Halsey's dying of an aneurysm. And as soon as that happens, it's like, ah, yes, clone. But the, see, the show is a little bit further behind than we were because the show is like, well, got to remind people what she said a few episodes ago about how clones yeah. work. Cause, they couldn't yeah. have even had Keys go a clone or something like that. that I she know, that would have been even, You know, that would have been better instead of the like a direct out of universe flashback for the audience specifically instead of you we get um, to be reminded of this along with the character who remembers it themselves could right. that would be a thing. Could just cut it with the way that it already existed no flashbacks not even dialogue just when it's like you know you're trying to save your mother or whatever and she's like that's not my mother like that's good enough yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but instead it's like nope you do, nope. you don't remember that dummy well it kind of reminded kind of like this scene i did find it a little bit ironic that this happens directly after she comes in to like sentence her to death <laughs> yeah. and then she starts dying and everyone starts freaking out the acting is uh not great <laughs> it's a bit awkward <laughs> i found yeah yeah but it's frustrating right because you can picture them having that discussion in the editing room you know yeah. it's like yeah. do we do we put the flashbacks in and someone's like we have to establish for the lowest common denominator so they will understand. Like, the dumbest people who watch this will understand what's happening. Well, yeah, because they, all they had at first was her saying, that's not my mom, and then the guy who ordered that the the, uh, the shot of the gun be put in into episode one, he comes into the room and he's like, you guys need a flashback. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> no one will yeah. understand otherwise. Yeah. Right. It's essentially the yeah. same as um when they do the flashback of like, ah, see, Mackie, she's getting tased again. Mm -hmm. Man, yep. humans talk. It's like man. It, like the show wants us to anybody. feel bad for her. Oh, well, I and guess that is making the point that the show will just tell you everything that you need to know. Like it never everything leaves you're supposed anything to feel. Your imagination. Yeah. If so if you wrote me a character who's very sympathetic that I care for and don't want to see you know suffer, you don't have to tell me how to feel. I ought to, I I just do that thing. I feel that thing. But they really are trying to convince me to feel bad for this character that I just I I I enjoy her suffering. 
You know, I I don't want her to be okay. I hate <laughs> her. It's like um, you know, most of us have seen Suicide Squad, right? Uh, the Suicide Squad. Sorry. When uh, yeah. when you have Bloodsport like trying to chill out with the rat at the end, and he's super awkward about it, you just read the body language, enjoy the the he's come so far. It's like if they just did flashbacks where that's happening to him, going, "I fucking hate rats." It'd be like. <laughs> you know, far he's come, you'd be like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this show has a big characterization problem, for sure. Like, I, I don't believe that the Spartans have a bond. Like, I don't think no. it in, invested no. enough into, like, building that where I, as an audience member, can go like, oh, yeah, these Spartans really all care about each other. I don't get that at all. Uh, yeah. Catherine Halsey's character was butchered. I, I really like that character, like broadly speaking, across like all, you know, uh, forms of the Halo property, games, whatever. Um, I just like that character. I like the idea of somebody who's torn between being this mother figure to a bunch of like hulking warriors. There's kind of like this splinter in his Ninja Turtles kind of thing, you know, where he like he raised all these warriors from infancy and and now they're like his guardians and he kind of sends them on missions and stuff mm -hmm. um but i don't uh it seems like the show has decided like oh she's just bad you know like they they don't embrace the ambiguity of that character i feel like halsey none I mean. of these char yeah none of these characters really whether it's chief or anyone else there's not someone that they're kind of foiled with in any meaningful way to explore anything. Right. It's very simplistically presented. Yeah, shoes. I think they they added that she wasn't tall enough to be imposing. Uh, Those are some stronger shoes. Oh, yeah, Those right. Really this old because they, mm -hmm. they knocked her yeah. out when they were trying to escape and they didn't tie up her legs or kill her. They didn't kill her. I know. Her. Okay. I can, think killing her is the obvious. Can we point out how dumb this is by, like, while we're here? Like, yeah. is in this same episode, remember, they did a montage where they show off her feats of strength, right? Where yeah. she's lifting up a warthog, she's lifting oh, up some other big engine or something. Right. And then they tie her in the same episode to this little fucking oh, bench. Oh. I think you need to reverse like, engineer, oh, so John. The whole reason they showed us all of that was to justify her breaking out here. No. Yeah, uh, they're, they're you know that, what? They're that stupid. Like they, you know what? <laughs> that's uh, I like we can't have it break out that's without actually, showing uh, th that she's right. strong. It's like it's not enough that she's a spot. We have to show scenes of her pulling, and pushing things. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> Dude, you're totally right. That must have been why they did that. Then, but I mean, it's just such a dumb approach, like you're saying. But like, because Spartans should know more than anyone else how strong they are. Yeah. So they need to do something crazy like uh, disable the suit or they need to like just get a chain and just wrap it around her against a pillar like supervillain style something instead of just here's some cuffs and oh, well, uh, let's we're going to do it a bit simpler this. than that. Why would Halsey want you to restrain her and then grab Chief? Um, does she want you to grab Kai? Like it's well, They're looking to leave, aren't they? They are looking to leave, so why not just kill her? Is kill she not her. like a yeah. lost cause? Because remember, later on, Vanek says, our orders are to bring you in dead or alive, which doesn't make much sense to me. I, you need Chief alive. Um, bring in to who? To her specifically? To Colty, like, Colty, yeah. Because yeah. that, that, that seems like it'd be really complicated to do in this location. I well, guess the just, show just doesn't think about it. Well, the show, there's nobody in this base. Everybody disappears. That's the thing, when... yeah. This base like... is suspiciously empty when the plot needs it to... Needs the characters to encounter no marines or like they fight army in the personnel gym. whatsoever. They fight in the gym and it's like, man, suck yeah. if there was like a marine just there doing some weights. And then or watch. cameras <laughs> noticing this. Do you remember how it starts? They have like POV shot yeah. coming at Chief to it from his left. It's yeah. like he just tries to push him with his gun. Like, what are you doing? Of, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Because if you point that gun right at his head, it's over. Yeah, like, which they end up doing by the end of the action scene, isn't yeah. it? Uh, Halsey yeah. said dead or alive, so do what I want you to do right now, or well, we're the gonna thing go is, with the it doesn't option. even It doesn't make sense to bring- because she wants Cortana to assume control. So like, remember, because her plan is like, so, yeah, you and Chief together are gonna be the best. It's like, but you're willing to kill him. Like, yeah. and then kill So she Cortana. would have to- they'd have to kill him in a way 
that the body is still capable of sustaining a consciousness. Which doesn't make sense, because if you're dead, you have no consciousness, you're Yeah, gone. that's why you die. Your body cannot sustain your brain anymore, because that's I, you. You are a I, brain. Yes, he's in and, a coma. Uh, <laughs> a coma. We're gonna put a comatize. Hit him with a coma gun. Yeah. I developed this coma gun specifically for Spartans to put them into comas. The reason why she even, she had he even takes the gun off him in that fucking dumb. Remember, the reason why the plan happened is because she was able to use Cortana to hack into like Mackie's room and use her entertainment system to talk to her. And she's talking to her, and then the dude comes in, the military police guy. He's like, "Who the fuck are you talking to?" And then he's like, "Yeah." yeah. And then he just that's, walks out. Just that's such a dude, non that scene. It's so funny because in retrospect, it's like, what was the point of having that scene? <laughs> dude, I am you know, concerned you know enough to. I. Go ahead. The guard is concerned enough to leave his post to come inside, ask her specifically, who are you talking to? He looks around for six and a half seconds, and then without another word, he leaves and goes back outside, and then the Skyrim guard style. Resumed. I guess it was just the wind. The conversation You're... resumed, and he never comes yeah. back. Yeah. What I thought of it's was the, the a guard way. from Metal Gear Solid. Where they come in, it's like, what was that noise? And then they run, around, they they do their little uh, like alert patrol, and then they go back to their default routine. It really where it's is. just like nothing ever really happens. Yeah. Video game it's adaptation. Very video gamey. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it's it's just so funny because Halsey's like, hey, Mackie, convince Chief, who hates me right now, to get to get. The, uh, the keystone and bring it to me. You can convince him. And then she says no. It's like, dude, even if she said yes, why do you think that she <laughs> do this for you? He hates you. He tried to melt you. He yeah. tried to turn you into a puddle of goo. What do you think this <laughs> And this is all assuming that you can just maneuver through the base. Like, what does it mean to take the keystone? Isn't it under guard? Aren't there, like, marines everywhere? Your plan is absurd. Wrong, Fringy. <laughs> yeah. She steals it easily. She does steal it easily. She just grabs it and walks out and tells... She shoots a Marine, a Marine who's there, and then the other guy tells her where to go instead of not saying anything and dying nobly. Like, he decides to help her, and then she kills him anyway. It makes him feel bad for her. Like, I don't care about her. Yeah, She's a bad mean, person. McKee is such a, like... They've packed so much time into this person, and she's dead now, and it's just like, and what was her story? <laughs> I don't know. Do they think that people will like when they talk about Halo, the incredible television show, they're like, McKee's character arc was so wonderfully executed. Everyone's favorite character, McKee. Hopefully they, she gets her own game at this point. She's like, what? No. No, it's not gonna uh, happen. I don't mind the idea of someone like her, like somebody who's being, like somebody who's delusional and obviously being manipulated, but I feel like there should have been a beat earlier on where there was something redeeming about her like we don't like just for a huge stretch of the first season we're meant to like not like her she's just an antagonist period and then she meets chief and then that's all of a sudden where like her allegiance is like it could go one way or the other and then she kind of sees the appeal in humanity for a brief window of time in the season and then she kind of sacrifices herself and and then, you know, Chief being completely overwritten by Cortana at that moment, they kind of bounce off of that to show, like, his callousness as a result of being overwritten by Cortana. He doesn't care that this other Blessed One has just been killed. Um, but I, I just I just would have liked um, us to to like Maki a little bit more. I, I, yeah, you're, I mean, like you guys are saying, like, we have no reason to to be on her side, you know? Very little I reason guess. to be. Look at this yeah, effect like, on know. the guy who dies, by the way, in the background. I know, it's awful. The, the <laughs> one guy, terrible. the Chad guy, who's like, I don't trust her, she's evil, and this is his fate. He was yeah. right. He was absolutely <laughs> right, and his fate is melting. Thanks, Chief. And don't interrogate the Covenant spy in the same room as the fucking artifact. Yeah, like, exactly! What the hell are you come doing? Come on, it's so beyond. Yeah. Get her out of there, but it, she <laughs> has to be in there so that she can activate it and do the big shockwave and escape for the big finale at the end. Yeah. This, the UNSC is so incompetent. <laughs> They're so incompetent. I, mean, this, I know, it's just terrible. Just in case it wasn't already clear, wipe out all other Halo content and it's just this show. We'd just be saying, this show is so fucking bad. What do you have? What do you have that you could latch onto? You know? 
and and re- it's it, I know we we keep talking about it, but like the emotional suppressing pellets. Like Kai breaks out, she comes in, helps. Riz has a shot on Chief, and Vanek's like, "Yeah, take the shot," but she doesn't want to because she likes him so much. It's like, man, these pellets don't do anything. Like they keep they keep <laughs> disobeying you all the time. The pellets don't do shit. Yeah. It's, if, was... it's funny, it occurred to me that the reason they had it so, like, they were standing up while cutting the pellets out of their lower spine is that it would look too comical if they were face down, butt up, on, like, a bed. <laughs> 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 to have the pellet removed. <laughs> well, you know what? It should have been, it should have been, it's in their heads, and they just fucking dig a dagger into their How skull and pull it out. <laughs> like... I was about to Maybe, say, how yeah. unfortunate would it be if the pellet was like in there, like between their ribs or something? Like, you know, somewhere really hard to access, not like just underneath the skin. Man, that because would be something actually, you'd think a scientist would do. Because... It'd be like that episode, that thing in the Wolverine when he chops himself open to grab the thing on his heart. Like, imagine if it was there and then you just have cheap without anesthetic, gets an energy sword, cuts himself open, reaches in, pulls it out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. It seems like a meme format, like grabbing the thing and someone's happy and then someone else is dying as a result. Like it's sounds like something. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Because she was still in that room for some reason, so that this happened. It's just mired with a lot of standard awful writing problems this show. It only coaxed coast by on its IP. If it wasn't with the IP, there'd be nothing like that anybody would find valuable about it. Well, yeah, to go back to that example where uh, Halsey hijacks the entertainment system in um, <laughs> McKee's cell, it's like, are, are they not monitor, monitoring all the in and out digital like communications like through that I room? Like, they don't even have cameras in there. such a super hacker. Because if they had cameras, <laughs> they would have known what Master Chief did. And if they knew that, they wouldn't have let her in. They'd be like, what the... No, yeah, I mean, not it. not only for just any prisoner, but like a fucking Covenant spy of yeah. all people. Like, yeah, exactly. You'd think they'd be taking special precautions, but no, I guess. Because you that would be the door an, would just an have obstacle to the it. plot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a padlock. Like an old needed, keyhole, you know? yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, the 1800s. Just, you know, old, old faithful. None of this, <laughs> yeah, why don't you fucking hack this, computer bitch? <laughs> That's not fair. Eh. Yeah. So bad. It's just so bad. Yeah, a lot of this, um, a lot of this show is it you know, like you said, it is that standard kind of bad where you can just point at it as it happens, and then you could say, Oh, that's like that that's just bad. There's no there's no way she can get here. There's no way they could do this. It's just these basic kinds of logistical issues characters and rooms <laughs> and moving around and stuff like that. Frank, like it's my really good meme. fodder. Yeah. <laughs> Steam style meme, I my wallet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ooh, <that's laughs> Look at him. He's, he's, he's suffering. It's gone. In hell. Nice. Damn you, Gaben. <laughs> yeah. The one guy who was right about her all along, the show punishes the hardest. It Interesting. Does the hardest, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Got, like, a painful death. And I'm meant to feel bad for her when she like gets shot and dies like that. Man, sucks for you. You know? Yeah. Like I'm I feel so bad for you, you know? If only you felt that bad about all the people you killed, many of whom died horribly, like them getting crushed by the uh the 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 I can't believe why is their name gone? The, the worms, the uh, monsters. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, the the worm things, the hunter worms. The, the hunter worms, I guess we'll call them. Like, damn, that guy seemed like he was having a really bad time. A lot of them died by getting crushed by hunter worms. That's a pretty terrible way to go. Like yeah. getting killed by boa constrictors. Well, Man, yeah, but, sucks for but them, someone but tased her when she was younger, Fringy. I, I like that someone <laughs> tased her so she can do whatever that she wants. Justifies everything. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry, we forgot. So, something that's worth noting about this scene that's as well. What? Miranda is uh, trying to... They've got a message from the Gladius that includes Mackie on the call, speaking in the Covenant language. Yeah. She's trying to decipher it. And she's like, hey, listen, uh, 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 
he's um hey take take a listen to this see like this is so weird when i put it through the filter she's speaking so high like it's a high-pitched voice it's so weird and it's like a weird accent I was like, hmm, Miranda. Now, I know we have extra information because we're watching the show, but a weird accent, a really high-pitched voice for an elite, and you have yeah. a Covenant guy at your base who lived with the- A young for- woman. Fluent yeah. in Sangheili yeah. and is a woman. Really? <laughs> hmm. mm. mm. translated mm. to fullest Strunk by this point moment. anyway. I'd recognize yeah. that Irish accent anywhere. That's Covenant. <laughs> It reminds me of, do you guys remember that episode of Breaking Bad? Would you like Bad? to be going to the Great Journey? <laughs> um, remember the episode of Breaking Bad where Walter is trying to explain to Jesse what can, uh, like, what what element is able to uh, conduct electricity and he's holding wire. He's expecting him to say copper and he just goes, yeah, wire. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's what you would be like with her when you explain all of those facts. You'd be like, so who is it? And she'd be like, a girl elite. You're like, yeah. Uh, no. A lady elite. Well, so, so here's the thing. <laughs> right before she's about to do the uh, the test, she figures it out. She figures it out. And then she wants to do communications. Alas, Ballsy is jamming all communications to the uh, base while she executes her plan. Unfortunate. Miranda's got to run up to the room and yeah. tell them what's happening. And right as Mac Key has escaped while they're attacking Chief, and she's trying to explain, like, no, you don't understand. They're being attacked. And a lady in his head said, Look, you got to believe me. And they're about to. And then, unfortunately, misunderstanding as Miranda comes in, she's the spy. And they're like, ah, you're evil. You cannot be trusted. We're going to tase you. And then that court. It's like, man, it's so great when several things happen all at once for no reason at all to ensure that and no one has cell phones with one future. another. Well, they can't communicate, Rams, yeah. because the base has no communications. But then they're like, well, no, go find Mackie. Let's not shut everything down. It's not like it's really odd that our communications go down when the Covenant spy <laughs> is about to use the Forerunner artifact, the Covenant spy whom we don't trust. Man, so, like, mm. this is this is, this is is just, this is just bad writing, guys. <laughs> it's just bad writing. It's, it- it frustrates the hell out of me that not every single person in this room is tackling her out of this room. Being a exactly. drag her by her fucking hair, get her out of there. Yes. Yeah, it, you should have- Miranda should be picking up the artifact and running away with yeah. it so that she can't get it. <laughs> and you, have, you have both of the keys, the dynamic, amazing duo in this show, and they're yeah. just standing there letting her be within arm's reach of this artifact when they need to be not doing that. Yeah. Also, slight detour, but um, one of the bots is called Naked HD XYZ. Find girl even in the shithole. Wow. Ooh, really? Mm. Dude, yeah. I saw yeah, that, one of them said, uh, uh, no more jerk off, find girl. <laughs> no more jerk off, you find girl. It's like written by a caveman. <laughs> No so more jerk off. You find me no woman. Jerk off. <laughs> me find woman. Drag to cave. I mean, it must work, right? <laughs> Somebody's clicking that shit. I don't know. Me make yeah. her woman. <laughs> you me like woman. Halo. Sex. Me like Halo. Me, me like John Halo. <laughs> no, even a caveman would think this is shit. Yeah. Also, this is her prison outfit, by the way. This is her prison attire. That's yeah. the outfit they give to her. This is what oh, all yeah. prisoners <laughs> Because the, a woman... <laughs> Even the male you know, prisoners. There's that thing. There, Obligatory it's a cleavage in the prison uniform. Um, the, it's one thing the UNSC gets right in this show. But there's, there's a scene, a couple scenes that kind of lead up to her, the, the plan to get her to be a double agent. And, or is it just an agent at that point? It's just an eight. Is it an agent? Would she be a double agent or an agent? Well, so you're right to be confused because uh, her loyalties do, for one moment in this show, shift to humanity. Um, they do briefly. So it's like she's an agent for them, and it's in a, in a, it's fucking strange. So, but then she turns into a double double agent or some, whatever it is. But there there are scenes to kind of set up the idea that the elites or sorry the 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 covenant's plan is to plant her amongst the humans right and i assumed this would be done in a different way when i first heard this plan stupid as it is i thought the plan would be that they 
capture some kind of a human vessel and she just sort of inserts herself subtly into human society and enacts some kind of a plan and she just blends in with humanity. I didn't think that they would do it this way where she is very, very conspicuously sent down from an alien ship on an alien drop pod. Yeah. And, you know, that's not how I imagine that plan working out because that's so bafflingly stupid. They also, they have a scene where she, she tells elites, I guess the implication is before she gets jettisoned to the humans, they imply that she wants the elites to beat her up so that it looks right, like she's yeah. actually been a tortured prisoner, but they never do. They, that, that never happens. It's just, impl she just tells them to do that. The scene cuts, then she's dropped down to humans and she's got her hair cut. She's clean shaven. She is got all of her makeup on. Her hair has been styled. She has nice fitting clothes on. And um, like none of this works. So they paid lip yeah. service to the idea that in that's fairness, something they should do, but they just don't they just don't do it. In fairness yeah. to the first point, I would think they well, she needs to be close to the, the chain of command here and John. Well, that's. That's what I was thinking. They're needed. I thought that they were going to do something where she could use some kind of uh, some some subterfuge, some sort of guile, some something to where, oh, we have someone who's in human society and they're with the humans. Maybe she can access some information or find out where the artifact is or where they're keeping it. Not we're just going to say here she is and hope she could capture it and also mm -hmm. kill John Halo. That seems yeah. like it's a lot worse of a plan. It surely had to be a better way, yeah. Um, there had to have been a better Was there way. a surface level reason for her being dropped off that she gave? Like a lie? I think she said that they... Uh, I can't oh, remember. I, I, I want to say that she did. She said, like, I escaped in the battle or when... Or I was able to get on a drop pod because she says everything. Wow. She she spills the beans on everything else about. Oh yeah, I totally understand the language. And she slips up on about. Oh yeah, the the system that you call. Da da da. A lot of a lot of really dumb shit that would automatically blow her cover instantly without any question. Just, that no one picks on uh, because John Halo is an is is a fucking retard. You'd love to have that scene with an interrogator where she explains a whole story and then the first thing he says is, "How long did it take to memorize that?" <laughs> yeah, because because all of this is awful. It's like what what did what did the covenant promise you to get you to betray your own people or some, something like that? You know, because yeah. this show does not give a fuck about trying to make her convincing. And yeah, you're, the show you're right. Just says, the, Buy it. the whole the make it look good. I guess that she's just referring to dropping her off in a pod. <laughs> I don't know if it's anything else. <laughs> Right. I, I well, think that's supposed to be you need to beat me up to make it look convincing like I've been abused, but they just the scene cuts in as I think the aliens are closing in on her to do it. Yeah. But she looks this is how she looks when she's dropped off. I mean she's got her but hair also, did. Why would they even abandon her? Like why wouldn't they just kill her? Why would they let her go? Oh, she has got a mark on her arm. Yeah, she does have a little mark on her arm. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh wow, that's almost you can only, Worse. You, I was about to say, you could miss it. They're like, well, I did miss it, and so did Rags. <laughs> I, yeah, because you'd Wait, expect what? for Wasn't them to the mark punch on the arm signify? She's got like a, well, so that they actually, I, did, she said make it look good, referring to hurting her. So it looks like they, uh, they hit her arm. She should have some facial damage, right? Absolutely. She that shouldn't should be, have makeup yeah. and her hair did. Yeah. Right. Wearing human uh, the, clothes, almost. The, like, they should the, be all ratted and torn and dirty. The exact same thing baffled me, and I figured, like, oh, maybe I just misunderstood. Maybe she wasn't talking about being, like, physically maimed or whatever. Like, maybe it was something to do with the drop pod and not, like, her specifically. But I think it's just neglectful writing, <laughs> as it often comes down to. Yeah. Because they weren't make willing look good, to do. But... Yeah, they, they weren't yeah. willing to do what would actually good. come across yeah. as, um, like, convincing. Like, she should probably be naked. Her hair should be long, depending on how long she's been incarcerated. Messed up. She should not have makeup on. That's stupid. She should have yeah. those like scars all over her or are particular like like wounds from having like maybe clamps around her wrists for a long time. Something that might yeah, even yeah, imply yeah. that she actually escaped a situation where she wasn't in a four star hotel.
And that's the thing. But um, they ain't gonna do that. The, they the, want the, her to look beautiful and presentable. The funny thing about yeah. you saying she should not be wearing makeup is like, I don't even know that they want us to think that's a reality other than just TV show. It's like, no, she's... No, yeah. that's... She just... Yeah, all people... You know. All women have makeup <laughs> They just shows. look this like, good. Like, no. Just shut up. No. No. Like, no. yeah, why is Sag Healy providing you human makeup? That's weird. <laughs> well, it's yeah. almost like some world building you could do with the elites is like these human females cover themselves in this mud. And it is <laughs> it <makes laughs> look hideous. <laughs> Looks hideous. <laughs> See, that would be a great scene. It makes them look even more ugly. <laughs> Let me apply it for you. And he just like swipes his hand on his face. It's just terrible. It's like Hobus. I've been uh, watching makeup, makeup tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> Uncovered. You need to blend the eyeliner with the <laughs> mascara gently along the edges to cover up wrinkles. I'd much rather watch a show about an elite who wants to be a makeup artist. Yeah, he wants shack. to be an esthetician. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Elites like, have no hair, but I'm a character for humans. I don't want to fight. Yeah. I want to. I, w I won't. I won't put makeup on ladies. It's like that's not the Sagnili <laughs> way. <laughs> Look, there's anything, anything else would be preferable. <laughs> All right, yeah. I'm desperate. Uh, yeah. Please, did she pass out for real there, or she's got no, to be faking? She, well, it. she's got to be faking so, it, right? She's, yeah, she's faking it in the 26th century. Like, and then later on on the ship, on the medical ship, she's going like, uh, duh, 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 while like she's meant to be sleeping, like she's sleep talking. It's like, do you not have medical equipment that would reveal she is very much awake and alert and faking it? Dude, you just want Chief to walk over, kick her in the arm. She goes, eh. <laughs> He's yeah. just like. Why are you fucking with me? When I was in search and rescue, <laughs> who headed it up was an EMT. Um, and he said one of the things that they do regularly as EMTs is when someone passes out, they they always check to see if it's for realsies or if they're just passing out to get like free attention or something like that. Because that's a thing yeah. people do. And one of the things that the way that they check to see if someone is actually passed out is they will hold their arm up above their head. Yeah, they'll hold their hand up above their head and they'll drop it. And if the hand actually just lands on their face, then it's probably, it's more likely to be real. Because if it's fake, then people will let their hand drift away from their face so that their hand doesn't smack them in the face. It's one of the tests. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's clever. Mario. Well, it's also just tickling them. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, hey, stop. Stop it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, stop that. <laughs> yeah, like, they're, they're trying to... They're still acting like they're passed out, but they're like smiling. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can Gee, see you smiling, it. and they're like, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Trying so hard not to smile. Yeah. People are untickleable, though. Yeah. I guess it's not foolproof. <laughs> We're just having. Oh, I'm just joking around. <laughs> what of those who are tickle proof? Tickle <laughs> Who cannot be tickled? One in five hundred million cannot be tickled. <laughs> you are the blessed one. You're immune to the tickling. Like she, yeah. now, chief, Tickle. chief, chief. Like someone tries to tickle him and it doesn't work. He's like, "What am I? What am I?" <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. We didn't talk about that. That's in episode two when he doesn't have the emotional prelate removed, but I guess he touched the keystone, so he goes crazy. He's talking to that guy, and he's like, what am I? And then he grabs him and slams him into the wall and screams in his face, what am I? You gotta, you love to see it. Master Chief screaming, what am I? Yeah. <laughs> it's the same energy as Walker saying, do you know it is. am? It's, it, it's exactly that energy. It's like, how do we make our characters interesting and complicated? I know, they scream at people. Yeah. <laughs> what am I? Screaming. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I'm not sure what the. If, I, I don't know what else I would be highlighting except for just the smaller portions of stupidity in this show. That oh, scene with Reth made me laugh because they were obviously doing, to me, like a Silence of the Lambs type thing where they walk past all the c cells of but crazy they had people. Some churros. It doesn't really work out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so if you're going to do that Silence of the Lambs bit, either the person at the end of the aisle is going to be like, like Silence of the Lambs, where he's eerily kind of calm and uh, idle in comparison to the other cellmates. 
or he's going to be just like this ridiculous scampering person, which is what en- ends up being the Reth character, which I just can't believe. Like, I've like if you were Reth, like how fucking exhausting would it be if you were just scampering around like a feral oh, sorry, animal all the time? You know? Shadow said that uh, apparently Reth was a jackal. That's why he knew everything that he did. He was um, a like, jackal. Oh, really? Jackal, yeah, like in the offensive in the game. But, uh... Why? Oh, I thought you I... meant this guy was a jackal, and I was like, "How the?" No, 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 no. That that in the uh, in the in the expanded lore for the games, he's a jackal, um, like in the books, and that's why he knows so much. Right, because he's part of the covenant. But is Reth in they... the books? Apparently, he is, and he's a jackal. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow. So, that's interesting. I had no well, idea we that jackal is not relatable. It. Okay, they're not relatable. They're no. not humans. You can't relate to a jackal. By the way, yeah. the jackal is great in this show. Every dude, all of the stuff that's like what they're meant to look like with the aliens is looks yeah, like, cool. It's just a shame. Look great. The the jackals look particularly great. It's just these are they barely show up, and it's the only thing you could praise about this show is like yeah, some of the aesthetics are impressive. But that's like that's the nature of this show though great. is that like every, everything it is surface level in terms of anything that it's trying to meaningfully pull from the source material. It's just things look like those, you know, they look like in the games and they kind of sound like the stuff in the games, but that's, that's it. Otherwise it is. It's... We didn't know that, that they're three round burst. We knew to have DMRs. We didn't know that they're semi-automatic. It's that kind of thing. You just well, knew to have... of... well I think the, the clearest like... example of that is re- remember in our episode nine, how like they use the snipers, like it's not suppressed. It's like, that's yeah. just a sniper rifle. It's not suppressed. Why is it suppressed? And then of course, just like, I don't know, man, using plasma pistols to get headshots at long range, that doesn't feel like what the plasma pistol is. Does it not make more sense to give him, like, carbine or something? Or, um, or, like, some sort of rifle, you know? But it's just, I don't know, it's just, like, you can pull stuff from from the source material, but, like, it's not they meaningfully didn't... implemented, and a lot of it is contradictory anyway in terms of, like, what is shown in the show in terms of how things work. It just keeps changing. Um, it's really, huh. Really is, huh. It yeah. really is. Um, it is quite. Yeah, it's just. Oh uh, yeah, in episode one, you've because sh- when the when the elites attack and they're using their AK forty sevens, five hundred year old weapons to fight them, their bullets don't take down their shields, but for some reason the Spartans, their guns do. Oh, they I just think take the- down their shields. The, the classic thing is the same gun being used by a human does nothing, yeah. but if a Spartan's using it, it does everything. And it's like, that doesn't... It's, what? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's just... It's, it's... Mafia works. I will say one thing that they did in this that I liked, uh, that I don't think is present in the games, I think it's the one thing. Jackals with energy swords. Yes, they did have... Uh, mm. No, well, don't the jackals... Some of them have, like, wrist-mounted shields. Oh, well, that's not energy they swords. Have, have wrist-mounted energy shields. shields. The sword and the other, and I'm like, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, that's like, that's it. <laughs> you know, I think that's just sort of it. Um, the yeah, this this first person sequence. Um, well, that's them. Like, see, we like the games, even though the HUD doesn't even look like in the games. It's just it's, like it's done really haphazardly. Know, it's it's literally just a guy with a camera, and then they put stuff in post. <laughs> Well, yeah. it's it's interesting because it alternates between orange and blue. So I assume whenever it's orange, it's like that's when Chief is in like a combat state and his HUD is kind of reminding him of the fact. I don't know if that's necessary for somebody like him, but whatever, that's the way it works. Like, but there's yes, some... I know I'm being shot at computer, thanks. <laughs> yeah, but there there's some moments where there's no enemies around, but it's still orange when it cuts to his HUD. Yeah. Like camera view, and it's like, okay, well, is he just in an alert status still, but not quite in a like there's no enemies, you're perfectly safe status, and that's why it's not blue. I don't know why they just wouldn't make it all blue because that's like the games. Like, why would you introduce orange into the palette here? You know, I, I think it looked I cooler, I guess. I, I, guess. I guess this is what I mean. More... Why would you pull? Like, what's the point of pulling it? Like, if you got to pull it, then just make these weird arbitrary changes, some of which actually make things worse. Yeah. 
I don't think Chief ever reloads his gun, by the way. Like, no. in no. his entire <laughs> I'm just thinking about that, because I'm pretty sure he, like, fires his his uh, assault rifle. He fires way more than 32 bullets, and it's like, you never reload. Yeah, they, uh, well, I, I remember a time when Master Chief had pouches on his armor. That's... Where I had, yeah. I, I hope those are, like, extra mags in there or something. Because in the show, you can't portray that. It's It's a video game thing that in order to adapt it to actual reality, you'd have to account for where he keeps all of this ammo. What, where is he carrying everything? Yes. Um, and so they just, instead of doing that, instead of him having some kind of a bandolier or something along those lines, maybe some kind of, something from like Halo Reach, right? You could give your Spartan like pouches and whatnot. They, instead of doing that, they just don't show it. It's just not a thing. You You never reload your, the accuracy of the, um, like the HUD showing bullets being spent and what's actually being spent just isn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't match. Like they knew to do it, but they didn't do it accurately. And so when you, when you instantly notice that it's being done, you also instantly notice that it's not being done correctly how it should be. So it's almost like, why did you even bother? You yeah. need to do it to do it correctly. It's like the shield noise. You knew to put the shield noise in, but you didn't care about having shields actually like work as they do in the game. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Oh. Everything does what it needs to for the sake of the plot. That's kind of that's, that's the, it. And th there are big parts of this that we didn't get into. A lot of it relating to Quan as a character. Um, because again, we just to stress this point, she goes into the desert and finds witches who give her a spirit journey where she sees a monitor. And it's like that this is a whole part of the plot is just her doing family stuff with the resistance fighting against it's all just it's all shit and boring and completely just what... irrelevant. Yeah, it doesn't lead to anything. no bearing on the main story at all. You have to watch Master Chief Killer a couple of times, though. That was nice. Yep. I did appreciate I that. Those are the moments where Master Chief was my self-insert, and I could just kill her multiple <laughs> times. We never got to see her again. But even that sequence, like, what was the point of that sequence? Master Chief kills her a couple times in this vision, and then she he says... He doesn't even actually beat him, right? And then it just stops. No, he just stops. She's like, what do you want? Like, what is this? And then he's just like, ah, no, nah, I'm, I'm not going to hurt you anymore. It's like, I don't understand what this is what meant to represent. What was that? <laughs> yeah. Because they I, say... But then I, you don't fight him. That's how you win is you don't fight him. You have to tell him that. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense, though, when like later on she has to fight all these people to win. You know, like, yeah, I get it. She has I to think, fight I, the bad guys and blow them up to win. I think the ultimate reason for this scene was to have the sensationalist trailer shots. You know, probably where you have a sneak peek of the episode like what Quan is fighting Master Chief. Whoa, I got to tune into this thing. Um, oh, they have to there do a is a lot of selling for this episode, especially. Right. Yeah, I, f I feel like there is something here about like because at the start of the episode, Quan is like rage is all I have left. And then they're trying to, I guess, teach her a lesson about how you can't just use rage to win a fight like you or don't engage in a fight that you can't in a way that you know that you can't win right because like she keeps going up against chief and she just keeps losing because she can't compete but, with that sheer amount of force they i feel like that to fight him in the vision and when she tells them that rage is all she has left that's what changes their mind into accepting her because originally they're like no go away uh, you can't control yourself. And then she said, but rage is all I have left. And then they train her or whatever. They let her in. That's what gets them to, because it does none of this makes sense. It doesn't have a purpose or a point. There's nothing to it. It's just like, look at all these people right. standing around, all these women, witches in the desert, in this Halo show, watching Master Chief in a spirit vision beat up Quan so that she could go to a well where she sees the monitor and then the, her ancestors talk to her in this vision and tell her that she's a protector with a capital P and in like, I don't know what any of this is supposed to, what are you trying to tell me? 
Well, based off of that the Rage is All I Have Left line, I thought the lesson of the fight sequence was going to be that you can't just use Rage to win the fights you engage in. But it didn't, like, do anything with that. It just, like, eventually, like, she just dies a bunch of times, and then eventually Chief holds out his hand, and then she takes it, and then it just transitions to a new scene and it's like what did that what was the point of that <laughs> so i suspect the point of it was to just use it for like promotional material it's like chief and quan fighting each other whoa you know probably made for a riveting I... episode <laughs> oh, God, this was one of, this was like the most boringest episode in the history of always because all it just uh, I re remember the whole sandstorm thing it was and funny. her and the guy it was it was incompetence that oh, was hey, so when... She broke out of her oh, yeah, the bike start. with a rock. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, she smashes the hand, or no, a piece of the bike breaks off. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah it breaks <laughs> off when even though the rocks disintegrate as she uses them. To try and break it, <laughs> yeah, they disintegrate till that comes off, and then she can escape. And then tase what's his name in the back of the head, and that knocks him out. But when they use the taser on um, what's well, Mac, it doesn't do anything. It just makes it painful. Yeah. Uh, the only reason she had that is because earlier in the episode when they went to the funeral and the, the people showed up and they escaped, one of the people dropped the thing and she grabbed it. It's like, ah, I see. You set that up just so she could have it to knock Soren out and then escape. Drive into the desert with no goggles right into the sandstorm. Fortunately, the desert mystics are just standing in the sandstorm and then come grab her and abduct her. Oh, it's like, man, you're so critical. Right. It's great. She's oh, this, this, this jeep driving through the sandstorm that's right with no windshield no goggles she's driving through this sandstorm open top Your and everything eyes. She, hears, she hears something that makes <laughs> her stop and get out of the thing get out of the vehicle so that she can get captured by the desert witches who then say that she isn't ready for training which makes you wonder why they bothered in the first place they should just let her keep going i don't know I why guess would they're they, just, yeah, why would they grab her just to say, yeah, you're not ready? And then she's like, yes, I am. And they're like, I guess you are. Here, drink this hallucinogen. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great porn bot name. Tinder X, X, Y, Z. Everyone is here to fuck with you. All right. It's always fucking with me. I wonder if that was the same drug they had on Rubble. You know, it's like where Quan is like, what is oh. that? They say clarity. I'm like, I'd be like, mm, <laughs> I don't know. I'll take a pass. I'm not sure. You'll need to be a bit more specific. What is in clarity exactly? I remember that that woman, because that's his wife, she says that her planet was glassed. It's like, if there are people who are around and their planets have been glassed, how is it that nobody believes that the Covenant are real? Like in these Propaganda, bro. <laughs> like, yes, you're propaganda. It's like, where is your home? Oh, it's this planet. You can go take a look if you want. You won't find anything, though. It's just glass <laughs> everywhere. The whole planet is glass. You're really yeah. committing propaganda here and so i guess to 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 almost tie all of this into a bow what do we have here we have characters who are utterly nonsensical many of them are incredibly flat and don't have much going on to them at all or they're outright contradictory the plot is insane it's, it hinges entirely on an insane string of coincidences um mm. and outright plot holes oh what's that no it's just yeah, yeah. Noise. um then you got like the world building. I don't understand what's going on, who's where, what they value, or any of the conflicts. Is the covenant really a threat, or are they not that important? Have no idea how they're going to sort out everything to do with the forerunners. Um, and the it theme. It took me. What the, is it? You know, it it was a legitimate point of confusion. If the humans in general knew that the covenant existed. Because they're well, just the so. UNSC does, but a whole bunch of other people are so nonchalant about it. Yeah, even yeah, even then, like I would, the, it took a while for me to go. Like, so you guys know, are you here for the Covenant or the Rebels? Do you know about the Covenant? Is is this like a thing that you're aware of? Because they're just so not present that you often, like, I was just left wondering. Do you guys know that there's like a thing going on with the aliens that want to destroy you as a species? Well, the show remembers when it needs to. Otherwise, they're out of the way so it can focus on its drama. This is very much a show that is at the whims of what the writers want to happen in any given episode. And we don't really yeah. care how much we have to contort the world. Or we have to contrive a set of insane coincidences to make something happen. Or have the characters just 
to act completely out of character to get to where we need to go. It is such a yeah. clear example. Like when you look at episode one and the insane string of events that led up to that conclusion, or like in episode eight, when it was that insane string of all these things happening all at once for the sake of like this dramatic tension that's entirely artificial to lead to this conflict, to set up the stakes for episode nine and the plot that's happening. It's just everything in this show just bends and buckles in favor of whatever they need to do, which for the most for the most part is expediency of getting to exactly where they want, regardless of whether it makes any sense. So you're kind of left with a show that has like kind of very, very few redeeming qualities when it comes to the writing. I don't even know what I would hide, honestly. I don't know what I would say. I don't know who I would point to and say, that was a good character. Because even Soren, it's like, I like him. I don't know if I'd say it's good. Um, yeah. It might just be of... that the actor was really talented. I, he's, I think he's, he's like charming. the only actor I really liked. I like him. Um, oh. I like that character. But then he does dumb things like walk around, like put himself Honestly. in really dangerous situations, allow himself to be compromised. Um, doesn't seem to have a really clear, consistent sort of objectives in mind. Um, Remember his wife the... with all the weird Hunger Games Princess Amidala outfits? Yeah. Remember he crushed yeah. that guy's foot? <laughs> That's true. Remember when he crushed the guy for no reason? Yeah. And oh, so like, oh uh. yeah. That's I don't even know what that was about. And that's what I mean. It's like even him, who's probably the best character in the show. It's like, eh, it's not really like that much of a compliment. He's really weak as a character. Um, that's that's the unfortunate part. I think just, he just rises above the rest. Well, no, the best character was up. the MP who got fried. <laughs> he was the, he's the best character. But he's in the gone show. now, and he's punished for he's that. In our hearts. Chief, Chief is just confusion all the time. Persistent confusion, doesn't know anything, doesn't know what he believes in. Constantly at the beck and call of the writers to do whatever they need to create drama. Um, Halsey is a caricature. She's incredibly evil with like really no dimensions to her at all. Um, Keys, both of them are really flat. They don't really have a whole lot going on. Ke like Keys is remorseful about uh his involvement in the spartan program and that's about it and he, time, he yeah and they only bring it up a couple and, times yeah and miranda doesn't like halsey that's like the big defining trait of, of her and then she's a scientist lady but i don't really know what she believes in other than vague principles of goodness because that's about mm -hmm. as deep as it goes nine episodes 50 minutes a piece and that's like the most that we get for these characters awesome cortana i don't know anything about what she wants or what she believes in um Mac is like I said, it's mess. for those of you who don't, it's probably legit. I don't think it's copyrighted or anything or, or content ID at least. You could probably put the um, that the Arbiter opening sequence from Halo 2 and to just show people if you guys aren't familiar about the games, this in X minutes does more to establish different characters factions and world building than the entirety eight hours or so of the halo show this one yeah. cutscene does it's yeah. full of more artistry and passion and talent in terms of writing and, and just sheer information in, in time as a ratio than the entirety of the halo show and that's that's it's stark contrast that's, that's the case for sure but the show could have not been that and still could have been that's true but it's just mired with you, you have so many examples of like the world and the plot refusing to acknowledge the situations that the rules that they've set up. The Spartans are automatons who do exactly as they told. Chief is disobeying like protocol. Hmm. Kai's putting d like gun grease in her hair to dye her hair red. Hmm. That's a little bit odd. Chief's sort of just walking around like in the city. Huh. Strange. How come the world isn't responding to things that they ought to be responding to considering how important he is? how established it is that he doesn't breach protocol or like not follow orders ever. The world doesn't respond. We've got a story that we want to tell right now. So we don't care about that. Like when we have the entire scene in episode one, where we have like the whole Quan thing set up so that chief defects comes back. Well, no, we're done with that. That plot points over. We're finished with that. We're, we're done. Like we're not going to acknowledge that anymore. We don't need to talk anymore about what chief did and how this decision is going to have ramifications on him. Or like him trying to kill Halsey a couple of times. Well, no, we got the scene. We got our big dramatic scene that we can put up on Twitter about how cool the show is. Um, we don't need to deal with that anymore. Like throughout the show, it's, it's just it's co constantly like buckling and bending in favor of like stupid payoffs that are not that impressive. It's, it's so incompetent. 
Yeah, that's it's a five and a half minute cut scene. And it's not it's it's everything between introducing Arbiter to him starting his mission. Yeah. So the shipmaster's in there. It's the first time we meet him. Uh prophets are introduced. <laughs> Um, and I, I can't help but be impressed by how quickly it establishes Arbiter as a really likable character uh, in that game, despite the like the initial circumstance he's in. Like, like you, you see him like the first scene is him getting chewed out in front of all his alien peers. Right. And you get a few things established. He's a very competent warrior. He's deluded. He does what the prophets tell him to, but he's very good at what he does. He's acknowledged that he's made a mistake and that he's going to do his best to rectify that and fight onward for the sake of the Covenant, but the Covenant will not give him any leeway. Like, they all just want to fucking throw rocks at him, basically. And you feel sorry for him really quickly. We're, like, he's, like, they strip him of his armor, they burn him, and he's saying, like, you know, if you came here to watch me beg, you won't be disappointed. Like, lines like that, you know. Like it, it does such a good job of establishing him as a very likable character in one scene, like f like this. Sh yeah. the Halo I mean, show. You've now, reminded, you've now reminded me of something I remember. This show has a lot of lines that it thinks are really impressive and cool, but they're clearly proud yeah. of that aren't that good at all. What's the show in general? Is humanity, really if we're going to give up our own, it's like wow, you were really proud of that one. Do you re do you ever ask? Do you ever wonder why you never wonder why? I bet they're like, ha ha, see, that's fucking clever. And it's like, fuck, man. Like, these are really not that impressive lines. There aren't really any impressive lines in this show at all. There's no, like, iconic yeah. line that I can think of where it's like, man, that really encapsulates that point. Or, wow, that was, like, a really strong wordplay. Or, hmm, that tells me a lot about this person, what they believe. There's nothing. And yes. it's kind of funny when you compare it to the games that have tons simplistic. of, like, really memorable lines. Lots of memorable lines. Partly because right. the characters kind of only say what's necessary a lot of the time. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. The, like a professional show that was written by professional writers has much less memorable dialogue and it's not yeah. about the quantity because there's tons of lines throughout all of the games and there's just so many that you would highlight the grave mine has tons of awesome lines the arbiter has tons of cool lines chief has a lot of cool lines cortana has lots of fun lines but i don't know what happened were yeah. it so easy i cannot stand this idea that there was no cinematic storytelling merit to the games where the showrunners were just like, we're gonna do our own thing. It's just like our own shitty thing, dude. How dare you? Like, I don't mean to sound overly dramatic <laughs> about it, but really, like, <laughs> there's so much good material here, and it's like you're insisting to do your own thing that's inferior. Like, I, I don't expect the show to be exactly like the games. What I do expect is to be equally, at least equally, or more compelled by the storytelling of the show as I was by the storytelling of the games. That's it. And the, the games did a better job. Sorry. You failed. <laughs> I don't think I don't anybody know. thinks the show did a better job. <laughs> yeah. So with yeah. way more money and resources and just, uh, like, and, and again, professional writers as opposed to just a group of game developers coming up with, the, like, I don't know. What happened? <laughs> like, what with happened? Steven, well, I know what happened. With Kyle Killen writing on this. Yeah, I was. I'm looking up Kyle Killen and, and Stephen Kane anymore. They both left. Uh, one of them left partway through filming. The other one left after season one completed. A good omen, I'm sure you would all agree. Absolutely, I'll take. I'll. I'll absolutely roll the random yeah, we... dice on getting new writers. These ones are worthless. I think there's a bunch of bullshit cover covering up a very troubled production. Where a troubled yeah, writing probably. process oh, as well. Sure, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm looking you... at um the like the writing credits we've got he's got 11 writing credits the last ship tv series the closer tv series he's got some episodes in those uh he wrote an episode for ncis alias he wrote an episode for without a trace wait so the alias one what, what year is that credited uh 2005 damn I've gone back. The closer credits are 2010 and 2012. The last ship looks like 2018. And then we have Halo. That's uh, the thing, man. You never even know if it's their writing anymore with the way everything works. You don't even know if they did write this or if they're just named as the ones who wrote it. Yeah. Yes. So together. the other writer yeah. is Kyle Killen. He has 10 credits for writing. Velvet. 
a TV series which is announced. Oh, okay, that's old. Uh, the Awakening, some episodes for that, 2021. Mind Games, a TV series, 2014. Awake, TV series, <gasps> uh, 2012. Hey, Fringy, you know that one. I know that, but sure. Yeah, what happened, man? Down. He what did the final revisions for the Death Note 2017 movie. My favorite movie. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Oh, <laughs> oh man. And, and also um, and Lone Star 2010, uh, some episodes. And yeah, I, I guess. I don't know how it yeah. works, how one person gets to go to a new project and that per- it's maybe it's who you know or. I don't. I, I don't know how you it works out because but... I know it's the same. A lot of people have been thinking about that with Daredevil. It's like, so you didn't bring back the original writers. Who did you bring back? You look up their credits. It's like you did three shows, all of which were canceled after one season that nobody's ever heard of, and then you get Daredevil. Like, how does that happen? Yeah. yeah. What did you do? Mm-hmm. How many cocks did you suck? <laughs> Seventy. <laughs> it's just because you made shows that got canceled, like they could be great shows. I guess it's just how does that happen? How do you um? What what is the transition? And I mean, we've seen it with a lot of Marvel stuff, right? Where you have like one or two writing credits. It's like here you go, head writer of a television show. Like, well, these writers here, all, all those shows I was mentioning, it was like an episode here, four episodes right, for this so show, this is three episodes like the first for that show. They had a big, a big like writing credit for like a whole. And they season nailed it. Well, it's I guess it's just um the I don't know it I doesn't. Mean doesn't look great when like both of them leave as well it's like man you got to yeah. like show run halo and you don't want to do that <laughs> like what happened yeah um, was it please don't uh, let them touch yeah. daredevil it's over buddy it's already over wow i mean yeah oh, i Fuck. think uh you, you would have asked me a few years ago i would have been a lot more excited now i'm in a place where it's um uh, yeah I, I got i got nothing by the way, tangentially related to TV, I just found out that the finale for Stranger Things season four is going to be two and a half hours long. Yeah, Damn. I hear that. I hear that a lot of those episodes are going to be long. Like the episodes the themselves are going to be quite long. Yeah, I, I don't get it. It's some movies at that point, not TV show. I feel like at that point you're getting a little too long for the spirit of uh of television. Well, let's hope it's good, right? I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because the media mm. landscape right now is so exciting. Have they said that the fourth season is going to be the last one? Or I think the fifth one's the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah. A two and a half hour finale? Did I hear that right? Yep. Wow. So That's long. a long finale. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess uh, I'll put it forward to all of you. Is there anything else about the show that you think is worth discussing that hasn't already been covered yet? What I will say before answering that, oh. anyone answers that, um... If we do super chats next, anything you come up with along the way, you can just talk about if you want to. You know, assuming you're staying for super chats, everybody, right? <laughs> I will. Sure, yep. Yay. Well, again, uh, what is there anything that anybody feels like is really pressing that they haven't that hasn't been touched on did, yet? Did we really like, go over the fact that um, 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 Cortana just took over his goddamn corpse? <laughs> 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 as, as I was saying when we talked about it, I'm not even sure mechanically what they want us to think is happening. I'm not sure. My understanding really is that blew my mind. My understanding is that working. Chief. Well, somebody's got to go. Have to wait, I just wait. <laughs> is there if there is any more? He had the pause before. All right. Nope. Um, but I, my understanding was that Chief allowed himself to die in what is presented as a noble sacrifice. Right. So that Cortana could then take over his corpse to save the day. Um, right. I, I, I think that's what they want me to believe. It, it is what I do believe. So uh, I, as dumb as that is, I, I think that's what they're going with. And then they want the season to end with us wondering, what is Chief's fate? Who knows? Find out next time. Just unbelievably bizarre to me. Well, yeah, I think the of- show is genuinely one of the worst things that I've watched. <laughs> it's pretty bad, but uh, we watched yeah. Multiverse of Madness recently, and well, <laughs> you're that bad. <laughs> pretty bad, even with Sam Raimi. Yeah, I Sam Raimi it. couldn't save it. Well, what oh, a piece wow. of shit that movie was. This this might be worthwhile. What would everybody's number score be for Halo Season One? Halo Infinite out of ten. Oh, oh no. no! 
Oof. Oh, That's really boy. harsh, Joe. <laughs> hey, just are you implying the only thing good about this show is the You know, I don't even know where I was going with that. Um, <laughs> no, I kind of get where you were going with I'm that. I'm going yeah. down to one. I was just I think I've sustained actual psychic damage from <laughs> psychic I'm gonna, damage. I'm going to go with two. This made me feel like I touched an alien artifact out of 10. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna go with two because I I do feel like it could have been even worse, even more terrible writing. Probably could have infected this, but it's pretty dire. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll settle on a two. All right. I'm gonna give this a three, and I'm normally pretty forgiving with stuff, and uh, <laughs> I just Oof. was not impressed with this. Yeah. Rags. I'm I'm in the two to three category. I'm trying to weigh it up versus like our other twos and threes just to see where it slots in more accurately. What's a so Batwoman is a two, right? Yes. Okay. And a three would be We used to say that TLJ was a three, but I'm not TLJ convinced three, anymore. But... It could be a two. But <laughs> do we have a do we have a go to three at the moment? Uh maybe a uh, We've got a chat help like us out. What if we the... said is a three? Yeah. <laughs> Chat, what's a th what's a good three? Uh, one of the there's got to be a Marvel movie or a a DC movie that's a three, right? Oh, is, yeah. uh, is, is Iron Man three a three? Or is I don't remember enough about Iron Man three to <laughs> really rate it. Um, Justice, oh, League. Give... Justice League is a two, my dude. <laughs> like, Mass, uh, oh, so did we give it? Mando, Mando season one? Do yeah. we give that a three? I could believe us giving that a three. That's possible. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I will give it a three then. Mando season one was a three. It was pretty yeah, damn shit. bad, man. Yeah. It was really, really bad yeah. when you start to dig into it. Um, it. Yeah, I remember being not great. I don't know about three. <laughs> damn. Yeah. Wow. You don't worry. <laughs> don't you worry will. about it. Um, they all will. Maybe, they all maybe, will see. Maybe I have. They'll looked all at it see. I haven't looked at it closely. You might. Um, you that's might right. No one has. No one wants to. It's a two. Um, <laughs> this show is broken in too many ways for me to consider it to be a three. Like, it's a two. There's so much about it that's broken in terms of plot and mechanics. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it's it's a disaster. There's kind of... There's, there's I, no getting around it. I don't know what I would highlight as being like, you know what, that was some really impressive writing. I got nothing. Like, I actually have nothing. In nine hours. Hey, the clone reveal. That's something. No, really. yeah, but like I don't even know if that makes full complete sense because like I don't think it does either. But it's out? it's like I don't know if that would ever be worth a point though, is it? That's not worth no, a point in itself. One little but it's, plot it's thing like that was a kind thing, of okay. Kind of. You reincorporated something. Good job. Welcome to writing. You know? Yeah, like, like good on them. That's <laughs> like good. You know, about that that's Mando a thing season you two. Um, Mando season two even worse. I don't know which season. Did, did we worse. think it was worse? Chat, remind us. I think season two was more obviously worse but i don't know if it's actually worse when you act when you look into it i only watched the first episode also, which wait, ended, to, to clarify which it, way, so i didn't continue everything fringy just said was about the halo show not about mando season one by the way no i wasn't talking about mando yeah the, the, the halo halo is a two it's the plot is oh, utterly okay. broken and hinges on a set of con insane contrivances like yeah, fringy doesn't hate mando this much <laughs> Wait, well, I don't hate. No, I don't. Because I, I think I, I thought you were I, talking about. I don't about, hate Mando. I hate Halo. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I, I thought you were like talking about Mando. Really. Yeah, Mando is think... just kind of funny at this point. Um. Yeah, <laughs> it's. Uh, yeah, when I watch Mando, I'm like, oh, you, you, you're, you're terrible. Look at you over there being awful. Yeah. Uh, ruining Luke again. <laughs> no, no, it was Boba Fett show. Damn it. No, that was Mando uh, well, they, as well. They pulled the two. episodes from a, a Mando season to do that. Yeah, it's um, I yeah, I don't know if I'm going to give Halo a two or three. I it's it's really just a matter of what what it is in relationship to all the other things that are two and three, and I, I could put I it in either. There is that as a categorization, but the way that I would justify it is if I were to lay out like every single time that the world bends in in crazy ways to basically save the characters or to push the story forward in ways that benefits it. It's like, that list is enormous. Like, the fact in it, in and of itself that Master Chief is the one of, like, the only two people in, in all of humanity who can interact with Forerunner artifacts, and on two separate occasions came into contact with those Forerunner artifacts mm. that were complementary to one another, like, that alone is an insane coincidence. And then you stack on top, like, how did he get there? And then everything that happens at the end of, like, episode one, 
how like in Quan in that final battle, it's like how many times the world comes to save them. And just overall, it's like you've got all of those plot problems. Are the characters coming along to like really save things? Nah, no, mm-hmm. like no, they're 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 pretty dire as well. Um, I don't know what I would highlight as being good. And once I'm at that point, you know, I don't know how I could say it's how- like a three. I feel like well, in that, a three, I can point to things that are, are like, yeah, that was actually pretty good, or I like that, or there was some potential there. Yeah, my, it's, when you get into, the difference between a three and a six is massive, right? The difference between yeah. a two and a three, it's that, that g- weird gray goop area of, almost, it's, it's, almost, well, it's, it's really tough to say, it's. You can go with 2.5 if you really want to do. I could. I think I'll do that a 2.5 because I want it. I want, we need to have an, we need like it. Maybe it could be an offline thing or we could do it on a Wednesday or something. Maybe it could be an EFAP day where we take a whole list of stuff and we give them numbers and make like a, like a, 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 a scale, you know? Yeah, yeah. And that could be, maybe it could be, oh, that would be great. Well, remember, Rags, we recently too. filled the slot of 0.5. That's right. We sure did. <laughs> Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. In theaters yeah. today yeah. and forever, and you can never That's escape fine. it until next week when Seriously, people forget yeah, yeah. about it and then realize it's awful. Er, it's one of the most interesting films for discontinuity. It like it destroys itself every fucking second of existence. It, the writing in it is so horrendously bad. It's it's kind of hilarious, you know, I will say. You know, I ain't a fan of Marvel movies, but now I'm slightly interested. <laughs> Well, it and, is and you know what? Like bad. If you want to it avoid watching it, <laughs> but know how it's shit, we did. Was it ten hours in total, talking about just Ooh, the problems in the film? Two parter. Yeah. Yeah. Ten hours. Yeah, Thunder made for a, a two hour movie. Thunder had a good suggestion. the The rating thing would be a good idea for EFAP two hundred, maybe. Yeah, we could that do. Could be, that'd be fun. We'd have plenty of time then to rank all the, the movies that, uh, that have ever been made. Yay. It's been getting really lame lately because it feels like so often with a lot of new stuff, it's in the that territory of like two, three, and even one. It's it's getting really annoying. I'd like to get back to more just like average. I want more fives. I want more fives. I will push back on that a little bit. We got Batman and No Way Home. Uh, True, 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 yeah. And also Everything movie. Everywhere All at Once. Everywhere. Yeah, that's a great movie, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, Think of all the people who you... didn't see that, because they saw Doctor Strange instead. Uh, that's <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> right? Reminds you of, like, storytelling, you know? Which is not what this show is, at least to me. Anyway, it's just, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it would be nice if there was, like, more big budget stuff that wasn't catastrophe. Um, and I mean, as for like oh, any expectations for season two, I mean, I, I mean, I guess there'll I be. I mean, new it's good they're getting new writers, writers apparently. It, but, but I mean, I don't know. You've Dad. lost me. Like you kind of lost Dead me. In the one. <laughs> I, the oh yeah, I don't I've give a shit what happens next. Kind of, like, I mean, a level of morbid curiosity. Oh, it'll definitely be a. We're only watching it if you guys really, really want to. <laughs> I, I would only watch it out of curiosity to see if anything actually changes, but if we get an episode into it and it's just the same thing, I'm just done. I kind of just... Yeah, I, I'm curious. Keep alive and that's about it. I was going to say, yeah, I, guess. I can't imagine you'd want to see any more of this, Yeah, Are you going to avoid the next season? Yeah, or are you going to watch it? Mm, depends. I've come so far. <laughs> you want to see? You want to well, see how Quan's arc ends? It's okay. So I I'll I tune into season you. two the same way I still watch the Oscars. You know, where it's just like, oh my god, this is a to fucking watch. train wreck. But right. I'm just gonna see how bad it is. Because oh, you mean, you mean like the majority of TV shows and movies right now? Like, <laughs> I am. I will watch the first episode of season two of Halo. Because I am legitimately curious, kind of what they do, considering I'm what not. the reception is <laughs> and the there, fact right? that it has new writers. But I, I, I want to see the first episode out of curiosity. But if it likes, yeah. I'm not invested. So if it is, if it's the same that we've got, I'm just done. Like I, I have no investment whatsoever in any of the characters, in any of the events. I'm just curious and not almost a kind of a meta way. But mm. I have no in-universe interest in anything that happens in the Halo series. Right, I'm an that's, entirely that's a great, in book. Yes, that's a great distinction. I was invested and curious. Now I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm no longer invested in my, the show. By the way, watching I that still like the episode, franchise. Yeah, I, I like the franchise. Um, but 
Well, I liked the I mean, franchise. My investment in this series overall is like pretty low at this stage. Um, it's been a mm-hmm. pretty it's been a pretty bad decade for this series. Um, like <laughs> you think about where Halo was at, you know, like in, even by 2010, even when Call of Duty was starting to take over, it's like people still cared about Halo. But now we're at a stage where the newest flagship title in the Halo series has like less active players than like fucking Battlefield Five, a game that's like four mm. years old that didn't have a good mm. launch and like nobody really cares about it anymore. The game, like it's there's it, it's just been a pretty bad time. Like if, if there was something that you liked about the Bungie tenure, it's been so long at this point, and there's been so much content after that. that I don't even know what it means to say like you like Halo anymore. You know, like yeah, Halo it's like Star Wars. I liked different. what it used to be. Um, well, yeah, yeah I yeah. liked what Halo used to be, and I guess, oh, like, no. I don't know, Infinite can be fun sometimes as well, but I mean, it's, we're in a, I don't know, my investment in, like, the story of the Halo world, I think it became clear when I didn't beat Infinite, I just stopped playing, it's like, I don't really care anymore about, um, the world or these characters or what's going on, which is a shame, because it's a really cool world, but it's, it's gone, and in the case of this show, there's even less of that, you know? The best Halo content that we've gotten, the last good thing we got was um it was it was those uh the remastered cutscenes that Blur did. Yeah. Seems like oh, what, what was... about the Halo cookbook that Microsoft <laughs> Oh this show has a cookbook! Yes, let me look that up. This sh- this show, if you love Halo the series and you want to invite that into your kitchen, then boy, are you in luck, my friend. Are you in luck? If you let love me... recipes Halo... from across the galaxy. You're going to love the Halo cookbook. Wow. Halo, the official mm. cookbook, hardcover, as it deserves to be. Um, let me get you a picture of it. We could finally fun- have Moa burgers in the comfort of my own home. Uh, let Moa me see. burgers, yeah. It's hilarious uh, because the Halo Twitter account had tweeted this out right before season two of Halo Infinite yeah. content was released. So this was during a point where everyone was waiting for new Halo content and they were getting frustrated. Like, come on, give us something new. And then they announced the Halo cookbook. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, dude, are you what are you kidding doing? Me? See, <laughs> look, at, look at this here, right? They've got the pictures of this. Some of this is weird looking um you have the plasma grenade next to the like meatloaf and bacon and you're like what are you what are you doing with the plasma grenade next to your bacon meatloaf the green beans look good uh uh, is that purple (laughs) ice cream like it's halo guys well what color would halo ice cream be rags it would be purple i guess so um human face in the back of the first picture a human fa- like that's a helmet like it's a marine helmet i like a little girl doll face top the sandwich the first very picture? top in the first picture yeah little girl doll face where at the very top do you not see that little eye There's and the mouth and the top. nose you're not looking no, that's I, not the right picture I, it's in the cookbook oh cover I, the first image they have churros hey. from the show. Hey, that little chick, that doll face at the top. Am I crazy? I, I, you, you, I mean, you, you may be crazy, but I can't. I mean, full disclosure, <laughs> like, I am slightly crazy. Because <laughs> I can above... clearly see the prominently displayed Master Chief helmet above those sandwiches. <laughs> Which makes it Halo. Which makes it Halo, exactly. And they've got the see they got that plasma grenade by the drinks. Cause I was I, I I'm sorry, I, I guess there was in my excitement, I forgot that. Oh yeah, I posted it. Yeah, there yeah, the um they got they reused the plasma grenade prop multiple times. We have it next to the what looks like pomegranate. It almost looks like thing. it's badly shopped. Mm. Yeah, the, Why the grenade. Kinda? Like that could very well be the case, yeah. I mean it's so easily done in Photoshop. How Why and like a burger this? like that? Why you would they do that? I this? can't fit that in my mouth. You have three layers of a burger, and it's got like two things of meat, and then it looks like what look chicken in the middle. And I can't eat this. Not even a Spartan could eat that. Their mouths are not. I. I don't know. I would be screaming angrily at this burger, saying, "Who am I? Yeah, yeah. that you think I could eat this? This burger is too high." The burger is too high. There's too many layers. 
I tweeted about this when it was announced, and I said, uh, hey, well, all the Halo fans starving for content can stop complaining <laughs> now. There you go. Ew. Halo cookbook, everybody. You can have some Tom Yum <laughs> and his wife, Yumbelina. <laughs> well. Sure. Look, we have, they're, they're called full moon churros. <laughs> Difficulty medium. Oh, is there a legendary? Di yes! yes! I thought, okay, uh, yeah, here, let me show you this. Because when I, I saw the difficulty rating, this, the full stack ground pounder, legendary difficulty. <laughs> Did they actually say legendary difficulty? It's in the picture I just posted, yeah. Legendary oh difficulty. I would, never, I would <laughs> never lie to you about have Samoa full stack ground pounders. Epic Here's the flavor text, time. so to speak. Oh man, here it is. The full stack ground pounder. A marvel of culinary engineering and a near impossible task for one person. I've attempted it and failed miserably a few times in the past, but nowadays I mostly make this when I'm having friends over to show off. You're probably better just ordering one from the Have Samoa but I can't stop you from attempting to make one for yourself. What is the context of this flavor? Is this like an in-universe person communicating to you? Like, <laughs> every... What is the... Uh, UNSC High Fleet Dining. For all the big budgets in the UNSC gets for their military spaceships, it always saddens me how they skimp out on food for their crew. In my past life as a corporate food pusher... My task was always to get them to spend more, buy the fancier stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, find yourself some ingredients. Yeah, I guess this is like, yeah, eat better food than the UNSC does. I, I don't know, like this is a chef in the Halo world talking to you or something. I would think Halo fans would be off put by the the legendary difficulty of cooking something like, oh, that sounds too hard. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going <laughs> to marinate a chicken and Mountain Dew. That sounds easy. If a game fuel. Yeah, yeah. You have to marinate it in game fuel. Halo 3 game fuel. <laughs> it's only for true gamers. Only for true gamers. So I think that about does it. For our Halo discussion. Not that you can't yeah. continue talking about it in time to come, but I will say this is uh, the part where we switch over to doing super chats, and of course, anyone must abandon. They may, but I think you guys mentioned you're happy to stay on already, so I guess. Yeah, yes. Go yeah, for I it. And, um, and may may I touch on a few things before we go on uh, super chats? Yes. I will Just... allow it. Sure. Okay. So the the first thing I think is really interesting is the um the interview with Variety magazine and one of yeah. the showrunners of the Halo show. Um cuz this went viral on Twitter where Variety had interviewed Stephen Kane. And uh this was this was where the quote came up where he said uh we didn't look at the games, right? And that pissed off a shitload of people. And uh I have the the quote here, actually. Hang on. Right. That was one of the writers, Stephen we... Kane, right? <laughs> yeah, one I, he's one of the key showrunners. I think there's two, maybe three of them. He said, we didn't look at the games. Um, we started with the games. Oh, no, no, wait. We, we, uh, the, the, in the first instance they were interviewed, the Variety said that Stephen Kane had said we didn't look at the games, and then that was published in the article. And then Stephen Kane on Twitter of his own accord responded to the Variety article and he said, headlines are fun, but this is what I really said, implying that Variety had misquoted him. And I suspect that that's not the case. I feel like they didn't want to admit that they neglected the games more than they should have and they did a bit of damage control. You know what I mean? And then they, he said, uh, uh, what, I, what I really said was, so he wasn't implying that he um, misspoke, or he was directly implying that uh, 
Variety had misrepresented him. And I don't think they would do that. Like, if they, like, Variety used a direct quote, I don't think they would get that wrong. But anyway, Stephen Kane said, uh, we, what I really said was we started with the games and then we went to 343 and they shared all the lore with us so we could give you the full Halo experience. And I'm like, well, what is the full Halo experience? What do you mean by that? Is the full Halo experience, like, does that mean catering to the fans of the games or just what, uh, like, is that only apply to the story that you want, only you want to tell and that has no nothing to do with what's been established in the game so far? Like, there's something really fishy about that whole variety thing. Especially looking back and seeing how, like, people hate this show. Yeah. Right. Like, who are you catering to? Did you actually talk to anyone who played the games? Like, what do you, what, you just wanted to do your own thing. You clearly just wanted to do your own thing. And you yeah. wanted to take Halo and parade around its, its, just its imagery to sell, to sell your show. It's just something that you could use for its utility and nothing more. You seem to have utter contempt for the concept of a story in a video game. Like, you're above video games. Right, yeah, they treat the medium, I think, with contempt. It's like, well, this is television. This is where this the is real, t- like, yeah, good stories yeah. get told. Like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, <laughs> those boy toys, video games are just dumb, stupid nonsense. We're going to tell. We're going to introduce them to art. Right. We're going to culture these. We're going to culture these savages. It feels oh, very, like, did. elitist. Yeah. Ha. And, and uh, so I th- I thought that was interesting. And then the other thing is um, I think the show is afraid of keeping Chief's helmet on more than it should be because they underestimate the degree to which emotions can be conveyed by a helmet- helmeted character. Yeah. And... Um, This is something that ties to my own productions. If I may talk about Arby and the Chief briefly, I filmed this show with action figures of Chief and Arbiter, and they obviously don't have animated faces. Um, But it's shot and written in such a way that I often find myself getting comments such as, Oh man, in this scene in Arby and the Chief, you can totally see this expression on Chief's face, which is really interesting, right? Because it's like it's an action figure. How how could that possibly be the case? How are audiences projecting a facial expression onto an inanimate object, right? And the phenomenon is due to the Kuleshov effect, which I probably I might have mentioned in this podcast previously i can't remember but i think it's worth mentioning again here because it relates to the 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 thing with chief always taking his helmet off almost to a comedic degree where it's like it's like trolling the audience almost where it's like you had all this promotional material for the show with with chief with his helmet on right like you were saying fringy and then uh as the show goes on into episode two and onward he's taking it off to an absurd degree and then there'll be a beat where he puts it on, and then 20 seconds later, he takes it off again. Like, I can't remember the scene. It's like he's, he puts it on, oh, he goes for a yeah, brief yeah, warthog drive, drive, and then, and then he like, takes oh. it off again. Like, are you fucking kidding me? I thought this was going to be like, oh, here's the sequence where we get to see Helmeted Chief for a bit. But no, it's like this, this show is so fucking scared of keeping his helmet on because it's worried that the audience is going to lose the connection with the main character because he has a helmet on. Like, oh, if I can't see his face, then I can't relate to this dude, which is totally the wrong approach to this. There is a, there are really effective ways of, of having a helmeted character convey emotion. I think there's uh, the Mandalorian is an example that is, uh, like, I haven't watched all of the Mandalorian, but I think that's a show that at least occasionally does it really well. Um, but in the case of my show, Arby and the Chief, it's like, you know, if, if I have, like, Master Chief sucks at Halo, for instance, where I have the toy chief holding the controller, and then he's trash-talking for, like, five, ten minutes straight, and then you cut to a shot of him getting banned off of Halo 3 or whatever, 
And then you just cut to him totally silent, no dialogue, just on, holding on his face on like an extreme close up or whatever. You can cut, you can, you hang your perceptions on the icon that you're seeing on the screen, in this case, Chief, and you can, you are, you can already tell what he's thinking. Like, oh, I can't believe I've just been kicked out of this game. This is bullshit, right? And it's just, it's funny just without dialogue. I mean, I think it is. I think that's one of the reasons it worked. And uh, I understood this so early, like when I was a kid about film. And so it's frustrating seeing these Halo showrunners who don't even understand this fucking basic concept about film to go back to the Kuleshov effect thing. So this, it was this guy who uh, generated this example of how this phenomenon works in film where um, people uh, figure out what it is a character's thinking and it has very little to do with the expression on their face and much more to do with the juxtaposition of shots, right? You see, you see a shot of a person looking at something and then you cut to reverse shot of whatever it is they're looking at. And then you cut back to them. And depending on what that middle shot is, it, deter it determines what the intent the, uh, the audience projects on that character is. So the famous example is a guy staring at a picture of a bowl of soup, right? And it's like, oh, that guy's really hungry. He's like really longing for that bowl of soup. <laughs> or, like, it's like a, or another example is a bicycle. And it's like, oh, that guy really wants to ride that bicycle. But in both examples, the guy has a blank facial expression. He's not doing anything different with his face. So it's just in the juxtaposition of shots. But it's, I mean, that, that example illustrates the juxtaposition in particular, but I think there's other factors at play, which is the duration of the shots and also the framing of the shots. Yeah, whether they're the like a... And all that, yeah. Right. Music if it's a, that might be in the background or... Right. Uh, I, essentially, like the proximity of Posture. the camera to the subject. So if the camera is distant, it implies an emotional distance uh, between the subject and whatever that subject is looking at. But if, if you were to cut to like an extreme close-up of that guy looking at whatever the object is, it would imply that, oh, that guy's really emotionally invested in whatever this thing is. And it, now, you, the... If you showed me someone who is looking at a, for instance, bowl of Tom Yum, difficulty easy, prep time 30 minutes, then I would definitely know that they're looking at it longingly because they love it. <laughs> and they right. need to get them some of that. <laughs> yes, you stare longingly at the Halo cookbook and you think, oh man, those recipes from across the galaxy, I could really reuse some of those right now. Um, but there's a there's a Hitchcock uh, Alfred Hitchcock example that's uh, even funnier. Did you almost say Hitchcockian? I did, and it you sounded so douchey. I uh, so douchey, and I was like, okay, I better not say that. Yes, but uh, but you know what I mean, right? Where you have you have a uh, three shot pattern, right? For shot number one, you got an old guy. I think it was Hitchcock himself in the example where he's squinting at something. That's shot number one. Shot number two is a woman holding a baby in her arms, like nursing it. And then shot number three is Hitchcock smiling at what he's seeing. So the implication there is the audience is reading his face. And based off of the second shot, the audience is thinking, oh, he likes this, that this woman is nursing her baby. He finds it nice that this, you know, infant is being mothered and cared for. You take that same example, you replace shot number two with a woman in a bikini, right? So you have Alfred Hitchcock squinting at something, shot, shot of a woman in a bikini, cut back to him and he's smiling. All of a sudden it's a dirty old man who's getting a kick out of seeing a woman in scantily clad clothing. And so the intent of the character that the audience is perceiving has completely changed based on the shot alone, and it has nothing to do with um, a change in the actor's face. It's the same facial expression, right? So what I'm getting at here is the juxtaposition is key. And in Halo, they're ignoring the potential of playing with the ambiguity of Chief having 
his helmet on and leaving the audience guessing as to what he's thinking. Like w- one of my favorite beats in the Halo show, it's it's built off of like s- nonsense with the whole like him getting an order to kill Quan and whether Chief would like be motivated to do that in terms of like the character we know him as. But I'm just saying in terms of like visuals on a surface level, Chief gets the order, Article 72, whatever, the order via his helmet to kill Quan. And he's staring at Quan. And then you cut to Chief. And he's just eerily kind of, you just look, you just see his helmet. He's wearing his helmet. And he's looking at Quan. And the camera just kind of holds on him for a beat. And you're not really sure what he's going to do. I actually really like that. Even though it was built on a bunch of nonsense, I like that visual beat. And I wish they actually extended it a bit more. Like cut back to Quan, and then she's like creeped out. Like, what is it? What are you looking at? I think. And, I think the main issue for that scene comes with I don't know who this is. I have no idea if this is something that he'd do or not because I don't know who this person is. They they rely on you knowing Master Chief from the games to even give that anything anything resembling dramatic help tension. The, the UNSC seemed to think that he would carry it out immediately. Yeah, so like that. So it puts us in a normal position a to figuring out who. This is part of why the inhibitors are treated the way they are by us. It's like they, the UNSC seem to think that they are automatons, but then all we have to go off visually is that he touched the artifact and that has fucked with his brain to the point where he's no longer simply going to execute a person that's chilling out. Because they should know that already. They should know like, oh, Chief's the kind of guy who probably wouldn't kill us. We can't just ask him to do that. But no, they seem to be fully confident that he would do it. And right. so him not doing it to us is like, Okay, what does that mean? What are you telling us? Yeah, and it and it's almost like a lose lose in this scenario because it, it implies that the UNSC is just stupid and evil, and if Master Chief doesn't go through with it, that doesn't mean he's like a good person. It's just like that's what I expect from just a person to do by default. You know, it's not a huge win morally for them to just oh he didn't do a clearly evil thing I was like yeah most wouldn't that's not a that's not a huge win you don't gain really anything out of these two character or out of this character making this decision especially if it's right off the bat yes right so uh, i think that there's a lot of potential here for like telling a story about like, a helmeted person where like i th- there's a s- Chief being fully suited and helmeted serves as a metaphor, I think, for somebody who is so um, augmented and battle-hardened that you, you can't recognize the humanity in him anymore. And so whenever you look at his helmeted face, you're wondering, what's going on in there? Is there a person in there? Like that, I feel like that's kind of the point of that character. But at like, the same the... time, you have those moments where even helmeted up and completely covered as he is... Th- his humanity does appear in the yes. way that he emotes the the few words that he does say some of this the gestures that he makes you can't just you can cover a man in a suit but it's still a person beneath and that will come out here and there right you're absolutely right like one of the what i like about chief is he's almost doom guy but but not quite where he's like, he serves that function of being a hollow suit of armor for the player to occupy, much like Doom Guy. But he's not like Doom Guy in that there is something to him. There's like a personality trait that's unique to Chief, where he's got a basic sense of right and wrong, right? And occasionally he'll chime in when he needs to and say, this is wrong, this is right, let's do this thing. And... uh I really like that about it. You know, a man of few words, but he, he really thinks through whatever he does and um there's there's so much opportunity for the show to play with that ambiguity of what's going on under his helmet but i feel it's either the showrunners or maybe pablo uh schreiber had some input himself in regard to like well i don't want to just have my helmet on all the time i want people to see my face like that could be like a an that's actor, the point where i a man sort like, of thing you know yeah that's the point where someone who should probably say too bad you're gonna uh or like we're gonna find someone else who isn't gonna bitch right um 
I, I, I don't even mind Pablo. Like, I, I, I don't, don't mind him at all. I, I think he has a tendency to overact in a bunch of scenes, but there are scenes where he does quite a good job. Like when he's on the, when he's at his old house and he's on the balcony with Halsey and he's saying like, I saw a vision of you. You were there. I saw you. What were you doing there? He plays that scene with a genuine sense of like hurt and confusion. Like he really doesn't understand, but there's a bunch of other scenes where he does this, like these things with his eyebrows, kind of like the rock and you know, where he just kind of gets carried away with how his face is looking and you know that shot in the finale where he says, uh, Cortana, I'm going to need you now. Like it does this dramatic push in and he kind of does this like looking from side to side from either left and right of the lens. It's just a, a little bit too much where his performance is so hyper aware that, of the camera's presence. It's like he's posing for like a, like a boy band cover shoot or something like that. It's like... I just want to be like, forget the cameras there, dude. Just, you know, get lost in the, the role and just, you know, feel it out. Like, like you did on that, in that one scene on the balcony in the, in the house. Like, I think you, you know, just sort of, I think that most of that's kind of the issue when you talk about stuff of this quality, this two, three score horrible show where you wonder at what point does the actors or actresses talent just completely fall prey to they are doing what they are directed to do and you can't even really tell because it's a lot easier to see when it, you could be more certain that an actor succeeds than when an actor fails because there's always that question mm. with stuff of this kind of quality are they just doing is that how many takes did they do and did the directors decide this one was the best for what idea they're trying to get across at what point no, where does one end and the other begin? Um, right. And here, yeah, I never, my, my issues with the show, and maybe it was because I was too just blindsided by all of the plot and character issues, but actor and actress wise, no one really was, I, I, I was never like, oh, you're just a bad actor. It, it was, I don't know, it, it almost like it, it, it kind of reminds me of, Milan, the remake, where yeah. every actor in that is bad, every fucking one, including and you Jet don't Lee. even notice. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was amazing in that, <laughs> but mm. like you, you all, you don't even notice how terrible all of the dialogue and like the acting is in that movie because it's all terrible and nothing stands apart from anything else. So it's almost like your brain accepts it as, yeah, this is just this is just life. And then it yeah. just clicks like, oh, shit, everyone has been terrible. This is why I'm hesitant to call a bad performance immediately like bad acting, because I think it could just as easily come down to bad writing or bad directing. Right. Yeah, so like I can't the... tell which one it is. I don't know if. Yeah. When it comes to characters like Quan and stuff, you just you don't know. Because um, I know the guy who plays uh, Soren. Um, yeah. He was in uh, Fargo. Right. And he was really good. And he just exudes charisma. He's just, he just, he puts out this aura that you want to like him. And I think that saves his character so much because he just puts out this vibe of a, of a likable person. I forgot he was in that. What season was that? It was, ah, Mahler, help me out. Which season was that? Two. Two. Two, right. Huh. He was, uh, he was really awesome in that season. And, um, Okay. Uh, okay. There's yeah. one more example I want to go over. I know I'm I'm yeah. talking too long here. I'm no, sorry. It's fine. But this there's there's this one awesome fucking scene in Halo 2 that I wanted to cite as an example for how you can have a really compar compelling character in a helmeted character like Chief. There's a cut scene in Halo 2. I mean it, this is even like it would still be cool even without the blur remastering, but those blur remastered cutscenes are fucking so well done. Phenomenal. Right. And there's my favorite cutscene in Halo 2 is uh, when Chief lands. I think it's like after. It's Chief lands on high charity, some platform on high charity, and he sees Mercy, the prophet of mercy, um, being uh, uh, attacked by this flood 
parasitic form. And Chief walks up to him. He says, your pal, where is he going? So right, right there, you got this dry wit that's kind of acknowledging the stakes of everything that's happening, but he's just kind of uh, callous and humorous in the face of it. And it's just so, the delivery is so dry. Like Steve yeah. Downs, man. He's so, he's so fucking. He has no love for this so character. Gr- yeah, this, this right. character that he's talking to, he's like, fuck this guy. I, I, I'm, you know, I, I have no sympathy for him whatsoever. I'm not here to, you know, sympathize with him. I got shit yeah. to do. It's like appropriately callous. Unlike, you know, when he stomps that fucking elite's head flat in the show where I'm just kind of dismayed. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I like this. Um, but in the case of that cutscene, it's like, yeah, I get that he doesn't have any sympathy for this dude. Like, he brought this on himself, these prophets, and they don't have any honor amongst themselves. Like, they'll all fucking sell each other out or kill each other to save their own skin. Like, they, they, the, these elites, the prof, or the, the covenant prophets, they talk of all this, like, camaraderie in, in the pursuit of the great journey or whatever, but they don't care about each other. They just want that ascendance for themselves, I guess, because they see that utopian world in af- following the ascendance when it's really just everyone getting consumed by this terrible parasite. And that's exactly what's happening to him in that cutscene. He's literally getting strangled by this flood form. The tentacles are wrapped around his neck, and he's looking at Chief, and he's still convinced wholeheartedly by his ideology like he's willing to give himself to the great journey and he's unwilling to look the horror of his ideology in the face which is this flood form that has his tentacles around his neck is choking the life out of him actively and he's like still willfully ignorant and that kind of in itself that little beat is like poetic because it embodies this whole idea of the dangers of giving yourself wholeheartedly to an ideology right where you you make no room for new information or the truth in your closed system of thought and then so that beat is followed by chief showing the prophet of mercy mercy by pulling off the the flood form off of him and saving his life i think i think it's ambiguous whether he's he's dead or not i'm not quite sure but he pulls it off of him in an attempt presumably to save him and then he goes to Cortana, and he has this... The scene moves along quite unnaturally quickly, but it's a video game, so I, ex- did, I accept yeah. that to happen. But he has this emotional exchange with Cortana where Cortana reveals her plan to detonate the engine of a ship that's there in the event that the Prophet of Truth decides to activate the Halo array from the Ark, which is where he's going. And the requirement of that is that she, or Cortana needs to leave herself behind on high charity and and chief is now faced for the first time with the possibility of leaving her behind and he might not ever see her again and it cuts to a close shot of him and cortana's reflection is filling his visor completely and there's a there's a unsc ship with flood forms on it that crashes behind him or he can hear it coming and yeah, it's a pelican his... right behind him. Yeah, it lands on the platform. Right, but if you pay close attention to Chief's body language there, he turns his body to, like, see, like, because oh, he knows the ship is, like, hurtling towards High Charity behind him, but his gaze is dead fixed on Cortana because you know that's what he cares about in this instance. He doesn't want to let her go. He doesn't want to leave her behind. And there's, there's so much emotion in that scene, and it's you don't even need to see his face. It's all just in the shot composition and the, the order of shots and the, the length of shots, right? Because if you hang on a certain shot for an abnormally long length of time, it's kind of telling the audience something like, oh, I, there's like an extra little thing here I should be paying attention to, right? In this case, it's Chief's affection for Cortana, which he would never express through words. But there's, He says like, when he gets in the arc, is like, I'm... I'm when you know, when I'm done with all this, I'm you right. know, implying that I'm going to come back and get you, but he never gets to say it because Cortana says, you know, don't make a girl a promise you can't keep. Right, exactly. The, and th- lines like that, don't make a promise you can't keep. I mean, there's all these like just these epic kind of 
I don't want to say one liners because that makes it sound like bad, like cheap writing or something. But like, it's just the, all the dialogue works so well. And then the, the, the UNSC ship crashes and the flood comes out and then it th throws you right into gameplay where you're shooting the flood. And it's all charged by this emotional idea of like Chief leaving behind the one grounding element that he's always had up until this point. And it feels so epic, right? And that's, I just wanted to be compelled, as compelled by the narrative of the, sh of the show as I was by the games. And that's a shining example of how the games really got me gripped narratively. Like, fuck, this is awesome. If I had gotten that feeling from the show, even just once, I would have a, a much better opinion of it, you know? But it's just so obviously inferior. And the games did a much better job telling a story. And it's like, you know, you have the, all these, like, uh, apologists for the show who are just like, oh, shut up, it's good, okay? It's good. Like, it doesn't have to be exactly like the games. And I'm just, I don't expect it to be exactly like the games. I'm just saying it should be equally just at least equally if not more compelling like if you're gonna make a yeah we don't expect a tv adaptation expect games in tv form that's just i don't know if there's anyone who was out there really saying it needs to be the games i just don't think there's that like it's not something that i feel is expected like people know that there will be changes that there it's a new medium so it's going to be something different there's just nothing could be more or less than what the halo you know original stuff was i don't think people kind of get that particularly at this point now that it's had time to simmer what we've been describing uh, is techniques rest. not even that it has to be one to one just just talented ways we of expected some level of artistry yeah. yeah some storytelling and the more you think about halo and a lot of the cut scenes and a lot of character interactions and lines the just the better it gets um, but the more you think about this series, the worse and worse it's going to get. You'll notice more and more problems. You'll notice more and more issues. You'll notice that you'll notice more and more that there's less to notice. Right. So I, yeah. I cannot stand that the TV showrunners have neglected this cinematic content from the likes of like the Halo 2 cutscenes. It's just like I, I would gladly watch these cutscenes back to back in a theater and enjoy that much more than the show that you have produced you know and it pisses me off anyway that that's that's my example that's my little bit <laughs> I, I i feel like i went on a little too long there i'm sorry about that but well, no that's fine that's, that's exactly fine. what we are here for okay thank um, you all i that's, will that's say my bit. is that uh we did have that new policy at one point of trying not to make incredibly long episodes that doesn't mean we have to stop now i'm just saying uh, I suppose this is a question for Fringy and Rags. Do you feel we should put a time limit on how long before we should uh, end the episode? Um, I as long as it's not arbitrary. We're about to I go could, for seven I, hours, right? We're like nearly at seven hours. How wouldn't it be arbitrary though? Well, I it's mean, in the sense of arbitrary. we don't just. Well, I mean, in the sense of um, we don't just pick X hours and end, but keeping to the idea that, yeah, we don't want to go too long, but it's more governed by our energy and what we're able to cover and finding a good stopping point, not just setting a time and then uh, strictly going with by that time. I mean, that's what the policy was about. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> an, an amount of time. Then, then you, I mean, I, I could go, but I'm fine with stopping. Uh, I, I do not feel super strongly if you guys do then you go ahead and uh, uh i will i will leave that to you youtube cuts you off at 10 right if you try and 11 go past 45 that. We, we we're not close to that oh, really fine. okay yeah. um i suppose it's a matter of how how much g given an amount of time how long do you think it would take to cover all of the super chats uh my guess would be three or four hours Right, which means it would be going for 11 hours. <laughs> we, That's what uh, I'm saying, is that we can decide to literally going against everything Rags just said, uh, go for like two hours. If everyone's on board. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. Fine with me. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to use the loo real quick and I'll be right back. No problem. 
You know what, as well, I'll try and scan through and make sure I catch any ones that are directed for, uh, for ER, since there's a good chance you won't be on another stream for a while. Possibly. I, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't, like, presume. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to push me into watching any more <laughs> stuff like this. <laughs> hey, what oh, if it's God. a good thing? What if I'm like, oh, watch this? Cause, that hey, would be a nice change of pace. That really would be. Watch you everything everywhere all at once. You'll like that. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. Good shot. Out of curiosity, yeah, like, if you do end up watching that, let me know what you think. Oh. No. Uh um, alrighty. First one. Oh, hey, ER is here. I can't wait for his insight. Well, well, thank you. My insight is that the show sucked. Yeah. It's the same as everyone else's insight. <laughs> it's the same as everyone else's. There's no limits on that. It's like everyone all over the internet as well. At least... Because there are people who are defending the show, but like anyone who's um, I know who's like critical of uh, storytelling, I haven't seen them praising the show. I don't mm. know what you'd be praising. I don't, I don't know yeah. what you'd be identifying as really valuable mm -hmm. about. It. I um, can handle stupid, but I hate boring. If it's boring, it's like fuck off. But like, know, if I there's a bunch both. of yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I I think that's somewhere we. Differ. Like I'll gladly take stupid schlocky action because I think it's funny and I'll, I'll extract like entertainment out of that. I don't right? know. I would say it's contextual for me, right? Because I love Naked Gun and Monty Python and stuff. But like this show thinks it's smart. So like whether the intent matches up with like yeah, it's hard for me to what's being executed, right? Even though, well, because to a degree, there are certain scenes I did enjoy watching in the Halo show if they did like really stupid things. Like him yelling while he's punching is funny to me, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Enjoying it in ways that they probably aren't happy with. Yeah, they'd be annoyed looking at me. They'd be like, why are you laughing? Like, can you take it seriously, like, I don't know, you failed. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> you failed. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. um, uh, ER is cute. I want to be his little sister. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's very kind, yeah. Uh, is Halo the worst video game adaptation ever made? Ooh. Hmm. There's got to be some really terrible ones out there, though, right? I don't. I don't think it's the worst one. Have you got anything I'm that comes to, to mind? Like the worst, like, like Resident Evil, maybe. Or... <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's up there. <laughs> I'd have to think more What's about. What's funny it, is though, like, you'd be like, which adaptation? There's so many bad adaptations. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's not like I've watched a bunch just because video game adaptations, you know? I mean, I just saw Uncharted. Mm. Holy shit, that movie sucked balls. Ooh. Uncharted like, is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's really yeah, good. I, mean, I don't know what... Like the correct casting on that one. Mm. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's a hyper-generic action-adventure movie with bad plotting and, oh. and no character work. So I, I don't know what I had to do, you know? It's bad. like... I, yeah. Kind of got nothing to offer. I don't know. Halo well, is it's funny because Halo is the least hard out of all of them to screw up. I think. Well, maybe Uncharted is. I think Uncharted Halo, is there's... actually is is like less hard to screw up because it's so simple. It's really not. Yeah, it has a lot of story content. But like something like Super Mario Brothers, the old Super Mario movie with uh, Bob Hoskins. <laughs> it's like there wasn't really much story material to mine from the NES game. You know. Yeah. That upcoming illumination one god damn it like i'm sure i'm not gonna like that <laughs> oh, chris yeah. pratt is mario do 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 sing the halo theme oh that's fun oh what did i come back to <clears throat> oh what was that Perfect timing, because I was actually trying to read these out of order to save us, because all the Ackman's gone now, so this says, which is better, Quantum TV or the Halo show? <laughs> it's a tough question, isn't it, Rex? Quantum TV? Oh, better. How would I quantify better? Quantum TV is certainly consistent with itself. Um, <laughs> he's a well-written character, written. yeah. <laughs> he's a better written villain. <laughs> is but... all covered? All I oh, know it's... about that guy is he's been giving YouTubers a hard time with yeah, like, copyright flags and shit. He's Short been up vision, to ERs, everything and more. Given loads of 
the, people criticize. He fucking put out a dumb review of Elden Ring. People criticized it. He got upset because he wanted it off the internet, like deleted. And he's like, "You have my materials, copyright, blah blah blah." And uh, <laughs> he's been causing quite a ruckus. It's gotten very much out of control. If you look into it, hmm, yeah, okay. interesting. Off the rails, you could say. Um, yeah. Find the halo, win the war. Reminds me of save the cheerleader, save the world. Oh yeah, kind of. Mm, yeah. I remember Heroes. Season 1, still pretty good as far as I remember. I would really have to look back. All I remember is 2, 3, 4 were awful. I do remember that, yes. Um, today's animal of the day is the Eastern Hellbender. Hellbender? Oh, yeah. oh what is... I, I've heard of Hellbender. Is that a... It's like a salamander. Yeah, I was thinking, is that, is that a snake or a salamander? Uh, let me, Eastern Hellbender. Uh, it is an amphib, oh, yeah. so it's like, it's a little amphibian, little, uh, little flatty salamander boy. It's flat. Fuck. Yeah. Let me show you a picture of the, the Hellbender. Slimy boy. Hmm. He looks like one of the little, yeah, he's one of the little, little guys that, uh, from Halo, the little wormy boys. <laughs> Get him. I bet that feels interesting to hold. Mm, feels like a yeah. kind of a, a wet, very slightly um uh not wrinkly, like a wet, wrinkly I don't want to compare it to that, but like um like a uh I don't know. Um you can do it. You're gonna get there, right? Like maybe, ah, uh, like, like a sausage with a really loose casing, kind of maybe. Okay. All Final, right. a dick. <laughs> a wet, wrinkly dick that you could just swing around and flop all over the place, and you pull it out of the water, and you're like, "Oh, what's this? It's got legs." He's a flat boy. Yeah. <sighs> There, I said it. So this next one says, uh, ER, please try not to talk over everyone this time. I, I'm so sorry if I did that mm. to anybody. Here. You've been really talking too much throughout this whole thing. You've I'd been doing good. You've been doing good, though. You, some uh, you are angry messages. evolving. You're evolving as a critic. Mm. This one says, ER. Tell them. I think they're just excited. It's nice and fair. Yeah. Um, think you'll do a stream on everything, everywhere, all at once? Yes, I do think that. It might even be next week. Who knows? EFAP is a... Poor Moon Knight. <laughs> no kidding. Poor, yeah. poor Moon Knight. It'll get to the point where I'm actually going to have to think about whether or not we're still going to do a Moon Knight episode. Like, because... <laughs> It just like we can't. We watched the whole thing. We watched. We the did, whole but show. we've watched the whole thing of lots of things without. We covered half of it, <laughs> kind of. But no, I'm not saying it's an impossibility that we still do Moon Knight. I'm just saying if it keeps getting pushed back, it'll just be forgotten at some point. Well, everyone will forget it. Then, then no one will know that we forgot because everyone will have forgotten. Yep. It'll just disappear from human knowledge. It'll be like the one of those Mandela effect things. Yeah, at one point I'm just like, I'm pretty sure, uh, pretty sure we did do it, right? And then you and Freddy just like, yeah. Well, you'll be. Yeah. Well, what we'll say in response is, Moon Knight. What's, what's that? And then you will you'll start to doubt your own sanity. Mm. You'll say, uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I just have. Hmm, that's weird. I I distinctly recall a crocodile and a skull bird fighting next to the pyramids, but it must have been a, a crazy been, yeah. dream. That's the only real explanation. Or maybe that it would was never in, be in a show that we watched. Maybe that was in Halo. It would have fit right in. Halo the series, it might happen. Yeah, I oh, could yeah. believe it. Uh, also, hi to everyone except Rags. Also, hi, Rags. Oh, hi. Hello. Uh, and yeah, uh, they said, love the endgame vid. Oh, right, thanks. Yeah, that was good, Fringy. I really enjoyed that. Thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, this may be the biggest crossover ever with some of my favorite YouTubers. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Yeah, it was pretty neat grabbing up this lot to talk about uh, 
video game, another IP being shoveled onto onto the pile of oh no, and it's so it's so soon after talking about the game. Yeah, Halo Infinite was not um <laughs> not everything we were looking for either. I think mm. there was a loose plan that we had about talking about the Halo Infinite single campaign. Player. Yep. At one point, that was a legitimate plan that we had to do, and that just died. The that so that plan died. Those plans can't come to fruition if literally nobody has an interest in talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, turns out nobody cares. Yeah. It's a weird one. It was thoroughly uncompelling. It lost a lot of steam. I thought it started off okay, but fuck me. The last half of it like, start, just but... did not care anymore. Yeah. I just so what Halo game should, should I stop at? I've only played up to two. Uh, you play three, then ODST, then Reach, and then you're good. All right. There. And I then you would these. stop, and yeah, you stop and smile because it happened. I think there's this contention over whether or not four is worthless, right? Uh, sure. I don't really think it's got a whole lot that I would. Uh, I mean, it's definitely the better campaign that three four three has made. Um, mm -hmm. but I would say that from a world building perspective, a lot of what that game introduces is, is really a problem. Um, and there's something to be said about whether Chief is even consistent with who he is anymore because of how much of a difference he is like a person. I would um, just yeah. stop it reach. Mm -hmm. Just stop you it play, reach. You play one through reach and you've got like a really tight overall thing that comes full circle with reach. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a nice, it's a nice, like almost closed loop in a sense. Um, yeah. Well, like Halo 4 is where they introduced okay. like the Covenant alternative and the Prometheans and then the composer and the didact and all that. I just found all that boring. It like, goes as absolutely as off the rails from that yeah. world building perspective because they introduced the whole <laughs> yeah, over generations we ensured that you Master Chief would be here at this moment. Like it it just changes so much. Um it ugh. it starts to do like uh, like promised like like prophecy slash chosen yeah, one much. stuff and it's just like uh don't just don't just one two three odst and reach and then and then that's great and that's great it's like a story right. like stories used to have a beginning and an end and then the story was told it wasn't that wonderful and lovely <laughs> And that's kind of what it was. It was the story that was, it's, it's all just so lovely. Oh, and I guess it's also worth noting that I think campaign's not very well designed from a gameplay perspective, so there's that too. All right, all duly mm -hmm. noted. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, yes, welcome back, Actman. Welcome back, E semicolon R. It's been how Thank many you. episodes since you've been on, Actman? Let's find out. Because you came on once before, right? think so. My god, episode 34? Long. Oh wow. That was early. <laughs> In a sense, anyway. Well, uh, yeah, this is kind of what I've meant by when we talk about certain guests like not having come back in a while. I'm just like, oh yeah, just, I don't know, just stuff happens. Time just soldiers on, you know? Yeah. Slow down. Gets away from you. Uh, the wolf days, that's how long? Jeez. Yeah, that was, uh, Wolf was hosting with us. Mm. This show is the story 343 always wanted to tell. I fucking hope not. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't even think God they would us. do this. I think it is funny that they, the, the sex scene was where they kind of said, like, they drew the line. Well, like, as if everything up to then was hunky-dory. If everything <laughs> was hunky-dory, yeah. uh, except that, that would be very bad news, I'd think. Cause it's like, that, it, yeah, it is. But like, I don't have much faith in their ability to tell stories or recognize good stories anyway. But yeah. at least we know where their line is. Yeah. Um, any characters you expect to be introduced slash butchered in Halo's second season? After what John said, I'm assuming they'll do Johnson and Arbiter, probably. Johnson Arbiter, yeah. Probably Johnson <laughs> and Arbiter. Um, I can I... see them getting Keith David for the Arbiter voiceover, because they'll probably do him CG, right? Yeah. Being an elite. I, well, I think they're going to do a puppet. No, they're definitely not going <laughs> to do a puppet. 
Oh, I hope it's one of those shitty like Sesame Street puppets where you always see the arbiter. You always see the arbiter behind like a wall or a boulder or something like that, just enough to cut him off at the bottom so you can have the guy down yeah. there with the sticks. Dude, it would be yeah. so expressive, his head like wibbly wobbling and yeah, I'd love it. Do that. It'll entertain me. They have a one one stick for each little mandible. <laughs> But, hey guys, but it's actually, <laughs> but I'm Keith David is down there. It's him. Keith David's moving all the it's sticks, Keith David, and he's he's him. talking to do the, the the little puppet above him, so you could hear his voice coming out from behind the rock or the was, the wall um, or the box, whatever he's sitting on. It was in Keith yeah. David's contract. I will only voice him if you allow me to control the puppet. They're like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> and he's like, "Damn it, I will that's not." How you do it, right? Yeah. That, that's how that's how it's gonna be like Yoda, right? <laughs> That's how it's gonna be. That was the last movie he saw in the cinema was uh, Empire. <laughs> He's just like, I'm pretty sure that's how you guys do it. I don't know. Um, yeah, someone's been a, a member for 22 months. I made a 36 month as well. Damn. Full thumbs up. Thank you so much. Impressive. Look at you. Um, cosmic chicken worshippers. Oh, and this has got ER. Deeply appreciate you with some hearts. Oh, well, thank you. I don't remember the Halo 4 Forward Until Dawn movie. I like the ending of that film. How does that compare to the Halo TV show? I don't know. I never I'm saw that. I've never seen it. Uh, Rags, I assume you haven't seen it? The, I'm, I'm sorry, the what? Uh, Halo 4 Forward Until Dawn movie? No, I've not seen Forward Until Dawn, no. You know Is that an anime or a CG thing? Do you know if Fringy's seen it? Uh, are you uh, wait. So you talking about Forward Unto Dawn? The uh, yeah, I I think I remember seeing that. Um, but I don't. I couldn't tell you anything about it really. Okay. Um, I don't remember much about way, it. It's probably better though. I um, interesting. Someone showed me this. It's actually, I guess the weird hyperlink thingy is working. But let me show you. So I I link that article. The one about how uh, the Halo TV show is the gold standard of video game adaptations. So the the person who wrote that was Alyssa Mercante. Uh, she has a master's degree in modern and contemporary literature at Newcastle mm. University, uh, University. And she had tweeted... I looked at her tweets earlier to see if she had replied to how people hate that article in the show. <laughs> um, and so... On Twitter, she's very upset that people don't like her garbage fucking tier article. Uh, she had said this... Da, 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 to get you into the mindset of people who think that this is gold standard material, this show. Because um, I clicked on it, and it looks oh, like no. uh, the account owner limits who can view their tweets. Uh, stunning and brave. One of hundreds of people, men. Yeah, so uh, I get on screen. Dragging gender into it needlessly. It's so annoying when they do. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're mean. one of the hundreds of people, men, commenting on my story saying hashtag Halo the series doesn't respect Halo, you're a main game fanboy and that's it. This show is full of book and lore references. So, unfortunately, most people have only played the games and they were written as Unfortunate for her. I, dude, I ain't um, denying the fact that it's got references to the books and the lore and whatever, probably. The, yeah. But that, well, why yeah, why sure, would that, that like... Mean a whole lot to me. The sequel I mean, trilogy references got... the OT pretty hardcore too. What does that mean? But yeah, what does it mean to have references if, like, the core is totally different? Like, what does that mean? Uh, but Literally, I think most that people the haven't last read tweet... the books, though. Uh, the last tweet in particular, uh, she's just uh, coping and seething. But the last thing is, good video game adaptations adapt. They tell new stories in existing worlds. The MCC collection, that's like saying the SVD Dragunov. Uh, but the MCC collection is free on Game Pass. Just go play the games if you want wall-to-wall -wall battles and a monosyllabic totem to masculinity. Okay, um... Seems it's, like a lovely lady. It's not. It's a bad adaptation, and it's bad. It's, it's <laughs> a bad thing itself. I feel like that needs to be reiterated. It's, it's terrible for what it is. It, it is. Beyond. It is not faithful, and it is dumb as fuck. If Halo doesn't exist beyond this show, exactly. It failed both tests. Okay. 
Which is, you know, eh, yeah, whatever, anyway. <laughs> uh, me seeing the Actman and ER return to EFAP. There are those who said this day would never come. And what are they to say now? That's the truth line. They were wrong. Non-believers. Truth says that. Wow. Not that specifically, but different. Close enough. <laughs> Uh, wow, what a fantastic lineup. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 How goes it? Take my movie money as nothing good is out now. What the, uh, isn't the Northman still available? <laughs> like, I have yet to see that. Really want to, though. Everyone I'm going to see it, that soon, yeah. Yeah, everyone who's seen it recommends it, as far as uh, I know. And same for everything everywhere all at once. So, if anything, like, like, now is a better time than has been for a few months, you know? Uh, how? Oh wait. Uh, I don't know how much all of you will care, but after rewatching it, I would like to do a review of Atla. I don't have a clue about editing, though. Is there any advice on that front you could give? Er, why don't you go first? Uh, editing advice. Um, Cause you're pretty good at it. For what was it? Antler. They're gonna do a review of Atla. Yeah. Uh, some kids show or? about like dragons or something. Okay, well, I mean, uh, well, I use Sony Vegas, I want to say, 16 at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And uh, I, I am completely self-taught. YouTube tutorials have taught me everything that I freaking know. So anything you need to know, <laughs> look it up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You'll figure it out. Keep going for it. I basically got started making a bunch of little shit posts originally because that'll... That'll expand your abilities. And, um, yeah, otherwise, um, learn about copyright ID systems. Oh, yeah. Mm. If you're going to yeah. make a review about anything on this goddamn site, you have to get around those somehow. Yeah, if you've been watching the stream, you'll notice any time I hit play on any of the footage from Halo, there was a cap of five seconds every time. I was like... I did it. notice that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be careful. It was one time I forgot to hit pause, and I was like, ah, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, both of them, pretty strong bits of advice. Uh, try not to tie yourself out, take each part piece by piece, in a, and I know that sounds a bit redundant, but I, I guess what I mean is like, Split things up, right. get them into uh, consumable chunks of work instead of seeing it all as one big horrible project and you run away skid. You'll be alright. You can do it. Absolutely. If Aussie, then why we can't drive to it? Hmm. Mm. You can drive on it. Mm. Oh, how convenient. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty convenient. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be really hard to get around. Uh, also, Mola, did you know that Metal Gear Rising is your city? If that is a request for me to play that game, I'll get around to it on a stream. I played it for a little bit before, and I liked it, so. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance? That's the one. That's a great game. Mm-hmm. Highly recommended. Hi, Actman, hi, Rags, and hi, Hitler. Oh, hey! I mean, not that I'm responding to that. No, but you were saying hi to... They, they probably thought you were Actman, so you're just like, oh. Ah, yeah. uh, so yeah, so see, it's a common mistake. You're not Hitler, are you? No. 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 Better not be. <laughs> Mola, did you not trick bad. me? John <laughs> <laughs> uh, 117, I need a weapon. Cuck 117, I need a tissue. Oh. oh. Chief loses his V card and dies. Laugh my ass off. Kinda. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, by the is, way, yeah. have you guys heard I about? Really... Apparently, him having sex was like a bridge too far for loads of fans. They were like, "I don't fucking want to see Master Chief have sex with somebody. You've broken my." <laughs> and I was just sitting there, like, I mean. The show was really awful up to that point, but okay. Like, <laughs> I guess that could be a breaking point. In fairness to them, he does get killed for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The show understands the sin he has committed. PSA for uh, abstinence right there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't exactly say it was a shock, to be honest, either. I mean, you got these a man and a woman, they're both blessed ones, and they're both like, you know, like, oh, one's on the alien side, one's on the covenant side. They're totally going to do a thing where, like... And 
they fucking kiss or something. And it At felt the very like, least. Um, with every scene they were together before they had done that, it felt like the writer was standing in the scene too, pointing at them going, look how close they are, look how physical they often get, look how they <laughs> long at each other. And you're just like, yeah, I know, I know what you're doing. Like, <laughs> this isn't yeah. going to surprise anybody. <laughs> If you're looking for a decent show to watch, I recommend checking out Severance on Apple TV. I've heard, heard that. I've heard of that. Heard that was good, yeah. A couple people have recommended that. Uh, Wings Two quote. Billion. What was that, sorry? Oh, sorry. Go for it. Oh, my, this, I was just going to read the next Super Chat, so what were you saying? I said I, I've been only watching a Better Call Saul, which is uh, oh, fantastic, yeah. by the way. Great show, Better, yeah. Better Call Saul is like... Um, it almost sometimes feels like all of media currently, or most of it, is like this crazy clown world VR system I'm in. And then I take the go goggles off and I'm like, let's watch Better Call Saul. It's, remember when TV wasn't shit and like weird? Yeah, it's like it's, yeah. Yeah, it's like being teleported to another time, another age. Yeah, because it's, it. I guess it's Vince Gilligan is the uh, the key to that. Like he's, the show itself feels like it's almost out of time at this point. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's watch something that's actually properly storyboarded a story, and yeah. written carefully. Yeah. Wild. Uh, Wings quote of the day. Ban all forms of laughter in the chat. <laughs> wow. So, um, the, the, I guess his fans had to find ways of laughing without it being obvious. Mm. Letters and emojis, maybe. No lolling, no lamowing, <laughs> no ruffling, definitely. Oh, you better not ruffle. <laughs> Bonus quote. I see you ruffling. I must start removing mods if I don't see more bads. Oh my god. Man, I wonder how many people have been banned on his stream in total. Probably like thousands, right? Maybe even millions. On whose stream? Uh, Wings of Redemption. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 I've heard the of that. The legend himself. Longman and Co., do you have a particular trope in stories you really dislike? Example, a character knows important information, but when asked, you'll just say, I can't tell you right now, for plot reasons. Oh yeah, we got loads of these, right? Uh, one of the famous ones is Closing the Distance. Anyone with a gun will just get really close yes. so they can have it taken off them. Yeah, like it's an attempt <laughs> to stab the person. Yeah, yeah, I hate that. It bugs me immensely. Oh, um, totally. I think, yeah. I think the one that I might hate the most is... Ooh, there's a lot. I know up there is uh, Chosen One and Destiny. Mm -hmm. Oh, bad. Uh, really? Thunder just mentioned bad guy killing subordinates. That's one of our favorites, yeah. Just yeah. Uh, for no reason at all, a bad guy will just kill their subordinate. I'm going to go Amnesia. I hate Amnesia. Well, I happen to love Spider-Man 3, so I don't know why you'd say <laughs> Does he have amnesia in Spider-Man 3? Yeah, he hits Harry in the head really hard and then he has amnesia and forgets he's the Green Goblin or Hobgoblin, whatever. And uh... I think that's a little bit goofy. <laughs> it's hilarious. Let's be real. Maybe, yeah, okay, goofy, goofy amnesia, I'll take it. He'll take goofy amnesia, all right. It's goofy only until he starts dancing. Then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, this that's is super, this is legit. Uh, yeah, that's how you knew it was Kino, as they say. <laughs> Um, picking up your gun only to take a knife out of the stock and throw it. <laughs> that was one of the best things that's ever happened. Let's book a Boba Fett. Oh, wow. <laughs> she picks her sniper rifle up. It almost looks like she's going to aim it, but then she pulls a knife out of the back of it and throws it at the person. <laughs> Alrighty, then. I never uh, saw that yeah. one. Is that worth a watch? Book Do, a Boba Fett? You know what I'll say is worth oh. a watch? Uh, the... Complete coverage on Moolah from, from us. I edited them all together. It's like a seven hour video. It, it gets you through the whole show, but with us as company. Okay, um, noted. Okay, I, I love that. Way to go. It's a great show. Uh, the people who are unironically saying this show was good are Oleginous Queef Waffles. Oh, that's some oh, I love how, out of this, commentary. Out of, out of all that, I'm just like, what is that weird? You seen that before? Oleginous? Oleginous? Let's see. No idea. That is a new one. Yeah, damn. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rich in or covered with or producing oil. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm impressed. Way to go, commenter. I guess it's like they're very slippery with their arguments, I guess, is mm. their, what's they're suggesting. 
being pro-life and a Halo fan, I am adamantly against this show. Oh, do you mean because it, like, can kill people just from watching it? Oh, <laughs> die of boredom. <laughs> Uh, my neat animal is the chipmunk, mostly because I want you to look at pictures of chipmunks. Chipmunks are pretty great. Oh, we wow. got chipmunks around here, and they're they're great. They're good stuff. Chipmunks are very cute. I was gonna say, does anybody not like chipmunks? I'm pretty sure they're, they're, they're chill, right? People who are wrong yeah. don't like them. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Let me let me grab a a little picture. Satisfy the super shanks. They adorable. Chipmunks are great. Aww. Aww. Oh, people say no because the show's an abortion. It's like, that's another way you can take that joke. Oh. There's more than one way, guys. Jeez. <laughs> what? Um. They changed Cortana from a chip to a brain implant so she could talk to Cheeks without a helmet. They literally changed Cortana's dynamics to compensate for them not having Cheeks wear his helmet. The thing is, though, that implies, like, this is the only thing that I, I take issue with with that theory, because I actually do think it's 100% on the mark, but the funny thing is, they care so little for things making sense that I don't even mm -hmm. know why they wouldn't have just thought, fuck it, uh, it doesn't, like, he doesn't need to be, if someone said on set, or when they were writing this, like, she has to be implanted in him because otherwise we can't take the helmet off as much, wouldn't they just say, like, mm -hmm. she just projects out of the suit, whatever? Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't think that would stop these writers, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, John was just saying uh, in his uh, final thoughts about the, the scene where he has to leave Cortana behind on High Charity. That wouldn't be possible in the show. Right. Because she's, like, in his brain. But her being in a chip that he has to put into things means that she those two might not be together. And he might have to go get her or leave her behind, potentially. And that that changes what can happen in a plot, and it, and it can create a separation between the two, especially when you're so used to having her, and she's not there anymore. That can have an odd feeling uh, when you suddenly realize that oh, she, she's not here. She's she's somewhere else. We gotta go get her. That's a great um, point because Halo Infinite did that exactly in its opening, where the chip gets knocked out of him and he's like it like slides across the floor and he's like trying to reach for it and then Atriox grabs him and slabs, slams him against the warthog. It's like so it gives you that opportunity for visual tension where Chief it gets separated from the chip and he's trying to get it back, right? Like that's now impossible because it's, it's a brain thing. Because of our shit the writing is in the show, season two, for all we know, they'll not only bring Chief back, but he'll get hit by a fucking blast of lightning and it'll separate her and him into the tech in his suit. <laughs> and then she'll yeah. get converted back into a chip or something like that. Just but They could do that because they don't give a fuck about committing to I any know. of this. Mm. I'm sure it'll make the Halo fans happy. The technology in that show broadly is all over the place. Like yeah. you have that fucking bio reader on the ship where they stick their arm in and they have to identify themselves. Like this is like it's me, John one one seven. It's like you're probably connecting to the UNSC network. It probably knows who you are. You have to fucking say your name. And then it says like status critical. I'm like, Well, what does that mean? He's still walking around. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then like that weird thing where, you know, um, keys and the admiral they're in that kind of projection room where they sit in chairs and they put those things on their foreheads and then they oh, turn yeah, into yeah. avatars who can eavesdrop on conversations in other rooms as like a digital avatar that yeah, real that people was weird. can't see like what the fuck is going on Didn't here this, and that's just a writing solution on it like immediately they're like we need to get them in there but we need them to not be seen uh they have a little <laughs> stalkery pivot suite <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay it's so obviously such a rushed improvised idea you know uh, whatever uh lord longbong of mewshlington abbey have you given any more thought to a kong fap of peter jackson's long kong when there's less going on there'd be a movie fap for the ages Yes, a well wagsies scritches for the good boy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'd say we were, uh, that would we're be interested in doing that sometime. Yeah. Yeah. On board yeah. of that. A little bit of Long Kong, put it in there. Mm -hmm. See how it goes. Hmm. Only one day. Unironically, 343's first attempt at Halo show slash movie forward unto dawn was way better and understood Chief better. 
I'm gonna be honest. I don't with know you. if I'd say way better, but <laughs> but you know. Well, that's the problem, though, isn't it? If if it's a four, I guess you could say that's way better. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm so confused. They made Captain Keys black, but erased Sergeant Johnson from existence. If they wanted black representation, why not just include this fan favorite character? As I said, I actually think John's right. They're gonna maybe save Johnson to help promote season two. I don't know. Yeah, that could have been the idea. They um, gotta save really... some of their load for the headlines to build up season two hype. I, I really don't understand what they're thinking on going with season two here after <laughs> you know murdering the main character. Well, maybe putting in the call. They know. Listen, Ian. They no knew one's ever really gone, Okay. That's they true. knew considerably ahead of time that they were greenlit for season two. You know, right. so it's like mm -hmm. they it they're planning with out. that in mind, right? They know they have the second season in the in the can, or like they're going to. All right, just such a bizarre way to end it. If so, you know. Yeah. I, I wanted to end with like a shot of Halo. You know, like, oh, there it is, Halo, like Halo the show. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the title. Think... You know, it's, we still don't, the season, season one is finished now, and we don't really re know that much about if Halo as it exists it does, in the shows. It does if feel like it's game, relying on, uh, it, yeah. yeah, it does feel like it relies on game knowledge, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah it definitely it does. Yeah. Even it I. Relies like... on the games, yet t takes a big shit on it at the same time. I know. It's infuriating. Because even I, like, some people were like, oh, yeah, what's Mullen's perspective going to be? Because he's not as invested in Halo. It's like, yeah, but I know enough about Halo to fill in a lot of blanks where I'm not even aware of I'm f that I'm filling in the blanks, if you know what I mean? Like, when they reference certain things, and I'm just yeah. like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, I shouldn't know what that is if this is just the show. But, uh, yeah, they mm -hmm. do that a lot. Yeah. Um, please read the Pokedex entries for Malamar. Malamar, I assume he's evil, but uh, Malamar, Pokemon. Malamar. And they don't have a Malamar. specific Pokedex entry, just in general, I guess. Let's take a look here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hmm. Let me take a look. Pokedex. Uh, gazing at its luminescent spots will quickly induce a hypnotic state, putting the observer under Malamar's control. It's in the villain's wiki, huh? Uh, let me do Malamar. Uh, Malamar Pokedex. I'm gonna try and hypnotize you, bro. Um. Let's see. Malamar is a dark psychic type, blah, 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 blah. Malamar wields some of the strongest hypnotic powers of any Pokemon and can make its opponents bend to its will. Uh, oh, we have the different Pokedex entries on... Okay, PokemonDB.net is where to go. Um, it has the Pokedex entries from different versions. It said that Malamar's hypnotic powers played a role in certain history-changing events. Uh, mm -hmm. When it comes to strong hypnosis, there's an endless number of people who utilize Malamar for their nefarious deeds. Whoa, this is the one they might be referring to. It lures its prey close with hypnotic motions, then wraps its tentacles around it before finishing it off with digestive fluids. Oh, no. Ugh. Gross. Well, then. Damn, Pokemon. I'm going to mind control you into... Ugh. Hmm. Um, the main character should be called Jimmy Rings 711. Yeah, that's suitable. Let's go with that. How does it feel to have lived long enough to see all your favorite franchises go down in flames? It's a beautiful quote, isn't it? And it just feels great. Feels great. <laughs> feels great. Uh, they did the hunters dirty in the show. Feels like they contractually had to show the aliens but didn't want to, so they showed the hunter's leg and checked the box. Same with the halo ring, weapons, etc. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Like... They had a smart and laser on a uh, hologram and it's like, why can't we why why don't we get to see you use it? Yeah. I like how the yeah. show thinks that's more boring. They're like, yeah, let's focus in on kites. Like, no, you know, I want to listen to Vanek and Riz talk about how they uh, are like coordinating weapons and maintaining them and changing like the temperatures and stuff. That's more interesting to me than, hey, look, I put some gun grease in my hair and it died of yeah. red. 
That was that, I would like to learn a little bit of how this world works. Something this show desperately needs is to explain itself. It, it, yeah, it needs to explain itself. <laughs> you you owe me many explanations. I don't like how it, uh, like, you only see the hunters partially, and it largely ignores the grunts, which are arguably, I think, the, the most comedic of all the alien races among the Covenant. But it, while they're also trying to do a grounded political drama in, like, the UNSC side of things, it's this like, show was devoid when of you, all of us, um, if, if you were to introduce a scene amongst that where you, you see a bunch of grunts with their high-pitched squeaky voices, you know, talking about something funny. Like, I think they kind of tried to ignore that deliberately because they knew... They're trying knew, to tell a very serious story here. Exactly. And they understood the incompatibility with what they wanted to do with what Halo is actually associated with, which is these, like, kind of borderline comedic or full-on comedic, pulpy, kind of fun comic book elements. You know, the games definitely have a, a lot of camp in them, which I think people have forgotten is like those games had some like genuinely funny moments in them. They have fun, yeah. even even while balancing a tone that is serious, because it's possible you can be comedic and dramatic at the same time. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're, yeah, I don't think they were interested because it's like, well, no, we can't have goofy little grunts. That's not in our smart, intelligent show. Like it's not going to yeah. fit in. They can't I really. Go ahead. Uh, you, you have the opportunity to have uh, the you have the grunts and you have the jackals and you have the elites and all that sort of thing. You could all of them are different. They're working towards the same goals, but they're all different in how they behave and how they sound. And that would be a neat thing to portray how the Covenant get along with each other. But I guess that's not really something they care about all that much. Yep. Hmm. Um. How did Steve Rogers know that Bucky killed to Tony's parents? So, you start with Winter Soldier, and it's something you can piece together with the the the, the info dump that uh, the the German AI or I don't think he was from Germany. I forget his name. Zola. Zola is the name. Yeah, of the Zola. Guy, yeah. He um first they they point out that the Winter Soldier is being used for all kinds of Hydra projects, and then they list a whole bunch of them, including. Targets that needed to be taken out, and uh, among them is the pair, uh, the stocks. So I think you could connect it with that, but I would say the most definitive information probably came from Bucky himself when he told Cap uh, about the things that he's done. Uh, presumably, that would uh, give it away because, like, it, the uh, the airport scene is. After yeah yeah it's about halfway through Civil War right that they um they get Bucky to tell them all about the other Winter Soldiers, so there's a good chance that when he was describing that story, uh that him having killed the Starks probably came up. But um yeah those are two ways Steve could uh, piece it all together I suppose, or outright be told. Um. I found Kai's way of interacting with the world after she took out her pill thing super interesting. John just seemed to question more things while writhing in pain far too often. Haven't seen episodes eight and nine. What they do seem to behave quite, quite differently. He just Kai's dyed just her hair like and picked up some heavy stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, great. What the hell is that? I mean, the actress was often looking pretty like, like she was high a lot of the time. In kind terms of, of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like she was just aloof, lost, yeah, distant. Yeah. But hi, yeah, that's a good way to describe can't, it. She seemed like she was just kind of... can't say I liked either of the... Uh, it's just not the way I would expect things to run out once you remove an emotional inhibitor. I don't know. I, I, it's especially Specifically for the, the kind of people they are and what histories they've had. So, mm -hmm. so. And if she takes out the pellet, presumably she would want to keep it secret, in which case, why the fuck would she dye her hair? <laughs> it's like to make it evident exactly. that, like, oh, that, she, she might have taken out her out. pellet. Yeah. She figured it out because of the hair. But what the hell? And her acting is another example of, like, it might come down to bad direction, yeah. where the director has come to her and said, look, the chip's out of you now, so now you got to be like, Really wide eyed and weird in all your scenes. <laughs> the directors and writers you know? are a hell of a lot more accountable for the story here than the actors are. You remember when yeah. he, he like demands to know what her name is to Halsey? Yeah. I was again thinking it's... like, 
options for Halsey, and it would just be funny if she was like, Jane. She's like, Why really? Why would she assume like, that, like, yeah. um, but John is John. They call him John. Yeah, he so never, he never questions whether or not he has his real name. Yeah, what was, what was Set Kai on thinking she didn't have her actual name? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> it's probably, yeah, okay. Um, someone defended Defender Strange not using his sling ring in the opening by saying plot holes are the stupidest way to... That's not a defense, then. <laughs> if you're gonna yeah, go with plot holes are the Lord, stupidest way to look at a movie. Care. Yeah. Because they said, ultimately, it's all contrived. Oh, are they doing that argument where someone wrote it, therefore it's contrived or something? You got me. Why is everyone I talk to a cabbage? I'm sorry about that. Well, this is the thing. If you have a friend who loves watching movies and talking about them, um, next time they hate a movie, wait for them to point out how something doesn't make sense. Because that's, that's just a really natural thing that a lot of people will do when they don't like a thing. They'll be like, uh, what did I not like about it? And then it, it, it's going to be how something is incongruent with something else. And be like, hey, don't you dare. I'll be doing that. Story, it's all contrived. Something like that. Or ultimately just, you know, if they really don't care about contrivances, then yeah, that's, that's up for them. Just turn your brain off, dude. You yeah. hate fun or something? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other side of the halo would not be obstructed by the blue of the sky as in the vision, i.e. we can see the moon during the day. Keep up the good content, love your work, the acting oh. male in EFAP. I'm so glad that you brought that up. It's something I, I forgot, right, we were talking yeah. about cinematography. I was so unimpressed with the reveal of the halo ring. What I thought Me they too. were going to a long tracking shot that would spin around, Chief, and as it spins around, like when we see the sky, you just see the surface of the ring shooting up into the sky just like drift into into view i thought we'd do it like that instead of just having a hard cut to the surface it's like why would you do that why it's would just you like not the like well remember there you go. the um in the it it's the opposite the the halo reveal is opposite than it is to the games where in the games you discover halo because you you you're in a spaceship you're looking at it from the outside first you're like wow look at that and in this you see it first from the inside out which is interesting as a choice. Because um, I don't know what you as like a viewer would pull from that, you know? Like if you didn't know what Halo was in the games, I don't know if you would know what to make yeah. of... Yeah, uh, where's this weird place? Is this like a, a, a planet? A weird planet? Are they... What, what's this a weird space? Well, yeah, nation? because the first yeah, introduction to Halo in the game is, is, is you... It's the pan on the Pillar of Autumn. It moves past and then Halo is there next to... It's... It's very clear. It's like, ah. They do right. mention at one point it's a weapon. They don't, and, but why would they think that? They, that's actually it's kind of an issue that I have. not a good they, reason for it, yeah. They don't, they have no they reason just, to believe it's a weapon. They just yeah, assume it is. Everyone assumes it's a weapon that can do what they want it to do. They don't think that some, especially when you, when you see it, you're like, oh, it's not, it looks like a big hoop in space. That's mm. a weapon. What? Does it have like a gun on it, or you know, it doesn't look like what you 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 would associate a weapon with, right? It's a reveal that Halo is a weapon, and then it's a reveal that Halo is a weapon that fucking kills everybody. Mm. Um, but yeah, the the namesake of the whole IP is sort of. It, I don't think they did a good job, kind of explaining or revealing its existence, um, mm -hmm. or or what it is. It or, relies or, or a lot on the people. games. Absolutely, you know? yeah. Like I know it's a weapon because I'm familiar with Halo. But why do the characters in the show think that? What do they have to? What do they possibly have to? Uh, My why? favorite part why, is why now the reason that? why it's called Halo is because she translates "sacred ring," and they're like "sacred ring Halo," and then they go, "Oh, it's like you don't deserve. It. It's not your music. <laughs> it's not yours. It doesn't belong to you. You didn't earn yeah. it." I wonder how intuitive yeah. it it even is to you when you hear the word "sacred ring." You go, "Oh, Halo." Like a halo an angel has. I don't like, know that you uh, would necessarily do that. Is, is, yeah, is a like, halo a sacred like, I guess ring? Maybe. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, that's not what my mind would jump to. Well, <laughs> it's just sacred they made ring. A anus. anus. They made <laughs> Jesus is anus. Well, they made a mistake because the covenant call it the sacred ring, but like the humans called it halo independent of the name sacred ring. They called it a halo because it looks like a halo. Um, it's not necessarily a connection between Sacred Ring and Halo. I don't know that, like, Halos are that sacred. They're just things that appear over an angel's head, you know? I guess they're pretty cool. Yeah, but, it just like... denotes holiness of a person, essentially, yeah. Um, 
angels and saints and that sort of thing. But um, to my to my know. recollection, they fucked up the Halo reveal in the show oh. as well. Because like when you know it does that panning shot where John finds himself on the Halo, and then it does that like tilt slash pan shot where you see the Halo you... like up in the sky. It kind of disappears into the atmosphere. You know what I mean? Where you can't see the most distant part of it up in the sky. It like just fades out like a gradient. I'm just like, why would you do that? Like part part of what I liked about the the first game so much is looking up into the sky and seeing like the opposite the end ring. of the halo ring. You know what I, I mean? Like during the night, you'd be able to see it clearly. During the day, I guess depends on the thickness of the atmosphere and the 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 sun. You know how much light it gets. There may be some atmospheric factors that are at play there where it's like, well, it's scientifically accurate that you can't I, see I'm it. Pretty I'm not sure. sure but... I got to say as well, I'm pretty sure that just based on the uh, the sort of distances of the ring, that it's a hell of a lot smaller in the show accidentally <laughs> than it is in the game. I think right. that was a mistake. Like, the, you, because in the game, it gets quite thin as it gets distant because this is a huge thing. Whereas in the show... It's like, I don't know, man, like, how, how big is this? Like, maybe a hundred kilometer diameter, maybe? Like, I don't know. It doesn't yeah. look very big. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I've got to look at the, some of the scenes from the games, because I just can't remember that, uh, you know, a detail like that off the top of my head. So I need to find some. I remember Silent Cartographer was the one that, like, gave you a really good view of, uh, because of the, the sea, and gave you, like, a really big view of. Of the ring, big old ring. ring. Cause it's uh da, 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 da. yeah, I just have to kind of look and reacquaint myself with it. But I yeah, the the cause I feel like I, I think about what would I do if I woke up and I saw that on the horizon? I would probably look the opposite direction. I'd I'd look just, this way, it's like, oh shit, that's not it's going up. That's not that's like the opposite of what a horizon normally does. And then I'd look behind me and see the other side. And then I look up. I, I guess that just seems most intuitive to me. Um, and I don't know. It's and there's no. That would be the time maybe to have the the shaky handheld cam to sort of simulate you being there with him as he looks around at it instead of this very gentle pan instead of what I what maybe should be confusion because this is unlike any construct that a human being has ever been on ever for runners notwithstanding but the i don't know i i feel like it could have been done better particularly in the sense that you're mentally sent there your consciousness is either there physically or you you get a vision of it but it's a vision that you can interact with i don't, I don't know it's i don't know i just don't i just don't know i just don't know any of this is it's all just madness yeah. yeah, those visions are Madness. so half-assed in this show. <laughs> this suck. I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, look, we're on the ring. Ain't that nice? You don't even know what it is. It's a, like such a cheap way of getting characters on the Halo ring without actually like going doing there, it. Yeah. committing to being there. Yeah, yeah. Like, I why why can't you have one of the big things at the end of the first season is them learning about Halo. You know, exactly it's, it's yeah. not something that they like oh here's a vision of halo out you know in the middle of a season that's the big the big what? thing yeah you hold on to it and then you put the two pieces together and it reveals a map but if you hold on to one piece for a long time it teleports you to the surface why would it do that i well, feel like the last scene of mentally one, teleports she... you there right <laughs> temporarily or How as does... far as we know you could be i don't know it seems so magical at this point i'm ready for them to reveal anything is totally valid you know <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel like the last scene of the season should have been basically the opening cutscene for halo combat evolved where they do the slip space jump and it's like oh shit there's halo like cut to black reach the fall of reach and then yeah season one ends with them getting there right because i think like the reach getting glassed happens before they discover that first Halo ring, right? Or installation yeah, four. Yeah, yeah. Re that's... We'll reach. So that's the Pillar of Autumn is fleeing. They're escaping reach. Halo. Um, yeah, they're they're that's, escaping that's Reach. Yeah, right. Random they assume Reach jump. is going to get glassed once everyone leaves. That's the assumption. 
uh and then oh i mean fresh we did, right? of... like reach is getting glossed and uh in reach like new alexandria gets uh gets glossed hey reach city yep oh yeah sorry reach <laughs> reach city city. Glossed, that's yeah. that's why, the moment where why you would they do like, that you guys just wasted you could have <laughs> done something city. creative or reach city on planet and reach did you not feel silly writing i hope, that? I hope the person who wrote that had a cap of face when he did it he was just like this is gonna be so <laughs> shit like lol what can <laughs> i get away with the we need a name for a life. city in Reach. Any ideas? Dude, oh, do you Reach think it was a placeholder? Or they never changed it. Oh, oh, yeah, no. like unobtainium. <laughs> like the plasma pistol they didn't paint? Yeah. Just, just, <laughs> wow. The text version just, of that. The guy who it's checked really it was like, that sounds right, Reach City, yeah. I don't know. It's really funny to think that like in Reach, they put in enough effort to even have names for the different continents on this planet. Like different yeah. ice shelves and everything, and then it's like, yeah, no, it's Reach City, on the planet of Reach, and you think it's the only city on Reach, given how like little there's reference to anywhere else, everywhere at all. Yeah, this world feels so small when it should feel massive. The game, you go here, and then you go here, and then you go here. There are different places in Reach that you go to. You, this, I mean, it's you see a lot of different terrain. You go to the mountains, and then you're in the city, and then you got kind of the the plains by space. the ocean. They got the Arctic spots too. It's just yeah, the ice shelves for like where. Also, bases. you go to fucking space. Mm. <laughs> There's so many, and it's and it's again a video game that had a lot more interesting cinematography than the show ever did. Yeah, like Reach has really cool cinematography. Uh, there's a there's a thing in development for film and television where you have a production bible before you go on to the screenplay phase, and the production bible contains all the information on characters, locations, objects, uh, oh, any kind of prop or person that's going to play a role in the thing, and just elaborate explanations as to what everything is and the relationships between one another. I don't think they did that at all with this. I think 343 had their own, and they said, hey, here's our Bible if you want to have a look at it. And they're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. We're just, we just going to go that. straight to the scripts, not even look at our fucking, your Bible, or create our own. You know, no thought into the world building. It's just like one screenplay to the next for them. Mm -hmm. Edgy comment time. This show. Nice. Is like injecting kerosene and laxatives into the veins of, oh my, unborn infant via basketball pump through the mother's thoracolumbar fascia muscle. Complete and utter pain. Yeah, that sounds like pain. Or yeah, that sounds like it could hurt mm -hmm. a fair amount. Yeah, won't disagree with you there. Why is Master Chief such a female dog? No offense, Rags. Um, well, I mean, some, you know, some dogs be like that, you know, mm. it happened, but, uh, hmm. The way Rags and Fringy talk uh, about Halo <laughs> is the same how I felt about Moon Knight as a fan of the comics. I don't know, as from what I gather, the Moon Knight comics are, or well, the best of them anyway, are leagues ahead of the show. You guys should just run back to them. Point, okay. Safe haven, you know how they say it. Uh, anyway, first time Super Chat, so I wanted to thank you all for making great content. Thank you very much. Like I said, read more, read more of the, of your favorites from Moon Knight. You don't need to watch the show. Stay away. Mm -hmm. My smile just grew as big as ER's seeing him back. Aw. Aw, oh, it's a pretty Thanks. wide smile there, buddy. Hey, Can I just say, I love, I love whenever one of you guys puts out a new video. Like, uh, that's something I'm working on. Like, uh, like I've been on YouTube for a long time, but I've kind of been so mm -hmm. focused on my own stuff. But now I'm I'm just, I'm making dedicating time to like appreciating the work other people do. I mean, it sounds so fucking stupid because it's so obvious that there would be other people like me like creating content and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm just like focusing on that now and like um, rags. You put out that video on the orcs Mauler. You put out that black. Widow video, oh. Fringy, you put out that Endgame video. I, ER, I watched your video on Halo, your recent upload, and the you you talked about like how fucking stupid the dialogue was mm -hmm. of like uh uh what's her name main character lady Quan? 
Quan, yeah, yeah, yeah. How fucking dumb it was. And that's such a critical moment for us to like get on board with the character, you know? Yeah, and yeah. her dialogue is so stupid that it just makes us not connect with her at all. And then we're supposed to be invested in her by the time the action scene comes along and it's terrible. Like, uh, and I, I throw your guys' stuff on whenever I'm working on stuff. Like, if I'm shooting, like, an RB and the Chief thing in my room, like, that takes fucking hours and hours and hours and hours to do. And it's, like, mm -hmm. I'll throw something, like, your content on and have it playing in the background. And it's in the raw audio of the camcorder, but, like, I'll overwrite that with, like, uniquely recorded ambience and sound effects and all that. But, like, I'll have that playing in the background, and it keeps me occupied and entertained, and I'm... You guys are I find fucking, it amusing that you the make great file shit. for uh for oh, obvious the chief cool. footage that you're using in the video has <laughs> like me or more in the background. Oh yeah, <laughs> all my raw video. audio, like the camcorder <laughs> audio. It's just like full of stuff playing in the background just to keep me dying of boredom. Music. Yeah. I guess that makes sense because it probably does take hours like mm. just to shoot all that footage. Yeah. It's like the whole day in my room basically. It's sad. But I, I have you guys to you keep me interested. You make it a show that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, was, it was really nice for you for, for saying what you said, but then at the same time, it's just like, you already know, right? Me and Fringy have watched this stuff for a long time. I still um, remember what house I was in when I first found Arby the Chief, and it's I like remember three watching Arby and the Chief on, um, at the library at school. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking in the library, making sure you had your headphones on. Dude, me and my friends, <laughs> like, when... Awesome. Uh, I remember it was like an emotional high for a TV show when the the kid ended up going uh, to social services and stuff. That that was how they Adam. defeated, yeah, one of the yeah. main sort of villains. We were just like, damn. <laughs> I, I I actually got a funny story on this. I remember I was uh, I was I was um, watching it on a computer in in class because I just it was like a spare uh, period where I could do whatever I wanted. Essentially, I was meant to be doing work, but I wanted to watch it. I didn't have my yeah. headphones though, and I was watching the Cheetahs episode, and I thought I had the audio quiet enough that nobody would hear. But then it got up to the part where, like, the bungee employee with the bad hammer looks at Chief and he's like, "What do you have to say for yourself, huh?" <laughs> and, then, like, it was so loud. and then I just was frantically <laughs> pressing to put the volume down while it's screaming like how long did you think your little cheating screw was gonna last you bitch <laughs> remember Dude. to bring headphones if you want to listen to like I'm in the chief you never know when it's gonna get very loud that's so awesome thank you for sharing that I really appreciate that that's so cool <laughs> That was stupid. I should have put, like, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I thought nobody would hear that. <laughs> and you are, are you, you're, uh, you're working on, like, Hard Justice, maybe, right? Isn't that something that you might be doing? Or Yeah, I've, I'm developing it. And uh, I haven't confirmed it yet, because I don't want to do that until I've got a script finished. And ah, I wish that, well, I wish <laughs> that was a thing that was, you know, that would occur in the actual, in Hollywood, you know what I mean? Where they... Well, they wait until they develop something. Until... Well, no, that's yeah. not the that's not the Marvel Studios way. You create the project first, and then you find the writers to make it, and then you give them a couple of months, to write <laughs> it, and then you're you're already shooting. You're good to go. Yeah, a part of, part of the reason I'm developing it is because I think Hard Justice, my first seasons are so terrible, and I'm but there's something about like the characters in that situation where I looked back on it in retrospect, and I'm like, you know, I could if I did i could do better with this you know like uh if i i could actually write something cool and do something with this and redeem the shittiness of the previous seasons and what, what that's, do you think that's... sucks about the previous seasons what is uh it, it like very them? just unwell un not well thought out and making it up as i went along ah and, right you know, Part of that was pressure from machinima. Part of that was a lack of discipline on my part because I was still learning to write at that point, you know. So if you're having to write it every like week or two to try and figure it out while you're like having to do that, yeah, every week without a plan, I imagine it would be really difficult to create something that's like super duper cohesive. Yeah, um, I remember enjoying them a lot, but I guess it might be that the plot is uh. Like, I'm not sure how well the plot would hang together, I guess, if you have to try and write it as you go along. A surprising amount of my audience do dig them, and I'm so appreciative of that. And I don't mean to, like, you know, 
uh, shit on their perception of it. Like I, I just can't help but look back on that work and I'm and go like I, I could have done better than that. I feel yeah, like I, I can do better. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to write something, and I'll confirm it once I've finalized like a series of scripts. I feel like I have a season's worth of episodes that are pretty, pretty cool. I like, I like the story. Yeah. So I didn't mean to derail it off a of Halo. No, it's all, it's, it's all good. I just, I was, uh, what's wrong with me? Was, I like when, your guys' you... content. I want you to know that. We like yours, and I, I'm glad that your interest in maybe seeing other people means that... Uh... We'll be able to hang out with you more. Who knows? Because um, it's kind of funny. I I have Ryan Johnson to thank for being able to meet like people like you and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a yeah. weird situation to be in. It's like it's like well, was it worth the destruction of Star Wars? And I'm like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Friends along the way. It's all worth it. Uh, Halo ODST greater than Halo show. Yes. I don't think anyone's going to disagree <laughs> with that. It's good. Yeah, yeah, I was, Halo I was gonna say, is better than a lot of things. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a great recollection of it, but I got to play it again, I think. I don't think I'm giving it a fair shake. I know like, I need to. I'm probably going to. I know before I eventually get around to a Halo video, because I hate this show a lot and I want to talk about it, uh, I'll, I'll end up playing through the games again. One, because I just should. Uh, but it'll be good to revisit a lot of the things I have fond memories of. And every time I go back to play a level or two with a friend or whatnot, it's always like ah, good memories and just fun time. It it holds up really well. Yeah. ODST is uh, it's it's another one that feels like it slots into the Halo One camp of being a story, beginning, middle, end, nice and cohesive, fun characters and banter, kind of an interesting mystery. Um, great atmosphere. Oh. Yeah. You guys were saying ODST. What? I was hearing OST, and I was like, yeah, I love the music. <laughs> I love the Halo OST. Yeah, it's great. What are you talking about that's badly written? How dare you? It's funny because I haven't, I haven't looked back on it in a fond way. Like, I remember it kind of being a bit dull relative to the other games, but in looking back on it, like analyzing the structure of it, like it's got kind of this um, almost open world structure to it. Where a little bit, you, yeah. you go off and you initialize these different like sub stories of like different soldiers, yeah. right? You find uh, their like data things, whatever. I well, I think the fun. main, I think the main question you need to ask when you revisit ODST is, do you like jazz? <laughs> well, it's it's definitely it's probably the most unique score in the series because like Reach is definitely not quite like the other games, um, but it, it has a little bit Halo. more in common yeah, with them. You... And ODST is a really unexpected. I mean, it's like jazz infused. It's it's it might be my favorite like individual soundtrack in that series. Yeah, I adore it. It definitely um, has its own identity, Dark, but in a good one way. of my favorite tracks it's yeah absolutely and yeah i like Whereas the halo the series has its own it. identity in a horrific way mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> oh it do it do be having that's right oh, yeah. He's the doobie. um also rags bible verse of today Ooh, let's take a look let's see bible verse of the day all right i always use verse of the day.com so today's bible verse is first corinthians uh chapter one verse ten I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. Well, that was Is this about, right. about film discussion? Yeah, <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> about The Last Jedi? Because then I don't know, Jesus. I'm sorry, Jesus, I, I can't do it. I'd Let's actually see. like to take this... Bible. That's right, David. I'd like to take this opportunity to point out kind of a half-assed biblical reference in this. I mean, Halo is full of biblical reference, right? B biblical references, like mm -hmm. the games, like the you have the 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 Halo. It's always depicted above the holy, like divine figures. The idea of the flood, Noah's Ark, and all that at the 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 covenant, the um, prophets. There's uh, yeah, prophets. Yes. There's all these like t terms and ideas that are rooted in religion, and that's on that's something that I always kind of liked about Halo is it tried to like bring science and religion together in this like kind of uh, sci-fi action story. 
Mm. And uh, there's a moment in the show, and I don't think it's by accident, where after they capture McKee, they the number of the room that she is in is 316, right? Oh, okay. and then they okay. have okay. they have they have John you see where I'm going with this they have okay. John they have John going into room 316 John 316 That has to be like the which is, that's like the most yeah. commonly cited verse ever nope. isn't it You're exactly right Fringy and I think that's why it's there So you the Bible is made up of the Old but, Testament and the New Testament right and the New Testament is divided up into four gospels which are each um, accounts of the life of Jesus according well, to four yeah, different Matthew, people. Mark, Luke, and John. Like, I might be wrong, in, inaccurate about this. Feel free to correct me. But they're, they're uh, yeah, Matthew, the, Mark, Luke, and John, those John. right? Yeah, those, those are the, the New four Testament. Gospels. Yeah, the, those are the four Gospels, but the New Testament is the Gospels to the end. Yeah, because it's okay. also all this stuff. Like, um, it's, it's, uh, well, actually, I can't remember. <laughs> But yeah. well, uh, so, sorry, what do you mean rags by to the end? To the end of the Bible? Luke and John. There's other okay. books as well. It's not just oh, okay. those the four that everybody knows about. Right. Yeah, so that'll be like all the Paul, the letters of Paul to the Romans, Galatians, uh, Galatians, sorry. Corinth, that was our Bible verse of the day. We have Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, and 2 Corinthians. All the way to the end of Revelation if that's in the Bible or not, depends on which version. I know like the Dewey Reams is different versions than the King James and all sorts of stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's half and half ish uh, old Testament, new Testament, but the gospels are their own poor thing. The and room was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and they had John go into it. Sorry. I'm so stuck on that. <laughs> like that, that is an interesting, that clever? I guess like it's clever only in the sense of, huh? Not I, I don't because I'm trying to think of what it means other than it just being like a huh, sort of thing. Like uh, I am that cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, yeah, it has that. I mean, like, someone thought about something on set slash. I guess. It yeah. Would be, what would be really funny been... is if it was um if it was the one that Homer referenced, and you remember Matthew twenty one sixty three, <laughs> like, and then he went to like. <laughs> Uh, the town that he lodged there. It's like, yeah, think about it. That'd be yeah, funny. Think about it. Be cool <laughs> <laughs> I, out of um, pure curiosity, because you said John went into 316, I looked up John 117. Um, mm. It is, uh, at least in the New International Version, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So it's totally irrelevant, but you know, I was cur just curious. <laughs> Well, I think that 117 might act also be referring to the corresponding verse, like, you know, when Bungie uh, conceived the number and the character and well, all that. Of what book? There's a lot of meaning to the numbers in the in the games because it's like all of the uh, monitors are seven, and then it's seven squared, then uh, cubed, then quadrupled. Right. So like well, how do you interpret the seven. numbers one one seven? Right? Is it chapter one verse seventeen or chapter eleven verse seven? You know, it could be. Oh yeah, let me take things. a look. Because you could, I you could take. I've never thought about that. You could take one seventeen and then be like, oh, like so the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Oh, so that's like an old thing that was like believed to be. It, you could twist that into anything. Uh, but John eleven seven. So, oh yeah, then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. Mm. You, you can That's make something out of both of them. You, you probably these, could. Yeah, there's a verse for everything. You this could, is what I mean, like, with Halo, them. that's kind of absent now. Listen to these names for the monitors. Um, like, god damn, these names are interesting. Zero, 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 Tragic Solitude. It's a crea the caretaker of Installation Zero, Zero, which is the Ark, which is, yep. like, not even in the galaxy. Um, Zero zero one shamed instrument. Uh zero zero seven court uh courtright witness. And then zero three one exuberant witness. Uh I think that's that's um three four three, so I'll give him that one, I guess. And then there's three four three guilty spark, two four zero one Penedict Tangent. It's like, damn, there's a lot of cool names. How are that's they given these names in universe? By the four I, uh, I think the forerunners gave them their names. Okay. Um, despondent pyre. It's like these are cool names, 
And then look at this. The Warden. Oh, yeah. Awesome. 343. Good job. I was going to say, really out of all the ones you just name. mentioned, the Warden sounds the lamest. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the Covenants certainly have poetic names to everything that they have. Wow. In Amber. Oh, wait. No, that's it's, it's Truth and Reconciliation. Yeah. There's a lot of cool names in Halo. Oh, what yeah. Happened? Long Night of Solace, Sublime Transcendence, Ascendant Justice, Infinite Sucker. Um, and then you, know, you have in this know. game, uh, in this show, instead of Forward Unto Dawn, it's Stalwart Dawn. It's like, nah, it's not as good. That's <laughs> then, fine. Stalwart Dawn's it, fine. The Gladius, it's like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just... The, That's not as good as Stalwart Dawn, but yeah. It's, it's one of those, like, Gladius is like, oh, the, the Latin word for sword. He's like, Okay, I feel like I've heard that too many times now where we need to retire that for a bit, you know? Yeah. Well, like having the cool character be called Shadow, it's just like you can't, can't do that anymore. <laughs> Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciated their religious references in the games, even if it was on like kind of a pop culture surface level understanding of what it is, but the, the show takes it to an extra level of stupid. It just doesn't make sense. Like that that example where McKee is in room 316 and John goes into room 316 and there's a shot where he exits the room and it's like John is in the frame and then the door closes behind him and it says 316 on it. So you're meant to, I think, think John 316. That's what the writers intended. And it is, like you were saying, Fringy, one of the most popular verses by far because it's well known for um, encapsulating the the Bible fully because it, yeah, it's of, what people hold up on the signs at sporting events that, and everything. They always, yeah, yeah, it's the most common. Yeah, sign. it's it's the it's the motto. If you could yes. say it, it's uh, Jesus's motto. And out of out of the four gospels, um, John was the one that gave an accounting of Jesus where it deified him the most, and it was vague about how he existed as a human being like the other three matthew mark and luke i think they gave accounts of jesus that were very kind of earthly and grounded where it was like oh he went over here and he bought a sandwich and then he went into the cave you know what i mean like just like i'm being hyperbolic trying to be funny about it but it's just like the john gospel was much more abstract and like calling him god like and Re yeah, referring to, referring to think, him as God, as if he's like not even human, you know. I think it's and, I think it's John. Uh, yeah, yeah, John is yeah, because he says that's where he says uh, that he and the Father are one. Uh, right. He compares himself and because he calls himself like I am and the reference like the burning bush thing, which which isn't you know, direct translation I, isn't that impressive, but you know. Yeah, you you guys might might know more about it than me. I I did a little bit of research into it because I was curious but i i've found this out that uh, like the gospel of john gives the most abstract deified account of the story of jesus and it's because of that abstraction and vagueness that it gets applied to characters in pop culture such as master chief in this case right but the the mapping onto it doesn't really work because like well what are you saying that john is jesus but in the bible John isn't Jesus. John is just a guy that gave an account of the life of Jesus. He was an observer. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you guys know better. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But, like, the uh, and also the idea of the blessed ones seems to be incompatible with this as well. Because, like, the, the Gospel of John is referring to this idea of Jesus the Savior as this singular entity. But then you have two blessed ones in the show in the form of McKee and John the Spartan. So it's like, it's one of those, I feel like it's one of those things that the writers worked in where they're just going to be like, oh, people are going to dig this because it's deep, like the Bible. But then you analyze it for like 10 seconds and it's I mean, just like, mm, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, I mean, the, you know? he, this thing, when, when you're working with something as broad and open to vast interpretation as the Bible is, you can do all kinds of stuff because... There, there is in the um, oh, I, I'm sorry, I forget the book, but you, we all know blessed are the peacemakers, for instance, and she's called like no, that's protector. I'm getting it all shit. Never mind, take it back. But yeah, there's tons of blessed people, 
Uh, it depends mm -hmm. on how far you want to go with blessed. You know, the blessed Mary or saints, or just generally blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are those who da da da. Blessed are the da 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 da. Blessed are the meek and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really know what it was trying to do with that reference. I think it was just a like a I think it's just intellectual a attempt <laughs> to like see to seem deep and like you know to be steeped in religion when it's not really that sophisticated. Yeah, because I don't know what it would be like referring to. Who is God in this situation? Who is the one and only Son in this situation? What is eternal life in this situation? What is the otherwise perishing that is being saved from referring to? You have to try and connect a lot of things, and I I don't see the connection. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, it's like for the forerunner so loved the world that they gave. Or I guess the foreigner so loved the universe that they gave the halos so that whoever except the halos the killed future, you. Well, so <laughs> yeah, like, but yeah, that that's the thing. It's it's hard to like shall not perish, but you definitely do perish. You but definitely eternal life, do they think perish. It's, well, I, I was it, about to offer the original quote, but you're already like interpreting it in halo terms. But yeah, for God so loved the world that yeah. he gave his one and only son that yes. whoever whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Yeah. Yeah. Right, holds his hammer. Yes. I'll be with you. Yeah. Yeah, so this this idea of that's believing in somebody right? and you will have immortality basically if you just believe in this one person the one person I, being master chief who is the savior i don't think that i don't think halo goes any further than just some references to you know the you know the christian mythology and the symbolism that's very prevalent in our culture that seems pretty normal that you would want to reference things that people might be like oh okay there are seven ooh seven sacred rings seven's the holy you know it's a holy number particularly well to the, i mean the, the, yeah. the reason why there are very... seven rings is uh actually because seven is like the company number for bungie that's why all of the there were seven like the for the um seven times you know squared and then cubed for the uh monitors it's just they like seven that's all there is to it well but is there any origin for that within the company that released? Uh, I think they just like it. I think that's all that there is. It was something to do with Marathon, I think. Um, hmm. The game that they made, one of their... Because the logo for the Reclaimer is uh, the Marathon logo. Um, I, right. I, there's a lot of things where it's just, that's neat. Like that's, I think that's all that there is to it. Right. Um, it's like referencing their, like Bungie's history, history. as a game yeah. developer. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I think, um, well, yeah, that's, I mean, only the organization i'm pretty sure is just a reference to only like the game that they made as well like, that's that's right um, yeah i forgot i almost forgot about that i do remember that game it's like a third person i don't remember uh, shooter, i just know that it's a yeah that's like based on ghost in the shell and pot mm -hmm. it's playstation 2 i think um Fun. all right that was the bible verse of the day <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah. there's your big bible tangent sorry there you go Dude, the Halo 3 trailer Landfall with the ODSTs trying to track Chief was awesome. We should have something like that. Yeah, that was Neil Blomkamp. Oh, who made that. Uh, that was back when Peter Jackson wanted to make a Halo movie. Or, or at least to produce it. Um, and then that fell through. And then it was a show. And Steven Spielberg. I, we keep forgetting Steven Spielberg. You got Spielberg. to make Mortal Engines. You got to produce that. Yeah, so they both got what they want. Steven Spielberg produced the show. No, he got what he wanted in the end, but he got produced it. Well, you guys know Neil Blomkamp, right? Yeah. I mean, not personally. He, no, not personally, I assume. He made but, District uh, 9. Which he made really Halo weird. Landfall, and he also directed District 9, and he was kind of an apprentice of sorts, maybe, of Peter Jackson. I don't know. I don't want to say, like apprentice as in like he was so lacking in skill that he was like you know no it's kind of know, under his going wing. to someone like um, peter jackson to like figure out how to make films i think he knew how to make films like district nine i think is a pretty good movie it's got some flaws but i like it and halo landfall is a pretty sweet halo action short film you can see it on youtube if you search yeah for no, it. it's cool i remember watching it when it like back in the day yeah Uh, an adaptation should be close to the source material because it, by necessity, takes up the idea space for that IP. That's, I actually, what, what is that? What does that mean? I'm not sure what that means because... <laughs> 
Like, the idea. Well, know. so they got a second part. A new Halo show is made almost impossible due to the existence of this one taking up the slot in the public consciousness. Make a new IP that's... if you don't want to faithfully adapt. It's okay. No, I don't think that's the point at all. Actually, what if like, the that people have the an awareness of, shit? of it? Yeah. What if yeah, it's that, shit? What if it's been like fifty it's... years? What if it's what if it's better? What if it is better? It's different and better. Well, arcane. Yeah. I'm sorry. Arcane well, I, I'm shits sorry, on guys. League Adaptation, of the Source. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, let's be honest. How many people in chat right now care that Arcane is inaccurate? It's an, it's unfaithful to League's uh, lore. Mm -hmm. How many of you really care about that? Anyone care? How many of you care that uh, Haunting of Hill House has nothing to do with the book at all? How many of you care that The Shining is so insulting to the book that Stephen King hates it? But on the flip side, there are some things that would greatly, greatly uh, be improved by following the original work a bit. Oh, we'll see. I but would concede I in a second that this, this show would have been better had it uh, have been faithful to Halo, but not because that is the only yeah. way to be good, just because that would have... It's just because... Sure. Yeah, that would have been better. It's because copying something good... Story will generally give you something good if you copy Hopefully, yeah. it. It's just because of the goodness, <laughs> yeah. not because of Trying the fact that it's... Trying to improve on good. Many people I know it. care. Well, the thing is, as long Arrogant. as one person doesn't care, that's kind of it. Like, if someone doesn't care about adaptation, like, and they just watch it, or they've never even looked at the original before, you can't really make any appeal of like, well, no, you're wrong to think it's good because you didn't look at the original. It kind of doesn't matter. You would only want to appeal to the original to point out ways that they could have done something better, not just that they did something different. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, yeah I, to I, reiterate, Halo the show is not bad because it doesn't follow Halo as we know it. It's bad because it, it it's for bad. all the reasons it's that we know it's, it it's, it's, yeah. it's almost in that sense, especially bad because it had a guidebook right there. Yeah, yeah and I ignored it. It's just really annoying. I have no idea what Arcane is, and I feel like I have to watch it. <laughs> it's an amazing show. You should yeah, definitely yeah. watch it. What What mm -hmm. is it? What network is it on? Netflix. I don't even oh, know Netflix. anything. It's on Netflix, I Netflix. believe. The Net is okay. Nine episode animated TV show adapted from League of Legends, and oh, okay. Everybody for that reason Netflix. didn't want to see it, and then they watch it because of word of mouth, and end up saying, "All right, okay, fine, yeah, that was actually pretty good." <laughs> Okay, yeah, I will check right. that out. And yeah, uh, as many League of Legends fans will tell you, you don't need to have played League of Legends. Okay, that's good. And if anything, I think the popularity of Arcane, they're going to just start editing League lore to actually match it. Because it's better. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone said, beautiful animation, terrible writing, but worth a watch. Yo, what? <laughs> beautiful animation, terrible writing, worth a well watch. Written. Damn, yeah. <laughs> it's insanely well written. Cool. That's um, good to hear. We yeah. did three EFAPs talking about Arcane. We, we did. I noticed. Them. I thought it was only two parts, but I guess I missed the third one. We had so but, much uh, to I say. was like, oh, it must be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, what Nostalgia Critic reviews would you like to cover next? Could I suggest you do his Matrix review, or is such urging forbidden? Oh. Um, I'm not opposed to covering him. He's at all. such a uh, character, and his videos are unlike anyone else's. I don't know. He's what we'll very. Cover him next. Yeah, he's always interesting to cover. I'm never, never upset to cover him. He's all. He's kind of one of my favorites when it comes to people to cover. You never their know what videos. he's gonna say. Yeah, you got to pay attention, and he he's not all misses. You know, he gets some things right, and mostly misses. sometimes he gets the he gets a lot of things wrong in odd ways too. He he keeps you on your toes. Well, do you remember? And he's never not. I think the latest coverage we did with him with was uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It was League pretty of horrible. Gentlemen. Yep. Like and that was because uh, that movie is easy to make fan. fun of, and he chose some the Sean weird... Connery movie. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> remember, remember, we had Az on, and Az almost died. He was like losing his mind with the uh, nostalgia critic. He's, yeah, like I said, he's an interesting. Oh yeah, he almost killed uh, Dankula too. Nostalgia critic. Yeah, when he was yeah, doing he the did the Lord of the Rings transition. Rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dankula was losing his mind. Because nostalgia critic does that thing where he like screams, sort of, when he when he is making a point. Why didn't they just fly me? And you know, he has that that high pitched just like whining yeah. scream. He's such a we he he never ceases to entertain me. 
Not necessarily the in a good though, way. After but... the joke that they leave like a second silence for like the jokes, it's just it kills he's... the timing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he gives he has Jeb energy where he sees those please, <laughs> please clap please laugh. moments, his please laugh <laughs> moments. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I just don't understand why you would have on a video that's being watched with no laughter. Like, why would you leave gaps for people to laugh? Just keep incredible, going. Incredible confidence you have in your jokes yeah. to be that wow. funny. It's pretty cool, you, right? Because you're like, leave, I, gotta leave I don't want anyone to get lost in their own laughter. Well, I what if they miss the next joke and compose isn't themselves? <laughs> I wouldn't want you to miss anything I say, so I leave little gaps for you. And you're like, that's very kind of you. I appreciate it. <laughs> He's a nice guy. I appreciate he gives me a moment to catch my breath again after I after I pick myself up off the floor where I have fallen laughing uh he uh it's very kind of him i appreciate that i need to get back in your seat yeah um doesn't chief pat the shoulder of a marine in the first game after he asked frantically we're gonna make it right sir to reassure yeah. him yeah he, he does in the yeah, escape when pod. they're going to halo yeah when they're landing um unfortunately those reassurances meant nothing because they all died but he did it anyway <laughs> Because Chief is a real nice guy, and he don't afraid of anything. I don't understand. How are you the concluding sh all of this? The shoulder can't... pat is all that matters. You can't Not see his face. How do you know how he feels? Minutes after. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> You'd have to take off the helmet for you guys to conclude what that would have meant. Mm -hmm. mm. But as we know, yeah. the real Master Chief, when he takes off his helmet, it's just another helmet. Yeah. Master Chief True. has no face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his face is another visor. Could you imagine if there was, like, imagine there was a really good adaptation of, of Halo in the form of a TV show, and it's very dramatic, very serious, all played straight and really accurate, and they even fix some stuff up. And, like, season five at the end, he finally takes the helmet off, and it's another helmet, and that's how it ends. It would, I think <laughs> everyone would just funny. be like, yeah. wow. He takes off the Mark VI helmet and it's the Mark V helmet. It's just like, yeah, a, like this the, is me. I want. I got four more helmets though. under this thing. The fucking creators <laughs> are asked, like, was that like a? Did you want that to be funny? They were like, no. No, this, very is, serious. <laughs> this is very serious. This is very serious. Body and super mind. serious, you guys. Uh. It's always the same story with the kinds, these kinds of Star Trek Discovery tier writers. Main character unveils the real world, becomes awoken, and then marches off to fight the government. Um, he's I haven't working... watched Star Trek Discovery, so I have no idea Chief what to is, do with um, that. Chief hates Halsey, he doesn't hate the UNSC. He hates Halsey, yeah. In, in, the, in the show. I'm sure he'll hate sure the UNSC in no time. The UNSC too. He hates They're them. all complicit. Well, yeah, because you have um, Keys being like, we'll have a conversation at some point. He says that to Keys, doesn't he? Yeah, he says it'll be a yeah. reckoning for everybody, but not today. Okay, yeah, maybe you could make the argument he hates the UNSC. Who knows? Uh, I'm not 100% clear on that yet. But he's still invested in humans, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so that's something. Chief likes humans. That's something indeed. I'm glad that Chief likes humans. Yay, we did it. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, John, welcome back. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's awesome. Master Cheeks is not John Halo. John Halo is a cool guy who doesn't afraid of anything. Wow, I beat true. you to the party. It's true. Except you that hours ago, but I beat you. I was gonna say, yeah. Uh, Master Cheeks is a good, a good name. I like it. I just, I like, I like John Master Halo Cheeks, too. Yeah. Which is John Halo feels apt. John Halo <laughs> you know? does feel. I do like the yeah, feel of it. Say, yeah. He's not Master Chief. He's John Halo. Dude, how fucking hilarious was that in the show? What is? I I don't know. Like I assume you guys thought the same thing. Where it's like episode one took his helmet off. Episode two took his armor off. So you saw him in his <laughs> under armor. Yeah. And I was thinking. I'll make a joke on Twitter about him being naked in episode three, and then they did it. <laughs> they hot <laughs> ass naked. And then a couple they episodes later, they wish they could have him fucking. naked in the first episode, but they wanted to let you down gently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Master they didn't Chief. want to blow their load too early. Yeah. The fact that oh, I forgot to mention that he can just disassemble his armor while like out. He needs a giant robot to put it on at base, but he can just like disassemble it, put it in the corner. And imagine if Sauron, like, stole it. He had someone waiting there to steal his armor. He's like, well, better go grab my armor. And it's just gone. And then he gets died. <laughs> just shoots him If you want your like, armor back, Master Chief, then you're gonna have to do a little job. You're, you're gonna, gonna have to, to do collect some work. five yeah. gold ingots. <laughs> yeah. 
I need you to smush a man's foot. Oh no. <laughs> just give it a good old crushed. step. Just crunch down on it. Give it a squeeze. Yeah, yeah just give his toes a squeeze. <laughs> and take pictures if you want. You don't have to, but if That's you, the optional. If you thing. wanted him. It's for it's for my uh my, my wife, yes. <laughs> like smushed feet. Don't ask me why. Master Chief, mind telling me why you're consorting with a Covenant spy? Sir, getting my rocks off. Sir, yeah, maybe. Or you would say yeah. it's a no. passionate love. Okay. I'm only Master Chief. No human would want to have sex with me. Depends if you can get the armor <laughs> off or not. Actually, they, they wanted to keep it on, wouldn't they? No, he. yeah, the armor stays on during. Uh, the Fall of Reach book characterized the Master Chief perfectly without compromising his game character. I haven't read it. I'm going to be rewriting it soonish. I'm going to be using the loo. All right. I can't stand that Halsey's big brain plan for keeping John in line is to give an AI complete control over uh, Master Chief and the rest of the Spartans. Also high rags. Yeah. It wouldn't have been over the rest of the Spartans. I think it it's was kind just... of retarded. Yeah, yeah, well, the idea seems to be like the, the symbiosis of it, right? Where it's like the hmm. person and the AI in combination. But then it, her end game seems to be just that the AI sure, completely overwrites that kind of, person. Kind of hilarious, so, isn't it? Because it's like mm -hmm. I made this to completely control you. It went rogue. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, fooey. Gosh darn it. Uh, the army brainwashed us to a degree to avoid PTSD. Read On Killing by Dave Grossman. The UNSC would absolutely know and use this when they raise their elite child soldiers so that they are combat ready. Uh, no, yeah. they need emotional regulated ship in their spine. That's the thing about That's it. That's what when, makes them puns, according to Cortana. When Kai has her, like, oh god, war is pain moment, it's kind of just yeah. like, uh, it feels so arbitrarily thrown in. It's like, you could have told me that that's how she feels or not, and I wouldn't know the, to expect anything different, because I don't know how any war of this works. War is pain, but then it disappeared later. War wasn't pain when she went in episode 9. She's fine. I mean, it always just feels like they do whatever they want. They did it so that Chief would have to abandon the mission and they lose the thing. Yeah. That's why the they did it. The Spartan program was made to crush the insurrectionists, but also Halsey had ambitions to take the research further to try and evolve humanity. Yeah, but but that's the, the, the most important part is they weren't created to combat the Covenant. That was just a, a coincidence, essentially. The Covenant attacked, and then it's like, oh, well, we can use the Spartans. And then that is like a pretext that makes people a lot more comfortable with the program. Or, or at least, like, not not uh, compelled to look into it further. Mm -hmm. um, um, hello, favorite Halo moment, but you can only pick one. Hmm. 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 Favorite Halo moment. Um... I mean, the one I remember best, I'll go first because my answer is going to be the least interesting because I have the least familiarity with the whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be between, and these are going to be such generic answers, holy shit, I already know before I say them. It's the end of Halo 3 and the end of Halo Reach, basically. Those are the two parts <laughs> I remember them. They're the parts <laughs> I remember are, the most uh, in playing the campaign. Yeah, yeah the same answer to the end of Halo 1, driving through that whole area at the end with my buddy. That was pretty fun. Warthog run, yeah. Yep. Uh, I'll, I'll add to that specifically the the moment where Full Hammer's about to pick you up and she gets shot down. And it's like musically scored perfectly. Like, like you, it, it's like this supposed to be this uplifting moment where it's just like, oh, here's my ride out of here. And then it gets shot down and the music scores along with it, like the tragedy of it. And then there's this moment of silence where you're you're left as a player going... Oh shit, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? And there's like a beat of silence where it's like awkward. But then Cortana chimes in and it's like, Chief, I've detected there's a there's a pelican in the whatever bay. Go over there. And then it's like, oh shit, I can still get out of here. Like it felt like a movie moment, you know? And it was like accomplished so well in the context of a video game. It was cool. That's one of my mm -hmm. favorite moments. I think there's so many good ones, but one that always stands out is, hmm, it's I think it's the flood reveal. 
Yeah, Halo that was one. so good. That is pretty cool too. Yeah. It's paced really well. Yes. But we're gonna put you in this spooky swamp. All right, this is different. Swamp level. Okay. You need to go look for these marines. They're missing. Okay. Marines missing in the swamp. Looks like they went down into this uh, structure here under the swamp. Okay. Wow, it's quiet. And then you 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 you, you build up to that reveal, and then they're they're just everywhere, and you got to shoot them all, and they're not like the Covenant at all. It's something completely different. And you got to fight your way out and pick up what you can. And I, I really, really like it a whole bunch. It's got that just, it nails the tone of that kind of moment. And it's such a flip for the game where you've been fighting nonstop Covenant. And it adds this whole uh, whole entirely different thing into the mix. Yes, it was, it was a great point in the game to inject some new enemy variety. In addition to like the story value of it, where it worked as like a a, a narrative beat of mystery and horror. So good. Um, I might be boring as well. I'm, I'm kind of, it's a toss up for me between the ending of Halo 3 and the ending of Reach. I think the Reach is super impressive in terms of taking a gameplay element and sort of pairing it with a narrative element in a way that's really potent that only video games can achieve. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I think I also, um, I also really like the moment in Reach when, yeah, you, the super carrier gets blown up as, like, Noble Six is falling to the ground and then the Covenant Armada shows up. And then you have it, like, it's partly because of the score as well. And then it's, like, uh, him on his own in the mountains with, like, the super carrier destruction in the background. It's, like, a great shot. Um, And then I guess they're, they're, it uh, also might be the ending of Halo 1 in and of itself, like, destroying the ring and then Chief, you know, as, as just as they're escaping and the ring gets destroyed, it's a really cool moment. Um, I, uh, the, um, I'm, I'm wondering, because it's like, Silent yeah. Cartographer opening is, like, probably the most memorable, like, gameplay section in a Halo game, I think. It might be. It just feels like such a clear example of like what's so cool about those games in terms of their design this beach assault and driving around in that level mm -hmm. hmm. yeah man he's some pretty like, good games he's yeah, Halo so games. Like well what's yours ER? Mm -hmm. ER, i already stole yours the end of um one. Oh, well fair enough the end of other ones yep. cool also i just funny because there are parts in two that i really like they're just they're not ones that i would point out as being like oh that's like the quintess i really like the scene when arbiter finds out like when he goes to the to the um to, uh the control room with the index and he's talking to tartarus and you got uh like 343 explaining it it might just be because that's one of my favorite parts of the soundtrack in all of the games sacred icon uh, or is it sacred it's, i think it's high charity suite i kind of adore it um, there's the same thing in, uh, in Halo 3, it's, I think it's called, um, Black Tower, when it's, uh, it's when, um, after Miranda gets killed and they activate the rings, and then, like, Chief and Arbiter are coming up in the music, it's like, oh, it's really good music. Um, really good. Yeah, the really score good. for Halo 1 and 2, or, I mean, Halo 2 in particular, the music was fantastic. Mm, phenomenal. Yeah. Great, uh, there is an there is a uh, in halo 2 when you're on high charity and the flood come crashing in and you're fighting the flood there there's always a, a big unique vibe to that where it's just it's as alien as you can get you're on an, an, a massive alien city nothing looks human it's got all the alien architecture on it and you're fighting these just horrific terrible monstrosities from outer space and you're just so far away you're so far away from earth you're so far away from human cities and it you just feel so it, it Halo 2 gives a lot of those moments the, the the levels when you're on one of the other Halos is Arbiter fighting the flood where you're in just you're in such a distant oh, part of the galaxy it's so moment. it's so uh, unhuman and just removed from everything else it gives you this vibe of you're just so deep into a just this strange terrible place and i always really enjoy really that kind one. of feeling it's the uh the speech that shipmaster gives when they're they're there and um it's like quarantine zone mission and then he says he does the big speech will cut into the heart of the infestation retrieve the icon and burn any flood that stand in their way 
and the music's like playing in the background. That's a cool little moment. I really yeah. like the shipmaster. He's cool as fuck. He's got an awesome learned, voice. Yeah. He says He's got a, a great cool voice. Things. He's you know shipmaster. They are number us three to one. Then it is an even fight. It's like <laughs> ooh, <laughs> that's some good shit. Like oh, and of course someone mentioned it in chat. I was going to say it too. I know it's like a stupid set piece in the sets, but I like when. Chief jumps out with the bomb, drops it into the supercar and blows it up. Dude, that's great. I love that's that. Really... I love beats like that. I want I wanted Ooh. that out of the show. You know? You back there, back. Like just the show having fun with with beats like that, where Chief's doing something fucking crazy and Cortana's mm -hmm. like, Yeah, I'm on board, sure. I think was, she kind uh... of appreciates how reckless he is but not reckless in a way that jeopardizes the mission like reckless in like a disciplined way where it's like this is going to make a huge dent in the coveted fleet or whatever the threat is that they're facing in that moment you know john, john do you know the backstory behind that cut scene i told i told Moller and rags the other day but i'm i don't think a lot of people know the backstory i'm not um, sure tell me so there wasn't actually going to be the bomb. The cut, it was meant to be a whole mission where Chief jumps out, lands in the supercarrier, and then there was going to be a whole mission in the ship where he blows it up from the inside with a wraith. Um, but they ran out of time oh. while they were making the game, so they had to do the cutscene instead. That's um, cool. I didn't know that. It's a funny trade-off that you create one of the most memorable cutscenes in like the entire series as a trade-off for the mission. Right, um, yeah. But they, there are a lot of, there's a lot of content they cut in Halo 2 um, <laughs> that they wanted to do. I feel bad for them, but I mean, we wouldn't have gotten Halo 3 as it was without it, so. That's a great beat that highlights their relationship that Cortana and Chief have, where it's mm -hmm. like, uh, Cortana's like, you know, this is crazy, right? And Chief's like, so stay here. And she says, fortunately for you, I like crazy. I love that. Right? Yeah, because it's all, like, a little unorthodox she, as well. She's almost operating like a human being. And, uh, like, that's kind of been factored into her, the development of her AI, you know, where she mm -hmm. is like willing to go along with some crazy plan that Chief has, but it's not completely, it's not insane. It's like, it's, right. like, it's extremely dangerous, but it, if accomplished, it will actually be a huge well, yeah, benefit to the UNSC. Yeah. Right, it's, it's a really big accomplishment. Um, like it's it, yeah, they they have a fun dynamic. Um, that's not in the show. That I try shooting my way out. Yeah, yeah mix things up I, a little. Like, yeah, really funny too. There's another beat in the Halo Two where he, she's uh, or Master Chief. He's on the ground in New Mombasa, and they drop a tank down, oh, and Cortana's like, "Thanks, he never gets me anything." Like I, that's such a cute line yeah. of dialogue because it's like they're it's almost like, like a married couple. I know what couple, the ladies and they're, like, yeah. right? And they basically yeah. are a married couple, like Chief and Cortana, because they're like intertwined with each other. They can't. There was separate. God, I wish that were. I remember there was a fun thing in New Mombasa as well, where um, it's after the Pelican crashes, where it's just Cortana. It's like she's tapping on the helmet, saying like, "Hey, wake up!" You know, just like <laughs> you know, we gotta yeah. go do the mission. There's a lot of right. there's a lot of fun banter. The show is absent fun, which yeah, is what was... is present in the games. Yes. partly. a lot a lot through Johnson, but it's just part of the games as well. There's like, a lot of fun. Right. Rem uh, when when you first learn what Halo does, and Guilty Spark is there, and Cortana stops him, like she's angry at him. She's pissed she off. She's upset. Like, you know, uh, now you're, oh, you're you're about yeah. to make me. When we talk about like great dialogue, the entire exchange that Guilty Spark has with Chief is so laid with subtext that like they didn't need to do but they did it's like he's not even talking to chief he says like last time you asked me would i do it you know and it's like what do you mean by last time you asked me to do it like what, what do you mean by that um is that like in the first water... game yeah it's um like, oh damn i, I want to find the line it's because it's, yeah, it's in... probably in the library right where you're making your way to the index no it's um it's 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 what guilty spark says to you when like cortana tells you what the ring does and oh. he's like, yeah, but you knew that that's how it worked. How couldn't you? It's like, wait, what do you mean by that? Huh? What What do you mean? You didn't tell me this. It's like, well, from, th from oh, the Guilty yeah. Spark perspective, it's you like- You built the damn well, thing. Yeah, of course you know. Yeah, you built it, you know? That'll be yeah, after they get the index me. and their chief's about to like use it. And Cortana's it's like, excuse me, do you, do you know what this fucking insane asshole- Oh, he's your buddy, you huh? Do? Your pal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that was um, a great conversation, yeah. 
Well, I guess it's it's what I mean. Yeah, so because he says like we followed outbreak containment procedure to the letter. You were with me each step of the way as we managed this crisis. And he said, "Why would you hesitate to do what you have already done?" Uh, yes. Last time you asked me if it were my choice, would I do it? Having had considerable time to ponder your query, my answer has not changed. There is no choice. We must activate the ring. It's like, dude, like you didn't have to write that. You didn't have to layer that with so much like. <laughs> subtext and like pre-planning for future story beats that you were going to tell you, yeah. you blink and you wouldn't miss it you'd be like oh it's just some crazy shit that guilty spark is saying he says a lot of weird things yeah. but it's like, like they had a story that they wanted to expand upon and tell well and they did Ooh. but then it all got ruined Ooh. just keep pumping out sequels until they don't make money anymore <laughs> it wasn't planned it doesn't need to be planned if you lay the seeds you can leverage them later like, it doesn't matter whether or not it's planned. Yeah. Because if there was only one Halo, plan. people would still be like, oh, humans are four. Oh, what did he mean okay. by that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what it implies very strongly, directly. <laughs> good shit. Very good so shit. Good. Yeah. I, I, look, I, I look forward to replaying those and particularly paying attention to a lot of the cutscenes in a post I've watched Halo the series world. I'm going to replay them as well. I might do like a YouTube stream for Halo 1, 2, and 3. Wait. It's just, they're so good. Ah, That's the fun thing for me is whenever I get around to streaming them, I've never played Halo 1 and 2 before. Fun. Oh, Wah. you'll love them, dude. Fuck. If you liked Halo 3, for sure. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy them. Halo, for as old as it is, it, it has this wonderful charm about its age that has aged well. It, it still Halo plays enjoyably. Well. Yeah, I only played it last year and it was. Right in the half, I loved it. I think it's my uh, favorite campaign, and it's in well, it's, it's just always had this vibe that this classic kind of vibe to me that it's it's just great. I love I it. Will say, Some about it. Re having replayed Reach, Reach has got a really good campaign in terms of its design. There are a lot of great encounters in that game. I remember as I was playing it, like it's there were so many times when I'm thinking, like, damn, that was a good encounter. And it's nice to think about a shooter like that. Like, that was a really interesting, fun encounter. You put me in this stage with these enemies I needed to account for. And Halo 1's got a lot of that, too. Um, I think Halo 2 is a little bit more inconsistent. 3's got a lot of great encounters as well, uh, except for Cortana. That wasn't a very good mission. But I'm looking forward to replaying Halo 1. Finish Reach, so Halo 1's next. Yeah. Uh, Toxic Brood, Lovecraft, Halloween, EFAP, when? Hi, Rags. Hi. You mean like uh, we a cover... Lovecraft themed Halloween? Like we watch Lovecraft themed movies? Uh, watched, and maybe uh, Colorado Space oh, recently, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we had a little talk about it. Uh, it was either on an EFAP or a ketchup. I forgot. I have also forgotten which, which we talked about it on, but I think it was. We have matchup. talked about it. Whether that's been recorded and broadcast, it's, <laughs> I think uh, it was something yeah. I cannot remember. <laughs> Remind us if we've talked about Color Out of Space and you heard it. Could be the. Um, oh no! I was about to suggest we could like we could watch that Lovecraft Country show that everyone hates, and I was like, actually, no, no we no. don't have to. <laughs> no. Yeah, we don't. We really don't have to. I'm <laughs> sure there's other Lovecraft inspired movies we could look for if you want to do like so like so bad they could be good kind of stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of those that we can do EFAP movies for. Yeah. Yeah. The little best of the worst on Lovecraft. What if we had EFAP <laughs> books where someone narrated it and then we pause them every time? It's like, wait, no one's talk about that <laughs> line of dialogue, that prose. <laughs> EFAP books. EFAB. Every frame of book. Ain't that fabulous? Why don't you just do every frame of page? Oh, yeah, sure. But every frame of book, you know, every single frame, there's a new book. So by the end of it, there'll be a library's worth of books. In fact, many can't more judge a podcast by its cover. <laughs> yeah. Every frame a frame. My God. Exactly. Find the cringe, finish the fight. Uh -huh. We did. Yeah. I like how in that fight scene, there was no reference to any like specific battle or iconography for games or trailers or anything yeah it was like it's just its own space it's just like this dusty temple i guess on a mountain because wow, a lot of people were saying it's like sand trap i even said it looked like sand trap but it ain't sand trap really it's just like a temple it's it, just it a dusty Gilio. temple like it's well i th i think you're right in terms of the color palette you know it does resemble that area but the architecture i think is yeah it's different like uh it is different. in the it show it does like some Gilio. 
it's this weird singular kind of church with these two naked elites on the front of it. <laughs> like... uh, well, sorry, in <laughs> you go to Sang Helios, and Sang Helios kind of looks like that, but this isn't Sang Helios. This is like a holy planet, I guess. Okay. Uh, have you read Wim? Yes, shout out to Nico. I've read parts of Worm. What is it? It's a, uh, it's a, um, I guess you would call a rationalist uh, web fiction about superheroes, and it's about this chick who's got a, uh, she can control insects. Oh. And she tries to use that power in clever and neat ways, get her jobs done. I haven't read beyond many maybe like 10, 15 chapters. So I don't, this was a long time ago, but something I might uh, go back to. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, just to let you know, if I randomly go offline, there's a very big rainstorm going on and who knows? Well, we're actually but, yeah. like three minutes left before I was. Oh, good. Yeah. Because I heard like, Look, something loud outside, like a fucking tree fell over or something. Oh, good. So oh, it was boy. probably just a branch on the roof or something, but I went outside and I just got a, just a spray all over my face of rain just bitten. I was wondering why you said, because I heard vaguely, it's like, oh, it's like, why? Yeah, what's was, going on? I just opened the door and I just got a face full because the, the wind is blowing it just right where it's right into the side of the ah. house and it's raining and super windy. I'm like ah, so like the front of me is all misted right now. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I heard John CJG mention Machinima. Wanted to ask him his thoughts on Bro Team and the Cool Hole. Um, I'm actually not that familiar with either. Sorry to say. Neither am I. Um, yeah. I Sorry. love Bro Team. Remember Bro Team? They did like did a uh, funny the... video on Life is Strange. I like that. Yeah, they, they do the thing where it's like two minutes of splicing footage from the game with like sort of a rambly kind of a uh, structure, right? Where they were just sometimes, sort of like yeah, the game. yeah. Uh, he does those. I don't really care for those nearly as much as just his stream clips and everything. Ah. Uh, he did some great videos on Life is Strange. Damn. He did video. He 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 did he did the Telltale games on Minecraft. That's hilarious, and you should watch it. But Bro Team is um, hilarious. I love Bro Team. It's it's funny that you because some I've been rewatching is uh, Sonic for Hire, which was another like machinima. Uh, that thing. I know. I like that yeah. show. That was great. Well, that yeah, that was really cool. And it seems like you they managed to uh, get their whole backlog. I don't know if everybody because I know Battlefield friends. I remember that there was a time there when, like, a lot of their episodes weren't available because Machinima delisted. What? Man, just, like, an entire backlog of all of these people work. Like, you know, thousands of hours of work, and then it's just gone. Nice. And, like, because of rights-related things, you know, a lack of access. I don't know if, like, the... I don't know if the Battlefield friends got... No, they did. That's right. They got the they got it back, and then they re-uploaded it. And it's like, yeah, yep. and Sonic for Hire as well. There was a lot of really cool projects... Like, Machinima Stop. was really cool for a time in terms of the projects that came about, but I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, not at all in the term in the way it was run, but there was some great content for sure. And it's some people, yeah. yeah, some people recovered their content, thankfully, after the, the company disintegration, but some people genuinely got fucked over where they lost years of stuff they recorded. And That's like, the mm. kind of thing where you wonder, like, if I was working at, machinima and it was getting shut down on everything i don't know would a few files get downloaded and distributed from i don't know the problem you never, is you just know. like because it wasn't machinima bought by like warner brothers um oh, something some bullshit it was bought like by that. like a major company and when that happens you end up in a situation where everybody would be sitting around like well come on just let him have it it's like well yeah that's the ethical thing to do but there's like contracts and stuff and we don't want to deal with that. And then, and then the byproduct of that is that people just get their work like gone and lost, and they have to yeah. jump through hoops to get it back. It just sucks. But then, what weight does the contract hold if the company long, no longer exists? I have like I it's have literally no gone, idea. Right? When it's so like you got yeah, those who are they going to go after? You know exactly. Yeah. So that's why my show came back. Other people weren't so lucky because they couldn't recover their stuff at all. Yeah. You know? 
Like it just wasn't there to recover. I guess the big benefit now is that um, we are in a landscape where you don't need a company like Machinima for people to do these really cool projects. I mean, you look at something like a Fox in space, that would have been like a Machinima. Well, well, it's not a Machinima, but it would have probably been through something like that back in the day. But now thanks to like Patreon and all these services, guy can just make it on his own. That's the thing, right? Like Machinima came to me in in a period of my life where I was convinced you needed the middleman, right? The, right. the studio that you needed to be affiliated with in order to create content and then reach an audience with that content. And then as the years went on, that became increasingly less the, the issue, you know, where like you could skip the middleman and just di- directly connect with your audience and not have to work for some fucking draconian MCN, you know, with some bullshit mm-hmm. contract. And, uh, a lot of people were taken advantage of, and it sucks. But yeah, I mean, I'm well, so well. They've glad survived I'm a lot now. of these creators. That's that's at least something that's nice to take away. Is the guys who made like Sonic for Hire, the Battlefield friends guys, like you, obviously, like a lot of the people who did this stuff managed to persist beyond Machinima. It's just because yeah, I mean, it gave them stuff. an audience. Yeah, it, it did it, help them right. get an audience. Yeah. But it's like th- them making quality content is the thing that keeps that. That's what matters. That was. I mean, there was, I mean, even like towards the end of that company's career, it's like, remember like machinima as just a genre of content on the internet? <laughs> like, now, <laughs> now eventually, yeah. like, that wasn't even a thing anymore. Um, well, like we were talking of- about before, I remember like the, the term has been tainted by the company name. Like, a it bit. used to be a genre, yeah. but now people hear the word machinima, they think of the company before they think of the genre now. Which you know, it's sucks. just machine it's- cinema movies really with, cool, in a real-time engine right it's a really cool and accessible genre um like yeah all, you can create some really cool cinematic content and all you need is like an xbox and four com- controllers or like even a group of friends and you can achieve some really cool things on zero budget with like crazy action scenes and things it's um, totally dude I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's as good as animation, obviously, because animation you can do whatever you want. But like, an, an animation is something that you, as an individual, can do on your own. Um, but I mean, like, when you think about the basically the skill floor for like Machinima is quite low, and you can achieve a lot. Um, no, I, I, it's not really a genre. Anymore. I totally know what you mean, and you're right. I mean, the reason I went into Machinima and not animation is because I wasn't smart or skilled enough to take advantage of that at the time. I want to work on that. I'm thinking of like dabbling into source filmmaker and playing around with it, see if I can make something cool. But I'm like, I just, I gravitated towards doing this stuff in Halo because it's so easy and Rooster Teeth made it look so easy. I'm just like, fuck, I can do that. Mm -hmm. And I did it, you know? Uh, Act Man, legendary stream. Yeah, I think so. It's been a good one. It's been a good one. Stream of Legends. Just supporting my favorite. Hopefully, favor- one day this show will pass into legend. Just supporting my favorite stream of the week. I watch EFAP to do end. Since the first episode where guys covered the Twitch reaction people. All right. <laughs> I think they're saying they watch each episode to the end, I think. I think that's oh, yeah, that's good. I definitely want Gentlemen. you to do that. I am pro you doing that thing. Which. You know, in a way, it feels like a um, an, a, a good one to end on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, because, yeah, eight and a half hours. I feel that is that is quite a, a hearty amount of uh, streaming time. Of course, we made it through um, a decent chunk of these Super Chats. What we'll do, of course, return to you on the airwaves, the radio waves, the YouTube waves uh, on Wednesday to grab the rest. And hopefully... I'm not going to say it's a guarantee, but hopefully in that stream we'll tell you we've caught up fully. Yes. Maybe. No promises. Okay. Cool. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's what a stream. It's been great having a chat about the, the old halos. Um, before we go, however, if for our two guests, we could um, have you guys talk about what it is you get up to and where to find you. Why don't we go alphabetically and start with the old ER? How you doing? What's, uh, what's up? Uh, 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 well, I'm a, uh, I guess you'd call a, uh, a comedic critic, mm-hmm. uh, movie reviewer, YouTuber guy, you know. And um, I'm not going to promise that I'm going to put anything out, you know, 
in the near future because um, people hold prom those promises over me for like years and years at a time. So one day there might be something nice on my channel to watch. Well, that'd be nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I really liked your Halo uh, show video. Like uh, I, I, I I watched a bit of like all the videos of like guests that I knew were gonna appear on this, and your video made me laugh. I like oh, how you. Did. I had no. You're idea totally right about the been... dialogue. It's so stupid in the show. I, I did. I I never expected the show to get to uh, the depths that it fell to. Mm -hmm. Even from that first episode, <laughs> I had zero idea. But, who boy? Yeah. yeah. Um. He has, uh, he's got some real fucking great videos, uh, famously. He, he's the one that convinced me that TFA was bad. Nobody else did at that point. I was like, TFA's fine, wow. if not great. And then I was like, oh... No, oh my no, goodness. No. And that's oh. only like a 20-minute video, right? You just blast through it. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> made that in like a week, I think? Yeah, and it wasn't long after then that I... Because uh, I'm trying to remember the timeline, because I think TLJ was after I would have seen that video. And my mind was changing on, on TFA. Because that film, man, nobody likes TFA anymore. No, I have yeah. over every Star Wars sequel now. <laughs> Everyone's over all of it. It needs to die. Uh, Played it too safe. But yeah, um, Cycle Through is, is, is backlog. It'll, the ER will entertain you. And he might even change your mind on some stuff. Like, yeah. I know loads of people are huge fans of Mad Max Fury Road. Why don't you, why don't you check out Yale's video on it? See what you think. See if it... Make some gears tune. I don't know, maybe. What is your hottest take, do you think, on your channel? That probably today is still the hottest take. Yeah, I would have guessed that might be. People love that movie, and it does have its it does have its aspects that make it pretty great. Mm -hmm. I won't lie, but story was not one of them. And I, I still stand by that. Well, yeah, there's another movie where I was just like, but it's so awesome. And then I was like, oh man, I didn't even think about the writing really. <laughs> because it's distracting with the action. Um, yeah. That's how they get you. Yeah. Link in description. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, especially for the eight and a half mm -hmm. hours. It's been nice to chat with you again. It's been a while. Yes. Um, and Mr. John CJG, where, where are you at? What are you doing? What are you up to? I am JCJ Graham on Twitter, John Graham on YouTube. I do RB and the Chief. As I said, I'm still doing it. I'm almost 34 years old, and I'm still filming myself playing with toys. Yay. And uh, I'm, I've done eight seasons of the show, and I'm working on the finale right now. I'm also working on Master Chief Sucks at Halo Infinite. I'm working on a two-parter. I'm getting two both parts done. Uh finalized and then i'm gonna release them like premiere them on youtube back to back publicly and make kind of an event out of it so i'm excited about that i just gotta kick my ass into gear and get it done you know but uh it probably sounds cringe to some of you but uh, i encourage you to give it a shot i shoot like it's action figures but i shoot it like a movie i treat the screenplays seriously like i take the writing phase really seriously and uh, I try and make it as funny as I can. And uh, I'm not really like a media critic sort of person. I like writing stories specifically. That's kind of my thing. But I'm mm -hmm. trying, I'm, I might be getting into review format kind of stuff. <laughs> the more and more we drag I, you I on here. Like, huh? <laughs> I, exactly. Yeah. I feel like I got shit to say. Like, I could, I could make videos. Like, like, like you make, you guys make videos that I really enjoyed. I'm like, I could, I can contribute to that same thing as well right so i'm thinking of getting that into that as well but i'm trying to finish off our being the chief first and be disciplined about it so yeah so john graham on youtube if you want to tune in and uh i really appreciate you guys having me on thank you for that really uh, like, to talk about on. halo it's it's awesome oh yeah we had to have you on of course for that but i was gonna say do you have a recommended start for someone who's looking to maybe get into our being the chief where do you think they should go episode one or maybe something a little more modern that's uh i would just say episode one yeah mm -hmm. and just go with the flow of it where like halfway through it's going to really change drastically because it goes from being self-contained to really serialized yeah and the the themes of it are quite the subject and the subject matter 
are relatively much heavier compared to the first half because that's just the shit I was going through in my 20s and that kind of bled into the series. And my position is just take her or leave it, you know? Like, I mean, I made the show that I wanted to make and was cathartic for me at the time. I never once believed that I was making, like, dumbing down the show or making it worse. Like, I, I just followed my intuition in regard to, like, what was an evolution of the show. And it is what it is. It's quite a, it's a weird show. It changes quite a bit from season to season. But, uh, you know, I, I, if you give it a chance, you might like it. And uh, I well, hope, I it's hope worth do. noting. I and Muse wholeheartedly recommend that show. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank mm. you so much. Really, uh, some of the the bigger payoffs and some of them longer, like you said, serialized uh, seasons. They were um, they were they were, they were uh, yeah. better than what was on TV at the time. So it's like, <laughs> hey, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and everything we've been talking about today about, like, expressions and writing and stuff, you'll find a lot of it is, is in his uh, writing and approach to filmmaking. Like, the, I, I almost don't want to spoil in the sense of, like, if you aren't familiar with what he's made, the main characters are not conventional. Put it that way. <laughs> it's very explicit uh, language, and uh, it's not for everybody. But, you know, give it a shot, see what you think. And hey... Master Chief doesn't take his helmet off, so there's that. He doesn't take his helmet there off. There is that. He occasionally comes <laughs> off, but he grabs it straight away because he knows that he's incomplete without it. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with us once again, man. No we problem. Love it. Thank, thank you. you. No thank problem. you. Thanks for having us on. Um, Rags, Fringy, you got anything you guys want to say before we run not, off? Not yet, I don't. <laughs> I'm oh, just not particularly. On the same for myself. Yeah, In fact, yeah, you know, just guys, get excited. You have chat. Kenobi is coming. Getting real close now. That's this way. Oh. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, though, as was uh, alluded to, uh, next Saturday, same time as usual, we're planning on giving y'all a little breakdown of everything, everywhere, all at once. Instead of something poopy. So, so it's actually something we actually liked. <laughs> so get excited. Not sure who exactly the guests will be yet, but uh, we'll figure it out. Alrighty. On that note, I think we should say uh, good night, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the donation. Yeah, you bet. We shall see you Wednesday. Yeah. Goodbye, Bye. everyone. Bye, See chat. everybody on Wednesday. Oh, Toodaloo. Yeah. Bye Thanks. bye. Ciao. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. See you later. I wish I had an appropriate Halo quote to say right now. Oh, send us out Why with a bang. <laughs> finish oh, yeah. the fight. We'll finish the fight. Like and subscribe. Or something. <laughs> or something. That's the best Halo quote. <laughs> Blow me away. No, so understand you. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Did you da, even da, start da, singing? Da. Was that part of the song? Did he just start making noises? <laughs> was I supposed to end it yet or no? <laughs> I'm just hovering over the stop button like I am. Uh, <laughs> okay, bye everybody.